than that. <laughs> Dragon like Tail, right there. Uh, Boom. No, that's too edgy. And uh, <laughs> wow, right. Beaver, Beaver Tail. Beaver Tail knows that it's not trying to be anything that it isn't. It's just a little, it's just a little bit of, a little bit of thing for safety there, because you do not want that hammer to hit your hand. What? You know that, that would really hurt. You in a tunnel so, there, Jay Longbone? Yeah, what's yeah. going on there, pal? <laughs> Hello? Is, is Jay here? I don't think she said anything this whole time. Now she's not uh, here, no. so. oh, Okay. Goodbye. She's like, Fuck this guy. Who's, who's this fucking lion? I'm out. <laughs> oh. We oh. just went live, too, so perfect timing on mute. <laughs> I suppose we'll oh, have we to go. find something to talk about. We can, um, I think we, is our intro also going to be AI generated? Ooh. Oh. Well, yeah, I was thinking about the thumbnail for this episode and I was like, how could I resist not like putting that goober fucking fury that face? Gobbledygook. Whatever the Puke. hell that was. I showed my sister that and she was like, no. And I was like, yeah, I know. Oh. And she was like, it would I, be worse if you told me that someone drew that. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I don't care that it was made by AI. I care that it looked like dog shit and it was like four hours long. It just kept going. <laughs> kept go Every time I thought it was over, I'd look up and there's like several credits. Yeah, ago. it's like a fucking anime. There's a 30 oh, minute man. intro. Yeah, I will oh, say after yeah, a while, I, that got insane. I, 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 like. I, I love me some animes here and there, but you're completely right, Rag. Those intros are just this, just indulgent bullshit. Like, every single one of them are shit. I mean, <laughs> what was I pretty funny... Say I... Go ahead. I was just going to say, what was pretty funny about it is the fact that you know every time you watch it that that's what costs this show from being taken seriously by anybody on the internet, basically. Like, you watch it and you're just like... Which is oh. pretty hilarious. It's As it's soon as everybody reason. found out that it was an AI art intro, that already turned a lot of people against wow. this show. Oh, At yeah. The gate. It was Quick. pretty... They didn't yeah. even watch I'm it. I'm pretty... Uh... I'm pretty opposed. Uh, I don't sort like of, it. I, I don't really like AI-generated images used in this context, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're Disney, uh, and this is your show, and it's a big deal, and you're spending $200 million on it. And, you know, intros are a potentially really... Uh, I mean, let's. I mean, what is our gold standard for intros? Is it arcane or is uh, it? Uh, well, I mean, if we're talking about, if we're talking Game about like, of Thrones because they actually utilize it. Breaking Bad. If we're talking like superhero television shows. Daredevil is pretty high up. Well, uh, yeah. it just. I mean, the fact that we give so many answers there, it just really shows that a, a good intro can mean a lot of things. Intro it, set like, the tone. With, oh yeah, like with, when it's with arcane, it becomes as the show goes on, you recognize more and more things, and you recognize the symbolism more and more as the. You know, as the show goes on and you learn more and more and, and you can fit a style and you can fit a tone and there's, there's a lot that goes into an intro. So this one is just like, oh, you you just like you just had a, a, a computer well, I feel like it's, generated. It's indicative That's... of sort of what's to come with the show, isn't it? It's just like stuff yeah. like thrown at like that just sort of gets compiled together. Compiled well, and thrown together, and then it turns into something that's like bizarre and incoherent. Which is what, funny. what kills me is, is that they use the actual thing that they generated. Not they didn't use it as a reference. They used the yeah. actual piece of shit that they generated. Which would have been way, like, yeah, I think that would have been way more respectful if you, they built really good looking images, and you're like the, the base for this was actually an AI prompt, and mm -hmm. then they they look at his reference. You'd be like, okay, all right, mm -hmm. I get it. That's cool enough <laughs> but like what they went with is just almost everybody was like Ugh, what is, is there <laughs> is anything this? you can actually like interpret from it though like i just feel like every time i'm looking at it, i don't really what am i supposed to get like one of the things <sighs> i appreciated about game of thrones was that if if it, I, I remember with game of thrones they would update if something happened in one of the kingdoms they would update the yeah. intro right away so you you'd get the world building through the intro like as a reminder like uh what happened to winterfell and then you would see winterfell you you would see all the things all the details and i think that especially considering it's the very next episode that's something you can appreciate with this it just looked like mush on a screen like i just what's the point of this well it's supposed to look like mush you see <laughs> the, I, I think that, green for scrolls that's about it that's i, I think that it. um the the idea that was going around, and I don't know how much of this is legitimate and how much of this is major cope, uh, but I guess I think the idea that they said was it's supposed to be, it's supposed to look weird, essentially. It's supposed to be about the blending of what really is true and who's who and what's real and da 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 And I'm just like, oh, well, you could have done that I mean, and like, hired people. Yeah, um, it still doesn't change the fact that oh. that process was used. Then reminded of the Flash, where it's like, oh, don't worry, everything in the time travel multiverse thing is supposed to look like shit. And it's like, oh. Why? Yeah, like, these are, 
Uh, because it's that's what they were going for, I guess. It's like, <laughs> uh-huh. It, it's this <laughs> built-in excuse. It's just built. Like, what are they going to say if everyone thought it looked great? Like, oh, ho, okay. You know what I mean? It's, you don't no, 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 think guys, it looks great. Kind of <laughs> shit. Stop liking it. <laughs> it's I supposed mean, to look terrible. It's, when it's, I think about the famous... they never do that. It's it, so ridiculous. When I look back through film history, and I think about all of the, the incredible, timeless films that have been made over the decades, over the... Over, over a century now, I wonder how many of them had directors who came out and said, no, 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 guys, it's supposed to look like shit. Exactly. It's, can you think about that thought process being used for any of the stories that you truly love? It's disgusting. It's, it's horseshit. We know it's horseshit. And it's frustrating that there's people out there that actually accept that. And like like the, the Ryan Johnson fans, these people that their relationship with stories fascinates me because i don't know for me everything i watch i watch it hoping it's good enough to rewatch and i've been doing that since i was like a child that's that's pretty much like where my eye for analysis comes from just watching movies my entire life and the idea that you can just take these things in and not have any understanding of it that's part of the reason i like rewatching it because you really see what they're trying to achieve what works what didn't work the, the bad written ones are going to fall apart and I don't know, I just people, it's like fast food storytelling. They just take it in, they don't absorb anything, and then they move on. But they're still, they're still willing to defend it. It's crazy. I can believe, a, I can believe McDonald's food is made by an AI. <laughs> it's raw, but <laughs> like by an algorithm generated fast food, mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, the fries are made with love. I don't know what they put in those fries, but those are the Give ones Give me a I'm vague recollection of meat. <laughs> 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 That's a good description, yeah. Ugh. Every time I yeah. try to put people's links in the description, they get converted back into gobbledygook. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, I had to. I know when I, I've been doing my like dog bites links and stuff. I have to double check because you can't like copy and paste them from old links or from old descriptions. It it's doesn't stupid like uh oh, pain. It's a pain in the butt. It's like recon, it did it with metal all the time, which you know, I guess that's fine, but really it's rude because it's not what I asked for. Yet. Ugh. I like how we've already like, shredded the intro. We haven't even started our intro. Have you oh, tried? Oh, I still got that Marvel idea. <laughs> what if you pretended that it was something you liked? I don't see. I don't think that works. That's my that's my honest opinion about that. I know that if we just wish it to be better, then who said that win. again? Cinema wins. Cinema wins. I I don't yeah. even. Know. What's what's the point of even creating something <laughs> if you're just gonna tell the audience to just like it anyway? Like it. What's the point of the craft itself? Or it's that's the, the attitude that becomes meaningless. Have. It's the Pascal's wager of film criticism. You just, if you <laughs> really, really try hard enough, you can get yourself to believe it, maybe, eventually. Mm, I don't know why they, they curse their work with that type of shit, that whole thought process. I, I was going to ask before. Yeah. I was going to ask before we went live, and he was saying this was um, probably a good way to start it up. Um, everyone's history with Marvel, because I know everyone's got probably got like a different route. I don't know if you started from like Iron Man uh, or the MCU specifically, more likely. Um, you, know you started what? from Iron Man and went straight through. Or? That's a very good thing to bring up, but I've got an even better one. Uh, welcome yeah. to the show, Jedi Brooks. <laughs> oh even... yes, <laughs> let's probably do that. You know, by uh, oh yes. The thing helps. is, while we've been talking, I've been trying to solve. Like, I got the wrong number on the thumbnail. The people's links aren't working. I'm just like la la la. I didn't even have out. my profile Yay. pick up. <laughs> well, luckily, yeah, I got that. Uh, I, leaving and joining yeah. fixes that. So, all right, thumbnail yeah, corrected as of soon. Ugh! Don't gobble the fucking things, please, YouTube. It did it twice to me already, but now it didn't the third time, so I'm just, I'm just hoping. Anyway, yeah, um, I met you on uh, good old Drinker's Open Bar. We had some chats about yes. uh, a couple things, including Secret Invasion. Uh, was it only one episode was out by then, or was it two? I think it was one episode was out, and but we ended up chatting about a bunch of different things. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. it's funny. I just find it really funny that we talked about Amelia Clark saying, "Man, we just hope we wish the best for her. She should be in rom <laughs> rom coms." Blah 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 blah. And then flash forward to to this. To this oh, now. absolutely! It's it's actually sad at this point, and I don't know what else to but, say. Just for the other guys, because I mentioned this to you. That's when we met. But I've been here since the not so not so great debate. I was live oh, in, for the just right. Oh. I was live for the just right. Um, debate was there the entire time. <laughs> Dishonored Wolf's video was the first movie review I ever watched, and that's pretty much what started this whole journey for me. Led me to Mahler, uh, led me to EFAP. The entire thing was just like a crazy roller coaster that I never thought was going to happen. 
But yeah, I've been here pretty much the entire time. So I've been here since EFAP, since before you even named it EFAP. So been, most of the major uh, ones you could think of. Jumping into all kinds of topics. I saw your latest one <laughs> is a uh, scene comparison again with good old. Well, I mean, as well, yeah. let you explain it. <laughs> well, yeah, the um, scene comparisons definitely um, seem like a. Those are, those are the ones that I've gotten the best feedback on, but the ones I've definitely the most passionate about is the, the slightly more long form stuff, like the critiques, like Jurassic World Dominion. That movie is just an abomination. That's one of the ones that I would describe that's almost like as bad as TLJ in terms of the tone and the disrespect. And TLJ was pretty much my origin story when it comes to this. So pretty much trying to stick to the things that I'm passionate about while still trying to like not completely ignore the algorithm. But when it comes to things like Alien Covenant, that movie, I love Alien. I love Aliens. I love the entire concept of um, space exploration. And Alien Covenant is just... Uh, that movie is just, just ridiculous. So that's something that I had to get out at some point. It's even worse um, but, than Prometheus, if that was even Yeah. Amazing. Prometheus is one of the most frustrating movies because like, they, they introduced some things that could have been interesting and then they just said, fuck it, we're doing something else in Covenant. Didn't yeah. answer any questions. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but I would have to say... The Rings of Power would probably be, be the starting point because it took me like three years just to get to like 300 subs and things started to blow up around the Rings of Power time. And um, yeah, everything everything really came together after that. So trying to see what's the best path forward for me. And but Joel. no, it was great to actually find and meet you guys. Yeah, no, it's good to meet you too, dude. And uh, it's just, mm -hmm. it's just I always warn people. I'm like, you know what's going to happen here, right? This uh, what, Jay up? Longbone has come and done this with us several times, so she's ready. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but, going here? through just hours and hours of talking about what actually happens in this show as opposed to simply saying it's bad that's what we do uh, oh no come on now no, i think like... i've been here for majority <laughs> of the breakdown so this isn't anything new like i, I would have been in the chat anyway so I, i'm shocked this show's as bad as bad as it is and i'm ready to fuck it up for sure well fun ahead but yeah um as you pointed out <laughs> probably a good place to start in terms of uh this, this this does feel like something's happening here. I saw a Jay tweet now that's like gone to the point where there's just not even an understanding of what shows are even out for the MCU. What is even going on? What what even like in the uh, the like I assume chat knows. Don't know if everyone here knows, but the lowest rated episode of any MCU show is the finale for this show, and uh, the MCU subreddit has basically revolted. They've been talking a lot about how much they hate this, which is rare. They like everything that comes out for the MCU. They will eat up. Oh boy, they will eat that slop up. I saw a, there was a post about it on the subreddit being like, hey, look, and it's like, why would this be something to celebrate? And then it's like, because they're finally, finally seeing. They can see. Let them, uh, I don't know, enjoy it for yeah. at least a moment. That last episode, um, I know a lot of people are saying it's like the worst thing ever. There's plenty of the worst thing ever throughout this show, but yes, I'm looking yeah. forward to us discussing. <laughs> That sixth one, holy fuck. They're outdoing themselves. That had it all isolated in one. Like, there were sprinkles of it throughout the season, but episode six was like, yeah. Okay, that's just everything you could possibly think of in terms of damage. Uh, it's pretty rough. Yeah, uh, I don't know, because it, it's been a while since so we would have talked about it, but I was, I always liked superhero stuff. I was like, I was watching, you know, like uh, X-Men when it came out, as opposed to mm -hmm. get into it later or something. Same for Daredevil, the Ben Affleck one. I don't even know how many people have seen that movie anymore. Yeah, Ghost Rider, the one with Electra. Colin Farrell. Colin oh, Farrell yeah. is Bullseye. <laughs> Classic. Um, so, but when the time the MCU rolled around and Iron Man came out, it, it all it was was just like, holy fuck, feels uh, super cool. And then it was like, we're gonna make more of them in the same universe. Okay, sure. And then um, I actually, I, I think I remember mentioning this at some point, but I. Uh, I did not like Age of Ultron that much, and I didn't like Winter Soldier that much, and I didn't like Iron Man 3 that much, and I didn't like Thor 2. So I was like, hmm, <laughs> like, this, isn't, this isn't working out for me. Uh, but then Guardians, I felt like pulled it back. Because obviously I've skipped over the part where it was really fun with Avengers and everything. And then mm. Civil War made me like super hype, and mm. Infinity War was super fun, and then I think that was probably the highest of all of it for everybody, pretty much, right? Like at least for the the global culture. Endgame, Infinity War. I've said before, but I'll say it again: if they could release every project in 2019, they would have. Yeah, <laughs> everything. You could, no matter, like all of these would have made like a billion dollars if it was slammed in between there. That would be the most interesting test, right? Imagine releasing Secret Invasion in that time slot 
actual era slot and see what the difference would be. Because of course, Thor: Love and Thunder would have made a billion. It would have made a billion. 100%. Yeah, I mean, if Captain Marvel can make a billion. Well, and the and fun that, thing that, now is, if if Th Love and Thunder came out today, do we think it would even go past four hundred million? No, probably not. Especially after everything that's happened, it's just it's too tainted. When the casuals are waking up to it, that's when the numbers are really going to drop. Oh yeah, and someone mentioned in chat. It's worth mentioning. Someone fucking there's, there's this thing going around that Secret Invasion is the Andor of Marvel. Like, what the fuck? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know about what, that. what do you mean? The only similarity know. is that people didn't watch Andor and see Red Invasion because they were burnt out. That's the only similarity they had. I think it was the it was it was more serious. I think that was it. It's like this is more this is like grounded. It's a giant alien I, flying through space. I would say that that is basically <laughs> all that there was to it. Yeah. I gave it points for being grounded and tonally refreshing after all the multi all the after all the it's, multiverse bullshit. I it's not tonally that refreshing. That's the thing. Like it, uh, no, no, it that's what I'm saying. I was, I was it's totally first, depressing. The first two episodes, I was giving it credit for that. For like at least I'm like at least I can keep track of what's going on. But then it started to get into nonsense really quickly. I mean, having like because it starts with like two guys chasing each other in like dark alleyways and rooftops and stuff, mm -hmm. and the spies like okay, this is compare that to Doctor Strange's opening. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of where I was. Hey, man, at. Like, two I people running, the same on. thing. Yes, the dark alleys <laughs> of the multiverse. Um, <laughs> no testicle creatures. I don't. Uh, so, uh, Gary could be here at any moment. I actually, I don't know. We'll see. And uh, same for Disparu. So if you get surprise attacks from either of them, don't worry. That was planned. Uh, well, if we do, oh sorry, if we do all answer that question, I'd love to hear Gary's too. Oh yeah, like of course. His history um, with Marvel. I was going to say I went up to essentially Endgame, and it's because the rest of it then is all on record for the people who watch this channel. We've been covering yeah. a lot of them if they've come out a lot more than a lot of people will, and yet we still haven't covered all of it. We didn't do Hawkeye, Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. We re we didn't right. really do Eternals. We kind of did. Um, I'm gonna watch that. We sort of half did Shang Chi as well. I mean, we can, it was a couple of hours on that, right? I think. I remember now. Um, but we definitely did Love and Thunder, Wakanda Forever, Multiverse of Madness, Quantum Mania. Yeah, the big hitters. Oh, what a disaster it's been! And then all the TV shows in between. And this one, um, this genuinely feels like one of probably several projects they're going to do where they're just they're just mopping up a few more assassinations. They're like we haven't ruined yeah. everything yet. Give us a sec. We've almost got it. And it's like that one's not ruined. Get it? And it's like okay, there you go. Um, it seems like that's all this show achieved. Yeah. It's, that's it like, it's kind point? of incredible like some of it i yeah. um i think i said to drinker i was just like y y y how could i possibly be surprised still and it's like still am i don't know mm. <laughs> just like still am but yes uh i guess that would be me so anyone mm. else go next who's next uh in terms your of history, history the MCU. your history with your history with the mcu or your history with marvel in general like even prior Hero to the MCU. stuff Hero, superhero genre. Oh, well, I mean, it's probably the pretty normal one, right? Like, watching superhero movies every now and then that were coming out during, like, the 2000s, X-Men. Yeah, I guess some of the other ones, too, like Daredevil and uh, Fantastic Four. And then it was it was mainly because I think it was for a lot of people, it's Avengers was the where it started to synthesize, obviously, those earlier MCU projects. And it's like, oh, wow, this is, like, a really cool idea. And then... Yeah, Phase 2 wasn't so good, <laughs> but then it sort of uh, picked up again with Phase 3, which was cool. And then, obviously, I don't think that it was after Endgame that things got bad. I think it was before Endgame that things got bad, and it's yeah. been downhill since then. So, <laughs> that's, that's about okay. it. Endgame is when things got irreversible, but it was getting bad before that. Well, it's just because yeah. I think that I think that a lot of people look at the last couple of years with Phase Four and Five, and it's like, oh man, after Endgame, everything went downhill. But the reality is, the Endgame really set them up for uh, difficulty going forward. Yeah. Uh, everything to do with like the snap and the ramifications mm -hmm. from that time travel as a plot element that's available, and then even just like starting to sow the seeds for the multiverse. Really, it was like Endgame uh, set them up for uh, this era. But even then. It's uh, it's been shocking, kind of. <laughs> like, yeah. It's uh, it's getting a little bit tiresome to just be like, yeah, it's absolutely terrible. Like, it's good, it's absolutely awful. Like, and it's it's not even that it's just a bad film or a bad TV show. It's like disastrous, cataclysmic. That's getting boring to say, but it <laughs> just keeps happening to be the case. 
the missed opportunities with actually taking advantage of the blip, all the stories you could have told, all all mm. the, the the blip stories, all all the things that could have changed within the world. Like I, I've heard you guys mention this before. I agree. You didn't even need big name actors or characters. You could have just had regular people stories of who people different people who were affected by the blip. You could have got really creative with it. It would have been low budget, and it probably would have like been way better than all this crap. And it we could get continuity through that, but if, I feel like they've just given up completely. They, they don't even they don't done. even remember what happened nobody, to Captain Marvel. Well, part of the problem is nobody talks to each other. These people are Nothing. working on their yeah. projects basically in a vacuum, pretty devoid of information, and seemingly not, and seemingly in some cases, not even that interested or willing to find out what's going on elsewhere. Um, like some of these projects don't even remember their own history, let alone like the broader history of the universe that they're in. They don't even re- well. This is spoilers for for that we're going to talk about this. I'm sure, but. They, I'm pretty sure they contradict the scroll, the rules for the scrolls that they establish in Captain Marvel. They completely contradict this, that in this show. Like, it's just, it's a complete 180. I don't know how they messed it up that bad. I'm um, pretty sure we'll get into that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll likely go chronological and spoiler free according to chronological breakdown, but at the same yeah. time, welcome to Jump Ahead. There are some things that we really should save for when it's revealed. Mm-hmm. You guys are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. There's like... There's like three or four or five major topics and then some other just terrible stuff. Because yeah, we're not just going to call it bad and, and be like, it's it's the worst thing ever. It's like, no, we're going to go through it in detail, explain any last thing I found and others found that we liked and didn't like. And then uh, compare it with other things, go through it in the details. But uh, we still only managed to do, I think it was me and Fringy now, so I guess whoever wants to go next. Talking about... And then? I don't know why they like superhero stuff. Well, maybe don't anymore. Um, I can't really remember where it started for me with superheroes. I think before, um, before EFAP really became a thing, before uh, you know, TLJ and my my awakening, so to speak, and just sort of my mindset changing on this sort of thing, I wasn't um, I wasn't really into them. I wasn't really against them. Superhero stuff was just sort of it was out there. It was a thing. It was like its own little genre slash topic of fiction. And um, I didn't feel very strongly about it one way or the other. Um, so, yeah, not, not really an exciting answer, but I got into it uh, more and more uh, because of EFAP, I think. And uh, then I started to become more and more invested in it as a result. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been you know, horrifically we, uh, negative for a long time now. We got you in just quick enough to see everything fall apart. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think the timeline is something, about, something like that. Hmm. Well, for me, timeline. for me, it goes way, way longer back, like childhood, the Spider-Man cartoons, um, X-Men cartoon, loved all those. And for me, I always just thought it was a misunderstood genre where a lot of people just thought it was nonsense. To me, it was a mix of a character study with the fantasy sci-fi element element. And like you put those two things together and there's just pretty much any story you can tell. So I always was interested in superheroes, um, watched the first Spider-Man come out in theaters x-men all the like the 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 first hulk the first daredevil the ben affleck one all those other ones they're all right i love the x-men movies but it was the first iron man where i'm like okay we we kind of we no bat sorry batman begins and the first iron man i think i think that movie doesn't get enough credit just making me i i want the genre to be taken seriously and i felt like those movies took it seriously to where non-superhero fans could appreciate it and I watched Avengers in theater. I thought that was fantastic. And then I thought it was all downhill from there. I ignored the rest of the MCU. I remember seeing the poster for Civil War thinking, wow, this is what they've come to. We got Iron Man and fucking and um, Captain America fighting each other. Ha ha ha. This must be fucking nonsense. I was completely wrong. I actually ended up um, from the hype of Black Panther. I'm like, let me go see if this is actually like legit. I went to go see and like check out, um, like pretty much get up to date on the MCU. And Civil War just blew me away. I couldn't believe how seriously they took it. And I was hoping, like, man, are they all like this? Let me go check. Oh, they weren't. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't. I was hoping they all were going to be that quality. And I, I watched Age of Ultron. I watched some of the, some, all the, the middle MCU movies. I wasn't super impressed by, by most of them. But the ones that really stood out to me, first Iron Man, Civil War, and Infinity War. Thanos just blew me away. So I think it's just a mixed bag. I, I think there's certain movies in it that are so good that it elevates the entire um, franchise. But overall, not all of them are that fantastic. Like, there, there, there's, there's, there's five, like, truly good MCU movies, in my opinion. But I love the genre, pretty much. That's well, yeah, and they, uh, <laughs> you know, even the ones that, let's say, like, you know, like, Thor 1. I don't hate it or anything. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I lost and, parts of it. But... 
great or anything. I would way prefer we get that than whatever this was. Of course. Like, they did what they were supposed to do. They introduced the characters. Look, they didn't destroy anything. It's uh, kind of fascinating because when you go back and rewatch the films in phase one, a lot of the time it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, like even, even the ones that aren't as good are usually hitting the same pretty standard story beats, you know, in terms of like characters uh, going on their little journeys and their little arc. Like Thor, right, is a good example. It's him learning to be less arrogant, more humble, uh, mm -hmm. actually embody the traits of a hero. And it's pretty generic and pretty straightforward, but compared to where we're at now, like something that's even marginally coherent is uh, <laughs> kind of refreshing. <laughs> they, had a, a, they actually had a vision for those stories back then. Even if they weren't great movies, there was a goal that they wanted to achieve with the characters. There was a, there was a mm. plan. Now it's just it's nonsense. Like for, Th Thor Love and Thunder, it's really hard to get me to just turn a movie off and not finish it. I turned that shit off. I don't even know how it ended. I, I Christian Bale's you. one of my mm. yeah, it's one of my favorite act. He's one of my favorite actors. I really respect Hemsworth after that Infinity War scene with Rocket, and like I feel like his character has been just pissed away since then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, Everything uh, about the movie yeah. is frustrating. I, I it, it's hard if you were to compile a list of the most wa like the most wasted MCU characters and like actually pick a criteria to judge it by. I don't even know who would come out at the top. It, there's so many different ways to look at the the, the damage. But Thor has to be near the top because of the potential and the, the amount of time he's been in the, in the franchise. It sucks. It feels nuts, too, because it's like, what's the next thing? It's like, the Marvels. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> Come on. That looks so crap. It looks so crap. <laughs> like, we were all ready to, to tease that movie, but, like, just, vi like, I thought they'd come up with something better than that. Like, I, I, they, they really... This is one of their last opportunities to do something with this character, and they just kind of... This looks like garbage. Well, uh, that leaves Jay Longbone. You know what? Say whatever you want to, because I know that you love this show, and you checked it out instantly, <laughs> and then I was like... You were like, you better bring me on to talk about it, and I was like, okay, okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Uh, well, you know, I've always been into the superhero shit, like, since Batman 89, and that kind of blew me away as a small yeah. child and then the second one came out and that was even better my opinion uh Great. and it was like mostly it was like the darker superhero shit came back yep. came out back in the day you know and mostly just dc and then of course i saw sam raimi's dark man and that was i thought that was awesome uh then, you know the whole early 2000s superhero genre was kind of like a fever dream. It's like, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> <laughs> like, cause I, I approach, uh, like back in the day, I approached those films. Like it's ba they're basically like action movies, but like, it's more, her, her more heroic than normal. Like, like if you put Arnold in a fucking rubber suit, that's how I, that's how I saw him. Uh, but then it like that kind of changed as soon as you know the MCU came along. It became a little bit more than that. Like we're, we're talking about multiverses and sci-fi shit and all that. And Iron Man, because I was already a fan of like Robert Downey Jr. when Iron Man came out, so I was already going to see it. And then, like that was oh, like, oh he, man, they brought this motherfucker back from the dead. This movie's <laughs> awesome. Ah! Yeah, and that then was a banger. Yeah, yeah, and then they well, yeah, of course, universe followed that, and the second Iron Man wasn't really that that great, but I saw that. I was excited to see that too because Mickey. See, I'm about actors, really. <laughs> yeah. Because they said Mickey Rourke was going to be in Iron Man too. I was like, oh shit, oh, he's going to kill it. He's going to no. kill it, and then he didn't because they didn't <laughs> give him anything to work with. No, nope. they give him shit. Give him. They gave him a bird. They gave him a yeah, they gave him bird. a fucking. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't his bird, dude. Oh, I, I don't know. even remember the context of whose bird it was. I remember him <laughs> with a shitty haircut and a bird. And yeah, they gave <laughs> him these funny. fucking multicolored dreads, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> that film was, yeah, it's a weird one. I am into. Yeah, yeah. Who, who was and, the, and... the, the guy with the glasses? Like, he wasn't the villain, but he was like the sidekick to the villain. Oh, something. Hammer. You know that that, Justin yeah, Hammer. Whoever he was, there was a, I think that is, but he... I remember him being good, like him being the best part of that movie, and it kind of sucks that everything else is shit. And his That's because Sam Rockwell's awesome. He's always oh, good. Man. All mm -hmm. the time. And it's a, it's a insane that they hadn't brought him back, as, or kept him in, but that was always a problem with the MCU. That, they never knew what they had a lot of the time. He's, he's one of the people I think of who's like, best performance in a shit movie. Like, he just, he just carried that for the roles he was in, in the scenes he was in. Yeah. Um, he, he probably just wouldn't be caught dead in this shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
a lot of actors yeah. feel that way. You know what? I think there's definitely at least two actors that felt that way, judging from Secret Invasion. We will talk about the two of them as we get there. Um, Ooh, I didn't hear that. Nice. Uh, so, well, no, I don't mean like any quotes. I just mean judging from what happens to them in this show. That's all. Mm. Um, but yeah, with that, I suppose we can get on with it. Now, of course, before going into Secret Invasion, you have the fun homework of making sure you see Captain Marvel. This is like a direct sequel to that. Fun homework is, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's, fun. That. it's so fun, funny yeah. to be like, why would, why would you even, it's like, well, it's the scroll storyline. This is going to be great. Ooh. And I guess it hasn't even ended with this one. It'll keep going in somewhere else at some point or something. There's a, there's a, arguably a cliffhanger on this uh, series in relation to scrolls and some other stuff. But yeah, you need to know about Talos. But by the way, this is getting confusing. Some characters call him Talos, some call him Talos. So it's uh, it's it's obviously Talos, but they insist that the name is Talos, which is confusing. I don't know why they decided that Talos would be the pronunciation of it. It is <laughs> Steve Jackson it is confusing. Talos. You're saying it is it Talos. Talos. I got confused because I was like, I could have sworn it was Talos, but okay. Oh God. Talo yeah, because well, because like Skyrim and stuff like that, you think that it's Talos, right? Like it, like, and yeah, plus it's like Talon, it everything like that. You look at that, and you're like, oh yeah, that's Talos. Yeah, like because that's <laughs> what my brain, because of all the other things in media where you know that, you know. Blah, blah, blah. But no, it's Talos, and it's like, oh, this sounds worse, and it's confusing. Um. So yeah, he he and his uh his scrolls, you know, we're catching up with them. What did they do after the events of Captain Marvel? Because we haven't seen them in all of the MCU at all, other than that, except like cameos. Obviously, uh, Far From Home, where they like joyfully trying to do Fury's job, which was always like, don't know what the context for that is, hopefully that'll make sense in future. It didn't. And then, that's about it, I think? I don't even, I'm trying to think of where else they popped up. Because it's Ben Mendelsohn. He's pretty good. You're gonna want to use ben that. Ben Mendelsohn. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, he's, he's in the bag with the rest of them, like Michael Douglas, Bill Murray, um, there's a laundry list. It's just gonna, I'm gonna blank now because it's like been so long. But oh, Ben Kingsley, that's an obvious another one. Obviously, Michael Rock, we just went over. It's, it's, it's wrong. My, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, there's all these mm, actors. I don't that... even remember his ass. Nobody remembers any of these fucking <laughs> roles. I don't remember him. I don't, I didn't remember him. But of course, this series is predicated on the scary idea that what if. The person next to you, you you couldn't trust that they were who they say they are. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that's just, I mean, it's just like the internet, but, um... I mean, you know, it's it's not new, um, and it's, this, this, we actually ended up watching a couple of movies that, you know, play with the idea. Good old body snatcher type situation. Yeah, uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a coincidence, but we did go on a body snatcher-esque arc we watched. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Thing, The Invasion, uh, The Faculty... Yeah, um, so many stories that do it better. We've got mm -hmm. we we set to watch another Body Snatchers movie, but we've been busy with other things. But yes, uh, there are so many better attempts at it than this show, and this show uh, only tickles at trying to get some payoffs that you'd be like, "Why haven't you done this?" And then they kind of half do one, and you're like, "That was almost something." So it doesn't make sense because of this, that, and the other. You know? Tickling. Tickling is being generous. Yeah. Like, I, I can't, like, they barely, I think there's, like, one or two scenes where someone even asks if, like, or even tries to confirm whether or not this person's a scroll. And there it's in a situation button. where they already know. Like, it's it's so ridiculous. It's, yeah, I, I can't even, what a waste. It's one of the biggest wasted opportunities, not using well, like, the concept properly. Every conversation in the show should begin with, are you a scroll? The tension should have been in every single conversation, just like the thing, and they just, Ignored it. <laughs> yeah. Forgot it was a part of the show. show. Oh, there's yeah. so many instances, and we'll have to point them out where all that gets fucked up. It, it literally opens with one, like the show. Um, exposition Man. Exposition Man. He's got a good voice, though. Yeah, is that? He does. He's <laughs> terrible. He's got, that that sweaty is bastard. So bad. No, he's like, got you, a you very know, cool voice. I like his voice. You know the meme? Which I can't even know what show it's from, but you know the meme with the guy and the, put, with all the shit on the wall. The conspiracy yeah, yeah, he's that big. Uh, yeah, Pepe Silver. Silver. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, why Silver. would you even? The, the, even the way they framed it, like people were just gonna laugh at this. How I couldn't take it seriously for a second. This guy was a joke. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> he, um, <laughs> it's funny too because it's just like person we've never heard of explaining a whole bunch of very nuts and bolts story premise to us. It's like, oh god. 
Like we're already off to the, but that could be present in like an okay story. So you know, you think maybe there's some hope there. There won't be. Um, yeah, I think it isn't it. It opens with a narration. It's like imagine a world where information can't be trusted, where society starts to fray, where all we can turn to are the people we care about. But what if the ones closest to us is someone else? Oh, it's like the MCU. Pretty much, yeah. I can't trust anything. And uh, so, yeah, this guy's all upset because there's a bunch of terrorist attacks happening and he believes they're all orchestrated by Skrulls. Because what they'll... His theory is the Skrulls attack places and then blame it on other people to try and sow, like, global, uh, I guess, tensions to try and start up a world war. I'm not sure if he had a theory for exactly why that's happening. I think he says, like, a chain reaction to consume the globe. Which, um... I don't know how he found out all of this. The show doesn't. It just tells us he did. And it's like, all right, okie dokie then. And the funny thing is, he's explaining all these wild theories and crazy things. And uh, Ross, Everett Ross, is just sitting there being like, mm, I don't know, this doesn't sound that believable. And I was just like, how would someone this paranoid not have a check for scroll thing first? You'd be like, first you know, you got to prove you're not thing, a scroll. First thing but, on my notes is, how is Exposition Man this paranoid, yet he just starts <laughs> dumping all this out to someone without even checking if he's a scroll? Well, there's like, no yeah, possible insane. test that they could do. No it, possible In order to do a scroll, scroll test, it, it's just really long and complex. You need special technology for it. it it's, a real, it's a really in-depth sort of process. You can't just, you can't just check, you know? So. Yeah, I think, he, I think he, Paranoid Guy hands him his, all his fucking information or something, puts it in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> And then realizes, oh wait, I can't trust you. And then tries like, to wait kill him. a minute. <laughs> just nods out. You see his face. He's like, wait. <laughs> then he goes to try and kill him. Like, what the fuck is my watching? Like, it, yeah. It this is really shit light where he's like, I have the mother load of evidence. This will prove absolutely everything. We're all here, right here. I don't even know who I can trust anymore, except for you. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Whatever you say. And uh, you might have thought, like, oh, oh, what's the thing that tips him off, then? Like, is there a, something he says or uh, something he does? And it's like, no, he just thinks about it. And then it's like, you're a Skrull! And they start fighting. On him. Yeah, you I would think there'd be some catalyst or something, but he just literally realizes, oh, fuck, I'm a dumbass. Tackle this fucker. Like, that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, and then they start no sense. fighting. And it's like, this is so <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess you could say he's Skrull Ross now. Uh... Uh, or, or I guess we're not supposed to know that yet, but I don't mind. We'll we'll probably do a little bit of the jumping ahead to make scenes make a little bit more sense. But I guess at this point you're supposed to be with Ross and thinking, what in the hell's going on? This is a crazy, crazy day. Because he ends up shooting this uh, this guy, press card, that steals his, his stuff or takes it, whatever. And uh, he's going to meet up with Maria Hill. Remember her? We like we like Maria Hill. When was the, that's, that's like trivia. When was the last time we saw Maria Hill? Like um... far from home. Was it Far From Home? I actually don't know. I have no idea. Winter no idea. Did she know when she got snapped? I think she got snapped with Fury. I think that might be the last time we actually saw her. My God. Well, so that, do we not Into see her in Endgame at all? No, we. Why would yeah, she be like there? at the very end? <laughs> was she Why at the she, woman well, scene? Was, though? Yeah, she was at the woman scene. With she, her, her <laughs> she was in the woman scene. Oh shit! I love how I can just say the woman scene, and you know the exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's it. Well, because oh, Far From Home was after Endgame, right? She was in that. Or at least the actress was yeah, in there. Yeah, she was in that. Because she, oh, she was a scroll, though. Like, like, but like, a, in a, in a way that was supposed to be, as far as I remember. Which means that she was on Saber. I, I don't even know what, what the fuck. It's too hard to keep track of. But yes, Maria Hill is back. Get excited. Um, I was gonna ask before you continue. I was gonna ask before you continue. Um, maybe something we can do going forward. Did anyone think that this was Ross? Like, I called. No, I figured he was a scroll straight away. Yeah, I knew that. Well, it's the beginning of the, of the show. I was expecting, Ross, oh, we got to have our reveal, you know? Yeah, because it's the premise of the show, so they'd want to open with being like, you can't trust anything. Look, that's not even the guy you thought it was. But I feel like they kind cool. of shoot themselves in the foot a little bit because yeah. you kind of expect it. But you also have the Prescott guy. Like, I mean, he had valid concerns that he believes he's a scroll. So you're just like, well, but is he? And then I think they try and leave it up in the air somewhat because Ross starts getting chased by mysterious man and it's like oh my god who's the bad guys what's happening and like there's such an awkward chase i don't know if it's because um <laughs> maybe they're like a, a little older now uh certainly martin freeman's not like fucking in his 20s or anything how old is he now is he 50s he's maybe 
I don't I know. Remember, but they run into this building, and it's so obvious that they're, like, right next to each other, and they could totally catch up. <laughs> it's so, like, oh, guys, you couldn't get stun doubles that were faster. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Man, right. Just space them, space them together. Yeah. Further, you know. I'm looking. I'm looking Add at the clip distance. right now. He could, he, he could, he could reach out and grab him. He could just <laughs> grab him. Just well, run <laughs> fast, <laughs> you lanky fuck. They both like, do a bit of a. Where's the speed? And you got that guy. This they do a bit of a waddle, like when they get close. He's like, ah, oh, damn it, I can't get you. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> oh bad. Not well, if he accidentally tripped, Kobe, he would have fallen forward and caught him. Yeah. Legit, he's so close. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose, as people point out, it's like, yeah, but these are the people behind the, the chase scenes in uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? So, what do you expect? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> they, they suck at chases of any kind, yeah, pretty much. Little bit. And so, yeah, they keep chasing, and I mean, it's worth saying now that um, this the guy who's chasing Skrull Ross is Talos, and he's got a gun, I believe. Or he should have a gun anyway. I can't remember if he actually is shown to have a gun, but both, as far as I'm aware, Ross has a gun, and he knows this guy chasing him is bad news, and he never shoots him. When if he did, it would have fucked up the whole show, killing Talos. But uh, he just doesn't. It's, it's a classic. He's on the run. It's just like, we've seen him use a gun. Doesn't want to use it to defend himself, even though he's, uh, it'll be easy to slip back in, but yeah, it's always the same thing. Anyway... He does a jump that's a little bit ill-advised, and I think we're supposed to be shocked because it's like, is he gonna make it? Boom! No, dead. That was goofy. Not was goofy. Goofy. That, that, that jump absolutely sucked. Like he didn't even put any effort into it. He just <laughs> fell. Like he literally ran and said, "Ah!" and just flailed. Like there was no momentum. He didn't leap. There was no upward traje trajectory. He just completely fucked that up. Such a gooba. And... Such a crap joke. Yeah, I was like, is this the comedy of the show? Or are we <laughs> supposed to be horrified? I don't know. This guy's dead. Like, completely. Oh. He just hit the floor. Well, no, <laughs> we will be horrified. You'll notice straight away, like, ew, what are those effects on him? It's like, that, my friends, is some CG wounds, because... Just... Oh yeah, the CG wounds at the end. That was that. It was so obvious. <laughs> why? Why can't you just put some red shit on his face? Well, you see rags. They you were know? like, well, because he's gonna turn into a scroll in a minute, so we gotta have it all be CG. So why give a shit? Exactly. But the funny thing is, like, it's not that that same shot. If it were the same shot, I'd maybe give him a bit more breathing room. But even then, I'd be like, why does it look maybe. so shit? And you can still do it when you have physical wounds on. You're still turning this actor into a different yeah. actor. You know what I mean? You're still CGing over it. It doesn't matter if he's got the red flume on his face or not. So yeah, it just uh, it's so distracting. But um, yeah, Ross is a an evil scroll, and he was trying to subvert the Agent Prescott man from exposing the fact that scrolls are up to no darn good. But what True. no darn good are they up to? That's what the series is going to be about. And so Maria mm. teams up with uh, Talos here, and so kicks off our plotline, and so kicks off the intro. Which, uh, <laughs> we were talking Cloud about. Green dump. Yeah, um... Clouds. I don't know. We, we kind of talked about it earlier. It's, it's the shit you've seen that everyone's been talking about online, where you have an AI prompt approximate some shit, and they're using the flaws of that process to try and sort of, you know, support the idea of the show, which is that scrolls approximate human beings. And uh, they're quite right. And like some of the imagery could be argued as like, oh, this seems like I could, I could draw something out of this, but most of it just, it's just, I don't know, it was off putting to me, Un unappealing, and kind of just like, eh. I don't mind the song, the theme song. Yeah, it's fine. Remember. It's yeah, a little okay. fine. It's a little, it's a little <laughs> boring, <laughs> but not right. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't memorable. It was okay. I, I watched four episodes yesterday, and I couldn't even like hum it in my head right now. It, it's it, I, I, maybe I was just too distracted. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Yeah, no. Oh yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's that's that they funny. they use it a lot, and that's going to be another that'll come up as criticism. Don't you worry. <laughs> I keep my mind wants to go to the Incredibles. Yeah, music instead, which is hmm. far older and yet somehow far more memorable. I should hope so. But yeah, imagery like this, you're just like, this just looks unfinished, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but that's okay. It's supposed to look unfinished. 
it, this looks like a concept someone was showing someone like a rough draft or something and they just said fuck it just put it in it just doesn't yeah, I, seem there's something missing to make it pop i don't know it doesn't work for me yeah i think the logic behind it was like look how it morphs like like scrolls morph like ooh, transformation wow but no it's just look looks that, like garbage at last for like eight seconds, but then you have like two more minutes of the trailer to get through. Like, just, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, that's cool for a split second. That's it. It would be like, it, you know, it's not a piece of shit that I shat on the floor. It's, it represents like a spaceship that's crashed down and splattered onto oh, the it, ground. It represents a piece of shit that I shat on the floor. <laughs> You're just like, but it's still shit though. <laughs> no, oh. it represents shit. You can frame it any way you want. It's shit. <laughs> like, that's just that's pretty much where we're at. Yeah, I know. And, uh, this just th th this is what pissed off the internet uh, beyond the events of the episode, which there's plenty of shit that happens in the episode that don't make no sense either. But mm -hmm. yeah, we get through it. It's a fucking long intro, it really is. Cause I'm scanning through now, and it's like there you go, finally. Um, yeah, cause we're already a f like a fifth into the full first episode now. <laughs> it's like, does it feel oh, like that? Goodness. No. <laughs> oh, Thank wow. God. Um, Fury arrives on Earth from Saber. Uh, we don't know What's it. What's Saber, Mahler? Uh, fucking, this is kind of funny, right? Because we don't even, they don't really know. They keep referring to it as a station. It's like, I guess it's, like, who does Saber work for as an organization? It's like, American government, I think? No idea. Uh, they, uh, we really haven't been told. Um, the implication in this show is that uh, the president has control of a Saber and the Fury leads it, so. That's all we got. And you, he's been up there for a while, which, by the way, has been a bit of a question in the other sort of stories being told in Phase 4 and arguably 5. Where the fuck you been, buddy? And uh, I guess now we know he's back. And it's like, alright, gonna have to answer some questions. They do give you answers. <laughs> I suppose. Kinda. <laughs> oh, man. Answers are provided. Whether yeah. or not they are substantive answers... Or satisfying ones. I don't know. There he is. Look at him. There's a chair. A couple chairs. He meets oh, wow, up. Look at that. Good old Talos. And it was like immediately distracting. He has a little alien plant in a plant pot. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Fury's like, oh, is that from home? And then Talos is like, yeah, it's a scroll sky plant. It's adapting to your planet already. I was like, what? Oh, what does that oh. mean, though? <laughs> it's a, it's just you... funny. A writer clearly treats it as like this fun, special, nice, cute thing, and it's just like, yo, oh, you're not going to destroy the ecology of this area, are you? <laughs> exactly. Well, if you change the inflection and have him say, yeah, it's adapting to your planet already, right. then it's like <laughs> an oh, evil villainous oh, no. thing. No, it's just it's like, it's an invasive plant, potentially. <laughs> Those can great. be really just, disruptive to local ecosystems. Fucking space kudzu is great. We skipped over a part. You're talking about the Talos plant scene, right? Oh, well, I mean, hey, uh, I'm not going to cover absolutely everything, but if you've got any notes you want to cover on so, things, just, go just ahead. Just one thing I thought was really intentional was the very first thing he does is start limping as soon as he gets out of the ship. <laughs> they, wa they want us to know right away that this guy's a bum. Like, you guys need yeah, to know. Yeah, for 30 uninterrupted seconds, he's just limping for no Yeah, I limping. don't... They don't give us anything for that, do they? He's just limping. He his knee's fine the rest of the season, so it was one of those moments of like, make sure they know he's shit right away, and then they forgot to continue the continuity of the knee. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I don't hey, remember the got better, it healed. <laughs> he popped it back into place before the Talos. Scene. That's why I was like, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> he's old. Okay, there we go. Now we're all and old people's <laughs> knees don't work. True. Oh, man. But no, now, now, now I know where you guys are. Um... Yeah, by the way, him saying it adapted to the planet is only to, like, the only reason the flower is there to prompt him to then say, uh, you always believed oh, that, like, the scrolls could adapt to the planet. The Taos is like, I still do. But, you know, the, 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 basically, uh, Taos' wife died. Um, and that's why Fury has come down, or at least that's why he claims to come down. The whole season has loads of different reasons given for why he went up to the station and why he went down and why he stayed away like they keep bringing it back up and sometimes it's not even fury that's giving the reasons so you can't tell what the fucking show thinks it's uh... no idea why he did anything they kept giving you yeah you're right they had so many different explanations from different people where you can't even keep track of what the actual story was mm -hmm. um and i, I well, have a feeling the harder it is to follow what's going on the harder it is to notice that it's all fucked that's There's... their trick 
Yeah, that's it's how they get you. Seeing people talking about how this got reshoots and it changed around the story based on other things happening, but there's also just very clear evidence, specifically as to why the Avengers aren't here. There's some uh, no. obvious reattempts uh, at explaining uh, that in the season. Remember, um, we're supposed to be an MCU. Yeah, <laughs> they just don't give a fuck. <laughs> Throw away lines <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we'll get to it. So yeah, um, the wife was killed by. Uh, I can't remember if this, we find this out relatively. I think we find it out this episode. She was killed. We'll find out who later who did it. But also, um, his daughter's disappeared, and that he was kicked off the Scroll Council, Talos. So basically, everything's I'm sorry, fucked. Sorry, when you say Scroll Council, it makes me laugh. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> You've been kicked off the Scroll Council. Vanished. Like, what's that? <laughs> well, well, it's the Council of Scrolls. Uh, what of did course. you think it was? I'm like, no, uh, no, it, yeah. Fair enough. It's just funny that it's, it's called the name. Scroll Council. <laughs> you know what's um, funny? I don't mind the name Scrolls, but you add anything to it, it sounds like shit. Super Scroll, well, like new, Scroll new Council. Scrollos. Yeah, new oh, Scrollos. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, that's the one. That's the yeah. one. Oh, How come goodness. it's Talos, but it's not Scrollos? <laughs> Screw <laughs> loose. <laughs> 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 yes, they are. Yeah, uh, we got, like... We got we got work to do because everything's falling apart. And someone he mentioned someone called Gravik who has taken Fury's abandonment hard, which is already like abandonment. It's getting weird. What's going on? What's the, and you know your suspicions of Fury did not get them a planet or even remote safety on Earth sorted. That will be confirmed soon enough. But um, he's like you know where where is this Gravik guy? And he's like well he's in Russia because. Scrolls are immune to radioactivity, and Russia has the most abandoned nuclear plants. That is the reasoning that they are in Russia. Oh, yeah. It just sounds and really funny to me. It's like, that argument works, doesn't it? You're like, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> just don't think about it. Don't think I don't know that... that they're power plants, and they're obviously going to, like, you can't... You're not going to be able to forget the location for those things. Like, Imagine they said, like, 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 where are the humans hiding? It's like, well, they're immune mostly to wind, so they're probably in the windiest place. You're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just, just, just these throwaway lines that they think, and you, it's, yeah, they think they can get away with murder with just a throwaway line. It's insane. Cover so, everything. The HQ could theoretically be anywhere, but he's like, yeah, but they're immune to radiation, so obviously they go into a nuclear plant. It's like, that makes, that yeah, makes okay. sense, logically. It follows. Mm -hmm. You know? You know how you guys you got you know how Russians suck, right? So yeah, the uh, it's the easy one, and and so it's like okay, so we can find them, right? Pretty easily. And he's like, well, the plants aren't on the books. We have no idea where he is. And it's just like how 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 are the how even if they're not on the books, I feel like something you can find through like satellites, especially with the technology they have in the MCU. It's like they're in secret, rundown, <laughs> abandoned nuclear oh, plants. Mahler. Mahler, they couldn't find the Red Room. What makes you fucking think they can find an entire facility? Oh, but that has, like, invisible technology from, like, the Dracov <laughs> guy. The Red Room. Remember he yeah. wanted to stop women from happening? This one's called the... <laughs> this, this one's the Green Room. Yeah. Remember, you, remember you couldn't smell them? <laughs> he could smell them women. Go get them. Oh, God. Don't bring him up. Draco gets... to taking over the world involves pheromones. I don't know, man. Draco gets a mention in this show. It's wonderful. He's remembered, not ignored. Um, <sighs> why? Did, why keep remember that continuity? Drakov. All the shit that they forget, but they're gonna keep the Drakov continuity. That's what. <laughs> Drakov's great. What are you talking he about? He was awesome. I loved him. Like, Drakov's really cool. Remember when he said all of the embarrassing things he said? So many. And then <laughs> Black Widow said he sucked and like he wanted to cry. And yeah. No, I'm trust me. No, I'm really off. good. Trust me. Look at all this shit <laughs> I got. Look. Look, look at my phone. He starts flicking through his fucking screenshot. Oh, fuck that. Don't bring Drake up. Look at my intro. I used a prompt. <laughs> yeah, I am an artist, okay? I am an artist. <laughs> Don't tell me to stop. Or stop. I'm the... prompting. I can't believe that. The one resource that. Oh, I'm, has I'm too much prompting. of girls. Oh, I'm prompting. I hate the yeah, girls. He's just the worst. I'm prompting. <laughs> he just fucking hates women. I don't know. What a great villain. Well, I mean, the MCU is doing a really good job of making me hate women, too. Yeah, so Drakov is, Drakov is this show's Ken. It, it, it's uh, not to skip forward, but but 
there's a single scene, I'm sure you guys probably know what I'm talking about, in, that involves a handshake that really reveals what the true intention of this whole show was at the end, if you know what I'm referring to. Hmm. There's a handshake in the intro. It's all coming together. Keep that, keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. Handshake. I agree, Chad. It's Dracov in time. Hmm. <laughs> so, the stakes are Prescott, that agent that got killed by Ross Skrull, he found out about a dirty bomb organized by the Americans Against Russia organization. He believes... Wait, wait, what organization? The Americans Against <laughs> Russia organization. No, 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 no. What, what's, what, what's their name? Not their, like, their, their, like, their goal. The Americans Against Russia organization. <laughs> Mahler clearly doesn't understand what I'm saying, because no one would actually call an organization that, so we'll just leave it there. Okay, right, I wonder this what they makes want. more sense. They're called the AAR, the R. Arr. We're pirates. We're land Arr. pirates. <laughs> That's a placeholder name. They're gonna get the name at some point, but for now, yeah, they'll go with that. Um, and yeah, the, the belief is that Skrulls are going to orchestrate an attack that's in line with those guys, and then argue that it is America attacking Russia. Which, uh, we're gonna get into a lot of this stuff, because it starts getting really fucking dumb. I response... enjoy this show's grasp on geopolitics. It feels very real and mm, sincere. Yes. I can believe mm -hmm. it. All the things that it said are are happening. I I can because yeah. the response I'm to that in the room it. is, oh my god, he's going to start a war between Russia and the U.S. It's like, so you're gonna, <laughs> so Skrulls are going to assume the roles of a group of people called Americans Skrulls. against Russia, and then they are going to bomb somewhere in Russia, and that is hopefully going to prompt Russia to then launch nukes on the U.S. That that's the that's the plan from the Skrulls. This part of that. Yeah. This plan evolves as the this, as this, uh, season goes on, but yes, already our main characters are like, oh my god, this will cause World War III. It's like, uh, no. <laughs> Not really, no. Um, and then they're like, how could you even be sure they have the kind of weaponry to do that? And they say a weapons cache in Kazakhstan was raided the same day that Agent Prescott was killed. And I feel like that's irrelevant, like they could have it anyway. Who knows? There's black markets all over the place, all kinds of weaponry. I don't see why. why. They're like, the fact that a weapons cache was attacked recently means that they have what's in there. It's like, I mean, that could have been anybody. And then all the other Plus, times. Plus, you think that there wouldn't be a link because they happen on the same day, right? I mean, that there, there's just. Why would those I mean, two it, things happen on the same day? You're right. It's like, why would. Uh... Why would we assume that's anything but a coincidence? Why would we have any reason to assume anything else? I don't know. It's Yeah, it's weird information, but whatever. I think the, the show is a little bit like, oh no, no one would believe they have weapons unless we tell them that they've raided a cache of weapons. Like, okay? They have a bomb. It's very scary, and this is the whole... The, 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 what I've just described now is like the really? plot stakes of the episode. Terrifying. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I don't know enough about what decommissioned power plants end up looking like, but I don't see how they're off the books. Uh, it's, yeah. Even if they're it's off the like books, there's probably, existing. there's probably so many ways to detect a power plant from just, like, radiation. To, there's probably so many different variables, things they can actually look at to find it. I'm starting to wonder if you can just recognize it with an eye. Like, enough searching around, you should be like, that's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It's one of many things that they try to brush over with throwaway lines. That's one of the things that annoyed me throughout the whole season. Well, they have guards dressed up at the front with like actual like police attire yeah. and everything. They yeah, you can just detect heat signatures, right? Correct. So good on them. But mm. like, people are gonna go by and like, oh, there's like a bunch of people here, and they're dressed up in government outfits, and they have guns and everything. Like, I don't know how you keep this hidden. It. I don't think you. And do plus, keep you have it to keep bringing food in and out, all the supplies and the trucks and stuff to keep this operation running. You have to bring in your bullets and your guns and your people and all the food and all the equipment and stuff you need. Like just the, as we get to logistics, the, nobody ever thinks about logistics. They don't the, care. the magic, essentially the magic laboratory that we'll get to later. I mean, like how how do they you build that in secret? All the kinds of stuff that you had to bring in. Don't you have to have like trucks, like actual trucks full of, um, like of, of equipment of laboratory equipment and science technology? Who knows? I don't know. I guess not. I don't know. Well, yeah, we don't think about it. We don't have to worry about it. Well, remember, um, Mara, you might remember this. Uh, all the detail they went into showing how Gus established his lab under the laundry mark in Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. That's, Better Call Soul did a whole season on that, didn't they? 
Oh no, I didn't see. I didn't see that. So I definitely gotta check that show out eventually. But it, I, I'm that just immediately comes to my mind of like shows that put in the details to show you the logistics and like it's mm-hmm. so satisfying when you can see the, the montages they would do so you can see how his business works. And then we have this where it's just like, oh, they're off the books. Don't think about it. It's it's so lazy. It's crazy. Well, Mala, remember when we were watching The Great Escape? Yeah. And uh, they had to they had to worry about all the logistics of how we dig holes and tunnels and where all the wood comes from. And, where's the dirt and nails and all of our tools. Yeah, where does the dirt go? How do we get rid of it? Um, you know, where's the entr- where are the entrance is going to be? Who are the lookouts? And you're like, oh yeah, I can believe that like 80 people were able to escape a German POW camp. Yeah, because they're like tr- they're working to convince me. Like I believe it. Mm-hmm. This That's is something I don't believe. That's the key word. They're working to convince you. They care. Like the, those little details that they add in and just it. The, the rewatch value that that brings to, to, to films is crazy. And with stuff like this, on first watch, it makes no sense at all. I can't even well, so ignore it. It's just glaring. On that note, like the first thing that should happen, they now are now aware of like a subversive alien element that's trying to cause huge, like war. Like, okay, so tell the president. Right? Like, tell what, America. First thing of course. you do. One. And then uh, tell, that doesn't uh, get addressed, yeah. like, at all. Because uh, they're not they're not like uh, wanted yet in the storyline. They will wait until that point before they even Nothing think about in this like show is wanted, Mahler. Oh, <laughs> but uh, he should Making right now. Things that don't get addressed. First, he should be calling Rhodey. He should be like, "Hey, Rhodey, I found out about a plan, and you know, if me and Maria Hill and Talos can't stop it, then we're probably gonna need some help because." Uh, we're going to be around in, in Russia where explosions will be going off and they'll be linked to America, or at least you'll be framed for it, because there's an alien race trying to take over the world. Just FYI. Just thought I'd throw it out. Wait, what? <laughs> but no, they don't. <laughs> right they don't tell anyone. And and uh, like I said, there's like three different major reasons given across the season. Um, the final big one that's given, and we'll go over it when we get to it as well, but is that Fury says that this is his problem to take care of. That's why... Uh, that's. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was, I was about to say that's why Truman was flying the Enola Gay. I was thinking <laughs> that's, that's why that happened. In personally, uh, uh, I saw the Enola Gay. Oh neat. You know what isn't gay? This show. It's sad and depressing. Mm-hmm. Not gay just, in the um, slightest. It's it's really kind of like a huge issue, and this is sort of like the biggest beginning um, element of. The downfall of Nick Fury as a character. Oh yeah. Um, and his, his total destruction mm-hmm. because his we Nick Fury is done. He he was done and he was done quick. Finished. This show did not take. Uh, th- this show did not wait to establish how shit Nick Fury is and how stupid he is. Which is you know his number one characteristic that we all know him for is being really stupid, right? Mm-hmm, yes. He's not a very you know shrewd, clever guy. Um, you know, who's imposing and interesting. No, he's just a, he's just a dumbass, right? It, it, a, a grossly irresponsible loser. That's why I made sure we pointed out the, the knee scene, because I just thought it was strange that that's the very first thing they wanted to show us, that he's... Well, you say it like, old, they do limited. mention he's, like, physically shit uh, several times in this season. They, they talk they about him. Yeah, like, he's weak, you know? He's, he's exhausted. And you're lame, you're tired, you're beat down, you're a loser. The new Nick... <laughs> The show insists that he's a loser. It does. <laughs> and, uh, well, like like I said, big big knock to intelligence already in this scene. But that's just, yeah. like, good old-fashioned uh, shitty plot for you. Yeah, Chris, yeah it's, it's huge. Him not telling people about the scroll stuff is, um... Well, it's just, there's no it's reason huge. not to. And then being like, well, I have to deal with this. It's like, it's beyond you, my man. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, yeah. uh... That's just selfish at that is, point. I so will stop them you. with me and my pistol. If, if it's already understood that the stakes are essentially the end of humanity, it's not just about you, it's about the world at this point. Yeah, but this is personal for him. Uh, yeah, okay. Like, okay. Still, <laughs> right, but <then>. still. <laughs> you say so. He, just, he was never that selfish of a character. I just no. feel like the Nick Fury... Well, I mean, not, it's just Nick's... It's, it's, they do. couldn't afford to get other Avengers in. He's, that's, um, that's, what, that's, that's what Nick that's Fury it. is. He's a, he manages his tools and his... Uh, you know, yeah. w- w- of what use he has of what, and it can be a person or it can be a, a thing, but he- he'll always use it right. That's like, he- he's a strategist. That's like his whole thing. It's his entire character is to be the mastermind behind the Avengers, and like, we never get these opportunities to, to-, to see him shine. He-, he got his moments in Winter Soldier, even though that movie's got its issues. I still at least appreciate that one scene with him, even though it fucking makes no sense in so many ways. It still 
gave him an opportunity to be a badass. You want to? Oh that yeah. What we have. You is, never. Yeah, you would never want to underestimate him. He, he's yes. always the one who he's, yeah, what I you like, can believe that he's got surprises in store and he's he's yes. thought ahead. Yeah, you want to see that when someone tries to kill him, they fail because he's that ready yes. all the time. Like that's what I like he about the idea of the scene. I, he shouldn't be able to defeat like most opponents because he's a human, but he should be able to escape and like outthink almost any situation. Yeah, and it's just got emergency like, exits resources, everywhere. Tactics, yeah, everything. But in this one, he's just getting draped up and thrown into vans and just like he can't defend yeah. himself. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it I, if, it's, if I I just had a Loki clip, I had to look through the first uh, for one of my videos. I was looking at a Loki clip. And I'm pretty sure Nick Fury would have popped Loki in his fucking head in that first scene if, like, if it really came down to that. He's not afraid to die. Like, so just the way they're portraying him now is, oh, man, it's it's complete bullshit. It's not the character. It's what they wanted out of him. Moving on, we get over to the, the president and Rhodey, who is now... I, I keep asking for clarification. I can't remember if there's a quote somewhere about him being secretary of state or not, but he is basically the number one to the president, like... uh Right, that Rhodey, Secretary of State is like number three. So be yes. president, vice president, then Secretary of State. Basically. No, I don't mean uh, how it works in real life. I mean in the show. Oh, you mean he's always like with the president, essentially. <laughs> they're, they're explicit in the show that uh, the president doesn't do anything unless Rhodey tells him to, basically. Yeah. Okay. Which feels really stupid and wrong, but whatever. What are you going to do? Um, because the the, uh, the angle is because and he calls him Colonel Rhodes all the time, uh, Fury. Is that? Ah, uh, he is a colonel. Well, but the confusing part is the before. if he's secretary of state, that would outrank Fury, right? Because Fury Almost. is a part I, of Saber. I, well, Fury. What is Fury even a part of at this point? Because he's a part of. It, so, well, to give you that, Fury is supposed to be developing the most con complex aerospace defense system in the history of mankind on Saber sure, Station. But like, what is that? Is he with like well, whatever rank he has? <laughs> Because this is the thing, uh, Fury throws that at Rhodey in this film, He's, oh, this show, I think episode 3, he says, like, oh, you're firing me, Colonel? Uh, like, like, how can you do that to me when I'm a bigger, and I was like, I'm pretty sure he's above you, like Rhodey. It was yeah, confusing sure to me. Who. Yeah, I thought, I thought Rhodey outranked Fury before and now. I didn't realize that Fury was above him, but Fury didn't even have a role after S.H.I.E.L.D. got disbanded. He quit, didn't he? He went under, underground? But then he's like, he's like, he's Saber now, and it's like, what does that mean? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't even know what saber is. Is that like part of sword or? I assume it's. It is a sword. I think that's. Well, the, remember the sword very from yeah. uh, from and it's yeah. I guess that's it. So you have but the like, U.S. government what, sword. The is, I don't know is the new sword shield, is. and then saber but belongs the to shield? sword. Wait, is, wait, sword's is, the new shield? You serious? Is it? I don't know is, if it is. is. Well, so, so the same thing? I mean, not like in the same, not in, not in that like it turned into that, like the Hydra stuff happened and all that got disbanded. But they created Sword, and I think from what we have to go on, it's an organization that's under the government's like control. Sure, but like the I I don't. What does it mean? Is Sword an espionage? Like are they is that what they do? Are I don't know they, if they like. They're like... Uh... Spies and stuff. Yeah. I think I think they like as a, I think they like or... Shield. Like how, whatever yeah, yeah, role Shield yeah. did, they they do that now. I like how they just can't like figure out what exactly they do. They that give us so little information. That, that well, this is government what I mean. organization. It's like That's why I'm trying to get this out of the way now. It's like what is Rhodey's power level in the government? Is like he's we got we know what ranks he has, but uh, ultimately he's he's kind of. The second in command villain of this film, because uh, I mean, you've got Gravik and then you've got him on the government side of things. He's he's pulling strings. I guess I kind of gave away something there, but I don't I don't think that's don't that's probably that fine. <laughs> like, that's fine. Part of this is hard to discuss without knowing who would, who what the fuck's going on. So yeah, what you need to take away from this is Rhodey controls the president essentially, and the president is this guy who uh, I, I don't think he's had a mention before in anything. Uh, he... No, and he won't have a mention again because it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be uh, the other Ross going forward. Yeah, played by Harrison Ford. Ooh, Wait, so right. this guy was supposed to be Ross? No, no, no. This is this is a guy oh. called Ritson, but he's not okay. gonna be. It's gonna be uh, the other Ross, Thunderbolt Ross, is gonna be the president going I forward. I at least I liked Ross's character. At least he had some agency. This guy, like, he, the, yeah, the, but the, the problem is that saying I like. Movies. I like a character doesn't really mean anything anymore when it comes to what they're gonna what's gonna happen to them. They'll in the ruin next him. Story, don't worry. You know? 
Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't saying I was looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, but I just Ross as a character compared to this guy, I I do appreciate. I, I appreciate like he he had a backbone to him. He was a good character. They'll probably completely fuck him up. So, um, yeah, he's the president's like outraged that Fury has left Saber and they've had no contact. So even the show right now is like kind of highlighting that that's an issue and that Fury doesn't really give a reason, a good reason anyway, for why this is happening. Uh, they say Hill and Fury have reconnected, but there's been no contact from them with us, so they're considered AWOL. And it's just like, why? That doesn't make any sense. Why would they have so many people they can trust and rely on as part of, I assume, Saber, but now they're treating it as though they can only trust each other. And then you're like, wait, how does Fury know he can trust Hill? How does Hill know she can trust Fury? Well, this is the first of many instances where you wonder. It's like, okay, guys, anytime that you haven't seen somebody, you gotta, you gotta find out, like, if they're actually who they say they are. Because they'll use it as an excuse for some stuff sometimes, and you're like, but you can't have it and not have it but at again, the same time. You gotta it's, go for yeah. it. Yeah. It's like we mentioned earlier, right? It's With convenient. the thing, it's every scene. It should be there. Except except in this, this show, that's actually a lot easier to figure out who's who. <laughs> That, uh, then in the thing, mm -hmm. the paranoia in the thing in the thing was like cemented throughout the entire story. Like they made sure mm -hmm. every single yep. scene, and it was a part of everything. The tension was, you can see it consistently. With this, they use it when it's convenient for them, and then they contradict it when it when it's when it's not. It's it's it's. And so... of course, this uh, this show has the big problem of this is the sci-fi like not even near future at this point, hyper futuristic like. MCU world, we don't mm -hmm. have any technology that can like check the scrolls in a in a way that's like uh, non invasive and and easy to use. Like with you're all of the technology me... that already exists, you're telling me that there's no way to check. Like, I mean, we got nano machines, son. Like, Riri Williams, like, Riri Williams those? would make something to find those in two seconds. Like, Riri broke everything when they invented that character. Yeah, she, she made an Iron Man suit and a, could, and a, a vibranium she, detector. She made as well, right? If she could detect vibranium, she could detect scrolls. Like, well, shit. That's yeah, what I mean when they create detector, these characters. Yeah. And then they just ignore them directly after. Like, Riri was well, just I mean, a few movies ago. Over immune radiation, maybe you can, like, create a machine that detects things that like non-ionizing like biological you know, <laughs> like, I don't there's, know. So many, there's so many ways around it but they just want us to not think about these things it's crazy so fury gets kidnapped you know it happens a few times this when is mean, the he, first. When when he, he, he walks outside grabs him. <laughs> so but to be fair him. apparently this one he he does argue this was intentional he wanted to be kidnapped yeah, okay that's bullshit, ah, yes Yes, I, I mean, what do you want me to do? Lie. He said it, Rags. Leave the me problem alone. with that is that it's a, it's a lie. So, like, yeah, it's just not it, true. And so, Liar. we'll see. We'll That's see how this goes. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a statement here. I know that it's very likely Fring and Rags will agree with it, but I'm not sure about our other two guests here. Uh, Olivia Coleman is introduced, and she is the best character in the show. Yep. Much. Yes, she is. Yeah, she is. Even she even, even like if they kind of ruin her at the end, yes. Yeah, she has it, she has one or two cringe time. lines, but most of the lines are actually pretty yeah. solid. And she's the only character that gets to do things, like she's Nick Fury. She's kind of yeah, Fury she's much more like Nick Fury than Nick Fury is. Yeah, it, it often well, seems I, I, like her dialogue was written by like somebody else. It doesn't feel <laughs> like it belongs. To Every Jen. aspect of it, her dialogue, um, the, the way they portrayed her, like they actually it it reminded me of, of, of it might it kind of reminded me of Fennec from from Boba Fett, how she was basically just getting to be Boba Fett, doing all the things he should have been doing. And she kind of played this role no, for me now. Fennec was like, a dumbass. So I didn't like Fennec. I, mean, Fennec. <laughs> I, no, 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 I don't no, know no. what's no, I there a lot. I did not like Fennec at all, and I like this lady. But what I was, my point was that Fennec was basically doing what Boba Fett should have been doing. And I feel like this lady was doing what Nick Fury should have been doing. If we were, he was actually being portrayed confident. I mean, I'm with you on the whole, because like, Fennec does all the assassinations, and she did yeah, like the successful chases. And Other than that, she's crap. <laughs> it, well, that's the thing. They didn't. They don't characterize her enough, but like they don't anybody, really. Um, Why yes. give her a character when she's busy being Boba Fett? That was my whole thing with her. She yeah. took his character. He does. He's, he wow. says funny things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's funny now. <laughs> anyway, nice, yeah, so this is a character that I would argue is super important that we've never ever heard of before. Uh, she's an old friend of Fury's. Currently, she operates the MI6, and she's in Russia because she's tracing this scroll story, and she's aware of it too. It's just like... So the British government so, know MI6 about scrolls? 
Oh, this is oh well then the cat's out of the bag when it comes to the governments yeah. of the world knowing and everything like that because like that's not something that MI six would keep to itself. MI six would be like, oh shit, we need to tell our friends now. If we know that there are friends, we'll do the scroll test. It's fine. But damn, this needs to get out in the open. Well, why? Like, sh if she knows about this, are they gonna do a scroll test for Fury? <laughs> because okay. this could just be a scroll. <laughs> like exactly. And uh, yeah. Uh, he says, do you know about the heist in uh, Kazakhstan? And, and she, she says, doesn't ring a bell. And then he's like, ah, oh, you're lying. And then she says, and it's so not prompted at all, and my god, is it clunky, you don't know what was taken, do you? Which tells me everything. I, uh, I, I, I know, it tells me everything I need to know about this old Nick Fury. Thanos' snap right. changed you. Taught you that no matter how hard you fight for what's right, there's always someone stronger to undermine you. So this would be an instance where the dialogue was written by the same people because this <laughs> yeah. is the show telling you who Nick Fury yeah. is, and they have to keep telling you this because it really is hard to believe. Uh, yeah. But the show insists that this is the case that the snap changed Nick Fury. And and uh, you're like, what what is Nick Fury's arc going to be, right? Because he's the main character of the show. And all you can gather is, like, we've made him really shit so that by the end we'll be like, he's good now. He's cool now. He's good. <laughs> but we'll talk about yeah. if they achieved that or not. Um, Yark is him getting back to where he was. Pretty much. And yeah, and she's, mind, she's just told really us, we've never met this lady before, and we've never known this about Fury, but apparently the Thanos snap really fucked him up. And it's like the first apparently, thought you have is like, no it didn't. When? We, we, we watched him get snapped and we watched him come back and we saw his attitudes after. Like, there's no, what are you talking about? Our thing. That's how not so deep and subtle PT post traumatic snap disorder can be. I think <laughs> that if anything, he was probably the least affected, and it makes a lot of sense because he just saw it as a you know strategy failure, right? Like he ended up dusted, and so now it's up to the people who are left, and hopefully he's put enough things in place. He gets right. he, he comes back, and then he's like, all right, time to start fixing up the world again. There's no like existential crisis that he has yeah there's no room for that well, he's not that type of character he's just doing his it, i guess uh i'm not sure we want to save it for later but it's it kind later, of yeah. they do try to expand more on the actual sort of like you know why why the snap changed him which is worth talking about uh when we get to it later we're gonna get several uh moments in this film i think th i keep saying that this show it is a film like it's just <laughs> split into six pieces um yeah because like the episode lengths are bizarre by the way first two they're, they're are like really short. 45 minutes and then the next yeah. four are like 25 it's 30, when you chop yeah. out the um the intro outro previously on you take a fucking and enormous chunk out of the last few episodes yeah and so then when you think about the purported budget of this show of about 200 million dollars and the house of the what? dragon cost about 200 million dollars <laughs> are the you dragon serious 10 episodes and those 10 episodes were like 50 minutes minimum and then you compare it to this show that has a total runtime of maybe four hours, maybe, might be less than that. I mean, as someone had mentioned, Oppenheimer has a one hundred million dollar budget. It costs oh. Oppenheimer costs half of what Secret Invasion did, and they had an incredibly good A list tier cast, a great soundtrack, period accurate sets, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and like, and loads what, 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 of talent. Is this is is this like a like a tax fraud operation? What's going on here? <laughs> where's this, where did all the money, money go? going? The where did the money go? It's a great question. The intro, the, money go? the scroll makeup. Like I don't know. The, the intro is cheap as fuck. They didn't uh, spend it, did, it on it the intro. Not, it did not go into the scroll makeup. They, <laughs> that's we, so, yeah, that's that's something that's Definitely pretty not. lame. Is we barely ever see like scrolls in the yeah. scroll makeup, which is a shame because the makeup's actually really good. Like in Captain yeah. Marvel, that makeup is pretty excellent. But uh, I'm wearing Marvel, goosebumps I masks in this show. The show. Yeah, <laughs> it was better in Captain Marvel. These ones look like Hollywood. It's a lot better in Captain Marvel, Marvel, but they barely have them here because yeah. it's uh, well, it's yeah. My <laughs> favorite course, um, example of cutting corners is this clearly a scroll. The camera turns to a person who's looking at them, and you hear yeah, <laughs> and then they exactly. cut back, and they're a person. <laughs> it's like. Because they're too cheap. Uh, it's like in she hulk when they're like, oh, it's too expensive to show the transformation. And it's like, yeah, so you always do it off screen. Like, except for once, it's always off screen. Yeah. <laughs> it's you, um, you know the budget of The Descent was 3.5 million pounds? Oh, man. Which is... We can, Which, uh, uh, when you... <laughs> we, we can mention why that's being brought up. There's no reason not to. Uh, 
the we me rags and free along with uh, drinker were blessed to have an efat movies recording recently in which our oh. guest was the director of the descent neil marshall crazy and <gasps> the movie we were watching mean? was the descent uh yeah, we watched one it with the best horror movies ever made that's one, one that's of literally my best. favorite horror movie that's my it favorite is. horror movie. I can't it's, a, it's a really it's a it really a, good movie it's the one that tier. checked all the boxes for me personally as um for like what personally freaks me out like the claustrophobia aspect and getting lost all those other things but it's also so well done that i recommend it to almost anybody love that movie and so uh yeah Crazy i mean that was happened. that was like a bucket list thing because it's uh it's really cool to talk to someone who made what, what i consider to be one of the best horror movies so any um, insights well, uh, they'll all be in the recording. We we stuffed it full of questions and discussions, and it was uh, it was a really fun time. So I'm, it was funny. Nice. I was in the middle of editing that, which was delaying me from editing the Ant Man stuff, which has now all been delayed while I was getting all the notes ready for Secret Invasion, <laughs> and then that got delayed because I had uh, family come over. But I'm I'm knocking them all off now. We have had the family stuff. That was did all you, fun. Uh, did you want? Did you end up watching Oppenheimer yet? No, still haven't seen it. I can't fit it uh, in. I will. Yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. to. <laughs> Yeah. Because, yeah, we haven't. Uh, that was partly an intention was to talk about Barbie and Oppenheimer. We could do that next week at the no, beginning of we, whatever we're talking I, about. It's, we don't need to talk about Barbie. That's if okay. you don't want to talk about it, that's okay. <laughs> Fine. We'll, we'll do our we'll brief. Open open it. Me and Rax will talk about the little doll running around in a Barbie world. It'll be fine. Can do it. I'm a Barbie girl in a, in a Barbie world. world. So. Is that movie, is that song even in it? No. no. Okay. <laughs> There's some legal no. shit behind that. Definitely not watching. Obviously, that. yeah, that was just a decide to say that EFAP movies will be out in a week, probably. I need to. I'm debating whether or not I'll go crazy on visuals to get references in because he references a lot of films and uh, filmmaking stuff. I can get the visuals. It's just gonna take a lot longer, but I think you guys will be okay with the wait, and it'll be it'll be fun. Um, For this movie, it's worth it. Yes, yes. Anyway, what were we... Oh yeah, we were talking about budgets and stuff. This, yes. The, the point was that I... The thought occurs when Rags points out that, you know, the, the Descent was made on like a 3.5 million dollar... Uh, million pound budget. You compare it to something like Quantumania, a production that costs 200 million dollars. Like, if you were to break down the maths on that, it's, it, the logic would be that you could only make like two minutes of Quantumania for the entirety of The Descent. <laughs> That you can only get two minutes of that movie. Which way, Western Man? For this one amazing, you know, movie. Yeah. It's just it's crazy a... to think about the way that money is spent on these productions. Like, if you were to break it down into how many minutes worth of material you get, you know, <laughs> like, um, like how, how far a million dollars goes with these productions. It's like, what does it get you? It gets you, like, in the case of these Marvel productions, they're just getting worse from a production standpoint. Right. They look I wonder... worse. That, like, I don't get it. I just wonder what the bloat is on like legal this or licensing that or residual this, like all of the, the not production thing. thing. The, production the only thing I could imagine is that it's um it, it, it's a couple of things I could imagine. There's actors for starters are probably getting paid a lot of money because you mentioned Oppenheimer. Uh, a lot of the actors on that took pay cuts because I wanted to make that film. How many actors are you going to get that will willingly like take less money to be part of a Marvel production? You know. Like, how many people are going to believe in it so much that they'd want to get paid less money to do it? Yeah, <laughs> like, for Marvel. To make, Not for Marvel. To make it happen. And, and then Marvel. there's also That's just, um, there's, there's work that people do on these productions. Like, in Ant-Man, there, there was a lot of work that was done on that in terms of creating, like, costumes and prosthetics and things for aliens and stuff like that that just gets painted over with visual effects later anyway. So it's just, like, people getting paid for work that ultimately doesn't get to make it into the film. It's got to just be an efficiency. Yeah. It's I just burning money it. in so many different ways. Because for something like that, they could put that much work into actually making something like that and then covering it over with CGI. And it's, I don't know, the thought process behind all of it can't be, it's, it's nothing about it is efficient. And when you compare that to low budget horror, the profit margin with those things, like it, well, it's compared to more activity, like Bloom. 15 grand. It's the reason why Jason Bloom is like super successful as a producer, right? Is because he'll make a film for like five, $10 million. Most of them are modest successes. A few of them make like, 50 to 100 times their budget you know that's the way there to do it a, um it's you never get the sense on these marvel projects in particular that anybody is you know keeping track of where the money goes mm -hmm. it just seems like it, it, you never get the idea of oh someone's like someone is what someone someone's watching 
you know, the budget. Someone is actually like in charge of it or someone. Well, that's, that's going to change now. I think. It's, it's going to change think. now. That's for sure. Uh, good old Bob Iger, right? <laughs> that they're going to be coming back on these productions. Um, yeah, that doesn't one surprise the, me at all. One of the first things, when I went on Open Bar, one of the first things we talked about was how crazy these $200 million budgets are all the yeah. time. And I brought up Joker, $50 million, made a billion because it was a quality movie, plus all the controversy on mm. top of it boosted the numbers. But $50 million <laughs> compared to these things. I just don't understand why they're not taking that thought process and like taking a look at those movies that actually can make money for them instead of putting the pressure of $200 million budgets. It's insane. Wouldn't it have been awesome if, if they had said that? The made phase four like the the phase where loads of like we're talking like maybe even 50 projects happen and they're all given a limitation of you can't change basically anything continuity wise you can only regard one brand new character in a very isolated area who may not even have powers we'll we'll decide that depending on what we'll allow for what creators and some of them have budgets of like 5 million 10 million and they're just films about people living in the world maybe it's all post blip stuff like we said and and you know, scatter shot them out. You can get as long as one of them does well, <laughs> they're already paying for like seven there, others. There's no imagination though. Like the prospect That's... of even making a film like that or a TV show like that is something yeah, that I risky doubt for has them. ever come in. Well, the thing is, is that it's like Mola pointed out, it really isn't risky with the budgets that would be like it's just that there's no I doubt that they've ever had the the idea of what if we made like a ten million dollar like very low scope story that's just set in the MCU that doesn't really have anything to do with superheroes. It's just set in that world. I don't in think that's ever... In terms of that right. low budget, it's definitely not going to be risky for them. Like that's something that's going to be a logical move. But to them, not having a, a franchise attached to it or the name value, taking a creative risk for them is just insane. They don't actually well, have the talent to do it. That's what's all that they're doing now is taking pure financial risks. That I was going to say, what, what, what we would associate as safe filmmaking is now the riskiest shit they can do. Like this was risky. Yeah. Making something this mm -hmm. shit. Right now is a very risky move. Marvel is a very risky investment as well. And then again, like you, Dune fall. Two costs less money than this show, and that's got Actually, a huge cost. Don't you think at this crazy, point like, you wouldn't even call it? Everything. You wouldn't call it risky, would you? Because it's a guarantee. Like Marvel's is guaranteed to fall apart. There's no way it's gonna like with everything I, uh, we know now. This is a bit yeah, of a tangent, risky. But something is that I was wondering, something I was thinking about over the last week or so is. I wonder if it's. I wonder if they're like past the event horizon in terms of their ability to actually salvage the situation. Because if you're in a place where your stuff is really expensive and people perceive it as being cheap and it loses money, how exactly do you solve that problem? You can't spend less money, right, to fix that problem. You probably need to spend more money, but like you, you probably do the need problem to cut is you're back spending. On spending. Yeah. But are you going to ask the actors to take less money? Are you going to ask them to, like, get paid less money to do this so that you can put more money into, like, hiring better writers? Like, the only you know what I mean? Like, how do you fix the problem? <laughs> if, it's, if it's a matter of being perceived as cheap and you're actually incredibly expensive. The only actors that will do that type of thing and take pay cuts are the ones that actually, like, have a creative vision and want to see the project go through. They're not going to have that for Marvel mm -hmm. nowadays. No one's no, going to no. believe in this shit. Marvel is yeah, here to make money. They want to the make project. money. Yeah. They want to stack their bank account, but they can't do that with Marvel anymore. Yeah. How can you really have passion for, like, this show How? and stuff? You know, like, it, it's... It... Yeah, I can just believe that you never get the sense of passion for any of this stuff. How could um, you? And what Fringy said earlier was... Well, it's kind of strange, but I'll explain. Fringy had said about how there's, like, no imagination in this stuff. When, in a weird way, it's almost like the opposite, I feel. Where they're trying to use too much imagination. In the sense of, if you look at Love and Thunder and Quantumania and stuff like that, you're like, w this is insane. Like, there's so much stuff and so much magic places and aliens and otherworldly entities and new... Um, new like multiverses Lots. and stuff like that, and they'll do that, and they'll spend hundreds of million of millions of dollars to throw at those kinds of ideas and projects. But they won't do something that is a lot more small scale, but more interesting. But the thing is, is when you say a lot of a lot of like what is pulled from is stuff from the comics, right? It's already existing things that people have come up mm -hmm. with. Like there were a lot of visuals in Thor: Love and Thunder that were like pulled from comics. So I don't, I don't even know how much you would attribute that to, like, I don't, I don't know if I would say that it's, it's like they know that the strategy is to pull things that people recognize from the comics as part of getting, like, 
you know, comic book fans, superhero fans like hyped up. And then, but you think about like the actual story structure and like the general conventions that they have for these films and TV shows, it's pretty generic, right? Like the Marvel, like the six episode TV show format, there's a lot of broad similarities across them in terms of the way that they're structured or, you know, the fact that they always have to end in a big superhero fight. Like that's oh, God. Yeah. like the idea of not doing that. I don't think is often ever entertained with it. Is yeah, there man. any Marvel it's production not even that has had <laughs> a finale or a third act that doesn't end with a big superhero fight? Is there even a single one that doesn't do that? Oh, She-Hulk, I think. Mm. If that well, no, She-Hulk <laughs> has them all fighting, remember? Her the fucking abomination. The and then it has like a meta thing about how that's not the way it should end, yeah. but it, they still did it. Uh, you know, I looked it up. Uh, what Sam Jackson's salary is? He earns like ten to twenty million a single starring role in a major production, and four to six million every time he appears as Nick Fury in a Marvel movie, even if it's a brief end credit cameo scene with one or two lines. No wonder he's in all sorts of shit to with Marvel. Uh, no wonder. <laughs> Just slip them in. Why not? Get paid. But again, but that, that's over how, now. How can that be having sustainable? Nick, it's over having now. Nick Fury deliver a line in a post credit scene is more than the budget of The Descent. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and that's yeah, just yeah, to I'm have Samuel L. Jackson deliver a line, if that. And you know yeah, that so if you've got Sam scene. Jackson, chick from fucking Game of Thrones. You got Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. You got Olivia Coleman. Like it's yeah. da- oh, well, it's and they money. rack up Woo. they rack up costs the more they appear, right? Over time, that's just how contracts yeah, that's, go. Yeah, that's the difficulty of of like the MCU is that the longer that it goes on, the more money you're gonna have to pay them. That's just how it works. Yeah. How it we works know you like, need me now. Yeah, you, well, yeah, you exactly. get rid of me that, now. That's so. the way it works in television, right? The longer a show goes on, the actors can negotiate to get paid more because more they just have more value that they bring to the like. They it's harder to remove them from the production and uh and and keep it going and get people to come back and watch it so that's what i mean is this like a problem that is kind of unsolvable <laughs> like I don't, I don't know we're gonna see i think we're gonna see what happens you want to say something no. <laughs> no, I, what I, I, i'm just gonna say i I feel like they know that, and they've been slowly trying to replace them with cheaper actors from, I, from america chavez to, to reread like they're just trying to get cheaper version of all these people like is well, sure, Elena, but eventually is a cheaper now, version of black widow i said she getting paid 10 million dollars for thunderbolts Are you sure about that that she's the uh, cheaper maybe she's like, maybe she's I'm not the best sure example but <laughs> orange <laughs> is in actually very high demand actually well, she, uh, she probably Coleman doesn't qualify has, for the theory i had there but Olivia she, Coleman's gotten oh, so many more yeah, roles after the oscar that i imagine that she's yeah. not cheap as well and amelia clark can't be cheap either no 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 well i feel so bad for her she just can't catch a break. It's crazy. That's what me and Molly were talking about right before the stream started. Yeah. Just fail after fail after fail after fail for her. It's and yeah. It's, yeah, it's... and I'll still fight that I believe she's a good actress, but stop making her play these shit characters that have no like chance to emote. Every single time they need her to play this strong female leader role, and it's like that's not what she's best suited for. Like even in the in Game of Thrones. Her big, her better scenes were the non, like you know, leadership. Like I couldn't stand her yelling and being like arrogant and shit. But when you actually got some heart out of her, that's when you got the best out of it. And they just yeah. haven't tapped into that. They just keep trying to get her to be dominant Daenerys. It's shit. And I feel like uh, Gus, Gus in um, what's it called? I can't, Giancarlo. I can't remember his full name, but they're just trying to make repeat what the magic of Gus in the Mandalorian and everything I've seen them in so far. He's just getting pissed away in that show. Yeah, he's Mark got the exact Gideon same problem she does. Her. They keep making him yeah, play characters that thing. don't do anything, but just be evil. Nothing. Trying to recreate the show, but not understanding why it worked. Buy rags. Then he... <laughs> <laughs> not, not, understanding, not understanding why it worked. Through with it in any way. It's kind of ridiculous add from the comics where it's like they add these things because they know fans will recognize it but they don't it worked but they don't understand it at all but they shove it in there anyway um is it lagging for anybody else at all little bit. Um, like am i laggy or is i'm just hoping that things are all right i don't know because with rex was laggy for a second <laughs> was i was i Shit. Yeah, I've been. Mean, I dropped out like twice. Let me know because yeah, this mic is shit. I gotta get a new one. You sound Three good now. Coffee, you good. Okay. Yeah. If I get a little floopy, just just let me know. It's, it's, I need a new we'll one. Will do. 
Um, Fringy said coffee. Rags. Got Rags is dead. So it's just us three now. Realm. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, well, the funny thing is, because it was kind of a tangent of tangents, but like a part of all of that stuff she said to him about how he's like a, a shitty fury now. She said like the main thing that gets to him in little speech is that there's always someone stronger to undermine you. Like, isn't that like perfect for fury? This is that's how he deals with everything. Is the because she's implying isn't, that like isn't that how why he started the Avengers in the first place? Exactly, is someone the better than. Him? But his his whole life, he isn't. He's a man. He's just a guy, and he always finds ways to subvert people through like you know intelligent planning or using people that are more powerful than he is to fight them. That's his whole thing. So no, she's like, oh, that's what gets to you, isn't it? It's like that's what powers him, arguably. Yeah, it's the opposite. It's crazy. Like, he's fueled by that. He understands his position and his limitations as a human. That's part of the reason he was so on board with the Avengers Initiative and everything that he's done. It was such an important part of his character, but they're just stripping every aspect of his character away slowly, episode by episode, and this is one of them. It's crazy. And um, it was funny because she said there's always someone stronger to undermine you. And I was like, she didn't just imply Gravik is stronger than Thanos, did she? <laughs> like, <laughs> Don't you dare, you bitch. Don't you dare. <laughs> Gravik. Maybe she was thinking she'd oh already seen the last episode and she was thinking. Yeah, about that. she skipped ahead. <laughs> she skipped ahead. Um so yeah, she <laughs> basically Oh wait, go ahead. I was gonna ask no, you know, maybe I should wait to the next episode, but like uh fuck it, we're skipping ahead a little bit anyway. Um what was your opinion, initial opinion on Gravik, just like, like in terms of his performance, like the first two episodes? Because I didn't hate him initially. Uh, I was like 50-50, and by the end of the show, I felt like he was pretty cringe. Like, the, the, and I don't think it's the actor's fault. I think they were just telling him to like come across as really angry. Just do that. That's I good enough. I think he was a good actor. I think he could have done a way better job if they had good material, but they completely destroyed him by the end. Oh, but, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. We'll talk I, about I, his I, motivations. <laughs> yeah, that's... Oh, God. Yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically she's like, fuck off and don't get involved in this thing. Then Fury says, you know, I, I've had 30 years of experience with the Skrulls, so what about that? And then she basically just says, go back to your ba space station. You're in no shape for a fight. <laughs> it's like, what are you... No shape go for a fight? Go back to your barber shop. It's so stupid, because it's like, <laughs> she's treating him like he's an out of, you know, out of training wrestler or some shit that's like, you know, you, yeah, you're, not, you're not ready for it. It's like, I'm a guy who shoots up. a gun and plans things. Yeah, man. He's not throwing haymakers out there. Like it makes no sense. His 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 tactics and experience should always be valuable. It's a line that doesn't make sense in terms of like how much she should know about him. So that's just the writers hijacking her, trying to make him out as a bum again, just like the knee. It's like you can make a note of every single time because she shouldn't treat him that way. She should know better. So dumb. And it's it's annoying because this is one of many speeches by the show that are like, Fury's old. And he's useless now, and you should go back to a space station and cry. And you're like, he's a vapor. okay. They, call, they called him Vapor. I, I can't really... <laughs> he does, yeah, well, That was the yeah. one that was like, wow. Uh, so he bugs her office, because they haven't got any information about the scrolls, and he thinks that if he bugs her office, he can get information from her. Um, I'm, it's kind of lame that he gets away with that. I would have thought that since she's MI6, that they would stop him from doing that. If you just kept an eye on him while he was in the room, you can easily see. And it's like, did they not check his coat for, like, a bunch of technology? Or want to take off him? I don't scroll. know. That's well, they didn't even check. Scroll. Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> they no don't check, check shit. <laughs> <laughs> he could be with whatever. Um, yeah, and uh, it's funny that he creates the Avengers to stop alien threats. They were partially defeated, but then won against Thanos. And we're now supposed to take that as. Fury is depressed. Like, no, he'd be happy with this result. He wouldn't be all sad and old and crying. Obvious. He, he would appreciate that people died, and that it was it was like a, a difficult sort of fight that went through the whole thing, but he, I don't think he would be sad uh, overall. But they'll get into more of why that is. Don't you worry. Uh, he, he, he wouldn't be affected by that. You can't be the Nick Fury that we saw in the past if you're, if you're that soft. Like, he's got to be hard into these things by now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we cut over into good old Moscow. It's, uh, it's one of their, their, it's their HQ, you actually. You pronounce it Moscow. Uh, Moscow, Moscow. I mean, I always hear people say Moscow, so. Moscow. Americans say Moscow. I'm pretty sure it's Moscow. Is maybe it? it was only Americans I was hearing it from then, maybe. Yeah. How do Russians pronounce it? I think they say Moscow, except, you know, more Russian accent. Moscow. Like. 
not like not like it, mine. It, it might depend on the accent, but I've only heard Moscow. Moller is correct. It's Moscow. Is that American or is that we got to go with the Russian? Moshwa, Moskwa, Mos Moskva. Yeah. The real Russian in here. Pronounce that shit. Uh, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, we'll call it the cow place. So uh, that's that's where they are, the little HQ. And we're shown basically just how, I guess, they get new recruits. Some guy turns up and he's like, I'm a scroll, and then like turn into one to prove it, which more security than most of the world already. Nice. Uh, Crazy. I thought it was I think funny. that might be the only scene. The, the only scene that might be what? the one scene. That might be literally the only scene where someone who doesn't already know they're a scroll checks to see if someone's a scroll. I can't think of another scene where they actually... Well, the thing is, it. the premise here is that they... He's telling them they're a scroll, and then they like prove it. So it's kind of like a reverse, but I know what you mean. Um, yeah, and and so he's like we we he's like a subplot that we see develop over I think I want to say like five or six scenes. This is his recruitment scene, and uh, he's really excited because he he missed being with his people, and she even says we we grow scroll plants here, and he's he's eating like a goofy sci-fi apple or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call that. I thought it was funny as hell because it's clearly a prop, but he's supposed to. Bite that shit. Yeah, he's supposed to bite into it. And it goes, it goes like. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah, it look nasty. <laughs> it look nasty. <laughs> oh my god, you've got goomba fruit, and they're like, yeah, we have goomba fruit. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> like, mmm, tasty. Oh, I love this shit, man. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what it was. Some nasty fruit that she pulled out of her glove compartment. <laughs> <laughs> I keep all my. Even have a ziplock bag fruit. over it. Yeah, I don't even have plastic. <laughs> it's got hair all over it and shit. Nasty. And uh, yeah, so you see loads of scrolls, like in scroll makeup, and you're like, okay, but then you start seeing loads of humans or human-looking thing, and you're like, wait, why would that be the case in the uh, HQ for good old, you know, scroll land? And she explains that. Uh, you have to make a choice. Either you'll be like a civilian or a warrior. Civilians have to stay in the HQ. They can never leave. And they're the ones that are scrolls. But if you're a warrior, you have to assume a role and you have to stick to it forever. Which, um, uh, at first, it's already like, hmm, really? Well, there's so many <laughs> things wrong with that that uh, are to highlight. But I guess we'll go through their reasoning first, and then we can point out how bad that is, and then how bad it is as an idea overall. But then also why, for meta reasons, that this is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they keep their human form to, as she says, because the longer you attach to your shell, the less likely you are to be identified by scrolls or humans. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a minute. Because I feel like, if anything, it makes it more likely. Well, I was actually going to say, you'd think when, when she says, the longer you attach to your shell, you think for a second they're like, wait, is she about to say the better you are at maintaining it, maybe? The more used to you you are? But no, she doesn't make that argument. Oh, she just that. says, hi, Rex. She just yeah. says that uh, it'll make it less likely to be identified, which, as Fringe just said, is like, well, but if you kept changing, then that would make you really and hard to identify. Exactly. Very hard. Be, yeah. And, and more, yeah, like, I, I don't wouldn't you be changing pretty frequently? Because then it makes it harder to, like, hone in and track you and figure out exactly who you are. You'd be changing all the time. I mean, as evidenced by a scene later in this episode where Gravit keeps changing his appearance yep. in a way that makes it difficult for... They do that to one time. <laughs> yeah. Yep, one time and then never again. No, no, and, what, what, crazy. and what I mean like, by one time Steve is that just... seeing him do yeah. it several times in a row, I mean, they never do that again. Yeah, they never do that anymore. Are you talking about the money. Talos, where it was like several of them? They all transformed into Gravik? Talos. No, you can pick either. Oh, I, don't, I don't fucking know what the show wants me to do with that. So pick whatever you want. <laughs> to lose. I think, I think it's a... Um, it seems to be a um, a victim of we have these actors, so those well, actors need not, to be the ones We're not at the meta do. part yet. We were, oh, okay. we were working for it. You have rags, it's going. like you disconnected or something. You yeah. big yeah. old <laughs> chungus. Which, yeah, for anybody who's just curious, uh, I don't know if that's permanently fixed, but if you drop out, he'll, he'll come back whenever possible. Yes. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the downside to that is that if you are... Uh, she, she says, like, you wouldn't be recognized by scrolls or humans, implying that there would be enemy scrolls we wouldn't want to know uh, that we're, we're undercover and stuff. Except that's not the case, because later on... Because her identity is compromised, at least Amelia Clark Gaia identity is compromised on multiple occasions, but she never changes and it causes problems Several for her. Um, 
several people recognize Talos by his yeah, Ben Mendelsohn by form. Who he looks like, mm -hmm. which, yeah. And, and uh, I, what an idiot. He, he could dress up as anybody he wants, but. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maria Hill in the first episode, right away. How, Talos, like, hey. how embarrassing is it that you get recognized as a scroll by your human, human form? Appearance. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, you suck. That's a complete failure in terms of, yeah, in terms of the whole point of it. Um, but I guess that does lead right to the actual, like, meta reason, Why is this happening? Well, Wait, I suppose the, the the reason outside of what Rags was about to say, you could say is budget. It's just much easier to... Uh, it's easier to have them be people than to have I them disagree. in the makeup. I, I'm gonna, I well, might push back against the budget thing. There's no excuse with $200 million. Yeah, there is. It costs well, more money. Well, I mean, it's, well, no, no, no. If they... Yeah, but if you're spending this kind of money, and this is what we're getting, then no, it's I'm, not, I'm not about saying that it's, allocation. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm not saying it's like a good decision, but it is an argument. If you've got them just as regular people, rather than having to go through like four or five hours of makeup, it is cheaper. It has to be cheaper. They, yeah, they cut corners. There's no reason. There's like, so many scenes where we should have saw people in full scroll makeup, but they just skipped. Show them in human form. It's cheaper. Yeah, they, they would tell you. The they would tell you budget is saved, but what's really happening is always poor planning every time. Because yeah. with the same budget, then, we could do incredible things. Yeah, and then there may well just be the thing of actors want to be seen as the character rather than in the makeup. They need to get rid of that. It might be that like, too. This, this whole we need to see my face shit. Like, I well, you're, bringing, sorry, you're always you're always. <laughs> I, I've, about that. I've said this a few <laughs> times, and I would maintain it. Scrolls are the nanotech helmets of shapeshifters. Um, the the complete the, the constant defaulting to like the same physical human appearance, it, it, there's there's no reason for it. There is like no reason for a scroll to keep maintaining like the same like human appearance, especially it, it becomes particularly pronounced in this show because this character that Amelia Clark is playing has her identity compromised and she still maintains that appearance that she herself states that she basically has no affinity for. Yeah. But like she That's keeps doing it, it anyway sense. because and we need to see the actor. We need to see the actor's yeah. face. We need to know who's playing them. It's the same as nanotech helmets. It's the same reason. And it's another it, instance where you forego a really cool design that existed in the comics yep. for the sake of essentially like meta reasons for like it's Vanity. yeah someone in chat's pointed out that was what happened with Mystique, like Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique. Yes. They were like the completely example. forgetting and foregoing the point of that character because we have to the point that it was contra well it's it, it contradicted her arc right like the, mm -hmm. the arc she went on in like the first two movies was essentially coming to accept that she was okay the way that she looked and then i guess she decided that that was not the case anymore well as, as i'm sure many are aware <laughs> jennifer lawrence famously hated Woman the makeup moment. well to in in her Put defense the makeup Rebecca apparently in, uh, in her defense i believe that the makeup actually like irritated her skin pretty significantly I don't even think um, you need that as a good defense. I think getting inside, like, if it's like an eight-hour makeup thing, that's a nightmare. I understand. However, yeah. you've signed on to play Whoa. Mystique. Uh, the, yeah. the, there's, there's an argument to be made there of, like, you're going to have to expect something of a difficulty. But she yeah. also, you I don't know if she star. contractually did it, but, like, she was in how many of them? Was it three or four? She was in four. Yep. She, was in, uh, she was in all of them. Yeah. It was all worth it. the new era X-Men ones. And when you compare the performance of Rebecca, how much, how fantastic she looked in the in the makeup first off, and how much she committed to make, consistently having it on, you very rarely saw her in a real face, and that always drove me That's nuts true. with Jennifer Lawrence. I and Rebecca Romaine was way better as Mystique. Way obviously, better, way obviously. better. Obviously. <laughs> and when you finally saw her get her powers removed, even though that movie is shit, it was actually like impactful when you finally see her as a human, because she was one of the one mutants who was genuinely proud of it. She wasn't ashamed. So it was impactful to see her trying. Well, that's that, that, I guess that that hones in on the point, right? Is that a lot of the time? I mean, it's I don't I don't I don't understand like essentially the there there is no like good story justification for these choices. It's always coming from like meta reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, when we go to New Scrollos and, and yeah. like everyone's just hanging out as humans, Maybe. and they're all like, uh, "We just want to live where we don't have to look like humans." It's like, but but you're here in New Scrollos. Yeah. You, there's no, sense. there's no reason for you to look like a human, but all of you do because it's probably because it's cheaper. Well, it's then you go the opposite direction. They, as characters, feel that they should be able to be scrolls and accepted, and this is the one place where they would obviously we can do that. They would do, and yeah. they would do it proudly. They'd be like, "Yeah, we're back home." Yeah, we're scrolls. No sense. This is where we come from. They couldn't. This, they would want to be, take uh, it off as soon as they go home. Yep. You're a uh, you big spoiler for the whole season. The only time that we actually see Amelia Clark's character as a scroll is after she's been shot for like 10 seconds 
and for the rest of the show she's always looking the same the whole time do you like, think that was really her make- in the makeup i kind of don't I actually uh, yeah. kind of don't think it I think that her. the fact that it's so like uh, off screen, like you ba- you barely even get to see a lot of it, it's like it's probably not worthwhile to get Amelia Clark in the uh, thing compared to just someone who looks enough like a girl well, scroll. At least the guy who played Gravik probably did probably did get yeah. in the makeup for that one scene. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's all a yeah, shame. Yeah, that really. looked like it was him. And it um it, it's just that this is an ex- another time it happens all the time uh, but this just it has heavy effects on the narrative it's hard to take these people seriously telling us how much they deserve to be scrolls on the planet they deserve to be seen that way and it's like you you keep opting for the human camo like what what's going on you prefer if you want it to be a human if it's like a sexual thing it's fine just you know just admit it's it all, it's all good just admit it you know we've all yeah, got they could have addressed it in several different ways but they kept it. The, the way they did it. Is just a contradiction. Like I said, if, I if she had said the longer you stay in the shell, the easier it is to maintain it, like you're more used to it or something. That could be something, but she didn't. That's not the reason that, she well, did that, it all. Yeah, we could absolutely work that into the narrative of, oh shit, I've been found out, and now I have to take on a new form, but that might limit how I can actually use that form. If I'm in a position where I need to be you know, focusing on something, if, if I'm doing something very stressful, or if I'm in a combat situation, then... I might not be able to maintain this appearance. And so, you know, that could be a point of tension, you know, in the show if you need to reuse a scroll character after their cover, so to speak, has been blown. You would think each scroll would have several characters they could play for certain situations. Like, yeah. Instead of just having one person. Absolutely. That obviously I mean, they're just going to abuse. Humans do that. that. No? Well, I mean, this is probably the time to talk about it too. And it's kind of world building, I guess. But, uh, we find out in several instances they have to have someone to copy. They cannot like make something I up. Can't they can't invent uh, an appearance, and they, they can't approximate. Like, but, but there's there's so many things that just don't make sense about that, right? Like, first of all, that that pro- rule is probably in place to give some level of limitation to the scrolls. But every time you see someone with a, a new skin, so to speak, in in all the times of this show, you'll have another character be like, you know, who were they? What did they do? And we get a couple of histories of different people who've been taken by this stuff. We're about to get to a big reveal of what the shells are, so, uh, you know, according to the show. But, yeah, they can't look at, like, a hyper-realistic drawing and do it. That wouldn't work. But I'm pretty sure they can look at photos of people and video cameras of people and do it. Yeah, but I don't know why a hyper-realistic drawing that's interesting from a photograph. Because yeah, exactly. if I drew Amelia Clark, you know, perfectly, and then could she take it from that, or does she have to take it from Amelia Clark? Like, I don't know. And and why? And it's like, mm-mm. And it's just no, a, well, I mean, a cool scene. Showing, well, like, we also their... never find out who she stole the identity of. No. So yeah. there's some person out there in the world <laughs> but it's the same with Ben Mendelsohn Talos like the the guy from uh from Captain Marvel it's just like oh yeah. I guess his identity has been co-opted by this alien <laughs> like forever well and, and you know it, it reasonably they could do it from photorealistic images and then what if I drew a photorealistic Mila Clark but she has like a helicopter hat do, do you copy that too and then what if I made it like a dick do you have to copy that oh do we even get into the whole clothes thing and how they... Uh, they have, like, some nanotech shit. <laughs> nanotech fixes works. everything. That's just how they do it. I mean, the, the funny I... thing is their hair always melts into them. It never, like, falls out because it's all fake or whatever. So, it's, you know, because the scrolls, like, generate it. But it's like, it's, is it all an illusion? Or is it your actual... Are you shape-shifting? Or are we just seeing something different? And the show is just like, shut up. Like, okay. Nobody knows. <laughs> They didn't take Do you much remember time the rule it. they introduced in Captain Marvel, though, regarding the scrolls? Well, which rule? Because there's a there's a couple um, things that, that they break in this. When you a scroll can't re, re, a scroll can't have long lasting memories of someone that it took over, and that was how um, Samuel Jackson was trying to. Um, yeah. The, the, the scene with um with uh, Captain Marvel and Samuel Jackson in the bar, that's what they established. But the lady in this show was basically describing the memories of the person that she took. So it's a complete contradiction of the rules they established in that one. It doesn't make any sense. Well, and that way to find out if someone is or isn't a scroll is never brought up either. And it would be something yeah. I would respect the show slightly more if you had characters being like, okay, tell me some, well, you know, where did we meet? That sort of thing. It's, it's the one test that we came into the show with knowing that there's a test for scrolls. Knowing they can do that and they completely ignore it. Well, this is why, by the way, <laughs> Captain Marvel, as bad as it is, is still mm. better than a lot of the phase end of phase four stuff in phase five shockingly yes yes like there's some stuff in captain marvel that's just like well that's lame but fine 
At least you can follow it. It's yeah. shit, but like it's not, you know, incoherent completely. So she leads I can't believe him. We're complimenting Captain Marvel. I know. <laughs> Go ahead. We know it's the end times. Um, <laughs> we're moving through the base, and this new recruit man, he's not allowed into this secret area, which Amelia Clark goes into, and it's revealed that we have those little mind tampering machines from Captain Marvel. Only they've now got a new thing going on. You put, you put. I imagine this... that's all the Disney writers in there. <laughs> you put them in this. They get stasis or something, stasified. I, I, they don't describe it beyond just seeing it happen. I don't know if they're fed via tubes or if they just, you know, they, they ain't answering any of that. Where human, does their poop go? Tell me, you cowards. Human goes in and then the scroll will take their look and then put their hand on their head and suck out their memory. Well, not suck, copy their memories. Like 100% accurately, I guess, which, which kind of... <laughs> Invite some questions, uh, some pretty lot. existential questions, uh, actually. What does it mean when you have, like, another person's entire mind immediately, like, suddenly implanted into your own head? Well, yeah. You know, there's, what, if there's this, what, there's what about this, the trauma? This show called, uh, you know? this show called like Red vs. Blue. There's a show called Red vs. <laughs> Blue, the Halo Machinima, where a character has an AI unit installed in his brain, and their memories and, like, minds essentially meld in a way that becomes impossible for him to ascertain what his own memories are and what the memories of this unit are. Yeah. So like that's a that's a that's a little halo machinima there more meaningfully exploring the concepts of what it means to have like another person's mind in your head than this massive Marvel production. You know, you know how they treat it? It's like you are you and you and you got uh, you got a hard drive in your pocket and when you take someone as a scroll it all goes on the hard drive and then when someone says hey when did we meet in 1963? You open file 1963, and you open up that character, and then it just reads in a text block what you're supposed to say, and you're like, oh, there you go. They don't treat it as it actually is, which you've just absorbed a whole person's life into yeah. your brain. You know, like, they, they treat it as though it's entirely separated, but I, I don't understand if it's your memory at that point, is it your experience, and thus, you not entirely change as a human being or person. Yeah. It'd be overwhelming. Like they, they don't do anything to to explore that concept. They can't touch these things. Yeah. Just, well, it's just, once again, well, just want you to skip over it. Like if you if you get somebody's mind and all of their biases and their perspectives and values and all of that gets in your brain, how exactly do you like square away still maintaining your own beliefs if you've potentially got very contrary beliefs that are all of a sudden as true to you as they were to that person? It's just like you establish this brand new thing, and then it's just like, oh no, it's, you just get the memories, and then you can use like, them, and it's cool. It's how did not change your values? <laughs> it has to change your values. That, because it's that, a that is person's life. That is one of the many interesting concepts that this show just ignores, and I think that was overall my biggest frustration. Like the idea, about, like what yeah. you just mentioned, the, the idea of alien invasion. There's so many different concepts that could be so interesting, and they just piss them away every time. You're overthinking it. The, the point that's being highlighted here is that you got presented potentially a really good opportunity for some storytelling that would be interesting, and it was completely ignored. Yeah, I, I think at this the point... Exploring as like a culture or their biology and establishing right. rules for them could have been very interesting. I would this say, like, this is the one time I would say it's absolutely we are thinking it. It's, it's literally been presented and then you yeah. just go, so that means this, and the whole show is like, no. No, no it, it just means that they know how to use that information. It's like, okay, it's, it's almost as absurd. Way. It would be as absurd as if this whole area, this whole like plant, had like a radiation aura that would just annihilate people if they got near it, and then just presented a bunch of humans getting brought in and out of here easily with no damage whatsoever. Ah, uh, yeah, that would and be then really. If they had awkward. done that, then we'd be mm. like, oh, I feel like I'm thinking it, and then someone's like, you're overthinking radiation. And we'd be like, no, that's just regular <laughs> thinking. That's just what it yeah. is. <laughs> Explain why it's overthinking. I feel like we're just addressing the problem. Like that's it. Well, you introduce an idea and you go, "Oh, that means that." The, the, it's like, no, you thought about it too much. It's like that's what it is. What do you mean? Like, wh why are you punishing me for thinking about the things you're telling me? They Stop. Got, shot in that. the head. Are they dead? It's like you're overthinking it. It's just a bullet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that's that. How they treat it though. That's it's, it's how they treat it. It's crazy. Because I do think that's really interesting, and I, the pattern for yeah. me was interesting concepts being pissed away constantly. Like, it's just everything. It was, like, the theme of the show for me. And, like, that's another one. Like, that's something that could be an entire episode of a, of a, of a well-written show, exploring how you would really change 
absorbing someone else's whole history for how it would change you fundamentally. Are you able to separate it out like a USB or are you just fucked on the floor trying to process who you really are? Well, and something that gets really, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but later on. Well, don't you want to save it? I have a feeling I know what you're referencing. Yeah, I think you know exactly. It's so funny. All right. Yeah, it is pretty hilarious. Episode three. We'll get there in a couple hours. A couple hours, yeah. So... (laughs) Uh, this obviously the mechanics aside, this is horrifying. Uh, they've collected many, yeah, this, many human beings. They're trapping them in these pods and they're taking over their lives. Because really they can't bad. just you can't just take a photograph of some random ass human of the seven billion that we have. Because the chances of you being confused with that random person are negligible. Don't even worry about it. Just some random photograph of some random person. human in the world. You pick a dead person, absolutely, because you're doing your own thing on news scroll loss. So you just do that, right? Why do you have to take these people and, like, kidnap them all and keep them hidden here? Like, if it's a very specific person, like, uh, uh, if they're very high up or if they're, like, oh, if they were to be, like, a, I don't know, like, a head of state or someone famous, you know, of course you'd have to keep the original. But if it's just a random-ass person that you're using as cover, there's no need for that. Mm-hmm. If anything, it creates another issue. People are going to be looking for that person. And the worst thing that'll yeah. happen is some guy will go, oh, my God, Derek. And then you're like, huh? He's like, oh shit, okay, maybe it's someone else. Sorry. That's it, walk away. So people will think that there's just someone out there who looks just like Derek, isn't that crazy? (laughs) Instead of there's an alien invasion of shapeshifters. (laughs) You could just put on a hat, (laughs) shave your beard, or grow one, and then you'll be Derek but different, and no one will know. No, no, I'm Derek but different. Think about this for 30 seconds, you can think of all the options they could have went with, and when you just realize they do nothing instead, every single time, it's, it's frustrating. Is that he's right? Like people would assume, oh my god, that looks just like some guy I used to know, rather than thinking it's an alien immediately. There's so many ways around this. So it's all very dramatic and scary, and that we see the process. Like some guy gets dragged out, who is a part of Americans Against Russia, by the way. And uh, what? Yeah, that man. He, he's he's one of them. One of them, and he gets put into a pod, and then a scroll takes his place. That's that's we're getting shown how it works. You see, they take someone from a terroristic organization they replace them with a scroll and then they as a scroll join that organization to commit havoc and you see it's the scrolls then but it's actually this other like okie dokie remember fury knows all of this and he's not telling governments because why would you and then of course the british government know but they're not telling anyone either they're not telling anybody (laughs) i don't know what the fuck like it's yeah uh, now that you have two of them, it's just kind of ridiculous that this should this should be getting out. Oh, and by the way, Gaia is on the hook for all this shit. Yep. Because you already know when watching this, the guy is going to be the one we're supposed to like. And I was already like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> she told me all of this happening. She's been involved with him for a while. Look at her off to the side with suspicious looks. She's okay. She doesn't like it fully, okay? The others do. He's not as bad. Peepo sus. Peepo sus indeed. So, the little, uh, you know, the little camera spy cam on Olivia Coleman. She's meeting with the head of, I forget what he's the head of, something. He's the actor that played Vincent Van Gogh in, uh, in Doctor Who. He's also in, he was the oh. Invisible Man in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, Good. Skinner, yeah. Um... I forget his name, though. Someone will know it. I like him, and he d- he has like two lines in this whole series. Someone said cabbage. I don't think that's his name. Uh, Tony Curran. That might be it. Yes, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah someone else said that him. as well. Yeah. yeah. Tony Curran. Invisible Man. I didn't see him. It's like ha 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 ha. Uh, what? Wait, what? So. Oh right, he's invisible. He says, the scrolls have infiltrated many members of high-ranking political institutions. Gravik has plans, but we need to stop the bombs. And the first thing you think is, well, how do either of you know that either of you aren't scrolls? You just mm-hmm. highlighted that the problem is they're in high-ranking members of like political institutions. You are both that. Um, and then the fact that this guy, because this guy is a scroll, we will find out. He's very nonchalant about it. He's like, oh, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. It's like, whenever they're like that, whenever you highlight something <laughs> horrifyingly existential and they're just like, hmm, I don't know, maybe, yeah. Like, oh, maybe you're a scroll. That could be it. Oh my god. But no, another instance where they will not check. This, there needs to be a button, and it, it's just like a, like a soundboard. 
and you click the button in it and there's just a voice that's that asks are you a scrawl and you click that button every time characters meet because you have to mm -hmm. and that should be like an underlying theme throughout this you show know, rags we're gone for a little bit of time there. How do we know you're not I a was. scroll? <laughs> oh, well, um, I could... Here, let me pull out this hair on my, my little fluffy tail, because I'm a dog, and it won't disappear into the wind. Oh, that's how wait, you what can... are you talking about? We don't know that yet. Oh, of course. Oh, you're right. Uh, it, there, it, there's probably... I don't know how you would test. It's probably some really long, in-depth process... That's very, very scientifically intense, and you need special science fiction level technology in a laboratory, or maybe like blood tests or something to find out if I'm a scroll. That's a good point. <laughs> oh, we well. don't know that yet. That's the point. We we're not. We we still got like an hour before we're at that point. <laughs> uh, so yeah, she says what they know is that there are five people that can potentially be contacted to create such a device that the uh, the bombers for America against Russia want to build and that her, she says, my money is on Vasily Poprishin. So, uh, and she says he owns a high-end gallery restoring pigment to paintings and radioactivity to bombs. So, so just to Say clarify, that. right, the, the, they're saying, she's saying that the most likely person that the people with bombs to sabotage and, and frame America for a Russian bombing is going to be this particular guy who is known for fixing up paintings and adding radioactivity to bombs. Adding uh, radioactivity to bombs. Or restoring. <laughs> like it's uh, like like it's on a talent tree. Yeah. Your bombs now do radioactive damage. <laughs> so, cause I, cause this is the thing. When we first watched this, this I got blanked on all this. I didn't even realize this was happening. The second time through, I was like, okay, I'm listening now. And my god, uh, I was like, wait. So was the bomb that goes off radioactive? I don't think they um, mentioned that. It just kills yeah. everybody. I don't think. It, <laughs> I don't remember. Would have had to mention that. Because if it was radioactive, it, it would have wiped out uh, Fury, of course. Fury. Yeah. Well, so. why why bother making it radioactive if the whole point of it was just to make a scene so that for insanely retarded reasons everyone just thinks you know America is responsible for this? What the radioactivity doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a bomb that kills thousands of people. I don't know why they mention it. Why don't they I just bother. say that he's a bomb guy? He makes bombs and he's he makes bombs. bombs. Because if you tell me, oh, there's this guy and he makes bombs, I go, okay, I believe you. But if you tell me I add radioactivity to bombs, I'm like, that's an interesting hobby. So the guy says, uh, raid them now. And then she says, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want to raid them until a scroll picks up the device so that we can track the scroll." And it's like, okay, that, there's, there's reason to that, but you better, this is end of the world stuff. You, you better have- that this is a big risk. That yeah, you're this is you like need, given- you're, you're risking other people's lives by doing this. And you so, need yeah, all of the agents. This is like given uh, launch that. codes to nuclear missiles to the bad guys. No something. margin for error, bring everyone. Make sure that when this exchange happens, oh, you get Marvel. the scroll. Get her down here, get her. <laughs> you know what's funny, by the way, she says that, and then uh, Talos turns it off. And I remember thinking, it was like, well, was that it? Did they say anything else? How do you know? Hello? Like, what if they say something else that's useful? Because he just turns it off after they say about, like, what they're planning to do with tracking, which is just going to be to wait for them to do the pickup. And the other thing I was thinking was, wait a minute, with information I know, like I said, it's kind of relevant. That guy she's talking to is a scroll. He works with uh, Gravik. How is it that, that he didn't tell Gravik and thus the pickup was, the pickup was compromised? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Why didn't he do that? This Don't is the first time. They're still learning how to do that evil. Well, maybe he forgot to ring Gravik. He was like, oh, fuck. Press the buttons, but I didn't, I, I didn't hit go. Oh, it happens. Impressive. <sighs> so yeah, uh, with that information, Fury's like, okay, let's go see the bomb builder. And then Talos is like, but there's going to be MI6 operatives there. And Fury says, we'll incapacitate them. You um, know, <laughs> instead of, uh, like, casually. It's... The like, oh yeah, you know, because we can't tell our guys. No. MI6 knows, but we can't tell our, we can't, we can't tell the FBI or we the CIA. We can't work with MI6 either. 
Yeah, we can't work with him, which is bizarre that we're not doing that already, but well, I remember, guess the show is really insistent that Sonya said out. he's too old, he needs to go back to his retirement space. And he took that personally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually that stupid. Like he's like upset that she said go home. But <laughs> whatever. It's so sensitive throughout the whole season. It's ridiculous. I know, it's only episode one. Crazy, man. No no I, I, this is skipping ahead, but Zero comebacks to anything that anybody says and always phrases things to make himself look as bad as possible instead of like actually like it, yeah, there's so many scenes where he could have said it one way and he says it in the worst way imaginable so they can shit on him again. Crazy. Every time. Um and so yeah, with the operatives question, uh uh Fury's like, let me explain. We're no longer in a war with Gravik, we're in a race with Sonya Falsworth, which is her name, I guess who celebrates a Scorched Earth policy. She'll fuck up everybody who knows the name Gravik. You want to save, you want to save innocent scrolls, you're going to have to hurt people. Uh, <laughs> and then okay. he says... Okay, first off, don't say <laughs> innocent scrolls is an oxymoron. <laughs> At this point, there's only like one good scroll. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it makes me think, what's wrong with you? Are you broken? Don't worry, some of them uh, betray <laughs> their own team. So, you know, some, some extras in there, maybe. Half and half. Uh, he says, Gravik knows your weakness is your mercy. So it's time for you to prove him wrong. This does have a um, payoff, by the way, and it's awful. It's in episode three. You remember? Yes, I remember. I know what it so is. So fucking yeah. stupid. Um, but everything to do, yeah, like that was absurd. <laughs> well, so yeah, when he says we got MI6 operatives to deal with, he's not saying I can't hurt them or kill them. It's that it's probably wrong to do that to people who are working in the exact same, you know, potential as us to stop a horrible bombing from happening, and we're gonna we're gonna attack them. And the Fury's like, let me explain. The bad guy thinks you, uh, you know, like always give mercy out. So we got to prove him wrong. Like that's an it interesting. Just doesn't address what he said. <laughs> It's like if someone said, you'd, you'd never betray your values and join me on the dark side. It's like, well, you can't let him, you, you gotta prove him wrong, man. You gotta prove the bad guy wrong, you can't let him, <laughs> can't let him do that to you. Yeah. It just doesn't address the point at all, but it's like, end of scene, bye. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. He's got mercy issues, he's too merciful. That's... So, uh, Fury's been noted now by Team Skrull. And his uh, his second in command, uh, I think his name is Pagan, says uh, that his man spotted Fury and that he's washed up, he's limp, and he barely sees out of his good eye. He's a bum. <laughs> he's just like what? <laughs> just double down on that Fury hate. And uh, the scene is weird because uh, he says he got all the information from a guy, and then Gravik is like, "So you've let other people know that Fury is like." You know, we've let people more than the circle know about this. He's like, no, it's just me and you. And he says, oh, so you're trying to protect me, or you're trying to protect the cause? And it's such a, like, what's going on? What, what is happening? He's just giving you information that Fury is involved. That's all. Why are you so mad? <laughs> and, and it just comes across sometimes, like, are we doing, like, a, this is the villain, he's, he's mean. And we get a lot yeah. more of those scenes as the fucking show goes on. Um, yeah, and, and he says, you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm protecting you and the cause. You are the cause. And then Gravik's like, I'm not the cause. The cause is home. We go tomorrow and we don't stop until Earth is ours. Oh my and, and, god. As, as an audience member, you're like, you're gonna blow up Russia, blame America, and hope that Earth ends up being yours. Okay. It's just a shit plan. <laughs> it's a really shit plan. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Everything that comes out of that guy's mouth, I'm just like, what? Like, it's not gonna work, dude. <laughs> like, every time. You know what would destroy know, the plan? His fury telling governments about it. That's all. Seriously. Carol Danvers is coming back. Where's that bitch at? This, the know. whole season, I was wondering, where is everyone? Where's Doctor Strange? Where's Riri? They just, I, I know you, they can't afford the actors, but like, at least justify it within Why can't the they spend their money on that instead of spending their money on. I actually don't really know what they're spending their money on. <laughs> CG, knows. I guess. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Like, cut out all the crappy big fights and add in a few more. Like, fucking, if you had Benedict Cumberbatch be in this, I'd probably smile. I still like him. Even I if <laughs> I hate Doctor really Strange. Like... Imagine he showed up in character, like, uh, 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 Doctor Strange who actually gave a fuck and, like, you know, actually cleaned this up and, and did something useful for once. He's been a dumbass in his last three movies. 
So, uh, yeah, we, we get to the, the big day. We got uh, Talos knocks out two MI6 agents, and then we never think about them again. That's all, you know, it, it's like they show us that as a courtesy, I think. Like, the MI6 people are out now. You're like, okay, sure. Um, the one that's there to pick up the bomb is actually uh, Gaia. That is, that is her name, Daenerys Gaia. I'm going to switch between those two, probably, names, but that's who Gaia is. Uh, and... and so they arrive like late. They they miss the drop and they essentially miss her. We'll get back to her in a second. But like they're like bantering Talos and uh, Fury, and they just they miss the drop. And and I was just like, I can't believe how casually we're treating this when from their point of view, it's the end of the world. Yep. It's like every fucking Marvel movie. Nobody actually cares. Now here comes something. There's a chained up door, and Talos just pulls off the chains because he's that strong. Apparently, the scrolls are just, like, very strong. <laughs> I do not remember that at all. That they were that no. strong. But then again, I guess, real, uh, compared to Captain Marvel or, like, a Kree generally stronger well, the, than people. The big problem is he, he fucking fist fights Fury in that film. Uh, oh, yeah, but he, he does beat him. He doesn't beat, he doesn't <laughs> yeah, beat him like this. Like instantly. this. Oh, like, no, he doesn't beat him strong, convincingly. He should, Fury should be dead. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, no, I agree. Off. It's yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's weird. They seem to be a lot stronger than they were before. So yeah, that's just keep that in mind. I guess it's it's not even going to come up that often. It's not like for big payoffs, at least. No, for not really. But Be yeah, because part of the problem is that they start scaling up the scrolls. Mm -hmm. Well, one of them, well, two of them, significantly. And uh, Fury makes a comment, he's like, oh, you're still strong even though you're, like, old. And then he's like, I'm only 40 in human years. I haven't even gotten to my midlife crisis shopping spree yet. What did you get for yours? And it's just like, who fucking wrote that? This is this is great <laughs> dialogue, you guys. This is really, really interesting and, and engaging. Because you might think, with a with a setup, quote-unquote, like that, what, what do you think the joke's gonna be? You're like, I don't know. What, 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 that was so random and weird, I don't even know what the hell I'm supposed to do. And it's like, well, Fury says, the Avengers. <laughs> okay. <Got> See, the... <laughs> it's fun banter. It's really fun, witty banter. And you're like, you're saying Fury got the Avengers in, as, and he sees it as like a midnight midlife crisis option? Why? Why do they do this? I don't know. So fucking dumb. <laughs> Oh god, it's just like that's not the impression that? I got from the Avengers movie that he was of a midlife crisis. Yeah, that's what they. That, that's not the impression I got. He's Sorry. old. He can't see anymore. He's weak. He's exhausted, and he is on a midlife April. crisis. You're like, okay, it's just like how he lost his eye from a cat, not mm -hmm. from fighting uh, a fucking on, battle or something. We're on episode <laughs> one, and this guy's just shredded. Like it gets so much worse. It's crazy. So, like I said, they missed the drop, but luckily, uh. Where Gaia's just walking, much like anyone is, right? There's people walking everywhere. They're all over the place. She's just walking with a bag, and this is enough to tip off Hill. Like, Maria Hill's in a car, and she's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god, a woman a with holding a bag. A bag. That's it. Sure it's a like, bitch with a bag. <laughs> it's, they already know that this is a scroll thing, so it could be anyone. And she's like, wait a minute. I know her from Game of Thrones. She's famous. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> actually <laughs> sad as fuck because you create a problem and then you solve it with the worst shit ever like why were you late for the drop just don't be late and then tell maria hill she's coming out she's she's already on her way out she'll be coming out of this door and then follow that person simple because now it's just garbage <laughs> <laughs> yeah a why, little bit why would you write it this way so uh I to see maria hill get beat up by daenerys i don't even know why they did that scene she just got wrecked yeah. Now, they need information out of this painter bomb man. So Fury's got a gun on him. They know he's a Skrull. And so, you know, it's pretty simple. You could just, you could do the whole shoot him in the foot thing or uh, tie him up and then start torturing him, that sort of stuff. Instead, he decides to let Talos start beating him up and then he starts beating Talos up. It's really weird. And they start fighting. It gets more and more intense until Talos has pretty much lost the fight. Kind of, and then Fury executes the guy. It's like, what are we doing? It's just, it's, it's, it's a bizarre, it's a really bizarre scene. I think it was like the writers were like, we gotta get them to accidentally kill him because they can't have the information he's gonna have yet. It's too early. Right, and, and this is their, their form of problem solving, essentially. 
it's, it's, it's a <laughs> meme that actually becomes incredibly pot heavy relevant. Like it's like <laughs> you can take him. He's like, yeah, I can't. He has a couple lines while they're fighting. Like this is my fight, Fury. And she's like, what? What? What's going on? It's like, is, is this a pride thing? And yeah, Fury has yeah, to. seem really invested. It's like, why do they never shoot the fucking leg? Shoot his leg. And then do the thing they do in movies where you stand on it and they go, owie. No, and then you, you ask the question. You shoot him in the knee and then you kick him. You exactly. go, it's, it's, it's classic. <laughs> but no, Fury then, just yeah. executes him and then they're like, whoops. Yeah, and it's like, oh, oh shit. That, and think about how consequential this is. Wow. Just keep it in mind that, like, this ruins everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it ruins their entire and by the plan way, and all of This exact scenario up. happens again in episode three. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's just the Rise only know how to do this. Uh, oh, and this is the one, I think, where uh, he's on the ground, it cuts to Fury, and then it cuts back, and he's a scroll. Like, uh, I think they yeah, hear the squelchy right. sound. They, they cut away, and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there he is. There we go. Got, got, got him. <laughs> That sound, oh man. Yeah, and then Maria Hill and Daenerys fight each other. It's awkward because we just established that Skrulls is super strong, so she'd probably kill yeah. her with a punch. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you can rip off a chain off of a door with your bare hands... Yeah, yeah I yeah. don't know. You're gonna hurt people. And also, in this fight, doesn't he, like, punch through the, like, concrete pillar? I like, think so, there? yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're pretty... This Which, is what I mean. Um, this is like, this doesn't feel like we do, but whatever. Well, it's just... If Captain if Captain America punches you in the chest, it's over. And the, and these guys seem to be like about that strong. Daenerys punches her in I don't the even head think, in the fight. I don't think even Captain America could rip a chain off like a door. You know <laughs> that feels weird to me seeing him do that. Yeah, well, you'd see him hit it with a shield like down. Exactly. Yes, that's how he'd do that's that. What he would do. Uh, yeah. So Fury and Talos are then going to catch up with this happening because Maria's like on comms with them. And so Talos shows up with a gun on Gaia, who is his daughter. We're about to get that revealed. Fury has disappeared. We will not see him again, like, until other scenes. <laughs> He's just gone now. It's so fucking dumb. Just out of the show. And so, yeah, um, we have some back and forth here. This awkward family dynamics. He's like, oh my god, give me the bomb. And then she's like, you are a shitty leader. You fucked up the scrolls." And uh, then he's like, this isn't what your mum would have wanted. Her last words were, find Gaia. And then, uh, I thought this was so bad. She's like, what? And it cuts back to him and he goes, she's dead. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like, can Did you, you really imagine? The, you're the father of the daughter who's, your, your wife died, you've seen her, you know she doesn't know, and you say, the last words when I should find you. And then she's like, oh my god, you go, oh, uh, yeah, she's dead. <laughs> like, you should probably open with that, right? Like, be like, uh, I have some really awful news for you, but no, he's like, oh shit, yeah, you don't know, right, okay, yeah, she's dead. And uh, he says that the people, the people that Gaia works for, uh, who killed her. So, a bit mm. more on that. And it seems like that's going to be more of the drive for uh, her eventual turn, more so than the evil plan. Yes. <laughs> that got big. It seems like she cares a lot more the, about just her mom. Gravik's like plan is something I think this show doesn't want you to think she believes in, but it has to be that way. At but least she for has me. to. Yeah. She participating with them for this long, and their plan is to nuke the world and <laughs> kill all humans. That's their plan. Well, yeah, we, we've kind of been over it, but if anyone didn't understand, like, how it was supposed to work, it's like, we false flag attacks on either side, and then we cause an all-out nuclear war between nuclear everybody, war. everyone's yep. wiped out, and then the scrolls take over because they're immune to radioactivity. Bear in mind that in Avengers, Loki wants to rule the world. He doesn't even want to destroy it, he just wants to take yeah. it over. Yep. By comparison. Add Loki. I miss him. Good lad. And gone for so long. Uh, yeah, and, and so I guess we didn't even address it back then, but it's like, isn't that a crazy plan? It's like, it gives them the whole planet. It's like, yes, it gives them a, a, a radiated, them a like, destroyed wasteland. Destroyed. And then there's also just the fact that all of these people have to somehow manage to keep living fairly comfortably despite participating in ending billions of lives, including all of the animals as well. Yep. You know, so you got people and the animals all gone, all the trees destroyed, the entire... And it's, in, in the next episode, Gravik's like, oh yeah, humans destroy their planet, not like me, who wants to absolutely <laughs> yeah. destroy it. But <laughs> for, yeah, I think, I think he actually says, it. like, I'll give them what they, they're heading to, or something like that. I was like, oh, well then, how are you sitting there talking about how humans suck if you're just gonna do it, but to a much worse <laughs> degree? I think he would actually say to you, like, but I'm self-aware. 
they're not. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's just... <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. It's crazy how quickly he became a shitty villain. It happened like, oh, yeah. so quick. So quick. Just well, yeah. yeah, we'll get scenes for it. We'll talk about it. Um, For now, uh, he really wants the bomb off here, because remember, this bomb will be detonated somewhere in Russia to kill a whole bunch of people to be blamed on America. It is very important that you do not let her leave with this bomb. So he says... Please, give me the bomb. And then she says, I can't. And he says, you know I'll protect you. And she says, you can't protect anyone. And she leaves. That's it. Yeah, I know, right? It's just like, ugh. And he lets her go. He lets her go with the bomb. With Maria the Hill is currently, like, exhausted on the floor, winded, and Fury's just not yet. existing. So, <laughs> that's it. She's gone. She had the bomb and she left with it. Awful. And he let her go Steve. because it's, her do it's his daughter. And I was like, motherfucker, you will shoot your daughter in the leg, okay? You could do it. <laughs> but no, she gets out with the bomb. And by the way, this bomb does go off. This she is on the and hook kills, once again. It kills thousands of people, thousands. She has a moment where she cries because her mom's dead, though. That's but she doesn't. Character. Yeah, but but at, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy that the show like doesn't understand what the scrolls' plans are. Yeah, and what all no of them are trying to. God, isn't random death to... sad? It's like yes. Uh, what was your plan again? <laughs> Nuke everything? Right, yeah, okay. Remember they make a big deal out of children having died? It's like, your plan is to nuke Earth. A lot Minus of children to, are gonna to, die. To, 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 to like, can you the account for these things? Like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's as though she hasn't considered what her plan actually entails. But yeah. how could you not? You want to cause a nuclear war. That's gonna kill billions of people. You don't even- and like I, I never... said, he doesn't have to kill her. Just, just stop her. He could've grabbed her leg, but... Mm. Mm -hmm. but whatever. He just let her go. He was sad. Alice was sad. Yeah. So. They never really have a sit down discussion to like really no. go in depth with the plan. Like, Gravos' his thought process, why he's taking this so personally. Because for me, I could believe that there could be a Gravic character, even if this is stupid and it's like all over. The problem. problem I, could believe, I, I, I could believe one person could be that stubborn, but an entire faction? You got to explain that to me. The problem, the problem that the show has, I think, might just be down to its very existence as a show. They established the scrolls as, like, basically good guys in Captain Marvel, but they're kind of not in the comics, and Secret Invasion is about them trying to take over the world. And so they need to try and find some way to essentially justify some big end-of-the-world story involving the scrolls trying to destroy the world. And it's like, the problem that they have is that they try to be like, oh, but see, the scrolls are sad because they didn't get a home. They're sad because, you know, Fury made mm -hmm. him a promise and he didn't keep it. We're jumping ahead a little bit. Well, that's yeah, essentially we'll get, yeah. the crux of their... That's like the crux of... But, but it's like, okay, but you have to acknowledge that their plan is to nuke the world. Yeah. They want to end and humanity. E and even address what steps did they take to do on their own? Like, what did... what? Like, are you just waiting, bitching, crying for Fury because he, he broke his promise? What steps did they take to actually... Um, make a home on Earth or actually find their own spots. Like, we don't really know what, what things they did. It just feels like they're just complaining about Fury. It's like, what have you done on your own? It's like, I don't understand why they suddenly have no agency. The The problem is that the show has to try and be vague because if it gets into the specifics of what the Skrulls are actually planning to do, you can't write your story of like, oh, poor Skrulls, when yeah. it seems like everybody except for Talos is p totally comfortable with nuking humanity. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it'll be the train scene we can get into into depth on yeah, this whole yeah. how Fury failed because the, the oh, don't worry the show just shovels shit on him every single scene. Constantly. Speaking of yeah. which, he walks into a bar and he's like gonna go grab a drink. He's meeting uh, Maria Hill here, and some guy, some fucking guy, just looks at him and goes, "Hmm, stare at me all you want. You'll never be the man you once were." <laughs> like, what is <laughs> going <laughs> on? <laughs> Is that what? What? Is <laughs> this is so fucking random. <laughs> what the fuck are you, buddy? Like just talking shit. Some random oh, guy who's just like, I fucking hate you, Nick Fury, and <laughs> your shit. This isn't even the most random one. It's further down in the season, the guy who's just in the plane who's like shit says he should be mothballs or some shit. Yeah, yeah, that guy? yeah. Really That's the Black that Widow guy. I was, I, I'm like, I knew I recognized that guy. Oh, well, from we'll, Black Widow. Yeah. That'll be funny to announce to chat yeah, the awesome cameo sure. of that episode that everyone was hoping he'd come back, and yet there he was. Ugh, legendary. But yes, this this guy just throws shade at Fury for no reason at all. <laughs> it's like, you know for a it's fact that. That's shade, the... that's sheltering darkness. It's uh, You know the writers were like, yeah, but it's on theme. Like, what the fuck is. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you made up the fucking theme. <laughs> like, 
It's all bullshit. It is. Um, and this is the I, part. Oh, wait, go ahead. I, I was going to say, um, I don't know. I kind of lost track. Which did they mention more? The fact that he's old and worthless or the fact that he's black? Like, they keep having to mention Ooh, that. Constantly. That comes up yeah. more. And his race was never a factor. It was never well, a factor, yet they constantly have to mention it. The thing is, like, it could be implemented really well, but it's super cringe in this show. And yeah, we'll get that plenty of that. My point. There's so many examples I could think of in my head where they actually implement these things properly, where it's tasteful and you could believe it's a scene that's, you know, would actually take place. The whole Moscow scene with him walking through at night and, like, the only people he sees are, like, everyone's like, oh, scary black man every single time. Even the kid. Like, why is there even a kid out, out at yeah, night? Play with, well, bed? to I be fair, that's a scroll, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the kid? Yeah, because we see her later in the um, the sequence in the third act of the episode, I, I guess. I will give them a pass if she's a scroll. She's a scroll, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Send that child to bed. It didn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> stupid scene. Um, but yeah, it's so forced. Because we have here, uh, so that guy said that, and Maria Hill's like, do you know that guy? And then Fury says, how do you think we kept the Cold War from getting hot? Uh, spooks buying shots. And she says, oh, you can't say that. And he says, no, you can't say that. <laughs> Which is... the, the show thinks it's so fucking <laughs> oh my god what are they doing what do they think they're achieving with these lines it's just so cringy <laughs> you see because he's black and spies are called and... oh! 90% of the audience is not even going to know that or even reference it like most people aren't going to know those terms like right off the bat I, I assumed it was something along those lines, but like, why, why are we doing this? When yeah, like, we're supposed to know the scary? latest, like, racial slur. <laughs> <laughs> Up to date on all the racial slurs. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Because for me, it's, uh, he, um, his personal life wasn't a big factor. Like, he kept all that shit away. His, 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 the fact, like, and it seems like that's the main focus now. And I don't understand why they would even bother with that. Yeah, it's just the thing. Like, in certain scenes, you'll. I'm pretty. Like, I don't. I don't really care if you noticed or not. But I've noticed they they really like blacken him up in certain. It's like he'll just be you know just, just a little too yeah you know. In terms of his um, are you literally talking about his skin tone here or the, his delivery of the lines? His both. Like he'll like him, this, his this one scene with Rhodey. His scenes yeah, his, with Rhodey, especially his scenes with Rhodey, but like this, be, they, all of those scenes could have been like, like, oh my god, those those ones were were, yeah, those were killing me. <laughs> yeah, but there's a <laughs> scene, especially when he's on the train with Talos, and he's like, he was talking about oh my fry, god. fried chicken with his yeah. mama. Yes. Um, that was the one. Like, where are you going with this? Forty hours of this shit story for a setup, and it didn't even really <sighs> accomplish anything. And I'm just thinking of all the better ways they could have did that and had an actual something meaningful out of that. That was just pretentious nonsense. Yeah, like, fuck they the were, de button. they were, yeah, they were definitely trying to re replicate <laughs> beach he had in the elevator with Steve in uh, Winter Soldier. They were trying oh, to do that. Oh yeah, I remember shit. that scene. I liked that but one they, for they, memory. They niggified it in this one. <laughs> they yes, they they don't know. It's they're so shit. When it comes to fucking anything with racial tensions or anything, it's just it's. Yeah. Have you seen the Have you seen the Hurricane with Denzel? Yeah, no. I've seen that. Yeah, that's one of my favorite biopics, and Denzel just kills in that movie, and that's one of the movies that explores cultural issues in a tasteful way. Yeah, yeah. you know, there's one scene where a Denzel. It. Yeah, there's one scene where Denzel's driving with a friend of his. The cop pulls him, mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah, the cop's like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, we're like, like two uh, Negro in a car and some shit. And yeah, and and and, and yeah, yep. Denzel's like any two. Any two will do. And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, he kills it. it though, and it's, it feels genuine. Everything makes sense. With this, it's like, you just want brownie points. You know what the fuck you're doing. You're trash. Yeah. You, like, this isn't a, a, a proper way to explore cultural issues. It's not a, it's, it's forced diversity. That's all it is. It's, it's, it's crap. And it's cringe to watch Samuel Jackson and, and Rhodey do these things. Because I like both those actors. I fucking love the characters. <laughs> like, oh, I got so much to say about Rhodey. We're not there yeah, yet, though. We're not even close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to skip ahead, but those those ones just stood out to me like a sore thumb. So, mm -hmm. uh, you got you, it's all that, but then you know, uh, remember we've had like fucking four characters tell Ro uh, Fury how useless he is. But Maria's like, "So, are you gonna explain to me why you abandoned Earth?" And he says, "Oh, I, I was building out Saber," and she just calls him a liar. He says, "Okay, I had a crisis of faith." Then she says, "Well, why are you back then?" And he says, it followed me up there, and I owe Talos. And I'm so fucking lost. It's like, a what crisis of faith? <laughs> what? Like, what do, do you mean? Miss a movie? 
<laughs> what is it even referencing? Like, that he lost faith in in being Nick Fury? It lost faith know. in defending Earth? I gave up trying to figure out what they're trying to say. Like, they, I, they, I legit they don't get it, because they they're explicit about reasoning for other things later, and they're really bad arguments, but this one I actually just don't even know what they were trying to say. I, I don't get it. Um, and before you can even think about it, Maria says, uh, you sure you're not talking about someone else? The Fury I know was always three steps ahead. Your lack of contact is obvious. You're not ready for this. A real threat is out there. You were never the same after the blip. They just yeah. keep insisting that this is the case. <laughs> keep telling us. It insists I, I, on itself. Yeah. It's, and it feels like almost like every 12 minutes or something, like there's like a rhythm to it. They need you, they don't, they gotta make sure you don't forget within the episode that he's shit and he can't do it anymore. Well, I thought like, it was particularly, that, number five? I thought it was particularly interesting of them to take a character, a, a, a sort of older type, uh, who's, who's like a veteran hero, and sort of make him despondent and useless and have everyone point that out. I thought that was a cool new idea. And it's just really like, brilliant, maybe profound, take it, you know, see where it goes. We don't usually do that with everyone. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be yeah. fun. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it got funny at this point. It was like, why is everybody taking the time to tell Fury how useless he is? <laughs> like, what's yeah. going on? Even Guy in Bar could resist. So. This random guy, yeah. That this was the one where I'm like, okay, dude. I don't even know your name, dude. <laughs> like, this is like, when we're pushing it to this point, you can just really clear, you can clearly see their intentions were just to humiliate them. Any mm. chance they got. And then she says, you once said, meaning Fury, that there's no shame in walking away when your steps are uncertain. So check your footing. Or, and then she looks at the screen and grabs the camera and pushes it right up to her face and says, or someone will get hurt. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, hmm. What is she, what is she hmm. talking about? Oh, that's bad. Yeah, you know, it could mean anything. Um, Really lame and annoying, and you're like, God, we got like five minutes of episode left. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Um, And then the thing happens. Here it is. Oh, I was waiting for how I was gonna go about trying to play this. I think I should be able to get away with just playing the clips, actually, but... Um, if, uh, for the sake of the people here, I'll be, uh, you guys, if you can pull up the stream, I will try and play the clips with volume on so you can actually hear what, what was done. Where is it? It's so fucking fast. I'll, uh, I'll tell you when, I'm just setting up a second, but basically the scene is Fury remembers the blip. Oh. <laughs> he's uh, he's having his moment. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm sad because the, the blip was a thing that happened. Now, uh, what I want to show you, and you could have gotten this from memory anyway, I'll show you the scene in Infinity War, and then I'll show you the scene they show us in uh, in this show. So here I go, I'm about to start up, so if you guys can load up the stream so you can hear it as well, I'll, I'll just not speak until both are done. So this is number one, the original. Oh no. Well done. That's the original. Now I'm gonna play their version. Did they change it? Catch that? There you go. That's the best I could do to show you. We'll start talking about it now. They've That's changed the audio. They lied. They what? lied. In the Wait, original. I had it muted. I had it muted. What did I miss? Well, if you want to. Just scroll back on the stream, you can listen to it. You just have to mute us for a second, because... So, if, if, if you're unclear, what's happened here is that they've taken the original, when he realizes he's getting snapped, he does what Nick Fury would do, and basically go, Oh shit, I got hit with the, with the dust in. That means I'm out of the game. It's like getting hit with a ball in dodgeball, but your team's still in. You're like, Ugh, I can't help now, and I'm not a part of it, but... Hopefully they can do it. And, you know, he's, he's, Nick, he's Samuel Jackson. He often plays characters who treat even the most dire situations in ways that are, like, pretty fun. And he always has been that as Nick Fury. And so we've seen, like, the dire circumstances of this whole movie. We see this, and this is supposed to be, like, a relatively hopeful spark of a moment. Just before he got dusted, he was able to uh, pull Carol Danvers as much as we love her. I know, but that's what it happens in Infinity War. And so he's like... Oh, motherfucker. Like, god damn it, I'm out. And he, he's a signature line. In the new version, him remembering it, he's like, Oh, 
Motherfucker. Motherfucker. They changed the code. Uh, oh my yeah, god. I didn't notice is, that. This is a retcon. This is a retcon. A, really a big one. one. This is a Ryan a Johnson really, level really retcon. Bad. This That's is treachery. a really bad one. That's just it's, like, it's, you're just lying yeah, to Yeah, I think it's fair to say that. I think it is pretty much as close as you can get to, like, lying in a story. Just you're relying up, on like... people not remembering how it played out originally, and you needed to change it because otherwise your story doesn't function. <laughs> and they you put on the sad music. Like the violin's like... Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't a sad scene. Like, they're a pe That's No. It's like you said before, the, the way that the scene is meant to be read is like, ah, oh, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm out of this situation like mm. i can't i'm gone so now i can't do anything so now i just have to rely essentially on other people to solve this problem without me well if anything yeah. for an now, analysis of character it's really cool how on the ball he was he saw maria hill get dusted and he grabbed and the instantly. thing that calls captain yeah. marvel just before he got dusted it's yep. it's it's something you judge his character for like he knows he's about to die he saw what happened to her but he's still making tactical decisions we got to get carol danvers there and that's 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 the scene. It's it was a great way to go out, and for them to just fuck with it like that, I didn't even notice that. That's that's that's. that's I think they're, they're relying on you. It's not really manipulative. It. They're relying on you not remembering. That's part of the reason I'm extra irritated now. Like, had I noticed that on my own and we were talking about it now, I'd be able to laugh about it. But now, fresh, I'm like, you motherfuckers. Yeah, just that's manipulating fair. Manipulating your audience. <laughs> Just completely manipulating your audience. That's just a straight up lie. Look how sad he is thinking about that sad <laughs> sequence where violins just came out of nowhere and started like playing behind him and around him. Because, like you said, he did it knowing he was going to die. I think it's slightly more interesting that he knew it knowing he may very well die. And then he noticed his hand and he was like, oh, for fuck's sake, like it is me. I rolled the dice and I've lost. Some of the most interesting things for a death scene. Could be the decisions they make when they know they're about to die. They're yeah. About to die. Like, what can I gamble? Like, what can I do to provide help for my people in the last in my last breath? Like, there's so much character you can get out of that that one moment. And <laughs> I just to, to retcon that. Like, that's that's probably like one of the things that irritates me the most over anything in the show now. Now, now that you've pointed that out, that's that's not cool. Well, you so can make you your shit shows, but like, don't fucking lie to your audience and try to manipulate people like that. It doesn't take much to now figure out once you see that you're like, oh, we're uh, we're just we're just going this direction. Fury is depressed because he failed. Yep. That's that's like the main thing the show is doing, and they've had to they have had to shove so much shit Which, that doesn't uh, make any he sense in it. He, he no, if we're talking about the blip, absolutely, yeah. And that's the thing that, that you he hear what, It's what <laughs> Olivia <laughs> Coleman said. She's like, you're you're always sad now because there are threats that are bigger than you that you can't stop or whatever. There Referencing the Thanos, she said you weren't the same after the blip. Threats. What's the, what's the fuck? What's this so woman talking she, about? She Every said, whole point, the whole point of the Avengers as an initiative yes. was him getting together a team of people that could do things that he couldn't do, that regular the regular human beings couldn't do. Point. It's, 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 it's that's what I mean. Lines like that. It's like, have you? ever watched this character before like how could you say that oh as we see about they character? did watch they did watch a prior scene <laughs> and then they knew that they had to dub it over with that's even funnier than that oh man why not even so say they that? knew yeah, <laughs> they knew I... they had to know yeah 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 you're right that's, that's it's that's terrible funny. isn't it it is when you really wrap it all around like yeah that's the picture you just painted there just irritates me as much as anything else in this whole season because that's that's extra manipulative for something that I really, really like that scene. And now I'm forced to think about that every time. Like, rewatch Infinity War, that's going to be in the back of my head. Like, ah, it's terrible. Uh, it's a shame because it's kind of like a cool thing for Fury, that reaction, because it just backs mm -hmm. up everything we know about yeah. him. And now they're trying to yeah. retcon it into uh, he's going on a character arc because he's more depressed now than ever that he got blipped. Remember, Olivia Coleman and Maria Hill, they both said it. They both said, you've changed after the blip, Fury. Like, no, he didn't. Yeah. We saw him after the blip. He well, was exactly the fucking same. I, was, I mean, Lying. they insist that you've changed. So, yeah, I mean, the, as close to you as you can get, the storytelling equivalent. Um, when you see him on the spaceship in Far From Home, he looks like... He, that's not how he, he looks, looks now when he gets off. Yeah, yeah the, he looks fine. He aged like twenty years. Since I then. guarantee you, the purpose of that scene when they made it was to be like, "Look, yeah. he looks chill, doesn't he? He looks chill, doesn't he? Oh, we move out, and he's actually in control of this enormous facility, all based in like space military sort of stuff." You're like, "Oh, that does seem like a fury thing, where more than meets the eye." That sort of angle. It's like, no, he was depressed, very depressed. <laughs> like, oh, I don't believe you. Oh no, yeah. I didn't catch that. Because it's fucking lies. They had something else to do this time.
Seriously. There's a Gravik scene where um, his subordinate is like, I guess we can go ahead with our crazy plan to blow up the, uh, I forget, where, where are they blowing up? Do you remember if it was like a town name or anything? Or an area? It's not... I can't remember if it was like a monument. It's just a place, it right? A, it was like a. It was. It was some. It was like un, Unity Day or something like. Yeah, it was some, some celebration. Sort of, yeah. So um, then because this show is terrible, they have Gaia being conflicted, and she says maybe we should postpone. And then he just goes, "No, we have the bait now, thanks to you." And it, it's, it's like okay. it, it feels like they had this scene in here just to tell me that it's now entirely her fault that this is going to happen. And yet, the show doesn't at all seem to believe that. No, she gets off the hook quite a bit in this show, you could argue. Uh, it's, yes. <laughs> yeah, not a lot. No, not only does she show. not get- she, she, she doesn't just get off the hook, she is rewarded immensely. Yeah. We'll get to that in we 10 will. hours. <laughs> so, um, I know, it's, it's, I'm actually kind of surprised. We're not done with episode one and we are coming As up to I've... three hours. <laughs> I will say- the uh, the episodes, we'll yeah. Not only are we we've covered a lot of the foundational stuff, but like the episodes get much shorter. In fact, uh, yeah, the last episode, right. there's like two big scenes in the last episode that are happening, <laughs> and then it's it. over. Yeah, uh, and we've covered a lot of things that we can probably skip over for. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So random There's lady so get gets in taxi with random guy, and it turns out the this is Gaia using a disguise, which. Like, we never, ever, ever see. And this is like, oh, good. It is because she's meeting Talos, who's also wearing a disguise, as far as I'm aware. And then when they get to the place that they're gonna go... They go back they to normal. decide to undisguise. Why? Well, it's not even normal. It's an identity that means nothing to them. That's people, true. So. But they treat it like it's their default, and therefore I have to they say do. normal. They, <laughs> like, that's, that's what yeah, they do. You have to say normal, because that's what they... Yeah, it's really stupid, is what it is. Um... So yeah, he's like, thanks for coming to see me, which is so hard for me to watch. I'm like, you should be fucking furious with her right now. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and then uh, he says, you know, you, you're taking a risk, I understand that. And then she says, a risk? Did you explain that to Bub? But I was just saying, they're like, the, the mother was killed by your guys. <laughs> what you, what you, how can you lay that on Talos? That doesn't even make sense. Like, what? And then he says, yeah, she died while working for, uh, while you were working for her killer, so don't go down that road. I was like, yeah, you already told her this. And I don't understand how she wouldn't have known, and I don't understand what, what Gravik would think would happen if she was to find out about it, but whatever. Um, and she says, the attack is planned for tomorrow, there are three bombs, and he knows you'll be there. And he says, how? And she says, I have no idea. And there, is, there are hundreds of scrolls in the field, or I think she says a hundred scrolls in the field. Um... Identities that are secret even from us. And uh, he says your mum would be proud for that. You understand that the information that she's given him isn't that useful? No, it's, it's, Three not, bombs. it's not very useful at all. And as it turns out, it doesn't help them even remotely. No. In, in fact, it probably hindered them significantly. <laughs> but uh, uh, The last line she has after that is, Tomorrow, each bag is going to be marked with infrared spray, and I'm going to be one of the couriers. Okay, so there'll be three carrying three, and you've got to get all three of them off them before they explode. And I was already thinking, like, well, are we accounting for the fact that if... Are these bombs set to explode if they're tampered with? Can you even grab them off these people? Like, are they just going to detonate anyway? They're already at the preferred blast zone. What's the plan? Like, what, what are we... It's like, yeah, those are where the bombs are. It's like, yes, but this is also where they're planning to blow them up. So... And it's just like, no, we got yeah. all, thank you for all the information. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't think... get the logistics of this scene. I knew there was a bomb involved, I knew they had a plan at this event, but I wasn't really understanding. Like, but it gets worse the... anyway. You know? Um, but yeah, you contact the governments now. You have to. This is an emergency. You have no way to control this situation. But they don't. And of course, the Avengers have not been mentioned whatsoever. They will be, but not yet. So, the scene begins. How exciting. Uh, it's triggered, in fact, by, uh, I think it's Talos notices, or Maria Hill notices um, Gaia's come into frame, as like we could see her, and she's got two bags. And uh, they say, keep an eye on the bags. And Talos says, well, there's a lot of bags in Russia. And it's like, what? And then Fury says, yeah, but she's marked them with, uh, sorry, it's the other way around. Fury says there's a lot of bags in Russia, and then he says, yeah, but these are marked with infrared. And it's like, you wait until 
she was like making the moves with the bags to tell him this. And it's funny because uh, Fury cycles his little glasses and he's like, ah, infrared. It's like, wait, but if so, if he didn't have that in his glasses, like, <laughs> you just said, like, they're marked with infrared. It's like, I can't see infrared, you fucking idiot. Like, what do you want me to do about that? Oh, God, I thought it was so dumb. Like, the, uh, that's the plan is to find anyone that's holding a bag with an infrared X on it and just grab it off them. That's the plan. Hope it works out. But uh, bear in mind, Gravik knows that. Uh, Fury is here. And she told them that. It, it feels like this plan could only go wrong. Mm. Um, and yeah, they've only got eyes on two bags anyway. And since that previous scene happened saying decoys, then as the audience, I guess we're supposed to assume those are probably going to be the decoys, and so the third bomb will be really important. Uh, Fury's not wearing a disguise, by the way. And then, of course, Talos isn't, even though everyone recognizes this form that he uses. Yeah. Just stupid yeah. all around. And you might be like, well, what would Fury do? It's like, well, Fury tells us he has a Widow's Veil later in this season, but he doesn't use it. My until... head almost exploded when I saw that <laughs> thing. I'm like, where has that thing been the entire show? You it... just suddenly whip it out now. You can't, you gotta be kidding me. I'd rather, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Absolutely like... amazing, because it's just like, that would have been real useful several times, but oh well. Every episode, it would have been useful. And Yeah, because I, he's yeah. wanted by like everybody, and he keeps getting kidnapped. <laughs> 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 like walking through Moscow at night, throw that veil on. Like seriously, yep. every scene it could have been useful. Like that that was one of the most frustrating parts. I'm like, I can't believe you're gonna whip that out now. <laughs> so um yeah, he starts he's following a mysterious person because he's recognizing the people they're turning into as people he's seen before, including that little girl with a ball. So he's like, wait a minute. Meanwhile, uh, Maria and Talos reach their targets and they realize they're both decoys. And it's like, oh no. And then Gravik shows up. Like, oh boy, we're about to get our big showdown, what's gonna happen? And, uh, he turns around, and, uh, I think, I think he detonates, yeah. He's immune to shrapnel. Which is really annoying, because if you look, right, we're, we're here, and we know that there's a chance of a bomb going off, it's gonna kill everybody. And, like, Fury's got his gun on him, and then he watches him hold that up and then push it. It's like, wouldn't Fury just shoot? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He would yeah. just shoot, he he'd shoot him in the fucking face. He had the gun... He had the gun on him before he even raised his hand. It's you know stupid. what's uh, funny too is that this exact situation happens another time in this season with someone else and Fury does shoot in the head. Yep. Unfortunately, something else happened. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the bomb goes off. How terrible. This, uh, as was mentioned, kills thousands of people. Fury's very sad. It's all very awful. And then Maria Hill is like, oh golly gosh, what are we going to do? And she bumps into Fury who's uh, kind of Shoots her. And it's like, wait, what? And uh, the, all the characters realize that the scrolls can take on the form of other people. <laughs> Obviously, uh, yeah. this is news to them. <laughs> Actually, I, you can't take this seriously for five <laughs> seconds. It's like, are you kidding? Oh my god, yeah. And he's like, meh <laughs> 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 He's <Smiley. laughs> He even looks evil. Like, you could just tell yeah. that's not Nick. Like, look at that smirk. Come on, Maria. What do you, what do they pay you for? So like, suspicious. Yeah, shit death. Well, her, yeah. She's not an important character, but, like, she did her part. She's been here wrong from the beginning. She deserved better than this. Oh, yeah, she deserves Absolutely better than this. Better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Disparu. Yeah, hello. Do you know how far we are? <laughs> I I checked the stream out before I joined. I was like, oh, because <laughs> I I was like, I, I can stay for a bit. I wonder how far along. Oh, they're on the first episode and they've not even reached that. <laughs> what? I, what do I you felt mean? really we bad because I was I was late and you're like, oh, <laughs> no, it's you're, the you're finale of about. the first episode. Okay, it's the last frames of the first episode. We're way further than you make it sound. Oh, it yeah, it, so it was funny because you, it like pissed me off the the instant I heard you talking because you went widow's veil. I'm like that woman said. They spent a billion dollars and it can only change your face. I'm like, a billion dollars for a country for the perfect disguise that can turn you into any that's a bargain. Wait, what are you on about? Oh yeah, that scene, man. We got we got so yeah, we we're, we're trying to sort of do it chronologically, right? Like in terms of approaching problems, but we've already mentioned, yes, the Ridder's Veil. I mean the solved. series didn't. No, I know. Yeah, like it's hard to do that. The Widow's Veil is something you should have anyway. Like, we should have, we don't need to be shown that he has it to think that he has it, right? Like, he's had it since... They had it since Winter Soldier. That was... Isn't that what introduced it? Was it before that? I think it was... Yeah, like... it was Winter Soldier. That was the first yeah, time. Yeah, Winter so, Soldier, I think. Remember, in the timeline, that's about 12 years. You'd think they'd probably keep that in the old pocket. 
Just saying. There's no reason to not have that. Like it's such a useful tool, especially when we're in this type of show. I, I still I cannot believe they revealed that in the middle of the season. Yeah. It would been useful the whole time. Ridiculous. He suggested they've got a full body one as well. Yes, so they what? did. They transform which, anyone into anyone now. Which means yeah, you can be a scroll if you want to. <laughs> that's all that is. <laughs> These things. So fucking stupid. Um yeah. and yeah. She um, it's funny, she gets shot by him, and the first thought you'd think Maria Hill would have is like, oh fuck, that's a scroll, because it's obviously not Fury. But instead, he walks up to her once she's uh, dying, the real Fury, and she looks at him and she says, You? And he goes, Not me. <laughs> not me. That was so dumb confusing. Bitch. I don't know what to do with that. It's like, obviously, it was a scroll. Like, Come on. How stupid can you that out be? On her own. Like, I don't know about on. that pub scene. He was just really angry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's pissed off. that could that could explain it. Yeah, she's just uh, it, it's just embarrassing because uh, what should be happening here is her saying sorry to him, and then he'd be like, no, like you, it's, it's, she's like, I should have known. That's probably what she should say. Not you. Yeah. <laughs> she, she would have been ashamed to go out that way. She would have been ashamed yeah. that she didn't figure it out in time. She wouldn't just be like, oh my god, it was you. Like that's ridiculous. They they they. They can, she's such a tiny character, yet they managed to shred the little bit of character that she had. She was smarter than this, I'm sorry. Such a shit death. Yeah, she's had probably like, I don't know, eight minutes of screen time across the whole MCU, and then they're just like, you're dead now. Like, oh. <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> so I liked shredded. her interview about it, where she was just like, well, they gave me cake afterwards. <laughs> like, she oh, seems cake. happy oh, enough. Wow. <laughs> cake, sweet. <laughs> Like ten years in the franchise, you get murdered. <laughs> you get you're a dumbass, but you got cake, so get murder you're cake. Good. <laughs> well, that's one thing, by the way. Did you? Because uh, I haven't seen your coverage of it yet, Disproof. But um, did you catch that they re-edited the Infinity War scene in retrospect? The when he got blipped. Did they? Yeah. If you look, uh, look at the flashback on episode <laughs> one, they they've added in like super sad music, and they've uh, changed the way he delivers the bitch. line. Oh, I didn't notice it either. In the finale, when they say, we're going ahead, but it, it is a reference to this. It was like, oh, I really regretted it. I felt sad. I was like, no, you didn't. So I looked up that moment and put in the original clip where yeah. he obviously isn't sad. They changed so it. Of course they put they sad music in there. Oh, yeah, they had to oh, show it to me. I didn't even them. notice it. It's crazy. It's, that's one of the things we were mentioning about a second ago. It's so manipulative. And you don't yeah. even notice it. I didn't notice it at all until they showed it. They, the change in tone, the change in the way he delivers it, it they completely retconned the scene. It's just, it's a treacherous lie. That's the only way I can describe it. Well, they lulled the audience into sort of a comatose state by this yeah. point, so that's how they snuck it past everyone. Mm -hmm. 100%. That's something I feel like I would have noticed, but like at that, I just didn't care. <laughs> just, that must be it for me. Um, but yeah, when I first saw this, I figured that they were going to play around with it, that it wasn't Maria Hill the whole time, or that something was going I didn't really believe that they would actually just kill her so crappily, but they no. did. Especially if she's in the Marvels. Wait, is she in the Marvels? That's what the Hollywood Reporter has said. What? Ow. Uh, what? There's been several articles about it. <laughs> so, about the somehow timeline Maria make Hill's sense. returned? Like, what yeah, the hell? It, it's in the interview where she's talking about her death. In this what? show, it says what? her next appearance will be the Marvels. <laughs> is she? Is it like a flashback? You can get a link if you want. I'll probably find it. Is it a flashback, or do you think a scroll like it could be a flashback? Form? The fuck? All, all that? No, Just they, they resurrect her. They legit resurrect her. Like, Lazarus Pit. Why not? Oh my, oh my god. god! Yeah, jeez. Because people are doing the, like, no one's ever really gone meme, and it's like, yeah, of course, but like, what a shit death. You wouldn't even want to go that way. But yeah. But like, and then, and then there's the angle of like, who even, why is everyone, why are you putting this much effort into someone who has barely had a chance to be a character anyway? Yeah. <laughs> like, I remember Coulson more than I remember her, and he had like one movie. That's funny as hell. <laughs> Considering a 2011 <laughs> casting at Avengers led to another five movies and three series, Smulders is taking her MCU exit in stride. Her seventh movie <laughs> appearance will reportedly be in the Marvels in November. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I get, it could, yeah, we'll have to see what the context is for that, I guess. Resurrection. Uh. That's why I got money on that. All right. I thought you were dead. I was. <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, the director of this has already exact gone. Scene. The director of this has already been talking about Talos coming back. What? Did you not see that? What? <gasps> He's, he's spoken before about, well, these people have died, but, you know, it's anything's pot. Uh, even Smolders, they say, is there any chance of you coming back? 
And she's like, well, you know, in the multiverse, anything is possible. Oh, and then God. just yeah, today, the director's been on about Talos's future in the MCU. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, my God. Just bring back Jensen from the first Iron Man, the guy who saved Tony. In that I like game. Bring that motherfucker <laughs> back. Bring Jensen back if we're just going to resurrect everybody. That dude deserves to live. Like, this is ridiculous. I got better. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. All right. Well, we better keep the train running. Yeah, get, 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 we're going to get to episode <laughs> six somehow. So, yeah, uh, episode two begins with a huge Captain Marvel catch up. Like, loads of scenes from Captain Marvel as if, like, by the way, remember all this shit happened because. Uh, and they, they do a bit of focus on, like, Talos and Fury's relationship and the promise to get them a new home. So, finally, we might get some answers on what the fuck's going on in regards to that. We got some cringe first, though. I mean, there's always cringe, but, you know, different, different selections at different moments. Um, we meet Gravik as a kid. So exciting. Uh, before he became a horrible monster that wanted to kill everybody. It's, uh, he's been introduced to join, like, the Skrulls under Fury. And the, the strange thing here is that, you, like, this is all accepted. You can understand this from the Captain Marvel point of view, from what you can take from that movie. But the... Like, Fury gives a big speech about how, like, yeah, 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 I'll find you a home. I will. But I'm gonna need you to do something for me. <laughs> and it was so, like, wait, what? He was like, I need you to be my spies, my whole spy network. And I legit was like, good God, that's that feels fucked up. Like, Little yeah. Little children, he's telling this. Little I'll get children you. who just want a home. Yeah, he's like, I'll find you a place to stay <laughs> if you give me a little something, something. It's like, what? What is. What? <laughs> At this point, Talos has already said so that he's gone out and searched the universe. You know, he just popped out in the afternoon and did it. Uh, and it, there is no planet in the entire universe the that universe. you can find. Yeah. Because, and the thing is, the only explanation is they're such a horrible people. He said they're a warlike species. They've absolutely pissed off every single people in the universe, and nobody <laughs> wants them in their backyard. So <laughs> makes Fury's you wonder. like, well, I'm the only person that can do the job at this point. So, well, I, I kind of think it explains it. What about, about Thanos' the... planet where he's farming and shit? Like, who's nah, using that? Nah, 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 that one is radiated <laughs> with, <laughs> with Thanos leaves. <laughs> it's so funny because, yeah, that's the most obvious one. You showed us a guy farming on it. Like, it's... Legit, they... there's good soil there. We know there's good soil. That's all we need. And, like, they could... Uh, whatever you call it, the Goomba fruit. <laughs> the fucking scroll. <laughs> they well, they grow they're... that shit and they're good. The backup sure one as well. could stop themselves. They, they join a planet. They just start wiping out everyone on it and nearby. Yeah. They just can't resist. They... They've got to kill yeah. all the political leaders. It's like, yeah, we maybe gotta... it's their fault. Like, this, this show never establishes. Maybe you guys are just shit. Maybe it's your fault that you can't fucking find a home anywhere. It's well, they say the they started game. the Kree War. They admit that. Oh, oh, my God. Makes you wonder. And then it's like, maybe if you drop them off in nowhere and the Guardians took care of them, you wonder how long it would be before they try and like assimilate Jax or uh, Drax, sorry, not Jax. <laughs> And be like, oh god, like how long before they, they, they reveal, because it's just like, we just want to plan it. It, it makes it all so complicated as well, because it's like, Fury, you probably shouldn't use them as uh, as spies when they're this vulnerable. And then he uses a kid as a spy. And it's mm -hmm. like, what the fuck is yeah. going on? Because uh, they say like, oh, his parents were killed in the in the, in the the war, and he escaped. He piloted a ship all on his own. He's, he's smart, Fury, we could use him. And then he's like, but he's a child. And then she says, only to humanize. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? It's like, like, and they try to say that because of the whole, like, you know, like, human dog years, like, they say, um, in human years, Talos is 40. So it's like, wait, so uh, you're saying, like, this kid is way older than he looks? Is that what they're saying? I thought she meant that if he transforms into a 40-year-old human, he's a 40-year-old. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I, I thought. It. Like, he, he can pass as a, as a, an adult. I thought that's what they were going for. But then she said, well, so if she said only to humanize that he's a child, then... Because if he could transform, then it wouldn't be to humanize at that point, right? Well, I don't know, because... Would, no, no. would <laughs> eyes matter? You'd still be objectively... Because wouldn't she just go, yeah. well, he's 39? <laughs> like... Well, but that's, it doesn't even come across that way. He comes across as a kid. He looks yeah. like one and he sounds like one. And it's like, what's the... Look at his mannerisms. That's a kid. Yeah, and then they're like, don't worry, he's probably like 103 or something. <laughs> like, but it doesn't seem that way. And, uh, yeah, just, it's it's something Fury would never do. He wouldn't, first of all, enlist all of them in, like, a way of, you have to be my spies or I won't find you a home. Fury would never fucking yeah. do that. And he certainly wouldn't do it to scroll children. That's not happening. No fucking way. So, um, you know, it's bad enough that they've made him a character that will do that, but it will be held over him for this whole season, that act. 
by every character, and it'll like result in everything going wrong. Such a pivotal scene, and it's just like all of it. I don't feel like he every even every line of dialogue he had there. I just feel like he wouldn't address it this way. He would act. Oh no! Let me do it. You uh, you it's lagged fine. out a bit there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good. No. Good night? No. No. <laughs> Hello? That's why it's funny. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Is it back? I think it might be now. Yeah. Good. Good. Still good or still fucking around? No, it sounds still good. Fine. Now. It's good. Okay, my point was that's the that whole scene was bullshit, and Fury would never do that. Let me yeah. just get the point out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he would, yeah, he he would see potential in them, and maybe see some people in the future that can help him with the spy work. But his focus would be on finding these people a home. They did that just to make him another scene to make him out to be a piece of shit. Um, and yeah, he, he basically just introduces the idea of them all going to be his spies, and so you might start getting worried because what's that going to mean in terms of? Retconning. It's like, oh, don't you worry, we'll get there. We'll get there. And yeah, it ends with him saying, uh, you know, you keep your word and I'll keep mine. But obviously we know that Fury didn't get him a place, so... Oh, so many so many questions to answer. What's going on? Uh, he did, though. That's what they... Earth is a here. place. You're well, here. Where are you right now? I got you in, like... That building? I'm grateful. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, they're scrolls. If you can't... Land? Um, if you can't make money turning into literally anyone on Earth, I'm sorry, yeah. well, but I that's don't, your fault. Uh, yeah, <laughs> first of all, they should and easily no be able yeah. to uh, integrate, like, if they were just in a way that didn't want to sabotage all of Earth's political systems. But secondly, yeah. New Asgard, Earth actually made a place for aliens to live. Mm -hmm. They ignore mm -hmm. that completely. So the scrolls could just go live there. So the, the, they don't remember anything. They never do. <laughs> they have no idea what's going on in their own universe. Yeah, they have the perfect power to blend in, and they have places they can go, but they ignore all these things just so they can whine about Fury. Um, yeah, by the way, they, they cut back to the explosion at the beginning of this episode, and Gaia's, like, clearly not happy with the explosion, and it's such a moment of, well, did you expect something else to happen? I, I don't know what's... <laughs> she's like, oh no. And then I started to wonder, like, what, what was her... She's like a double agent, right? What what did she do to prevent the explosion going off in this scenario? Anything? Seemingly nothing. And then, from Talos and Fury's point of view, wouldn't they think she betrayed them? It's so weird that the show doesn't seem to realize that from their perspective, it would seem that she sabotaged them. She yeah. set them up to fail. She but said they still the... seem to believe that she's chill. She said there'd be three. We only saw her with two. They were both decoys, and then the bomb went off and killed thousands of people. It's like, oh, so you fucked us. I'm pretty sure that's what I thought when I was watching it the first time. Yeah, I but, feel like um, they never addressed there's, it. Though. There's never a conversation. that She's still their double agent as far as the show is concerned, and they talk to her later about plans and stuff. They, they just yeah, never talk about how that went horribly wrong, and it's because of her not doing it. Like, she should have been able to do something on her end, but she chose not to. So... That's pretty awkward, yeah, but it's fine. Conversation there. Once again, she should be on the hook. Oh, I, com I completely forgot about this. Uh, Fury's like panicking because he's old and stupid and confused, and then some guy grabs him and shoves him into a van, kidnaps him. <laughs> he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> and draped up by anybody, some <laughs> random dude. It's so funny, it's like, yeah, why not kidnap him? Everyone else does. And uh, <laughs> this random dude gets into the car and then fucking transforms back into Talos. So you're like, what are you doing? Why do that? Why would you, Why do, would that? you do that? <laughs> nanotech helmets, man. It's nanotech helmets. But like in this instance, we see him for like a split second, so it, it feels to me like yeah. they just wanted us to understand who kidnapped Fury. Yeah, pretty when much. And it's like I get. No I didn't need you that. to show. You could do that in so many other ways. What's wrong with you? But yeah. then you also like wait. A way you could have showed it is by having him say to Fury as he's kidnapping him, "Don't worry, it's me." But he doesn't. Yeah. Just he just leaves him there to panic. <laughs> yeah. This guy's probably having a heart attack in the back of the truck. It's so funny. He conveys the information to us, the viewers who don't exist in this world, but he doesn't convey it to the person. <laughs> yeah, <in> the <laughs> he's it's freaking so out in his right now. Who's supposed to be his friend for thirty years? Let this guy have a panic attack instead of just clarifying it. It's so stupid. You, you can imagine that would have happened, by the way. He would have looked through the back and said, "Don't worry, it's me." And then Fury would have been like, "Why the fuck did you say that? Like, what's wrong with you?" <laughs> I almost I shot think that you was in the meant face. To be like a pre-credits, like uh, cliffhanger. Like, oh, is that going on with Talos? Like, no. 
No, yeah. <laughs> it's just lazy. Stupid. And during this scene, you see loads of people running around. A ton of people survived that explosion. Mm -hmm. And then they go, you do you realize 6,000 people died to those bombs? It's like, what? There wasn't even 6,000 people in the area. Wait, did yeah, they actually most the of them survived? I think they said 2,000 people died, and cl and it's going to be close to like triple that when we do the... the yeah, in the buildings. Right, right, yeah. Something like that. But did you watch the scene? Like, Fury would be dead. Gravik would be... Like, Gravik yeah. was right next to it. This doesn't make... Like, I'm sorry. Like, 30 people died from that, tops. <laughs> like, there's no way. It was, like, thousands of people. It's ridiculous. They 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 keep... um, They just don't remember their own scenes. It's so strange. Yeah, but it looked cool because it went off behind him, and it looked great. <laughs> That's why I'm saying he's immune to shrapnel. He just, like, ignores all the exploding stuff behind him. It's just, it was uh, so cool. Just for, just for the shot. So, we have the train scene. This one's pretty difficult. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so yeah. Um, oh, cornbread, cornbread and chicken. Like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, they established like, bro, this that. Um, was like half an hour for me. <laughs> they established the Fury is a wanted man now in Russia. Like they're putting out posters and whatever. Like he's he's as wanted as can be. He, he has a widow's veil. He will not be using it. Cause why would you? He'll just look like Fury. He's wearing a hat. Isn't that good enough? God damn it. You Wait, they say he's a wanted man in this? Yeah, uh, the they, they actually show it to Kalos, who's like dressed up as the girl. They say, like, what, have so you seen was, this man? What was Roji's threat then? Because that was entirely reliant on the fact that nobody knew he was there. Oh yeah, you're right! Um, I guess the threat would then move from, instead of it just being Russian, it would be the worldwide? I don't know. I mean, surely the US would have heard about well, the weird the thing is, yeah. down the Fury. Russians, the Russians want him right now because they know he was there. That's all they've got. But then the hearing suggests that the whole world believed that Fury had something to do with the bombing. And then Fury, you're right. Uh, Rody then threatens really far on that, like I'll tell everybody you were there by showing footage of you uh, killing Maria Hill. Right? That's what his threat was. Yeah. Yeah, he had the proof. Like you would think the Russians would leak that on their own, let alone anything else. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I I don't know how to follow this. It's, it's too <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. This info should have definitely been out. Um. So like they chill and it's mostly fine, and then he's just like, you know, wow. I used to take the train as <laughs> little nipper, <laughs> <laughs> and he just he just starts talking, and it's so bizarre. Cause it's like you guys have shit to talk about. You haven't got time for a story about how you used to eat chicken with your mum on the train. That is absolutely <laughs> fucking insane. Couldn't use the bathroom. <laughs> we had cornbread in the box. <laughs> like, and that, chicken, we, you, that chicken and, and that chicken would be gone. <laughs> like just set up the whole ooh, train. Chicken georging it up on this goddamn. Oh my God. <laughs> I did have to look up what deviled eggs were, though. I'd never heard of them before. It's like, oh. <laughs> Boy. I know all that shit, and it was cringe to listen to, and it just lasted so long. I'm like, please stop talking and get to the <coughs> fucking point. Well, please, do you like I the can't. random cuts to Taylor just smiling every once in a while? He's like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> smiling politely. <laughs> yes, I'm white. I don't, I don't know chicken. I don't <laughs> know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, you know when he sorry. when he labeled off a bunch of foods and how it was like just anything. I could just wait for Taylor to be like, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> really sure, man. And, uh, yeah, he eventually arrives at talking about telling the truth about things. Like, it's the most convoluted garbage just to get to the point of him saying, Tell us, what happened with the scrolls? That's all we actually are supposed to get out of this scene is stuff to do with the scrolls. But he just tells his fucking story about how his oh, mum would shit. ask him to tell him her something about things that she knew about. Or something. It, oh, it took so long. The scene just goes on and on and on. I, you can it, that's my like favorite thousand... quote, though. A thousand different movies that like have you know complex backstories or things that they they convert into a setup for the scene and it's actually interesting and it like applies to it. This was just a waste of time. Like just get to it already. Like this is you just. You're right. It's it was pretty it's, bad. There's so many I could think of that'd be better than that. Absolutely, an attempt at recreating the Winter Soldier one, which yes had a much more definitive mm. and obvious point that he was making about security. It's like. The writer just thinks he's a lot smarter than he actually is. He that's, really that's thinks he's right creating House of Cards or some shit. It's basic shit, but he they, it's just comes off as if they think it's brilliant. And every time, I'm just rolling my eyes. Well, and, uh, what were you going to say, Drew? What was your favorite line? Sorry? I think I cut him off. Oh, well, the, the, to, to carry on what you were saying um, about being smarter than he is, there's actually a character that does this in the, in the Blacklist, and he always comes out with stories about stuff, but it's always relevant to the thing, and it actually yes. makes the point. Just imitate Raymond Reddington, and he, this story would have worked perfectly. You could have just stolen it from the script. 
They legit um, could have copied that same concept from so many other things and like make yeah. it satisfying in the end to tie in. This was a waste of time. Just, just straight up. It was a complete waste of time. I could just feel it as I was listening to it. Like we're not getting anything out of this substance. That's actually like worthwhile. Yeah, but it has my favorite quote soon after it, where he goes, tell me what you know about the scrolls that fled. He goes, they're here. And Fury just looks at him and goes, who's here? Yeah, but... You're talking <laughs> about the scrolls, mate! <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the scrolls, they're here. I just here. know that... <laughs> like, he's got dementia or something. In yeah, future, yeah. if ever there's a scene where someone's sitting down with him and he just starts going like, you know, once I sat on the toilet, you're like, no, 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 I don't, just, I don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what his fucking story's gonna be. I the took a shit the you. size of Mississippi. <laughs> Perfect oh, timing. Gave me <laughs> I've been I've been listening on my uh, phone. I see you guys are uh, all the way up on. to episode two's opening. Yeah, <laughs> so I've heard. I, yeah, we had our we had our bomb. We had our explosion. We had the thousands dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're talking about fried chicken on the train, and sitting <laughs> on the porch, drinking lemonade. And just kept going. I just love. Do you remember Toys well, R Us? <laughs> and the second they actually like cut into something useful, Talos the giraffe's just... name was Jeffrey. <laughs> Have you? Do you remember Jeffrey? <laughs> you know what I think about chewing gum. <laughs> do you remember Bazooka Joe? They I should remember be that given... one. <laughs> I remember that one. Well, remember chased by the clan. Do you remember <laughs> LeBron? <laughs> Do you remember LeBron's Lightning Lemonade? Ooh. God. Do they still oh, make shit. baby bottle pops? I don't know. This scene's gonna age Which so was badly. the style at the time? He just says that over and over again. Which was it's... the style at the time? <laughs> and yeah, the second they get into actually useful information, Taos just drops on him. By the way, there's a million scrolls in Earth hidden. <laughs> and, By uh, the way. The uh, the response from Fury is something they were so proud of, they ended up putting it in, like, I think one or two previously, where he's like, Have you lost your reptilian ass mind? <laughs> it's awesome. like, I love that. It's so useful. <laughs> so, um, are they reptiles? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know I think the green is close enough. enough. <laughs> uh, because if he called, if he called uh, Nick Fury a mammal... And right. Like, oh, okay. That's. I mean, yeah. Uh, black people are mammals. That is true. I don't know what the MCU's position is on that. But that's a weird thing. You reptilian ass mind. I don't look like. I don't think they're reptiles. Because he's green. It's a. It's a racism thing. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Jolly mm -hmm. green giant. Maybe. He was a reptile. He was a reptile. Um. Yeah, uh, Taos just said he put out a call, and every single scroll that isn't in Emperor Drogue's colony answered. I don't know what that has to do with anything, I'm assuming it's future stuff. Who? Emperor Drogue? Who's that? I don't know. Emperor, <laughs> he's an emperor, why aren't they with the emperor scroll? <laughs> Is he evil? Is that the- he has an evil name, Drogue. Well, I'm good. well, Mahler, if he's a scroll, statistically, yes, he There's is evil. one good scroll, I think. That's true, but I think something's wrong with him. Hmm. He's like broken. Fell down the yeah, stairs. he's clearly not functioning correctly. Um, yeah, and so Fury's like, you lied to me? And then he's like, we were being hunted. Either I let them die or I bring them here. What would you have done? And it's like, whoa, no, 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 no. Those, he, he said you lied. Not, he didn't question the decision to bring them here. He said you lied about them being here. That's all. And you're like, why would the writer write that that way? Why would, he, why would they do a non sequitur? And it's like, well, because he then says, what it's would you have done? Argument. Yeah, well, he says, what would you have done? And then Fury says, this isn't about me. And then he says, oh, right, but you like using us as your spies yeah, and so errand boys. And that, now, again, now all writing. Argument instead of, so that you can ignore the real conversation, which is, you invited a million scrolls to come to Earth. Yes, and, and they got here, and you didn't tell me about it, and now they're all you everywhere. You didn't tell Fury about it, and now they're everywhere on... On Earth. Mm -hmm. Like, this is layers of... A million. Like, well, it's just... This wow, is, This is shit. Like... You, you can't do that. It's like, a bit of a catastrophe. You can't, you can't do that. This is, this is going to... So I hate this. I'm going to be clear. I hate Skrulls. This show made me racist against Skrulls, and I hate them. <laughs> All right? Skrullist. The fact that you can have Talos do this is insane. We're just going to have a million people come to Earth, settle here wherever they want, 
can't do that. It's Earth. Every place is claimed. There's a government in all of these places. They're countries. So you're subverting Something, all of this stuff no matter what. to just bring them to a planet that you have no right to invite them to. And then you're not going to tell anyone. You're well, not going to call really up the awesome president. Is that we eventually find out that some of these scrolls have subverted governments. Yeah. They've like actually replaced heads of state. And, and so it's like they they subverted governments. <laughs> like they've subverted democracies. Which I think you like, could consider oh a de God. declaration of war, right? That they've done Absolutely. That. I mean, 100%. And that's a war, interspecies war, and by the way, as soon as all of Earth finds out that there's an alien species trying to take over, they will unite like hell well, against no, you. In the extent of their powers. Take, take over and then nuke all of you, <laughs> you know? Well, like, nuke just, the the fact that the, just the fact that the Skrulls have the abilities that they have means that they wouldn't be allowed to be here. Yeah, well, they're it, it, just with that ability. It's, so uh, it's are, a bit awkward, right? Because we, you talk about the idea of, like, aliens living on Earth. I think that having like Veb or Korg or Meek or those guys hanging out on Earth is super chill. Having them sit around yeah. on the couch, play video games, like I'm super chill uh, with them. But then when it's like, oh, but these are aliens that can like shape shift into other people, steal their entire life, steal their minds. It's like, okay, that's a bit more complicated uh, because it makes it really hard for society to function. Yeah. Like, you know, if you, just, you've got you control, can't. You can't be here. You can take over the minds of people. Yeah, you could make yourself appear as someone else. You could subvert the very sort of like n fundamental nature upon which human civilization Absolutely. and interaction yeah. is built upon. You are not compatible with our species. Sorry, but you can't be here. Go to the Thanos planet and, and farm <laughs> flute berries. Well, yeah, or go we, to we, nowhere. You know, it's probably worth again addressing the idea that you can't find a home for the scrolls. Oh, in, like, they, they, knew, uh, they knew they couldn't justify that, the writers, so they just said, couldn't do it. We're, out. We're not going to talk about that. No yeah, way. Like, <laughs> what are you like? The idea that you couldn't just find some planet. Everybody's pointed it out. Thanos's garden planet, and 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 the I mean, one that comes there's, to mind. there's a scroll who knows uh, that that planet exists as well, but he didn't tell anybody. So, um, someone said, if they're not trying mm. to take over the planet, then there's no problem. Like, so it's already pretty difficult for Earth to implement like systems to take care of an alien race that can at any point take over anything they want in a way that's really hard to tell. But we don't get to enjoy that potential because Talos fucked it over. He decided yeah, that we Talos would skip that. He, and now it's too it late because, like was said, yeah. they have several high positions of power. It's too late. Like, if, as soon as a government finds out that even one person has taken over, like, a president or anything like that, it's like, oh, fuck all, fuck all of you. <laughs> like, absolutely you think that's you. just it he would actually do? Like, I feel like that wasn't his, ca his character from Captain Marvel. Like, doesn't, well, the Talos like, would just invite a million scrolls no, they, to Earth. The uh, story can't anybody. work unless we do no it this way. That. Like, this is the only I way we can like do the story, so... I, I don't... I feel like he would it. say it's not his place to make that kind of choice. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's like, this is... This is the human's planet, you know? Well, do you remember... Like, not the scroll planet. Even the lines he said is like, the, there are hosts. We have to be able to, like, compromise and, be, you know, like... You can't, like... He was respectful of the fact that this is their planet and we have to make this work. That line doesn't fit with the same dude that would bring a million fucking scrolls. Well, without her. asking anybody, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and, and this is what I mean. The, the right is, is a secret. That is a secret invasion. That is the part yeah. that is the secret invasion. It's Talos is the one who did the secret invasion. Having a million scrolls come here without permission when you have no right to be here, that's the invasion. And, and uh, you can just judge them by their actions, because they can turn into anybody, they just need DNA. So they could have turned into dead people or people without identities. No, every single one of them you know, took they somebody else's life, kidnapped them, and shoved them in a basement. Even the supposed well, good scrolls still took over somebody else's life and removed theirs from them. So well, it would be, it would be a rule of them being here. Yeah. We would not allow them, you can't look like humans. Like, that's just, you just can't do that. This yeah, that's one of the everything. things they would 100% think. Like, they they'd be banned from shapeshifting. That would be the number if you one were, rule yeah. in terms of compromise. If, yeah, just, if by a miracle, by an absurd miracle, you were allowed to stay here, which you wouldn't be, they would say, yeah, like, if you transform to look like a human, then, yeah. like, you, no, then we'll, you're gonna be imprisoned or whatever. Which works out because the scrolls want to look like scrolls anyway. Great. There we go. Wonderful. But then they ignore oh, all that. Yeah, but they, they, <laughs> yes, they we do. never get to that position because, like, we didn't find out about them first, so they got to act, and we got well, to see how they would act naturally without anyone forcing them, and they just decided to start taking over the world. This is the so, thing. Every, 
everything we're talking about is the natural way that this would all work out is that Fury would, he, first of all, he would never turn them into his personal agents when they're looking for a home, like as if that's an exchange that's fair. And then Talos would never lie about implementing a million scrolls into Earth without telling him, right? Those two things wouldn't have happened. And if they didn't okay. happen, then everything would go pretty normally and boringly. Fury would have put them on a planet and they'd been fine because there's plenty of them. And that's it. It's over. It's like, well, that's not fun. We got to make a story. And hence, every time something tries to get addressed, we'd say, like, Fury was sad, Fury failed, Fury couldn't find it, Fury's a failure. It's like, why did Talos do it? It's like, we never get to ask him that. He only ever, yeah. uh, he deflects. It seems the only explanation would be, well, they would have been in trouble. And it's like, that's not a sure, but like, I thought, but, better to but again, ask I forgiveness thought, than I permission. We were looking for a planet to, to, to that you guys wanted a home. Well, if Fury's again, about to bring all, up. All hinges why that's I mean, a really bad possibly. argument anyway to, to, to credit him somewhat if you bring in a bunch of aliens into earth in a secret way the second they're discovered it's it, they're going to start getting exterminated mm -hmm. especially ones it, that are trying to fucking destroy the planet lose. by the way <laughs> yeah. it's uh it, yeah none of it makes any fucking sense <laughs> and the closest we get to him saying like you know why did you lie to me like like why would you do that you know that's not in character at all he just says, like, he's bringing up the whole agents thing, as if, like, that's a completely different out-of-character problem. But I guess it deflects from the current issue. Which is, a, it, you see that a lot in shit writing, right? Like, hide the mess, move on to something else. Hopefully people get distracted. Because, man, was that Pretty shit. much been this well, show. I think, that, I think that's, yeah, that's a good way of describing the show, because of all the ramifications that are going to stem from the events, as will be described going forward, the MC has to forget it because it, it's now a permanent thing that they would have to deal with mm -hmm. uh, in terms of world building, especially with how the show ends. Yeah, they've already said the next Captain America will just ignore this. I'm sure. I'm sure have that they? they will not yeah. directly ignore. I could believe that. <laughs> yeah, I could believe that. I wouldn't want to deal with it. How could you deal with this like writing? Like, how do you deal with this from world building perspective? That now, basically on Earth all the time, you have to always be accounting for scrolls. And like the paranoia that the whole world has about the existence of scrolls, and that any given person they interact with could not be like who they think they are. As of what they did with a particular character at this point, it's like they've found almost every single way you can drain the stakes out of a story, like an ongoing story. And one of the newer ones included is that any one person you know or believe in as a as a character could not be them from any point now or from onwards. You never know. You'll never know. There's no way to know. You'll never truly know. Like that's fun. <laughs> that keeps me invested. <laughs> That's really awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like the the meta element of it, it, it's the same reason that, like, think about what you know. I guess Mahler just said there in terms of the meta of us, an audience watching a TV show, and imagine that's your life now. That's like your life. Every person you meet, ever, for the rest of forever, could be an alien shapeshifter, who's actually pretending to be someone else. You see where? Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be some issues. Oh, it sucks too. Let's say there was a scroll who walked up to someone as a the like. Say right now, um, Fury meets up with Cap, and it's a scroll, and then he's like, "Prove it." You know, where did we meet? In blah blah. And then he's like, "Oh, you got me. I was a scroll," and just leaves. And then the next time he sees Cap, that could be the same guy trying again. And he's like, "I remember what I was supposed to remember this time." So ask me the question. You know that sort of thing. Like, it, that what a shit world. Well, you it can turns test the whole it. MCU into the thing. It turns it, the whole MCU into the thing. And then Permanent the thing, yeah. Way. Like, permanently. Yeah. But instead of just, like, you know, the outpost, it's, like, the entire cinematic universe. So it's, like, they're not going to be able to address this. Like, even within the show, I think one of the main patterns we've addressed is um, they had no interest in figuring out the rules for the scrolls, how the powers work. Like, they didn't have any interest in that. They didn't care. They just slapped everything together. And if you don't have interest in that, how can we have interest in them to have continuity with it going forward? They're just going to ignore all this and move on. As, as far believe... as I remember... The only time they ever check if anyone is a scroll is when they already know that person is a scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the, those are the two ones. It was um the the the, the lady the uh, the I can never remember her name, but the agent lady and Nick Fury with Rhodey. Like the only scenes I could think of were when they actually already knew them or was, they were a scroll. They didn't actually take the time to figure it out. It's so weird. Well, Not it, one scene did they do anything clever. It would destroy, like, the entire series, so shut up. Like, why would you... <laughs> oh, there's, like, not even one thing where they get it wrong. Because, I mean, they even... Again, the thing, it's like, it's a movie. It's not a television series. And even that film has the opportunity... Like, squeezes in an opportunity for there to be one instance where they're not the thing. It was a person. Mm -hmm. 
there's this you play with the concept like actually have fun with it and I, that's what yeah. screamed out to me with this is they didn't care they i think they it's didn't part of the reason why they, and that's sad. I, th I think it's the reason why they actually lost a lot of the regular audience was because there was an expectation that that's what this story was going to have it yeah. was going to actually lean into that paranoia element and it doesn't at all it's um it's basically the same Completely as like absent, yeah it's yeah it's just not a part of the show at all like it's you like have those people... scenes in uh, in the thing, right, where the guy runs to the shotguns and like he he runs to the weapons, breaks the case open because he's really worried about what's happening, and everybody has to calm him down, and everybody's on edge, and even the like security guy, he gives up his pistol, uh, you know, as a display, but like like all of those little things that pile up and add on, people trying to be believable, um, and then the, of course the subversion of the thing itself. It makes that not only really interesting to watch, but it gives it a lot of things to appreciate on repeat viewings. But this this show is devoid of that. What are you going to learn about this show that's worth learning on a second, you know, it's just gonna viewing? Get worse. Yeah, it's just going to get worse, and you're going to add it to your notes, and you're going to make a live stream about it. Mm. Yeah, probably. That's that's pretty much it. It's I good writing gets better on a rewatch, and like bad writing like this, it's just going to fall apart and most of this is most of this stuff is things you can notice on the first watch like it's actually that terribly made i'm starting to learn how dense this program is with its horrible problems obviously yeah a, a few minutes after Rody appears i saw people going he's a scroll he called him nick no one calls him nick he's a scroll it was it was that obvious yeah so there yeah. was no depth to any of it figured it out real quick <laughs> were you ever tricked by anything any of the scroll tricks? Or was, was there any setup or anything that just like, oh, you know what? That was pretty clever. Is there any moment? I can't even think of one. Was the scroll tricks? The scroll, tr like in terms of a scroll. They, they did a couple of reveals throughout the season of like, yeah, did you think that person was a scroll? Ah, did you think but most of them, a lot of them, the story didn't work if they weren't that. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, wait, how does, you know, like it's, it'd be retarded if this was happening for real. And then it's like, eh, it's not. Yeah. Like, right. Um, obviously in this, this conversation, the fact that he reveals that horrible million scroll invasion thing and Fury's like outraged, but then before he can ask him more on that, he points out the whole you made us spies thing. You made us your own personal agents in exchange for getting a home, which yes, it's like, what the fuck, yeah, Fury, what the fuck? Then do you remember what Fury says back to that? The host sets the terms. Uh like hmm. Fury, like, he's saying he understands that he's 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 criticizing you. He's saying that was immoral. You fucking moron. But like we can't, there's no excuse. You can't write an excuse for why Fury would do that. So you just have to say, "Yeah, I did do that." Yeah, you can do. It's like anything else. He's like, "Nope, that's that. I did that." And then Talos says, "Like, oh yeah, well, what happens when the host disappears?" And it's like, "Oh shit, I forgot. That's another thing that doesn't make any sense." Huh. You turn them into agents, dependent in every way on you, and then you abandon them. Sounds like Nick Fury. Yeah, that's well, it's just they needed to create a reason for there to be a grudge against him, and it's like the only way that they were able to do that was to have him act in a way that was completely contrary to his character. It's wild. Like, yes. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And, um, you know, we've been highlighting them all as they've come, but here's another one. Taylorson says, I didn't think you were coming back, and even when you did, I couldn't talk to you about anything real. Your boots didn't even hit the ground. Oh, it's too heavy down here, man. I'll just run off to my space station. You've been up there for years. It's like, did, <laughs> it's did, like, he, just, what are we doing? did he just make fun of him for saying that he was under too much pressure and had to run off to a space? Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> You imagine the scene where Fury's like, I'm too sad. I'm going to run off to space. <laughs> like, okay. And yeah, he abandoned them for years. Oh. Does that sound like something he'd I, do? I never understood nope. why he was upset that he went away in the blip. And after the finale, now we know. Because he was mm -hmm. relieved that he got blipped off, he was upset that he lived. He was upset that he came back. When he, when he got dusted he was back, like, he was I, like, oh. Yeah, he was like, I thought yeah, it was, it was finally back. over and you've brought me back to this disastrous life. Is essentially what he was <laughs> miserable about. Back. I thought I was out of the MCU, yeah. damn it. I just thought no, I was I'm... dead. <laughs> the second he reformed, he was like, all right, that's four million already. Okay, you gotta pay me. I ain't doing this otherwise. It's like, <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, and then he says, but you knew how to get in touch with me, Talos, and you didn't because you didn't want me to know. And it's like, wait, you could talk to him whenever you want, and yet you're claiming he abandoned you for two years? Like, you could have just called him? If you could have called him, <laughs> you not unless like you call me first. Do we chill if I bring a million scrolls to Yeah, like, I, 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 I never follow up well, on but that. Remember, the scrolls thing was 15 years ago he did that. 
So that was when yeah, they were talking so, to each other regularly. That's and he just he didn't just did that, him, which was uh, wow. So I don't. Mm. This, Jereen, this whole conversation is filled with gaping holes everywhere. It's just like, are you just throwing more and more at me to distract me from not answering the others? Is that it? It's just what? like, here's another one. Here's another one. What do you? What do you not want me to know? Talos must have been keeping tabs on the scrolls, so he would have known they've been taking over governments and stuff. And at no point did he think this is this has got a bit out of hand. I you should are... probably call someone. Yeah, you're correct because yeah. the council he's talking about being removed from is the council with the prime minister of Britain and the leader of NATO. Yeah. Was it? There's, there's so like, uh, he's fine I with them it, taking over the world. It was like a United Nations dude. Yeah, well, like in any case, the, you, you, you it only takes a Google search to find out that these people were hyper-powerful, you know, like, if, if they weren't already explicitly talking about, you know what I mean? Like, unless they did and it yesterday. Already, well, but, I mean, that doesn't see, I, I mean, I don't know, the problem is, again, we know that there is an individual who has been held captive yes. by the rogue scrolls for potentially ten years, so... Yeah, like and, it's, it's yeah, hard to thanks say for letting us know, Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and they're would've both been, fucked at this nice. point. Both of them aren't the characters they're supposed to be playing. They're entirely fucked up, and yeah. uh, that means anything can happen at this point. Because um, Taylor then says, "With your help, scrolls and humans can still coexist." And then Fury says, "Humans don't coexist with each other. We've been at war forever with each other since we could walk upright." And it's like, wait, hang on. Like, I, I understand being mad at the scrolls, but I thought... It's like he's saying all of this even though this was Fury's plan was to integrate the scrolls. What I'm saying, it's like, why would... That doesn't well, make well, any sense for him, of all people, to say that. When How could he have the plan that he had to actually implement them when he thinks that way? That they can never... Well, was it, just I got the impression they were trying to make, like, a grander point that this, this show is making, that humans in general are pretty, like, prejudiced towards anything, not just, like, scrolls yeah, is that's... the allegory, but that... Yeah, humans can't the, get along. It doesn't make sense for Fury can. to say that. And so having him say saying. it makes me feel like it's a point they wanted to make. Well, Fury As says at the end that he realized that there was no planet on in the universe that could do it. So he wanted them all here to make it. Like, his only choice was, his intention was to make a home for them here. He yeah. says that in the finale. Yeah, that's why it was really weird to make him say this line. It doesn't match anything. And it's like, I guess they just wanted to say that in general. Um, I don't know. And then he says, matter of fact, I think this is your stop, and kicks Talos out of the train, basically. Which is like, this is probably the worst time ever to do that. Uh, you need ever. to keep tabs on this guy, and you probably should arrest him and bring him to the president or something. Probably, yeah. This is a nightmare scenario, and that everything is on fire, and people have died, and that you need all the help you can get. But then he's just like, go away. Like, okay, and he leaves. And then I actually think they do cut back to Fury... And he's like, oh my god. It's like, they do that several what the fuck? times. <laughs> they'll they... cut to him after a conversation and they'll have like he'll be like on the bench, like, oh my god. It's like completely breaking down every single time. Yeah, the, has... the the time where he goes his like little fury speech and then he has to run outside and sit on a bench because he's sad. Oh my god. Yeah. It's like overwhelmed. It just it, it ruins the power of the line before. He's like That was ah. the point. Yeah. It's, it's, they keep doing it. Because that was like, oh, yeah, Fury's back now. It's like, oh, no, he's destroyed again. He can't have the energy. Every time he has some big moment, it's like, it, it, it's like it does a big moment at the end. Um, yep. And then it's, oh, no, it's not even him. So th yeah. it's done deliberately. And then he sighs after. Like, they keep doing it, and it's, it's, it's so frustrating to watch. Um, does anyone remember Shaft from 2000, Samuel Jackson? Yep. Yeah, so in that movie, he loses his, his license as a cop, too. And there's a scene where he's intimidating the gangsters. Like, basically, um, they're saying, oh, you're not a pig anymore. And he explains, do you think that makes me more dangerous or less dangerous or more dangerous? And just showing that now he doesn't have any, any rules to follow, but he still has all that experience and background. This is what we should be seeing with Nick Fury. Like, even though he doesn't have the Avengers and all these other things, he should still have skills, tactics, resources. But he's just a sensitive bitch the entire time. It's, it's so... It <laughs> well, it's that plus watch, uh, he's super depressed because Thanos dusted him and that made him have an oh, existential man. crisis. So it's just like, who the fuck oh, is man. this character? Who are you? Like, yeah, no, it's... Dave, he's gone. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> who are you? Then we have a really like, awkward scene where Maria Hill's funeral's happening <laughs> and her mum is like, hi, were you, were you there? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, how did it happen? He said, uh, she died trying to stop the attack. A trap was set for me. Someone wanted to hurt me, and so they hurt her. 
And then she's like, wow, yeah. so you're the reason that I'm taking my daughter home in a box. <laughs> I'm just like, like no. I'm just throwing my hands at me. Like, why phrase it that way? Of all the ways. You no, just, no. just, oh my God. Your daughter died no, because of me. I killed her. I fucking stabbed her in the throat. It was me. And then she's like, so it was you. <laughs> <laughs> you just know they have to do it, man. Yeah. All the ways he could have phrased that, especially with all the, the variables. He could, you know, he, even if he's guilty, he could have phrased it in a way that was a little bit more neutral. But no, they have to make him as stupid and as guilty as possible every scene well, it's super awkward that he said that this way especially if the information gets out that he shot her you know what i mean quote unquote he shot like she'll be like wait a minute like what the fuck right. <laughs> this motherfucker lied to me and then uh yeah he that. says uh, i'm sorry i couldn't protect her and she says you're nick fury she believed in you she would have followed you to hell and back i don't know uh, what she died for out there but don't let it be for nothing which i thought was a really funny line because she knows nothing about what happened so she's like, don't let her die for nothing. It's like, you don't know she died for nothing or something. Why are you saying well, it's it? It's not like, even it's that. Like, she believed yeah. in you. No, the last scene we saw her, she was in the pub, bitching at him about how he's a useless waste yeah, of space that's and true. couldn't do anything. Yeah. She didn't believe him in at all. Well, and, and she died thinking he shot her because she's a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> If she believed in him, she wouldn't have thought that. She would initially, like, had the reaction we said, she would have been ashamed that she didn't see it coming. But instead, like, yeah, it's the complete opposite. They're, they don't know what they're doing. It's uh, pretty bad. Yeah, and this whole scene is just another one piling on Fury. It's like, look how you failed her, Fury. You failed. You suck. And it's just like, when are we at the part where it's, it's, you stop doing this with every single fucking character, please? The subtlety is uh, not respectable, is what I would say. So, um, but yeah. I, I did think that they'd rebuild him for the next movie. It's like, no. Oh, really? No. <laughs> I, even, no. I had low standards, and they beat them. Uh. They Look, America's against Europe Russia. Scene, and that was it. Yeah, this is where they say the whole killed 2,000 civilians. Uh, then they say the UK Prime Minister was quick to denounce the attack. And I found that sentence so strange. I was like, yeah? You said that like she. <laughs> we didn't know if she would do that. <laughs> like, maybe the British Prime Minister was going to approve of the attack. <laughs> she's famously she's like, they get what they deserve. She, she's a bit of a cunt, so sometimes, you know, but... <laughs> Today she denounced it, so it's all good. <laughs> also by rags. Yeah, what's going on with him? Oh, uh, it's the internet I think he mentioned, but... He said he's listening, so he's here in spirit. Um, yeah, and she says, The NATO Security General is adding, uh, acting swiftly to gather intel on the bombing. So I guess, yeah, that is... He is the NATO Security okay. General. Yeah. Um, despite the outpouring of condemnation, all signs point to imminent retaliation from Russia from what the Kremlin regards as an all-out declaration of war by the Americans. What? What the fuck are you talking- like, they even have the suspect in custody of the leader of Americans against Russia. How is it that a group of psychos in a country is now means that there's a declaration of war between Russia and America? It's like, I, 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 <laughs> Like, what do you? Because this was the plan by the scrolls, and it actually seems to have worked for now. This is like how. I mean, I don't even understand because at this point, the British know that the scrolls exist. Yep. And so, if Russia and America were going to war, you'd think they'd be like, "You, you do realize scrolls are on Why Earth, hasn't right? Fury might told anyone? He's it's, still yeah. It's like Fury just tell the Americans that it's like, oh, they're being tricked. Tell tell the Russians. It's all these crazy aliens. And by the way, it's not hard to believe because shape shifting already exists. It was in uh, the She Hulk show. Was one of the and there's, yeah, guardians. Like, there's a million yeah. of them. Like, one of them gets a nosebleed and everyone knows they're and, on Earth, so... And then, as well, the Widow's Veil shit has been around for over a decade, right? Why yeah. wouldn't, why wouldn't that Veil. always mean that you can never trust any footage? You just can't. They should have been prepped for this before the scrolls because of that veil. That's such a good point. Like, this is a concept that they should be prepared for. The fact that identities can be can be hidden so easily. Mm -hmm. They should well, be prepped for this. Yet I mean, fucking Dead prepped. Reckoning got it, where he's like pulling on people's skin, like, hey, <laughs> you real? It's like, we need it's to like, see people doing that. It's like when Rhodey threatens him with it, though, and he's like, is that is that your excuse? That aliens can turn into other people? It's like, well, firstly, it's true. Yeah. And secondly, he could have just pulled out the widow's veil and go, I could look like anybody. <laughs> and also, with the insane technology, it's like, God, the fucking right. footage could have been hacked. You don't know. Yeah. We don't know anything. There's nothing can be fucking. This is not the whole point of this show originally. When you can't trust anything, all you can trust is people. But what if you couldn't even trust people? Ooh. And Everyone then they just trusts everything on fake <laughs> value in this show. How do you open the story with that, but then completely forget to implement that concept like properly? <laughs> like, just no suspicion or tension from anybody. 
And then they have, um, what's really funny is they have fake Fox News. And this is the character that they have say, they're all saying that we have something to do with that attack, but there's no way it was American. It's got to be a false flag. It's written all over it. Like, that's the most reasonable thing that was said on the news. It's like the most <laughs> obvious. But it's the well, this... F FXN news, you see. It's not Fox. This turns out to be a, a scroll. scroll. So I yeah. think what they're trying to say is, this is one of the good scrolls trying to prevent the war, and he still died. Well, but he's so on the he's on the council that agrees to try and start the war. Yeah, this guy's on there. Oh, is he? Yeah. 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 You know, you know, right know. Know. What's he telling everyone not to start a war? I, maybe <laughs> to. Like, I actually don't know. Because he's showing shit. This crew. That's why. Because you think you think a deeper moment. You think like, the line they want to go with out. for him would be like, I'm not sure if I believe it, but there's a lot of reason that America would do this, and you never know the government's. You know, like they would have him do that instead of outright denying it. Well, I thought that's what the meaning was at the end of him dying. It was like, well, innocent scrolls are getting swept up in this that tried to actively prevent the war. But if he but voted he, for it, that's... He, he, uh, yeah, he voted in favour of... Yeah, he was with it. <laughs> yeah, he was with uh, it. Why would they do that? I lived. <laughs> what did they mean by this? I don't understand. <laughs> they mean everything simultaneously is what I've got. Oh, man. Um... So now we're going to get our very first scene of a character saying that Fury sucks, because we've not done that yet. Oh, wait, wait, does, wait does, Fury, does Fury suck? Oh, I do, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to have to figure it out from what the characters tell me, because uh, okay. she asks right. if Gravik knew Fury would be there, and he says, I didn't, but I hoped he'd be there. I wanted to see what was left of him, but he's just vapors, old. That's I could have killed one. him if I wanted to, but I, I don't want to punish a man by giving him what he wants. <laughs> so, can we just can we just get a checkbox? Fury wants to die. There we go. <laughs> we got it, everyone. The vapors. He can join the, the trophy vapors. shelf of all the fucking heroes of old wanting to fucking die. <laughs> Yay! They, they At least when them. Luke wanted to die, he went to a nice aesthetic island with a lovely view and some nice frog people. Yeah, Fury, Fury just Nick ran Fury off to a space to station to cry. Yeah, Luke's death was more considerate. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't want the Avengers to come back in this, then. He's only depressed because they won. So he's like, I wanted to die, and it, you yeah. saved me? You utter bastard. That's what I mean. There was you no... know, just saying, you can kill yourself whenever you want. Yeah, Fury, you're making a big thing out of it. Let's <laughs> well, see, do it. Do a flip. So, uh, yeah, that, that again, just another one. And, and he hasn't done it yet, this character, so this graphics, so it's nice to, you know, have everyone have their scene to say that Fury shit. At Why least not? now the villain is saying it, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> now it's the villain. So uh, he's heading into to the scroll meeting, and uh, Guy is not allowed in, and the guard's Reading. like, no, 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 you can wait outside. And so she's like, oh, you know, what the fuck? And then Gravik hands her a pistol and says, if I'm not out in an hour, shoot this guy in the head. What? what? This will solve <laughs> nothing. Mm. No, it doesn't even go. It's just supposed to be like threatening. It's just like I mean, they're the security. They'll just. She's like four foot. They're that means in ten minutes he'll face. shoot her first. That means when we're at the nine something minute mark, he's gonna be ready to plug her first. Because remember, they're scrolls too. They've got the super strength that she has. So what the fuck? Like it's so weird. It is supposed to just be badass. I think it's like look how cool Gravik is. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Gravik's taller than the security, and she beats him. <laughs> It's oh, so geez. yeah. The the size differences are pretty funny here. Actually, she's so tiny. She should shape shift into someone taller so she can reach things. Graphic barely fits in that door. As he's he's a tall boy. So here we go. The scene that I think this this is arguably the scene where it's just like they could never ever get a good show after this. This is all so fucked. Um, Graphic just walks in as. He's like, oh, Secretary General, Madam Prime Minister, like, oh yeah, and and obviously the news guy that we just saw, and the implication Shoot of course McGavin, being, you mean? uh, I I I I always remember him for some reason. Well, I mean now I'm remembering Shoot this McGavin. guy from Faculty. Was that was what we last saw him, right? Or was it after that? Remember you was talking about that movie? Oh yeah, yeah he, he was, was the was dad. The, yeah, he was the dad of uh of um Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. Yeah, I don't know. I forgot his name there for a second. Oh, he's in that movie. Hmm? Elijah Wood. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it in years. In that movie. Seen that. Faculty's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, it is, actually. This is so old. Oh, that's one I'll check out. That's definitely one to check out if it holds up. 
So, um, Gravik opens with, like, I see all of you dressed up in the man's finery, using his cutlery. And I was like, so, like, the man's? Wait, hang what? on. Like, you, yeah, you wear forks? clothes, too, <laughs> Gravik. And, like, what, what do you mean? Using a knife and fork is now, like, anti-scroll? <laughs> What do you guys do? Two just, animals. It, we'll we eat with our hands. hands. The, 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 is, the, only, the only time we saw a scroll eat scroll food, food was the, the grumbo fruit, fruit. He dug into it with his mouth. He's just like, wow, wow. <laughs> they don't use knives These and forks. Grumble like berries are delicious. It's, Savages. it's so cringe. He's like, ah, oh, you, you're doing human things. It's like, this is just normal, dude. <laughs> a lot yeah, of look species at how can you're benefit living. from it. Well, yeah, he just wasn't blowed he up planets. Coffee throughout the whole series, isn't that human things? Like him and his sugar well, thing. He's literally he's in a human, human form right now. Yeah. yeah, he should be scroll form. That would be that would actually make the scene stronger. Right, there's yeah. nobody around. There's right. several instances in this show where it would make the show stronger if the scrolls like decided, I'm a yeah, I'm gonna look like a scroll now because I'm proud of being a scroll. But they never do you know, it because I want to do the makeup. You're so right. This scene initially kind of confused me because I'm like, if this is a scroll council, why the fuck are you guys not in scroll form? Yep. Right There's no it's reason to be counts. humans. Exactly. That's why I thought this was a cheap show. And then I found out it cost 212 million. <laughs> I was stunned. We've been trying to figure out from the beginning of this podcast, where did that money go? Where? The lighting. Like, what, what part of this show? They, they, they bought a chandelier. Insane. Maybe they tried to construct a space station and film it for the Saber <laughs> thing, and then they it like crashed, and they were like, "Oh fuck, <laughs> we've got to make space." Something realistic. went wrong. Man. Something went wrong. They won't sure. believe it unless it's a real space station. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like one SpaceX rocket, and that in was the end, it. all they could afford was bad green. Oh. <laughs> um. God. It would so, have made a very powerful visual, too, if you showed all of these people transforming into humans, like, after the yes. meeting or something. That would have been like, just, oh, yeah. yeah a little so many ways they could have played with it, but they just, they don't care. They don't find, they don't find the scrolls interesting. If they did, they would have at least tried something. I, it's, it's, I don't know. Uh, why do these people write these things if they have no interest in the concept? Oh, and that news super chat, that's, that's kind of fair. The news broadcast was before the council where he agreed to start World War Three. You could argue that maybe he was a peace-loving guy, but the, he was this, this council meeting pressures him into being a bad guy. But then, of course, Disbrew's point was that it, isn't it sad that he got, like, that, that maybe the show was saying, like, look, the good one's dead, and it's like, he's not really the good one if he was complicit in all of it, right? But Yeah, yeah. especially when one of them says no, walks off, and nothing happens to him. Uh, yeah, like, he could have gone, actually, I changed my mind. <laughs> Oh, he could have done loads more. All the scrolls could have done loads more, but they just don't. Um, so yeah, Gravik says uh, all that shit, and then uh, one of them says back, it's better to live like a human than a dog. And then he says, I like the dogs. First off, I like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, he says, they aren't, dogs aren't hypocrites. They don't lie, and they don't lock each other in True. cages and pimp True. each other or poison each other or destroy their own habitat. They do destroy Whoa. their own habitat. Yeah, Anyone do. who's had a dog knows they destroy no, their own habitat. What the fuck are they talking about? Lies. I mean, dogs are lying. No. I mean, how many pit bull maulings have we had this year? Oh, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? None. It's a, it's a false flag. It's like, <laughs> the dogs will hide treats. They'll do they're all scroll sorts of things. They're dirty. They're, they're liars when they have the opportunities to. So I didn't, I didn't take any of that in. Wow. Well, he, he says all of that. Rags, all, this, cool. all this racism in here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was lurking under the surface this whole time. All it, all it took Isn't was a scroll show time. for it to come bubbling up to the top. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he says all of that, obviously referencing humans, and then the guy says, that's a naive reading of human history. And his response is, it's the only reading. Ooh. Like, ooh, humans, all they ooh. do is lock each other in it's cages, all... pimp and poison I'm a, and destroy I'm... themselves. Yeah, that, that's all ooh, we've I'm ever done. No innovations, no nothing. Like, <laughs> I'm a 12-year-old, dude. Just, just a reminder. I this... eat unhappy meals now, Mom. Just a reminder, the scrolls got everything destroyed because they went to war. That they apparently started, yet the humans are the ones that destroy themselves in their own habitat. You're trying to they steal calls... our planet. Graphic calls themselves a war people, so he can't complain if we're yeah, a war it doesn't like make species any sense as well. Because <laughs> he'd be like, "This is glorious. You're you're just like us." One of the many reasons he makes no sense, constantly contradicting himself. I have no idea what this man wants, or it's like his thought process the whole season. It keeps well, you broke a promise. That's basically a story. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's pretty much it. Oh my god. So. One of the characters is like, recent acts of terror have undermined the peace that we intend to preserve, and punishment must be meted out on those responsible. You murdered children, and you don't seem remotely remorseful. What gives you the right to disobey the council? 
And then his response to all of that, which, by the way, is a great argument. And I knew the writer wasn't prepared to be able to fight back at that argument, because it's like, this is almost <laughs> it was impossible. His own argument. And so uh, Gravik says, Fury promised us a home, but it never came. All it's right, like, well, then the uh, child murders. Okay. <laughs> like, what? You got me. Why are you killing children, man? That's a Why bit didn't weird. I consider that? And he says, like, the humans cast us aside. And then I was like, wait a minute. The humans, they didn't even you know, know you were here. Exist. They didn't even have a chance to cast you aside. We might have, because you're an asshole. But we they probably would have. <laughs> you know, it didn't happen. <laughs> At least give us a chance to. And then he says, I promise you Earth will be our home because I'm going to take it. It's like, you really haven't addressed our point, <laughs> like, not even a little bit, about the whole children killing thing. You're just like, nah, I'm just gonna kill more people, fuck it. And then, um, do you remember this delivery? He says, I think it's a war. A war! Oh. It's like, what yeah, the there's, fuck? Uh, <laughs> there's several times he's just like, I am acting! Just, yeah. He just gets louder. I thought it was awkward, because I'm... He was a, I don't think he was a terrible actor, but that, th it seems like that, where it's like, what are you doing? This is what I mean. Yeah, like, I think he's probably capable of a lot more than that, but, like, man, they made him do some cringe stuff. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe don't. Maybe have something else. I don't know. But, yeah, like I said, yeah. everything he said didn't address the point that killing children is bad. And that's at this point, I think you can, you, you can see the pattern. That's what the writer does. They seem to recognize problems, and then they just highlight other things and hope you ignore that they didn't address it. It's like, bye. No lines. I mean... Distraction lines. I don't even know what to call it. I don't like it, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so he says, you know, humans are destined to consume themselves. Anyone worrying about innocent deaths, don't you worry. We're simply hastening the inevitable. Right. And it's like, do you listen to your own, like, <laughs> you need to put on, like, a big spooky black cloak and have, like, a scepter bum, or something. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> have a big mustache. How has he just not argued for the Kree? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I because don't know. as a warlike species, the, it was inevitable. The Kree were just doing it for them. It's, it's sad. It's yeah, exactly. Because like, the Riots can't come up with anything interesting for Gravik. They've just made it so that it's like, I'm mad that we didn't get to take over Earth, so I'm going to do it by force and kill their children too. Like, okay. Killmonger logic. Like, he's just... Yeah. Uh. I don't know. It's they, they, their ability to write villains is. I don't know how they ever pulled Thanos off. Like that's like. No. He was a I, fluke. Looking back at that, it's because my my next video is going to be on Thanos. I'm comparing him to Darkseid, and taking a look with a fine tooth comb at his opening scene. <laughs> Reminding just, me of Darkseid. Oh my god. Well, it's, it's, go it, it keeps happening because like the next step, of course, we, we've covered this a couple of times, but this is the first time the fucking show decides to, is the the Avengers. It's like, this. even this scroll council is smart enough to be like, we we can't beat the Avengers, they're pretty, uh, oh, they're yeah. pretty tough. And it just shows him and he oh, goes... no one calls them. And he just says, you don't think I thought about that? And then he never brings it up. He again. doesn't tell him what his solution is. <laughs> 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 now, we know what his solution technically might be. It's I not even a solution. Tell them, right? He tells them later. Then well, you bring them to the... Uh... This Later, is the but not this, this is the time to tell him because we're gonna get a vote oh, soon. Yeah. yeah, exactly. This is the time to tell him. Super Scroll. And he's being all vague yeah. and evil. Well, he's being vague because it's for the audience to be like, "Oh, is he talking about Super yeah. Scroll?" And that's, yeah, why, uh, that's why. I'm that. British Prime Minister just stands up and says, "We need to streamline our chain of command, especially when at war." I nominate Gravik. Yeah, it's, it's just, just like, like she immediately <laughs> jumps to that, and it's like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then one of them rightly points out, oh, you're like a traitor. You like set this up ahead of time. It's like, well, yeah, because that came out of fucking nowhere. It's just, yeah, this is happening now. Um, And then uh, the guy says, I'm the commander of NATO. I can mobilize a million troops at the snap of a, and then they hit him. Like, they slap him or something? I forget. This scene is so fucking cringe. They hit him in the throat. He just goes, Bleh. The most He's the most powerful person in that room, probably. Uh, If you're the commander of NATO, then... You have, like, an insane amount of say and sway over the largest assortment of armies that have ever been, um, it was you know, weird. in a military alliance in all human history. Because the <laughs> guard... Yeah, and the guard is, like, looking to the British Prime Minister lady, what am I supposed to do next? Like, what do you want me to do with him? Like, the implication being, like, do you want me to kill him? This is like, Jesus, <laughs> can you just... Is that something you can do? I don't even... And, uh, weirdly, the... The Fox News uh, allegory guy, he's just smiling at it. I don't, I don't, I don't I, like, this should be pretty haunting, right? That 
showing any dissent gets you possibly killed. That's probably not fun. <laughs> He's got a big smile. I don't know how you can operate a like a form of government like this, like the way the council yeah. is supposed to work. Yeah. Like no wonder y'all suck. This doesn't make any sense. How have you? How you're bar you're barbarians. They never portray governments or anything like they're logical. Like this this scene could have been a good scene, and like you could imagine all the parts all the parts are here for this to be a good scene, but they just botch it every opportunity they have, and they make it seem like there's no way you guys could have been in charge of all this power. You're a bunch of idiots. This is how the way you conduct business. Judo no chop this guy in the neck. Have all that power. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, then uh, they like in all in favor except this lady. I forget what her role is, but she's like, um, I fear you've forgotten our history. We didn't end up refugees because we were unwilling to wage war. It was because we were too willing, and I don't submit. Basically saying no, like the other guy. And all he says to her is, "That's fine. You know, you can leave." No, and he says, "He says if I had a hundred of you, I'd take over this planet oh. immediately." It's like, what? Yep. All she did is stand up to you. You. You need a hundred people to follow well, orders, surely, though. if anything. Isn't it a bit curious? The first guy that stood up to him, they had a guard attack him. And then mm. when she stood up to him, it's like, you're cool. Oh, yeah. so what's that about? <laughs> yeah, that is strange. Fucking annoying, because we don't see that character. She gives information to Talos, I think, in this episode, and then we don't see it till like, the end. She's... The very end, yeah. yeah. So, like, what my point is that Gravik legit let her go. He was just like, yeah, do whatever you want. It's like, she just said she's not in favor of you committing, like, war against the humans. Don't you think, like, that's a liability? Well, yeah, because the first thing she does after leaving is betray him. Exactly, that's what I mean. Like, the yeah. graphics... Walks out of the room. Is Gravik not the kind of general that would be like, well, one of the highest power scrolls in my command has said they're not interested in any of my plans and actively are interested in the opposite. You can go. Like, no, no. Just commit to the evil thing. You just said you're going to kill everyone and all the children. You may as well go the next step and kill her. Yeah. I think that the entire thing, they're trying to make him sympathetic. They're trying to really? make the skull sympathetic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that, I, th That's I why absolutely all the... think that their goal is to try and make him sympathetic. Yeah. The they're time. awful at it. <laughs> And they're absolutely terrible at it, but I think no that's the goal. It's like, ah, uh, see, you know, he's not all bad, even though he wants to nuke Earth. Yeah, because the entire point of this is the allegory of, well, you're not supposed to judge people all at the same time just for the actions of a few. That's what they're going for. Um, and I think they're even meant to make Gravik... Because uh, you've got an entire monologue at the end in the final episode, which is from his side of the story, and yeah. that's meant to make you like him. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. So it just, broke me, that scene. <laughs> pro, pro tip for any writer, when you have your character massacre children, it gets really difficult, the whatever they're gonna say next, to like them, <laughs> like... What like, is it? It's like the Killmonger speak. thing that they do. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah but, like that's right. They Killmonger said that he wanted to kill children as well. That's what he said. Yeah, and like, then there was fucking oh, video essays yeah, about how Killmonger was right, it's like, excuse me? Um, did you... Yeah. Were you not paying attention? I've did been you know asking for years, said? why did Killmonger kill his girlfriend? Nobody's given me an answer for this. Nobody. It's so ridiculous. It's I mean, he betrayed Claw as well, and there's nothing clear on why he did that. Except and, for, like, he used I... him as a bargaining chip, but you could just do that when he was alive anyway. Yeah, it's, it makes no sense. And Claw, he's known him since he was a kid. He, could, he was practically like an uncle to him. There could have been a whole story there, and they just kill him. And the girlfriend, I've never seen anyone bring this up, she bypassed the cameras in the museum. She was actually a part of their crew. Like she wasn't just some random girl. She was a part of the crew, yeah, she was yeah. a part of the job. And just kill her off like nothing. And then we're supposed to be feel sorry for him in the very next scene. Right after he kills his girlfriend and Claw, they go into the flashback with his dad. It's just like, which one? Like, commit. Either he's a crazy person or he's this sympathetic figure. And they're trying to do both. And this guy is Killmonger all over again. <clears throat> trying Oof. to do both. Except not Killmonger didn't anywhere. want to nuke the whole world. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, kill kill yeah. Killmonger. Killmonger. Yeah. Killmonger had Killmonger standards, had okay? Yeah, he only yeah. wanted to kill the whites, which is technically less evil than wanting to kill the entire world, so. Oh my god, yeah, this guy is worse than Killmonger. Like, that's that's when you've reached Well, it's like I mentioned, Loki just when wanted to When you're worse than a guy uh, named Killmonger, <laughs> uh, you're pretty yeah. bad, probably. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, she phones Talos immediately and says Gravik has control of our people. Which at that point, you're just like, so why, yeah, why did you let her go? I don't she know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, immediately after. She's like just outside the building. Yeah. <laughs> betraying yeah. him. That's the room. She dialed, started dialing as she was walking out of that room. That's how stupid it is. It'd be so time. funny if he walks out of the building while she's talking to Talos. He's like, who are you calling? And she's like, nobody. It's fine. Just, this is, uh, just, uh, 
<laughs> you know, my daughter <laughs> picking her up from football practice or something. <laughs> Don't you worry so, about it. So one of the things that really confused me was the element. So with this <laughs> the scroll council, um, you Roundsel. have scroungsel and at the scroungsel, <laughs> Gravik gets uh, he comes in and they say you've done a very 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 bad thing you have to be punished and he said no i'm starting a war on earth and they're like okay you should be in charge then yep and, and then one of the people and then if you have someone on the council who doesn't agree with the rest of the council they get i assume normally killed so why not just have a dictator if if what, what's the point of the what's the council part if anyone disagrees well, they get killed you know, obviously it's something that doesn't get explored in the show, but how did each member of this council come to be? How were they elected in terms of, did, are they elected? Is this a representative? Well, so, I think we're like, supposed to believe... Is this a believe... nation like a constitutional republic or something? Like, well, do they we, have representatives? I don't even think they, 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 they were just... They the Elder <laughs> Scrolls that just talk to each other about their plans. That's probably what it was when Talos... Because remember, this is the group Talos was a part of and he got kicked out of, voted out of, I guess. Yeah. Well, he was Wasn't a general enough. enough. Well, because that's how the show begins, right? He says that they booed me off the council. Why is that? Too because nice. He's, he's too sympathetic to humanity. <laughs> that idiot. I'm to blow everything up. Oh, we man. should be nice to the people whose planet we are invading. Oh, so well, um, yeah, the, Elder yeah. <laughs> the Elder Scrolls. <laughs> the Elder Scrolls. <laughs> the El oh, oh, I got it. The Elder Scrolls. Scroll Oblivious. Scroll <laughs> Dude, doesn't uh, doesn't Amelia Clark look like she's like possibly like sixteen here? Yeah, mom took me to a meeting at the dentist I didn't want to go to. She's so tiny. <laughs> Do you think they got a really <laughs> small chair to try and make her look big? <laughs> hey, and then they gave her a big track song. Well, that's uh, yeah. yeah that's spoilers. Been. It's funny mom because took if me anyone to the dentist that didn't have the N sixty four in the waiting room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It you would have been a the guy. funny joke, actually, if they did have, like, an N64 or a GameCube sitting out there. Hey, man, that, that's if you're gonna take me to the dentist, take me to whichever one had the N64 in the waiting exactly. room, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, if I'm gonna have you fucking around with my teeth, and let me, at least let me race around Mario Kart for a while before <laughs> my doom. So this part is really weird and super important. Gravit comes back and everyone's cheering. Oh my god, yay, this is great. I guess he told them that we're going to war and they're all really happy about that. They're all really happy, which is, again, it's like, oh damn, so the civilians here are chill with this? Wow. Everyone's okay. on the hook. All of them. They never, Bastards. They're all on board with they this. They never explain why they're so on board with them. Like, they never, there's never a scene to really <laughs> show, like, what leadership ability he had or anything. It's just, ugh. Woohoo, I zombies. clapped the war. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Amen. war. Woo! We sure do We're love war. Die. I love war. <laughs> war is great. God, if only we could have some here? more war. <laughs> yeah. We ran out of war Lord the other day. The warrior. And, uh... Isn't it kind of fascinating when you, again, think about the history? The history was that the scrolls were basically being hunted to extinction by the Kree, and then Captain Marvel and Nick Fury, and, a, and yeah, I guess you could say humanity, were like the ones that were willing to help you out. And what is the, what is the payment for that? It's death. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? None of the Humanity fucking... Humanity helped you. They helped you when nobody else would. Yeah, that's true. Because they said that you went to all the other planets and you didn't find shit, so... Which is oh, so bullshit. You're lying. You're but lying, Fury lying, broke his lying. promise, but none of that matters. Fury broke his promise to all the people who were unbeknownst to any of this, who didn't make a promise that they broke, all of them should die. I need that scene where Talos arrives at nowhere and he says, could you guys help us? I have refugees that need a home. And they just go, okay. no. Well, no, you cried to him and be like, yeah, sure, buddy. No, he <laughs> says know? no. He says no, because remember, no, Talos said he checked all the planets. No, no, no results. Nothing. Right. No results, including Thanos' garden planet. Yeah, but that one, it was, it when, when they killed Thanos, his blood seeped into the core and destroyed the planet, so. <laughs> ruined, the, ruined the soil, he salted the earth. <laughs> That's the one that everybody points to. It was an empty, guarded planet. It was a beautiful, yeah. guarded planet that nobody lived on. That's the level of um, retconning, though. It could be, they, like, mentioned, they specifically call it Thanos' gardening planet or something. <laughs> And yeah, then they're like, why can't we go there? And, the, and then they say, nah, remember remember the, the earth got salted? It flashes back to Rhodey <laughs> just salting the earth for no reason at oh, all. No. <laughs> you have Homo just walking around salting. You remember that joke in The Simpsons? Yes, the flat. <laughs> Did you have to salt the earth afterward? So nothing would ever grow again? 
that's that. fucking great. Oh. So anyway, they're all cheering, and then Gaia's like, those two over there look sus. I'm gonna follow them. And it's like one or two rooms, and then we enter into extremely experimental secret science project that she's not allowed to see right now, apparently. And it's just they like, just wait, what? The desk overturned. It's just, no one ever... It's so like, funny, she, right she just follows them through, like, one corridor and then secret room. And it's like, oh my god, you're discovering something crazy. It's like, what? And she's just standing in the open yeah. as well, like... You I have to appreciate... Look at this shot. You have to appreciate this. Yeah. You have to show the shot. We, we're seeing her right now looking at them, but it's like, so if any of them turn around, you're fucked. It's like, <laughs> uh, let's just hope they don't, I guess. And then she's like, oh no, see? Look, look how secret that is. It's like, from her point of view, it would be so fucking... Uh, Easy to like, they show this to try and be like, see, you wouldn't be able to see it. It was like, no, you fucking also, can. You know, like you could just like transform into somebody who isn't you, so that if they do catch you, they wouldn't know it was you. Yep. You know, oh, they just. But don't... It's, she's still got to be Amelia Clark, so that we yeah. know who she is, even though she should not want anybody to know who she is if they do see her. Yeah, I wouldn't want to fuck that up. It's so funny. Look at that shot. <laughs> you could, you just want a scientist to be like, uh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah. You can't see me. I can't see you, so you can't see me. That's you are like a squirrel, that. right? <laughs> You're a squirrel, right? It'll because be you can't be in here, but that's marginally better. Dumb as fuck, but this will be very important going forward. Don't you worry. We'll come yeah, back to is, it. This is uh, perhaps the most important thing to happen on Earth yeah. ever. <laughs> so, as a result... Of this all being blamed on America. Interesting looking person. We have a report that says the 27 EU heads of state, including the British Prime Minister, are asking America to answer for this. To answer for what? Random American <laughs> citizens going to a different country to, to blow what, something what, up. It, it's, it's absurd. What, what is it trying to understand? It's like these were they're terrorists. They're not like American soldiers. It's absolutely we don't, fucking yeah, we, nuts. We're not with them. They, they, that's why they had to do this without our help. Also, they're not with us. Also, we'll help you bring them also, to justice. Also, you can't trust any of this information because nanotech veils, like, yep. and scrolls and Literal shape-shifting. Literal fairy woman people. who can shapeshift. Yep. Like, we're not forgetting that She-Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> you can't shit just have her a funny meme and then forget about it completely. It's not allowed. So the scene really? begins with, like, Colonel, are you denying two of your citizens were present in the attacks? And he says, I'm aware of allegations, and uh, as private citizens, they are welcome to travel countries. I'm happy to have the photos analyzed at Langley. Which, by the way, is possibly the most reasonable line of dialogue in the entire series. That was, like, a good answer. Because there's, there's nothing you can trust for sources of information when it comes to, like, a recording in this universe. Neither is there a problem with people visiting places. That's not illegal as far as I know. And the fact that he said, we'll have them analyzed if you want. And the response, by the way, is like some of the country's representatives just go, ugh. It's like, what? <laughs> what do you expect him to say? <laughs> yes, it was us. We blew up Russia. <laughs> like, what? This scene is fucking crazy. Um... Yeah, and then he says, if Slovakia rolls its eyes at me one more time, I'm going to put on the suit and carpet bomb it. If Slovakia rolls their eyes. Yeah, the country of Slovakia, not the Slovakia. representative that you would probably know, right? It's just weird, because that's not something you should it's probably like say they, in this scenario. It's, it's a really bad thing. It's, it's just that the way that he's referring to a person as a country reminds me of that South Park episode where uh, the, the alien guy came to Earth and they found a bunch of space cash in his, in his ship. And then and then Randy's on the phone with all of the representatives of all the countries around the world, and he'd just say, like, shut up, Finland, or, like, will you listen to me, you know, India? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's such a, like, it's funny in that instance, but wouldn't he know his name, you know? You'd have it's thought. It's like, oh, yeah, the country of Slovakia rolls its eyes. What is that? <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah, and, and he just says, we're not going to do it. Like, America's not doing anything until you have evidence. They're just like, oh. It's just funny to me that he was dragged out there just to say, "Do you have evidence?" And that was it. <laughs> no, like, well, no, we don't have evidence, but you know. In this little meeting, look at the little assemblage of countries that they have. You have like Slovakia, Pakistan, Italy, and like what? What about like what a strange like who? Look, who the fuck cares what Pakistan thinks about anything? 
Like, why, how come we have, like, Denmark over there? That Okay, we have France and some of the big ones. But, like, it, it's kind of weird that Pakistan's just, like, over there. But you know? What's strange and about Slovakia? it, I guess, is that it's, like... It's a weird combo. Yeah, because there's... The, what really do they say there was, um, countries? They said until there was 27. And so we have, like, named... There's about eight. Seems a bit odd, but fine. I guess they're the ones that are allowed to speak. <laughs> no one else is. Yeah, do we have so we have Germany there? That's good. Do you have I guess the big three France, UK, Germany? There's Denmark on the left, so I feel like we should have these really filled out with a lot. Like, what about like Japan, you know, China, South Korea, like, like American ally, like really strong, staunch American allies and other NATO countries? Is Pakistan in NATO? Is Pakistan in NATO? Um. Okay, it does. Okay, Pakistan is in NATO. Okay. There you go. The more you know. Where's Australia? Australia's not part of NATO. Um, NATO's global not part. Not. It says here that we have... Quote, well, yeah, Pakistan is... Not, well, hold up. It says, that, it says here <laughs> that NATO has a number of quote-unquote partners across the globe, which the yeah, alliance cooperates with on an individual yeah, basis. Australia, Australia's not in NATO. Australia's part of, like, other... If, uh, treaties and, and alliances, but we're not in NATO. But Pakistan's not in NATO either. I yeah, thought it said North that, but it meant it's, partners it's across North, the globe. Well, remember, North Atlantic, so it's Europe and North America. So, surely, if Pakistan's here, you'd have, like, Australia there, in, you know? Uh, so, the thing, I'm not, I'm not like, with the or list Korea. of countries that are in this seed. I'm, it's more so just that this seed is, like, pointless. It's just like it's just like Mola said. They just brought Rody over, and it's like, oh, do you have evidence? They wasted his time. Oh, well, I guess the that's point the of... end of the conversation. Then, like, what's the <laughs> point of it? Slovakia was just happy that he was invited someplace. <laughs> He's like, oh wait, I get to go to a meeting. <laughs> um, but the this the scene is like, oh, we believe that America is evil now because of this one thing. And hey, we we'll all get there. There's a lie that, that regards idea. that. That's really really funny soon because uh, we're about to get the Fury Rody meeting, which is horrible and cringe. <laughs> uh, with some of the best ADR that I've ever seen in a Marvel production. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I'll be able to play that as well because it's pretty it. bad. So, yeah, uh, Fury meets up with Rhodey, and remember, Fury is right now thought to be the one that has detonated the bomb, or at least the through negligence caused it, as well as uh, just being off the grid. He was a wall, as they said. So, that is a, a, like an argument that is a conclusion is already like absurd. Well, but it's enough that they should be, they're going to take him in, obviously. Oh, of, course. of course, they have to. There's no way because, they're going to let him go, but of course he leaves this place pretty easily, even well, though he's the old, sad, they... useless fury. If, if anything, <laughs> if that last scene is anything to indicate, this is an incredibly tense geopolitical situation right now. Yes. You know, like, you got to take him in. Um, so... If they figure out that you just fired him and didn't arrest him... Then... Yeah, imagine if they found out. It's like, oh my god, you're harboring like a wanted fugitive. Ro Rody starts with like, you're lucky I'm not handing you over to a Siberian retirement facility. As if to imply that he vaguely believes. But the problem here, by the way, is you can't trust uh, anything that Rody's. Is, you know, we're going to have to kind of talk about that now, I guess. Everything uh, he says is suspect, is kind of what I'm getting at. Of you get the reveal at the end Allegedly. of next episode, I think, right? That's when you hear the voice, so that's the full... Well, not necessarily the most explicit, but at least that would be explicit. So, whatever. We don't need to dance around it, I'm saying. is the, Skrull is a roadie. <laughs> it's, uh, roadie is a roadie. Skrull is a roadie. <laughs> Which uh, everybody expected. It was not a surprise at all. That was it was kind of sad was to expecting. think about, because when crafting this show and looking at all the current characters, it was like, I think people theorized, like, what would be the most interesting yet least impactful? Um, but even then, you know, it, it would be about exactly when you choose, which we will talk about, but not yet. We're just going to go with the fact that he is currently a scroll, And so everything he says, you have to think about it from a perspective of he's trying to subvert Fury and work for Gravik. But kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, judging the, the dialogue, it's equally confusing as it is shit. Um, in any case... He's uh he's he's doing that disrespect shit and then and then and then Fury's like you forgetting your rank here, Colonel. That's the thing I was saying earlier. That I was confused. I I would have thought already Colonel was higher rank than Fury anyway, but I thought he was even higher than that now. And that Fury doesn't even have a rank. So you know, 
It's this is what I mean. It's just like you forget your rank is like isn't he? He's a higher rank than you. What the fuck? Um. Yeah, and Rody says I'm the last friend you got. He says uh, he was trying to stop the attack, and then Rody says, "Well, good job. Two thousand set to triple when they clear the rubble. You've not only set the stage for World War Three. You flipped all of our allies to Team Russia." <laughs> Because that's a thing you can do. What? <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking you know how sense much, at all. You know how much we love Russia. Not a thing. And it, it's, it's so funny that it's just a foregone conclusion that everyone believes America did this. It's like, no. That's just something people are claiming. That guy who worked for America against Russia, which is... Why? It just doesn't make any fucking sense. But yes, that's the state of the, the world. That's what they want us to believe is happening. And in this, doesn't he admit that he was told years ago that scrolls exist? Yep. So yeah, Fiori yeah. should be like, well, if they think that America did it, why, why don't you just tell them it was for scrolls? Because it was. We say that, <laughs> again, we say this, like, there's so many reasons to think it could have been anything. We've got tech, that, there's loads of tech that can make this happen that's not even scrolls. It's, it's so weird that they just assume it's, that's the case. Um, and yeah. That's, that's why I was saying... This is something that they should have been accounting for way back when they had the Black Widow veil thing. Like, if you have that type of technology, then that is, <laughs> that's how, that's just as dangerous as a scroll, you know? But it seems like they're not prepared for this at all. Well, it, I mean, it's, it was in Civil War. Remember in Civil War when someone didn't even use, he didn't even use the same tech. Nope. That was like prosthetics. And that yeah, caused that a crazy huge international incident. <laughs> and that was oh 10 God, years ago so in this right. timeline. You can't just you make know, up. Yeah, and that was something that, like, at this point has to be known it was the case yeah. that Winter Soldier was framed. So, like, how can they believe anything? Why does this show keep oh, forgetting God, the world yeah, that it's God. set in? That's, yeah, that's so ridiculous. From the, They should be so on guard for that specific thing. Like, that type of, um... Yeah, so they just ignore it completely. So, uh, yeah, on the point of 15 years that he's been aware of them, which, by the way, Fury takes pretty easily. He's just like, hmm, wow. Yeah, and, and he says the Pentagon were made aware of several light ships crashing to Earth 15 years ago. So wow. The thing about this got... is, that would have been something that Fury... Like, th th that wouldn't be happening with the Talos scrolls. That must have been the million that Talos smuggled in, right? And so you're telling me the Pentagon be... knew about those, but Fury didn't. Fury, when S.H.I.E.L.D. still existed 15 years ago on the timeline, didn't yeah. know. Really? He, he didn't no, know about okay. that. But that Rhodey found out about it and didn't tell and anyone. Didn't tell Fury. Yeah. And then you, it, it all cascades. It's like, wait, Rhodey's known that Skrulls, shape shifting aliens, have been on Earth for 15 years. So every single and encounter he's ever had with any suspicious activity in any of these stories, he's never entertained the idea it could be Skrulls. And he didn't tell anybody. And he didn't. Of course, he tells Tony. How could he not tell Tony? He would definitely tell Tony. It's the first person he would tell. Spies for who the right? Oh no, it's, it's, they just—they just have they have no and interest also, in the scrolls. That, it's crazy. If that's the case, that may well have been on the the files, right? That got leaked in Winter Soldier because that would have been before Winter ago, Soldier. The, the the scrolls would have landed on Earth, or or rather that if if uh if if Rhodey knew that fifteen years ago, then that means Shield could have known and it would have been on their files, and then mm -hmm. everybody found and then that everyone out. would know. Maybe we should call her. Oh, here it is. All right. So I mean, this is... Hydra would have known yeah. by that extension, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Drink uh, you, gotta, you gotta play the ADR. You gotta yeah, do it. I'll play this once because of copyright. You never know what's gonna happen. But basically, Rhodey's about to say, maybe we should call our friends. And uh, this is what Fury says in response. Just give me a sec. I'll let you guys know when it's uh, over because chat gotta see this. Maybe we should call our friends. No, 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 no. We can't. Hang on, I'm going to pause. Just, I'm, I'm cutting it in half for safety. All Fury said is no, no, no. Here we go. All right, listen up. Here we go. This is it. He jumped a gun on that. You know, we get them in a fight with the scrolls, and next thing you know, they find themselves duplicated. And... You catch that, chat? <laughs> it's some of the most blatant chopping in of audio that clearly wasn't there before ever. Um, the line, for those who couldn't listen for whatever reason, he says, no, 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 we can't jump the gun on bringing in the Avengers. We get them in a fight with the Skrulls, and the next thing you know, they... And then it hard cuts into him saying, fan themselves duplicated and turned into terrorists. Oh, Which, uh, it's, it's, um... That's bizarre and confusing and not a good reason not to bring them. 
Yeah, so my theory, and uh, I totally fucking felt like it was confirmed when we get to a certain line in episode 5, because uh, this was done in post, so episode 5 wasn't, and episode 5 matches what I think was supposed to be said in this scene, which is, no, 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 we can't jump the gun on that. If we get them, being the Avengers, in a fight with the Skrulls, and next thing you know, they, he was cut off into a different line, but I think the original would have been like, that's going to make the situation worse. It's going to have all kinds of powerful people doing all kinds of powerful things. It's going to, everything will get out of control. You know, we don't, we don't want, we want to control this. That's probably what it was originally, which makes no fucking sense at all. And they probably realized that. And so then they recorded the new line of him saying, you don't want to find the Avengers duplicated and then turned into terrorists. It's like, but what does that mean? Duplicated. Like, duplicate Captain Marvel Powers? and then you can't, well, we're not there yet, Rag, so he couldn't have meant that. Well, no, I mean, like, duplicated. Like, in terms of, like, if a scroll... The only thing I could imagine is that somebody, I don't know, duplicates, like, Sam, and then, I don't know, pretends to be Captain America or Falcon, you know, going around doing crazy Which shit. Which they can already do anyway. They can already do that, because all they need to do is, like, see, like, a video or something, a video oh, recording of that. that's funny. Copy their... You're going that way. I actually, when I said they can already do that, I meant that technology allows them to do what scrolls can do to the Avengers. Yeah, they can the do nail. that anyway. That's right. So it's, so it's, it's absolutely insane not nonsense that doesn't make any and sense. This is the end, of, and again, if if the scrolls win, it's the end of the world. So you know, it, you know, it might be worth so, to take a risk here. This is kind of like a classic moment. It's, it's so like almost naked the way that they've done this, like the writers. It's like that first reason that I theorized was the what the thing was crap, and they realized it. Their second reason is even worse. I would say that makes even less sense. They come up with a third reason uh, in the penultimate episode we talked about it a bit earlier he says this is personal this is his fight that's what they give us their <laughs> final reason but my theory is he said that it would be too like it would cause too much trouble to bring them in now the stakes right like like they, they get pretty serious by the time we hit the penultimate episode and so that wouldn't work anymore and so they had that bonus reason of this is personal this is my fight but no, then, then in they, the finale, right. he contradicts then, all of them. Well, I was going to say, then they ADR'd this scene, but they didn't change that later episode 5 one. So now it's, we can't bring them in because they'd be duplicated. And then he's asked again, and then he says, well, this is personal. It's like, no, you said they can't like, be duplicated. No. Or, yeah, but then or it's... was that bullshit, you know, that first time? It was and yes, just a lie. Just for you are correct, finale. that's all going to get subverted because of what happens at the end, yes. <laughs> like, yeah, like, all contradicts that's every single one of them. And that was the stupid thing. Like, Episode 5 ends with him going, like, giving his reason, and then the first thing he does in the next episode is break it. You're right, yep. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nothing but I don't off. understand. Why, if they can't have the Avengers in because they'll turn into him, why do they need the machine to turn him into them in the first place? So we can have even more? Why must you ask these difficult questions? Like, because he had the DNA and everything, he could have just put it on his finger or something, presumably, and just transformed into it. So how amazing that this is just something they could do, period. Yeah, the whole Groot arm you thing. You can just... Hey, hey, wait, wait. Lay off, all right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah we're, that... not, we're not to, ga we're not <laughs> to Galador yet. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. Good God, the most shocking things are still yet to come. This is what I mean, by the way. We've gone this far. This show is absolute ass. Um, <laughs> but it's going to get worse. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's funny about the legs, though, is this, we're not too far away from being done with episode two, and that will actually put us at the halfway point because the first two are double oh, the thank size. God. Yeah, okay, we're good. Not doing, too, you know, doing too bad. Um, so yeah, he says like basically, Rhodey, help me fight my scroll war," and he's like, "No," and then he says, "Are you forgetting who helped you get your seat at the table?" Which I was a little confused by. I had no idea if Fury had anything to do with uh, Rhodey's rise to Colonel. I, I had I had no clue that. That was the thing that happened. I thought they were separate entities until the Avengers stuff. Like, um, but I guess apparently Fury helped Rhodey get to where he is, and so um, Rhodey says, "Oh, so I owe you now." And then, uh, and Fury says, "We owe each other. Men who look like us don't get promoted because of who our daddies know. Every ounce of power we wrestle from the vice grip of mediocre Alexander Pierces who run this world uh, was earned in blood." So let's make the power mean something. Help a brother out. Oh, God. <laughs> Pretty cringy. Um, wow. Well, yeah, that's. Uh, that. It was just. Um, how do they? How do they? How do they explain Obama? Do you think the like sometimes they <laughs> they just there's the no teeth argument again because it's like why don't you just say what you were saying? He says men who look like us. I mean, do you mean black men? And then when you say Alexander <laughs> no. Pierce, you mean white men. 
it's yeah it's so fucked up the way they try to twist it and it's like i'm just sitting there like what am i supposed to take from this like if you're gonna be that mask off just like actually you know just say, say it yeah because yeah. they especially they just, when you yeah. find out that fury didn't do any of his own actions anyway and he owes it all to yeah. someone else and, and he's just, trying to brag dude, about it Brody's not a black man right now. He's somewhat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's a green he's man. A responsible he's to what up. <laughs> it's so fucking <laughs> awkward. It's like, uh. Oh my god. That's so true. And then something that kind of just annoys me. I don't know if you guys remember who Alexander Pierce is. Villain from uh, Winter Soldier. Uh, Robert Redford played him. That's a character who uh, Fury had a lot of respect for. They, they, they have a huge history. They work together. They... Like, the idea that he's now referring to him as the mediocre Alexander Pierce. It's like, no, you would hate him. You wouldn't go, like, he's mediocre. It's like, you'd hate what happened, but respect that. Like, it, it doesn't represent at all the relationship that Fury had with him. That was, like, a super important one that... Yeah, the, the, he would only have strong opinions on yeah. Pierce. He wouldn't have, like, a, oh, yeah, he was just a middling guy. It would have been, he really liked him before, and now he really dislikes him. And I don't buy the... the neutral. That's not true. I don't buy that he would think that Alexander Pierce got to where he was because he was white. I don't, I don't think that is something that Fury would have... Like, the, they had re, they fought in, like, wars together. Like, I, I don't buy that that's something he thought. Um, yeah, it's very reductive. That all history. For show that's supposed to be intelligent. <laughs> it's super cringy, and, uh, like, I don't know what... Like, like help a brother out. He's talking about war. <laughs> <laughs> He's not, not in a barber shop. You know, just help, help, help a brother out. World. We're you know? talking about war. He's trying to borrow 20 bucks. Like, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. Like, this is a serious conversation, but they treat it so childishly, and I just, I might... Like I just raised one eyebrow to the scene of just what do you? Yeah, it was bizarre. It was it's well, so, such a. It, oh, go ahead, sir. Just, just that like it, it kind of it's made worse by the fact that um, Rhodey's response I think is actually pretty good, but you're supposed to retroactively look at it as like a bad line because he's a he's a scroll. Yeah, if he wasn't a scroll, then he would have sided with him. Yeah, I think that's what we're supposed to take from it because he says the world is on the line. And we don't wrestle power away from mediocre men who don't look like us just to give it to people who do, like who are mediocre and do look like us. Which I was like, that's a good line. Like in response to the shitty line of just, we're both black, therefore we work together. He's like, <laughs> yeah, but you're shit. <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> like, you old shit bag. Crap at your job, so fuck off. And it's just like, yeah. But then, yeah, Rhodey's evil, so never mind. Evil Rhodey is the only one who makes sense. Like, this is crazy, man. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, and, and then he just he goes into saying that you're fired, which was, uh, I didn't even, like I said, I didn't even know who Fury's fucking working for. I don't know what Fury's rank is. I don't know what's going on, but he says Fury's fired now. And then Fury's response, instead of appreciating how insane this scenario is, that he's being framed, that he knows that Skrulls are trying to take over the world, that World War Three is imminent, and that his friend, who right now that he assumes, I assume, is is a human, just said, like, you know, I don't trust you and I'm firing you. This this is actually existential for what, what I would consider a Fury character to deal with. Losing all of his power and network uh, connections, right? That's actually something that's something that's going to affect him. Not to the point of making him depressed, but certainly to the point to worry him. His response is, <laughs> they said you to fire me? Which just, it's like, what the fuck? Like, the... He's like, like second only to the president, isn't he? He's pretty high up. Third. Brody, if, if Brody is Secretary of State, is that what it is? Yeah. He's number three. Then he's number so, three. Yeah. yeah, it's President, Vice President, Secretary of State. Oh, because he said that the president doesn't know anything unless I. Yeah, um, in the tell show him, they so present it as second. though Brody's basically the president at this point. He uses him as a puppet. Yeah, we well, can't expect white people to be able to run anything. Wrestle the power away from those mediocre Alexander Pierces. That's. We gotta do, oh, but um, yeah. I just thought it was a bizarre reaction that instead of being like, "Holy fuck, this has gotten really bad," he's like, "Lol, you're <laughs> he's like, shut up, little bro, like idiot." It's like, okay, that that seems weird on Fury's part, the master tactician man. Um, and yeah, uh, I think he says uh, like nobody, because yeah, he said like when he said they sent you to fire me, he says nobody sent me, I volunteered. Which I feel like is one of those lines where you could have just said, nobody sent me, right? That would have been enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always opportunities to shave that they don't take. Um, well, and, he's, 
And he says the mess you created killed Maria Hill, so you've earned all of this. Which again, it's just like, but so now what? So Rody does believe all of that shit happened, even though he was the one presenting all the arguments for why it's probably absolute bullshit. Okay, why not? I, Unless he's doing it to he, annoy he, Fury, I don't know. He says, "You earned all of this smoke, brother." And I'm like, I can't yep. stand this script. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I was like, please. <laughs> Oh, well, that's the evil roadie speech. And then they're supposed to take him away, by the way. But uh, Fury, I think, like, breaks this guy's hand and takes his gun. And for some reason, that means he's allowed to go free now, instead of it meaning all the other gods should come in and capture him. Yeah, like, you can't let him leave, especially after he's just attacked you. Come well, if on. you think about it, you can't let him leave from a... Colonel Rhodes' point of view. You certainly can't let yep. him leave from a Gravic Scroll point of view. And nope. so it's like, what's going on here? How does Fury get out of this? He <laughs> just walks out. I don't know. He just does. You're like, okay, okay, <laughs> then. It's like one of the one scenes he actually has some agency, but it doesn't even make sense for him to have agency in this scene. Like, this is the one time, like, he, sh you know, it's, it's, it's crazy how they do well, this. If you're because he says like, and you wonder why you're out, and then he says, "I'm Nick Fury. Even when I'm out, I'm in." <laughs> and then he goes outside and cries on the bench. Like, well, this is the thing. I thought I thought the line was crap anyway, but then yes, he goes and cries. Yeah, and then they double it it's up. It's his best yeah. of the series. Best of the series, maybe. Sure, I don't know. <laughs> but he doesn't do anything else. The, the, it is over. <laughs> the only other badass thing he does is walk out of a crypt. I like throughout the entire series. <laughs> It's just so much pressure, god damn it, I'm so tough. Oh, no. well, it doesn't like collapse you... with his head and his knees at the end well, as well. The thing. How would you wait, so is except at this point he doesn't actually know that that uh that Rhodey is a scroll, right? No. I thought he did like so this yeah, is he... This is the he thing. Know. He said he knows who is and who isn't a scroll based on just the fact that someone wouldn't call him Nick. Rhodey calls exactly. him Nick in the scene. So the show is yeah. telling me Fury knows. But he doesn't behave like Fury knows. No, he doesn't. Well, and he, okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> even Rhodey acts like he should have known from that, because when they're in the hospital later, he says something when he's, like, outing him, and he goes, yeah, Nick. So he, and he emphasizes it as if I did it deliberately kind of thing. Yeah, uh, it's all over the place, because Fury would be doing a lot of different things if he knew Rhodey was a scroll right now. He needs to he, tell everyone, first of all. <laughs> Even when he's talking to the uh, the British uh, woman about it, when he tells her he's Rhodey, he even takes the picture. He's like, how, could, how did you not know? You say, I'm slow. So he implies that he knew immediately. Also, someone's just said something that I must check. I actually said I wouldn't mind getting these scripts for all uh, films that have Nick Fury in them, or even references to it. Actually, all of the films in the MCU and just control F Nick. Because I have a feeling that they made that up. And I don't, th I don't think, you know, considering how they approach basically everything. Um, well, um, that was what, when everyone was saying he's a scroll, that was their justification, that nobody calls him Nick. So... Um, you know what, I, that would be a cool thing to look up, because I, I could see them screwing that up. Like, one of the movies probably well, well, I, already I, know. I, so someone in chat what? just <laughs> told me it's in the Infinity War script, so just control F, and you've got... Uh, Fury says, same energy signatures as New York. Hill says, ten times bigger. Fury says, call Klein, we'll meet him at... And then Hill says, Nick! Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Over. <laughs> and then, a few seconds later, she gets his attention because she's dusting and she says, Nick, again. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that's... That's Wrong. pretty bad. <laughs> like that's, yeah. How did you? Like that's not even that long ago. No. And you're referencing that specific movie in your you. They yeah, they reference the fucking that scene. Exact they scene to, they yet they didn't. to watch that scene in order it's, to get that clip. Yeah, I'm. I, I can't believe. Wow. <laughs> At this point, wow. this is just vibes, that's right? This image. Bad. That's just how we're feeling. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This that's is literally to me. The thumbnail. That's literally me right now. Just like, what is this show? How do you how do you watch the scene to retcon it, but you don't pay attention to the? That, that's that's my, that's mind boggling. <laughs> well, when you write down the Nick thing, you're like, oh, we should we should check. Just control F. If, that's what I mean. We it's should, so easy. We should check to see if that's not a lie. You 
found that within the stream while we're live. Yet I never, to check like I said, out. I never checked. I just put out the idea that someone oh. did. <laughs> someone because controlled. you assume they would never be that stupid. You would automatically assume, yeah, they would have to check, right? No. There's no way they would lie so brazenly no about something that would be so easy to double check and verify. <laughs> you know it is a no $200 million they show. They wouldn't just they not stupid? do that. I think the retcon, you know, th that's a lie, the Nick Fury part, but maybe they're just stupid. They just didn't, like, they forgot the other part of the scene. I don't know what happened there. And it's funny, too, because if they were right at this, they're like, what would be a name someone might call him that definitely hasn't been used in other films? And then someone's like, Nick. Like, shit. That sounds like something that might have been used. Like, nah. It's fine. You should have gone with Nicolicious. Nobody would have called him that before. <laughs> Nicolicious. <laughs> and he's like, Aren't nobody <laughs> calls me Nicolicious. <laughs> No one calls me Nick with a hard R. Would have, would have nailed it, but oh well. And yes, he does wheeze and cry. It's it's okay though. <laughs> he needs some moment. He's just depressed. He's alive. That is he's depressed. Plot. That's actually true. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yep. The plot. yep. Now oh. the plaque on that bench is gonna read: "It was here. It was on this day. That's a uh, two thousand whatever that Nick Fury fucking cried like a baby." <laughs> <laughs> we dedicate this, this to his tears. So, uh, Olivia Coleman, we're back with her, and she, Yay. she walks in, and the the guy's like, wait, that door is locked, and she says, what does that tell you about me and doors? Does that mean she's saying that she can unlock doors? Yeah. Uh, I, th I thought it means that locked doors don't stop her, just in general. Like, she doesn't care if it's locked or not, she doesn't well, care. Well, because the other thing I thought is that maybe that's her way of saying, I'm allowed in here, you idiot, sort of thing. Like... That she unlocked it because she had a key for it because this is a place she's heading to. This, they wait no, for her as well, right? Or... They show you. They show you her breaking the door from memory. Like she doesn't even pick it; she just pushes it like harder, oh, okay. and it opens. <laughs> like it's like all it shows you is that it's a crap door, basically. <laughs> but uh, he's like, "Who are you?" And then she says, "Above your My pay grade." Where is he? And uh, he looks over because that guy who got captured who worked for America or the scroll. Sorry, yeah, this is kind of confusing. The scroll who took the identity of the guy who worked for America against Russia people, he's been captured by MI6, and she is here to torture him herself. Which is interesting, but sure, I guess, if she's good at it. I don't see All right, yeah, why sure, not. Why not? Um, maybe you just, she just loves what she does. You well, know? And so that she, she doesn't work a day in her life. This is something that maybe we can have some agreements or disagreements on, but um, I could see it going one of two ways for people. It did actually end up going a good way for me. I really enjoyed her performance in this. She felt She's like excellent. different and fun. Um, and I, I, I strictly give it to Olivia Coleman. It's nothing to do with like anything else because <laughs> i'm so yeah. familiar with her and other stuff mm. now that i'm just like oh neat and then you have all of these dreary lame depressed assholes and then she'll come in the room and just be like she sees a bunch of men torturing a guy and she just goes i'm taking over and smiles at them and it's like it's, That's she's different she's very refreshing as a character in this yeah. story because like you said everybody else is a lame boring loser and she's just sort of this uh this sort of wild card in the mix. Like a person, like, like a personality. Well, one of the, of, uh, skills, one of the keys brain. to it, I would argue, is that the plot prevents a lot of people from doing anything, but she actually has stuff that she needs to do to make the plot move forward, and so she gets to do competent things. It's crazy. It's, yeah, she, it's, it's, it's kind of funny to when you put it that way. Like, the plot allows her to actually be competent. Well, it has to, because it the has entire to, yeah. thing was building up to her yeah, replacing exactly. Fury. So. Yeah, that's what I was saying, how, like, she was basically doing everything that Nick would normally be doing in terms of, like, um, just the tactics and how skillful and, and witty she was in all these conversations. She did great. So this guy, I want everyone to take a good look. They describe, the, the, this guy they need information from, okay, and she's been sent in to do torture. The, the torturer currently says to Olivia Coleman, um, I've thrown everything at him, and he hasn't said a word. What are you going to do? You see this guy? He, he doesn't look fine. like he's. He looks like he's had some. I don't know, like some mothballs oh, he's, thrown he's at been, him. It's been hit. Yeah. But like, compared to how bad it could get in terms of getting tortured, mm -hmm. like, well, EFAP will know from our coverage of things. This is a like a weird thing that happens in all kinds of movies where a torturer just for some reason only knows how to punch or slap. They never go for anything that's more like terrifying instantly, like amputation of a limb or waterboarding or any of those kinds of things. It's always punching. 
It's I very boring. Doesn't even like hurt, hurt, like damage you. It's a psychological thing. It's a psychological oh, thing. Please. There's a lot of those. And then, and then, you know, then, but then I guess you got something like Lethal Weapon where they like electro shocks uh, Mel Gibson. So, Joel, like, Joel and The Last of Us. I love that torture scene. Yeah, this like, oh, get the job done. Oh, dude, just reminded like, me of the work. sound Twist. it makes when he Twist. does that. That crunch, <laughs> that crunch. I like seeing, like, like, that looks like someone who wants to get answers now. None of this, like, I'm going to slap you 30 times. Like, yeah, that was much better. Yeah, and I so... was like, was it the Joker who said you don't go for the face first because it makes them like a Ooh, bit numb to everything else because they're all confused? So yeah, yeah. don't go and punch them in the face in the first place. <laughs> and then, um, and then, he, and then Batman punches him in the head, and he goes, "See," because he, he couldn't feel yeah. that because he's disoriented. It's good shit. Um, but yeah, so she she comes in, she just says, "Where's the escape hatch?" And the guy's like, "Well, there." And then uh, he's like, "Why do you want to know that?" And she's like, "Oh, just a hunch." It's just like I guess that's. Good to know, if ever. Always know where your exits are. Something I literally said about yeah. Fury was that's something that he would always be aware of. So it's just like, that's good. Know your exit. Yeah. And then she said, easy way or hard way? And the guy said, I'm going to break out of these chains and kill you. But she says, hard way. And cuts off his finger straight away. I love it. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, wow, okay. It's, like, it's just, she just gets straight to the point, essentially. Yeah, and, and doing the whole, like, kindly, sort of motherly, you know, grandma person who's just yeah, just here to do some stuff. She's like, oh, uh, off comes the finger. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, oh, she this, nailed is, it. this is fun. Yeah, and then she's she like, oh. well, the the really interesting part to me is that she says this confirms you're a scroll. And it's like, she yeah. she did Finally. that. Not even fully under knowing if he was a scroll or not. She's just like, oh, fuck it, this will work. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's where the hell has this that's been that's the whole yeah, series? <laughs> Now, <laughs> now it's time to have the conversation about identifying. Mm. Well, if you can amputate some portion of that person and then it reverts back to a scroll form, mm -hmm. then it's really, really, really easy to find out if people are scrolls. Just like get them to prick their finger with a needle yeah. and then see what happens to the blood. If it turns so purple, hair? ask them to pull out a strand of hair. And if it disappears into yeah. nothing, well, they're a scroll. Basically, like it's really, really easy to test for it and nobody does it. Uh, it's blood's easy the and it's one. interesting, but they What is the easiest one? Because we yeah. know from like the blood splatter, especially at the end, it turns blue immediately before it hits the wall. Wow, well, it's not even slow. Actually, uh, it's funny you point that out because that's a continuity error. The guy oh. in episode one who gets shot, he's a scroll, and the blood is actually red when it splatters on the wall. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, wow. the the get episode, that right. uh, yeah, at the end of episode six with a uh, well, with certain character, it's instantly purple. <laughs> yeah. But still, the blood one works, because as soon as it gets separated from the body, it seems to immediately... That's how you do it. Safe so test. it's easy to test, but the show doesn't understand that. It doesn't realize that that's the case. Which is cataclysmic. This is disastrous for every character. Well, it's I funny. The thing is, the thing is more obtrusive. You need to, you need to get the blood, and then you need to, like, <laughs> actually damage it in some way. You know? Like, it's, I, I, yeah, it's I actually love that harder. I yeah. It's even easier room. for them, and they still don't do it. Yeah. I said in one of my reviews, this is like watching Memento. None of the characters remember what happened like five seconds ago. Like everything is just a first discovery in every scene, which is why now she can learn, oh, I can detect scrolls. And later on, just completely forget it as if it never happened because it was never written. So this is this is a disaster, basically, for the whole show. Because now, th now that this is a thing that's proven to work, you can just do this all the time. Every single time that you meet someone, you haven't seen them before, it's like, all right, pull out a strand of your hair or use a needle, prick your blood, and like, and get some blood out there and let's see. Every single scene, every time that you meet someone uh, for the first time again. To the point where it almost becomes like... like um, it, you could even make a joke of it where every time someone shows up, they have to wait for them to do the thing, and they like maybe yeah. some of the characters like roll their eyes, but because they know they're gonna do it. But they're like, how they See, they, the they, they get the tweezers out or hand them some tweezers, and they pluck a hair a off their arm. Or something. A lot of people in chat are saying the thing rules. It's 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 worse than that because again, with the thing, you got to actually threaten to damage the entity that is the blood. Here, you don't need to like set up a thing and then and then get it really hot and then apply it to the blood. You don't even need to do that. Nope. You see to see <laughs> it. It's so much easier, and you they still ignore see it. it. Crazy. Exactly. It, it's pointless. <laughs> you just take take out a little hair. That's it. Yep. I got I'm, I'm genuinely curious. What does scroll hair do when you cut it off? Amelia's got a whole. It has to disappear, hair. right? It has to disappear. It's not attached to them anymore, so it's got yeah, to like, they disintegrate. Change. It's not the like fact it... that they don't care about these things. Well, it's, it's got to be a piece of them, surely. 
So it's got to be like maybe they'd have a bit less of an ear or something. <laughs> you could well. So this is the thing: when you've got people you yeah. don't even care about, or people that is a life or death situation, there are things you can chop off that people aren't going to mind too much in their life. You could probably pull out a nail. I mean, it's going to suck. Or just clip <laughs> a nail. Don't pull it out. Just clip it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Little... As long as the nail yeah. is long enough, you can clip it. Yeah. Um... I mean, why did the original torture not do that? Just like as standard practice. Oh. Well, I guess the thing is, is that they were trying to figure out like why he did it. They didn't even think that he was a scroll, right? They were yeah. just trying to. Maybe that they was. Didn't. Yeah, well, what I mean, just as a standard part of like yeah, the that's... interrogation, surely that would yeah. be one of the first things you do. It should be standard should practice like, at this point. Yeah, it should be. But yeah. They just want to punch you, like. Go for things <laughs> actually. So scared ways, person, you know? Like go for things that would actually make like permanent bodily damage is a, is that's like scary, right? You threaten like, to remove person. someone's eye. You threaten to remove someone's eye, it's over. They're giving you that information. You punch them 30 times, you, you might still have some time. Like, yeah, it's, you know, like, it's, it's almost like it's a challenge for um, being... like the, When you're punching someone for information, they're almost like, oh, this is my challenge. I can do this. I can take it. When you threaten to take yeah. an eye, yeah, they're like, there's no coming back. I lose yeah. that eye. It's gone forever. So, <laughs> I, I was liking those scenes where they, they're holding out for ages, and then they're like, I'm going to take your eye, and he doesn't say anything. Then he takes the eye, and then they give them the information. Like, if you just said it 10 seconds yeah. earlier, you exactly. could have saved your own eye. <laughs> yeah, they would be. They screw up the, these scenes in both directions. Yeah, they, they're not always good. Thank you, Joel. That's one of the good ones I'm going to reference. So, we, uh, we cut over to uh, good old Gaia who's looking at a screen because she's investigating that weird machine she saw and we see something we really don't want to see. This, yeah. is, this is how we're going to be introducing it to the wonderful <laughs> audience at home, okay? On the screen, it, it, we got Groot, Frost Beast, and Cull Obsidian. Now, for those who don't remember, Cull Obsidian is the big Chongus who worked for Thanos. And in his image, he even just has his arm or hand, whatever, like the thing that got chopped off by uh, chopped off, Wong. Yeah. So... What are these doing here? Great question. We'll find out later. They're on the computer for now. Very strange. What are they doing? It's funny because really Frost really Beast, I just like the idea that they categorized the creature that was icy and from Jotunheimer's just fucking Frost Beast. It's like, I don't know, whatever, fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah, and Gravik's like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, just looking at, just looking at people doing things. She's trying to figure out his evil plan. And of course, uh, you know, that's as far as she can get for now. And then uh, Gravik does some more good writing. He says, I remember when you first came to me, Gaia. You were the daughter of a failed general. I thought to myself, what kind of a man would send his daughter to do what he wouldn't? But then I realized that kind of coward doesn't have it in him. Our man on the inside is located uh, Brogan, the one that got kidnapped. So we're going to go to him now. It's just like, fuck, there's no elegance at all, is there? It's just... <laughs> Thunk, nope. thunk, thunk, <laughs> like next thing. Yeah, it just clunks along. Anyway, back to Olivia Coleman and her amazing torture techniques. Um, <laughs> after she's chopped off his finger, he's like, I'll never talk. And then she says, everyone talks when their blood boils. The smart ones talk earlier. And I was just like, okay, that's pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah. <laughs> and then he says, put it in my arm. I don't care. And so she stabs him in the ass, which I thought was kind of funny. Just, uh... You know, he was expecting the cool arm syringe, but now he's got something in his butt, which men don't like that when you're torturing them, okay? Mm -hmm. Or maybe some of them do, actually. I don't want to say. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't want to cover too too broad of a spectrum there. But yeah, his blood starts to boil. That was a pretty good idea from her. Does no one else know about this? Torturers everywhere would probably want this device, because apparently it just gives them That's searing agony, and it doesn't even have permanent damage, which is pretty useful. Well, maybe it doesn't. I guess I don't know. Yeah, they oh, didn't yeah. address that. I was kind of curious. Oh, I think was, uh, I'm pretty sure that there was a scene in 24 where they use something similar, like uh, some sort of thing that enters the blood stream, stream and makes it like incredibly painful just throughout somebody's body. So, um, yeah, he gives the information up, or some information. The information he gives is that a machine is being made to make scrolls better, and that the scientist involved surname is Dalton. He gives her all of that, and then she's like, thank you, and goes down the little hatch. Again, she needs to know that information for the story to continue, but the scene itself in isolation is, like, actually okay. Because she tortures someone properly. You just don't see that much mm -hmm. anymore, because they're not allowed to. In fact, I think I was surprised when she chopped his finger off. I was like, oh. Not just oh, for the like, intelligence oh. of it, but also, like, the gore factor, because a lot of the time they'll just, you know, go off screen. Got away. Yeah. Um... 
Oh god, yeah, then it goes back to being real piss again. So you got a freezer with like three guys standing outside of it. And then about three meters away, you have a guy in the front of the store. Gravit comes through the door. And look at this shit. He opens it a little bit so that he can hold the bell so it won't make a noise. Like, as if this is the, actually going to maintain some stealth. Shoots the guy at the front, like, desk who falls over. And the guys who are three meters away don't hear a thing. The... No, I'm pretty well, sure it... they shoot through the glass first before they open the door with the bell. Oh, really? That's even worse. Um, I... Yeah. I, I'm yeah, pretty I sure remember. I remember commenting on it. Yeah, because they... You know, broken windows don't make noise, though. No, that's what I mean. There's even more no, sounds, no. and they just don't notice anything. And it's so funny because they shoot this to try and avoid showing you just how clear it is. But then there's a shot after they've thrown the grenade, I think, that really lets you see it. Yeah, there. So they were standing there, planning all of this after having killed someone. That's where someone and someone else were. Like, how the fuck do you think this is a secret? Also, I think that flashbang is gonna fuck you up too, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be in the next thing over, but it's good. that's gonna you're you're <laughs> he's literally he's looking right at it. it. <laughs> yeah, he's just looking right at it. So yeah, you, you're probably not gonna be hearing anything for a while, and you might be temporarily just completely dazed visually. Um. Then they have a shitty action fight with just fucking kill everybody. Really shitty. Yeah. No one shoots um, anyone except the people who need to. It's do all the, the shooting, usual. Blah blah blah. It's, you know, blah blah blah. Gaia runs off in the middle of this to go and tell, I guess, like the police where the safe house is, which is where they'll be heading next. So that happens. And then uh, they collect their guy, and they're like, what did you tell him? And he's like, nothing, just lies. But it made me think, like, why didn't he tell her lies? You know when your information yeah, is they're building yeah, a machine and it's run by Dalton? You could have said they're building a, a weapon, like a gun. And there's a smith there they're going back and forth with who's called, you know, fucking Luba. You, you could have make a, a normal name. But what I'm getting at is that it's just lie with the truth. You know what truth that she's after. You can just use different names and items. And it throws her off completely. But he doesn't... Never get creative. Like, th th there's no... You know, you'd be like, yeah, but he's under great pain. He's like, yeah, but she'll not know the difference. She can't know the difference. It's impossible. She doesn't have a lie detector. She's a person. But uh, lucky he did tell her the truth, I guess. But, um, yeah, Gravix is doing mean faces. It's like, uh-oh, is he going to kill him? Probably. And uh, on their way back, they see that the police have gotten to their safe house, which I thought was really funny. It's like, did you tell them to just instantly raid it? Usually the police wait before doing something <laughs> like that with a safe house in order to, you know, get the people. So, yeah, I, I don't know what... It, it almost seems like she did this... There was this thing I was trying to talk about, is some films that are so fucking shittily written that you end up thinking, if you're paying attention, like, wait, is she a triple agent? Because she's like, oh, I'm, I'm definitely working for Talos and Fury, right? And I'm sabotaging them by giving away their safe house. And it's like, yeah, I guess you can tell them that, but you gave it away so early that they weren't going to get captured with it. Did you do that on purpose? Could have given it away just as, or, or told them to wait until everyone goes in, right? And then you capture everyone and the war's over. These are all the leaders. But I guess she didn't think about that. Or she's a triple agent. Like I said, pay more attention, and then you start to think of different stories being told. Yeah. Her whole... It was kind of confusing to get it to see... You know she's going to be good in the, in, in the end, but you can't really, like, get a grasp on what she's trying to do, which side she's on. And you know, they're like, how did they find the safe house? And they assume it's information that uh, Mr. Mr. Brogan in the middle there gave up. And as a result, they execute him. Which is like, what, what, is, um, what does Gaia think about that first, considering she just got is, him killed? What does everyone think about that? This yeah. guy's had his, this guy's missing a finger, and his blood's all fucked up, and you're like, oh no, but you did tell him, so, you know, we gotta kill you. Like, what, why? Because yeah, it's only punishment. Yeah, right? at this you're point, not, you know. <laughs> it's only, you're just punishing him for talking after he had his finger cut off, and, ass, and his blood turned to acid. Like, why, why would you, I mean, all you're doing is you're basically just saying to everyone, like, first off, the camaraderie aspect of, like, oh, we're just going to kill our own people now if they talk when they're being tortured. It's like, okay, so what if this is me? What if any of us get tortured? Oh, was, we might as well just fucking tell them everything anyway well, and save yourself the trouble why, uh, of resisting. 
it's the reason why we often complain about the the bad guy killing their own men trope. It's like, yep. what is yeah, what is to stop the person from thinking, oh shit, that could be me next. What am I even doing here? Why would I even want to help you? You know, when it, you could betray me at any moment. Which is used, by the way, as part of a growing sentiment of mistrust in yeah. Gravik that'll have a payoff. But like I said, the, the other thing that's going on in this scene is like, oh, look how sad Gaia is because the information she gave is going to get this guy killed now. And that does get brought up next episode really quickly. There's not much to say about it, and then never again. I just think it's, it's, it's always obviously missed opportunities, but also just like, why would I give a shit about this character? You don't. <laughs> Well, yeah, and because they didn't care, like, why did they even bring him into the woods in the first place? Just shoot him where he was. They already knew he was a scroll, so it's not as if you're hiding the fact he's a scroll from them. You literally brought him all the way out into the forest to kill him, yeah, bury him in a hole. Well, at least they didn't eat him like the uh, the Halfords would. <laughs> <laughs> Those savages. Um, yeah, and then the episode ends with Fury visiting his scroll wife. <laughs> Which is just like, uh, what? <laughs> like, yeah, where did um, this come from? <laughs> a lot of new invented history for uh, Nick Fury. Yeah, yeah, if you haven't noticed, the show keeps doing this. It's just like, this was a thing the whole time. I say the show, all of Marvel does this. And, like, good God, has it had an effect at this point. We've been kind of talking about like... it, but just like, people have lost interest in Marvel so hard recently. I feel like this goes further than other things, though, because even if you were like, okay, maybe they just want to destroy Fury as a character now, it's like, no, that's not enough. We have to go back throughout all of his entire life and destroy yep. every single yeah. moment of it. Every shred of the man's history and legacy. Like, they went yeah, right, that's yeah. why I was, I was so shocked by how, like, this takes the, the amount of effort they put into destroying characters. If they put that into the other aspects of the script, they could actually do great things because they, they, it's crazy how much they, they went for everything. Oh, it's only gonna man. get worse. <laughs> hey, we know they'll go back and just flat out re-edit old shit so that it can fit with the new shit. So yep. hey, they're, they're already the doing table. that now. Already doing that now. It's crazy. And yeah, um, episode three is fifteen minutes shorter. Like, damn. Thank God, a mercy. Uh, well, I guess we'll start moving probably a little faster now through these, but we're on <laughs> three. We're only at five hours, everyone. I think the last one was thirty-six <laughs> minutes. Yeah, he, that's, uh, Salem's commented about why he did it. He was like, well, uh, we thought it dragged a little bit and we wanted to Oof. increase the pace oh. and build up to a big explosive moment at the end. <laughs> like, he, he's, that was in articles today. He's why does he keep... He needs to stop talking. Yeah, he, yeah. Really, he, says he needs like, to stop well, talking. I saw something that he said the other day that had to do with, like, the fact that Secret Invasion is the lowest rated Marvel production ever. And it was just this massive cope, essentially, <laughs> about the ratings. Stop it. It's like when, uh, what's his name? The Jeff Loveness. It's like, oh, you know, I was really bummed out that everybody didn't like Ant-Man. But then I went to the theater and everybody was laughing. And it's like, no, Modoc is funny. What? Oh. Like, <laughs> you're allowed to, you're allowed to cope and see them private. It's okay. <laughs> like... So we begin next episode with uh, a little scene for our wonderful... Gravik's men. The the new guy, that guy we mentioned before, he's on his first mission, and he says, do you think bringing chaos is gonna work? And then they say, why did you join? <laughs> I know, right? It's it, there's, there's, there's something wrong with this whole thing. I, I always wonder if I should read it all out or go bit by bit, but do you, do you think bringing chaos is gonna work? And they say, why did you join? He says, because I don't want our people to keep running. And then he says, no, you joined the same reason I did. Faith in the future, and faith is built on risk. Faith is built on risk. No, faith isn't built on anything. That's the word. Well, and also just, he said, like, do you think chaos is going to work? And the guy's response is, it's cool to have risks. <laughs> it doesn't what? answer his question. It's like, Ooh. do you think it will work? I've already understood that it's a risk. I'm asking you, do you think it'll work? <laughs> it's, I hate this dialogue. It's so just crap. just talking at each other. Yeah. There's not even, yeah, there's no processing going on. Um... So these three are going to the Royal Navy, and they're gonna take the uh, the you know the personas of three people that I guess they've stolen the information of and have kidnapped. You know, I have to assume, otherwise it wouldn't really make much sense. And um, they arrive. This is so fucking stupid. They're like right next to the place, and then he says, "Right now, it's time to change." They're here. 
and they change it to their. It, oh fuck! Why would so As they roll away? up, why does this guy always wear the fucking hat? Away. I don't know. I think it's to help He's us remember who he is. Why? Nanotech, like, because their their clothes are all like nanotech, right? Including, I guess, hats. <laughs> But yes. you had that hat before he went there. He always he's always wearing the hat. Yeah, like the hat's a part of his skin. No, so the can hat a squirrel not the... change it? Well, so that's the fun question, right? It's like, so can you copy someone's appearance but then like alternate outfits? The answer has to be yes, right? Because Truly, we see that right? with Gaia, she has a few outfits. So I guess you can. And he just so really she can likes change clothes. Hat. Wait, what if well unless those are clothes clothes? No, they can't no, they I don't think they can be. Every time you see a scroll, they always uh they can always like change their clothes as well. It's yeah. like nanotech. But why so. can't so does that mean they're like always cold and stuff? Like they're like I, they feel uh, naked? Maybe it's it's well the I mean the nanotech can be like a physical thing, right? It's like a physical like hat and a physical jacket and things like that. So but, they can change their molecular but, structure to be that of clothes. Well, if you took the no, hat off no, him, no, theoretically it wouldn't no, remove. No, and if you stabbed it, it wouldn't no, hurt him. Uh, <laughs> we have no idea. Yeah, I was about to say, no yeah. clue, but I, I'm pretty sure that they would just be like, shut up, that it works the way it works, because shut up. But no way it makes oh, sense, though. No. Um, so, Gravik explains what we're seeing here, which is that they're going to execute an attack on key United Nations targets, or a target, uh, the heroes of Earth are gonna react, and the only counter we have is to become super ourselves. We no longer change faces, we change powers. All of us. Super scrolls. Humans will start a war, and while they fight, we're gonna break their backs. Uh, and, and, super scrolls. That name. Yeah, well, you know. Super scrolls on the scroll council. In scrollos. <laughs> New scrollers. Scroll <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work. Oh my god. But I just. It's so. And then storytelling, we, we've been over it before, but like suddenly. It's like, what's, what's happening this episode? Because like, this hasn't been built up. It's like three of them are going undercover to the Royal Navy to shoot a missile at some target that's important to then cause World War Three to happen. And while that's happening, we're going to run a scientific experiment to give ourselves Avengers powers to then kill the rest of the humans. He ends this speech by saying, I invite you to join me in the extinction of the human race. There's so many parts of that that are just absolutely <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and, uh, you know, power creep is a thing. <laughs> um, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> is it even power creep at this point? It's like power bound, power leap, power... power... <laughs> yeah, what do you even call uh, this? Th this would be used as examples in future, I think, of the worst mm -hmm. kind of power creep, where you don't know what to do anymore. How do you beat Captain Marvel? Well, <laughs> I have an idea. It's like, oh. Well, it's oh, like man. everything else, though. It's, you go from the, the fate of one planet to the universe to the entire but, multiverse. There was no build-up that, oh, well, maybe we're just destroying a part of it. It's literally all or nothing at every point. Oh, so, yeah, that's the plan. We've already been over all the different ways it would fall apart every time. The government, some governments are aware that this shit is even happening, like like the British government, which is the, they're using the British government to fire this time. So, like, imagine the checks and balances involved in, by the way, their target, I'm pretty sure, is like a UN summit or something, like some conference with all the UN leaders in it. Or like a, a, a ship or a boat or an island. I, I'll remember when I get there, but it's, um... It's the kind of thing that's just like, how could that missile ever be fucking launched? I just, I could never buy it. You'd need so many, there'd be so many people. We'll get there, it's fine. We'll, we'll go over it when we get to the actual sub and stuff. Um, but they never like phone back. Are, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? So, Fury and his GF. <laughs> oh, after I skip past the 10 hour intro, of course. Thank I'll you. be doing that. This is like showing how it works. He would meet up with his scrolls relatively secretly, and then they'd hand him information about different people. And this one, she says, is about Drakov, and it's gonna fuck him up. And she's like, "Man, okay, that's just how that works." And and you're starting to think, like, "Wait a minute, does this mean?" And you'll get an answer to that question later as to Yuri's involvement as a spy in general. I wonder what it was. Um. And so then he asks her, because this is a scroll he recognizes in terms of personality, but not in face. And so he says, who's the woman you've taken? 
And then she says, that depends on where this goes. Meaning she doesn't want to tell him if they're going to hook up. And then he says, whoa, 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 there's a rule for, like, commanders and agents. And she says, that doesn't apply to us because our unit doesn't exist, so I don't technically work for you. Okay, uh, that's not how that works at all. That's, uh, that's just an awful set of lines. Like, first of all, if someone told, if I said to a girl, like, where did you get that face from? And they said, well, if I'm going to sleep with you, I'd rather you don't know. It's like, <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Catchy. Because she's crazy in the sack. Because remember, she only reveals where she gets this face from uh, in like episode four, I think. Which means it's we're talking decades later. Yeah, way later. He never, she never told him where this is from. And then, he of course, on top of that, on saying like, "Well, power dynamics. I'm in control of everything, and I'm the reason that you're going to be able to have a home. So probably not the greatest idea to start sleeping with each other." And then she just says, "Yeah, but our unit doesn't officially exist." Like, oh, I mean, in that honestly, case, I don't officially give a fuck. I feel like, you know what I mean? It's just like, God, that's awful. Who wrote you? Why did they do this? What's, what's wrong with them? You gotta wonder, right? Like, when they write that down, do they look at that and go, yeah, that's coherent. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. They, they they probably say, like, yeah, but they're in love. And you're like, all right. That excuses okay. Why did you just anything? say yeah. that? Why did you say all the other stuff? <laughs> this makes it really fucking weird. So, uh... Yeah, that, that's obviously a past scene, and then we get to go to the present, where we'll have some questions as an audience member, like, who the fuck is this, and when did you decide this was what was happening, and what the hell's going on? And the first thing she said, or one of the first things, is, dare I ask, what must have happened to bring you back to me since you've been gone for years? <laughs> and again, it's like, fucking hell. Man. Again, they're doubling, like, abandoning the scrolls, abandoning his wife, just every box they could check, it's crazy. And what would of. his reason for doing it even be? Like, if he is just depressed to be alive, and that's <laughs> why he ran away, why would like why would he dump wouldn't his he wife? Be here? Yeah, wouldn't he be here? It just looks like a place of comfort, but instead he's in space. Like, explain. Saber is more comfortable than home with his beloved wife. <sighs> Apparently, this this show has a serious problem with trying to justify how sweet, cute, and awesome and passionate their relationship is, while simultaneously arguing he never fucking talks to her. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> what? We're missing something here. I don't is buy she it. she just insane? <laughs> like, I don't get it. Well, because she says, um, I've never harbored any illusions about you going away, but staying away, that leaves a mark. So you're cool with him <laughs> just leaving you regularly, I guess? Like, yeah, what the, what is this chick? Like, but you have oh, to, man, this, this is, is a real, this is a real keeper. This, she's a simp, man. <laughs> this is setting up that he hurt her so much that she went to uh, cause Gravic. the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it, not, it comes out of nowhere. It's like crazy how scorned. many of these instances are like, oh, I have a, a, a personal agreement, therefore all of humanity must die. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's crazy. Woman moment. It's because uh, oh, he just says to her, You've been in touch with Gravik while I was gone? Uh, who've you become while I was gone? And suddenly it's like, oh <laughs> shit, are you- wait, if, if, if she works for Gra Is this like a- could she shoot you? Like, what's- what's- what do we- what's- it's like, everything's chill, but it's like, you work for Gravik, the guy who's trying to destroy the world? Hello? Like, it feels such like a weird scene, because they're just doing lovey-dovey husband and wife shit while talking about like, oh yeah, you work for a guy who wants to nuke everyone, huh, how about that? Weird. Yeah, because he definitely knows at this point, mm -hmm. as you find out in the next scene. So, um, but then she complains to him about how fucked up it was that he got blipped. Bit weird. And then he 50, got fifty-fifty chance. He came back, and then she was like, "I thought we'd heal together, but then you just ran off to your spaceship." <laughs> and we're just sitting here like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> 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 What is this? Like, when did this happen? You're lying. Who is this woman? What's the spaceship? What's going on? And he won't say anything. Like, everyone keeps telling him he's fucking shit, and he never has a reply. So it's like, okay, I guess he's shit. There's Does nothing he agree? else to agree? I guess. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I've got a note that says, so apparently he's a failure of a husband to a wife that didn't exist five seconds ago. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Good to know. Maybe like they that sometime. Invent these people. They invent these people just to make sure they have someone that he fucked over. It's crazy. Well, it's just, you know, we're not going to again. The big, the big criticism of Fury as a character in this show was invented in this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of it. 
Pardon me for not seeing that, you know, coming. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. On the like, absolute wiping of his history, which we're getting closer and closer to. It's not going to oh, be fun. That yeah. scene. <laughs> that scene. You, you got, like, yeah, you need to have the dialogue ready for that one because it's so thick. Everybody oh, yeah, says. yeah. So she's she gets a ring on her phone. She picks it up and answers it and then just goes like, mm-hmm. And then she says, I don't have that information at hand right now. And then hags up and he's like... Who, who, who are you talking to? It's like, obviously the bad guys. Why would she talk <laughs> like that if it was the normal person? Besides, who else does she fucking know? Oh, I just thought that was dumb as fuck. It's like, Fury, just, just fuck off. So, then we get this really awful scene. Uh, didn't want to shock you with that, but I, I just have to lay these truth bombs every once in a while. Yeah, it's Ravik. controversial. That's you. You and your controversy. Look at this cinematography, though. Look at that light. A wow, cinema. they thought that was cool. Is that CGI light? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> CGI God rays. It kind of looks a little bit like CGI God rays, but who knows? Maybe I'm just so jaded. A little bit. Uh, I can't even trust the light. And light's the only thing I can see, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so I got oh, real... See, that's, yeah, go for it. Got real confused, because, like I said, Brogan, the agent from the previous episode, got executed because they assumed he gave away the secret hideout, right? Because they weren't going to kill him, and then they were like, oh, wait, we will, because, yeah, he clearly he clearly blabbed. And that the, the drama would, of course, be that she kind of gave that away, and now it didn't get them anything except a dead person, which is now on yeah, her hands, that sort of stuff. Yeah. But then, Gravik walks in the room, sits down, and says, Brogan didn't even know where our hideout was, so how did they know? And it's like, wait, so it's like, wait why'd, why'd you, you kill him? him? <laughs> 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 I actually have no idea. Why did you kill him? And then, do you know what she says? Well... He made an educated guess. Like, an educated guess on a safe house? Either you know or you don't. You don't guess a safe house, surely. Like, but, but Gravik buys this, and he says, is that what you would do? And she said, no, I would lie, because I'm good at lying. It was definitely <laughs> Brogan, and he's weaker than you thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm convinced. Not at all. <laughs> it's, it is, it is know, such an I'm convinced Brogan. scene, yeah. <laughs> but she's basically telling him what she's doing right now. So it'd be like, are, are you lying to me now? Because <laughs> I'm asking you a question. She's like, well, I'm a great liar, so would you really Why know? Would you say that? Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if we're supposed to think that he does think she's a traitor at this point. Um, but traitor. later in the episode, he figures it out because of the submarine shit. So I was like, so if not for that, would he still have believed she was chill after this awful attempt? At like, how did he know something he didn't know? He guessed... Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great, I got gotcha. you. You didn't betray me though, right? She's like, no. Also, I'm very good at lying. <laughs> great stuff. So if you ask me if I'm loyal to you, I may be I'm lying. like uh, that guy. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Jay Longbone has to leave us. We got through uh, yeah. just, just six hours. Ugh, that's like barely an episode, but I guess, you know. <laughs> some people do have to sleep, or eat, or etc. But uh, of course, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Yeah. Oh, thank nice, you. Nice to meet you, Jay. Nice to meet you as well. Before yeah. you leave, though, why don't you tell people where you're at, what you're up to? All right. Uh, just a, I just posted a reaction for that uh, new trailer. That's out. Pretty soon, I'm gonna have you out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're, a, you're you're cutting out literally at only the important parts. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. you've got two things out, but we don't know what the trailer reaction to. Okay, 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 well, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah you're good. Good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Like I said, I just posted a a, a trailer reaction for that new Exorcist movie. <laughs> got it. Got it. Exorcist movie. Got it. Yep. Exorcist oh movie. God. New Exorcist movie. Wait, Get it out. No, one. we did. New Exorcist movie. I don't know why it's suddenly like. <laughs> <laughs> Four right, hours and, are good and now. Okay, okay, well, whatever. I got a bar preview uh, <laughs> coming out pretty soon. Sweet! All right. Awesome. Barbie and Exorcist. You're okay. going to go after the, the kid's <laughs> doll. Wow. What's wrong with you? <laughs> wow. Okay, well, link in description. Uh, I imagine most people know who you are at this point on EFAP, but again, thanks for joining us and uh, I'll catch you around. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, guys. Goodbye. See we'll see you later. Bye. Toodaloo. Right then, let us continue. We're already closing in. We're like we're a third through the episode already because these are so much smaller. Isn't that great? Yeah.
massively. And there's some scenes where, like, that one, for example, that's all that happened. That's all there is to talk about. That's it. It's really quick, because the writers, uh, they're just so expedient, you know? It's great. They know exactly what they're, they're doing. They're efficient and skilled. Um, they deserve to be paid more for their work. She is, <laughs> yeah, she's driving Gravik. Gravik says uh, the UN plane will be at Neptune's coordinates flight 819, 2200 hours. He says that, that's the full target, right in front of her. And so she's able to relay it to Talos, right? It was going to be and a I criticism. I'm sure this was fake. Well, so th like, th th it's great. This layers, right? So first layer, I thought was criticism. Why is he stupid enough to say this in front of her instead of just on his own, just in case she's a she's a mole, right? Then I was like, oh wait, what if she's a scrawl? Maybe he's doing oh, that wait. on purpose to find out if she's a mole. It's like ah, oh, because the information was yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's, then I was like, but wait, why wouldn't you just feed her fake information, see if mm -hmm. that goes through the pipeline, so it actually protects your actual goal of completing this mission? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you might have a lot of other failure points in your big new Skrullos operation, right? That might yeah. not in any way be related to her. So you're a dumbass. Yes. It, it, just an idiot. Funny how thinking works like that. I was like, you're a dumbass. No, wait. D no, definitely, yeah. <laughs> no, you but are. You could yeah. tell different people, like, different point parts of the plan that were all wrong. And Season whichever one two... leaks, you find out who it is. Season 2 Tyrion, he did that exact thing with three people, and you can pinpoint who leaked the, the information, because you mm -hmm. give three different people a part of the truth, but then you 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 make sure a part of it is, is, is not true, and then you can actually pinpoint who's the liar. But this guy's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> or is he? Fucking Christ. So he's having his meeting with good old Talos, Talos, Talumbo. Talos. And he says, it's remarkable, isn't it? Gathering up, he's looking at the painting, the uh, Statesman of World War One, and he says, gathering up all these men for a big painting. I mean, it just sums up the difference between soldiers and statesmen. One lot spends the war posing for pictures, and the other lot does the killing and dying. Which, my God, when I heard that, I was like, this is, I've never heard it's this like point of view before. It's like a 12-year-old wrote this. Incredible. It's like, you must, I wonder if he's seen something from as much as fucking 50, 60, 70, 80 years. You know, just like everything that's ever happened in media as a point of view. You gonna do anything interesting with it? No. Says that, um, the choice between having my story in ink and oil paint versus blood, I choose blood all day. I choose why? blood all day. Doesn't that sound like why, shit, though? Why are, you, why are you giving a speech to? <laughs> to us, <laughs> Fringy. To? to you and it me. It is literally us, yes. It's it's like us. He rehearsed this beforehand. He rehearsed yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. This was a speech. This wasn't that, That's the, the thing. If yet. Talos said something like that, it might save the scene. But he, he, all he says back is like, yeah, your blood and everyone else's. And then he just says, yeah. Like, it feels like, um, why, why doesn't any character cut down Gravik in a way that would, like, because I bet you if you did say, like, wow, you know, like, that was a fucking mouthful, like, you know, <laughs> any, just any, any amount of, like, criticizing how, like, performative this is, that kind of thing would piss him off. Yeah, like, did you want me to think you just stumbled on these thoughts just now? <laughs> is that what you, yeah. like, really, dude? But Olivia, they... what's her name? Olivia, um, Bowman. that chick, she would have... Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, she'd fuck him She would have said something. She would have roasted this guy for that cringe line. Like, what are you fucking talking about, bro? No, but, but the thing is, there are war species. So, they would all think exactly the same thing. This, it's You've got the Klingons. They'd be far more like them, as if, yeah, we'd all agree with you for that kind of thing. None of us want to be in it. Uh, sort of just in the back room doing dealings, I don't think you'd have... I don't think he'd even have a concept of people doing what he's complaining about. Mm. That's why I'm saying I can't get a grasp of this character. Like, I can I can believe a graphic like figure could emerge in the situation, but you have to justify it. He's just a madman. It's just... Well, I mean, what have we learned? They, they're not capable of writing any of the stuff they've bitten off. It's just, no. it, like, we only really talk about it with the, um, the She-Hulk stuff, right? It's like, oh, you're gonna do a... A law procedural without knowing anything about the law. It's like, ha ha la la la. It's like, exactly. well, that's just the same for all these writers, for all these projects. Like, what do you know about... <laughs> I was about to say anything, but it's like, that's mean, <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> no, like, the, the, the example you made uh, of, like, what she hopes, like, you're, people are going to lose interest immediately when they realize that they don't know a damn thing about law. Like, you know, the people who went into that for a court show. Like, Yeah, but it's supposed to be open. funny. It's ridiculous. This is the same <laughs> yeah. thing for me. Like anyone who's, a, who's an alien fan, is a fan of sci-fi and alien invasions, knows that you can do a lot of things with those that concept, especially shapeshifters, and they do fuck all with all of it. Every interesting thing they could use, they they have no interest in it, and that's it's well, so wait, clear. 
Makes you wonder if they're like, you know, before they made it, it's like, let's rewatch something like Invasion of the Body Snatchers because yes! they'll, they'll wear those inspirations on their sleeve there seemingly, no... but then you actually watch the story that and there's is. none of that inspiration in the story They're, itself. That's because that's because they've heard of invasion. They've of heard of invasion. Yeah, they've it, heard it. It's just, you know, be, do your job. Like even if it's not really something you're passionate about, you're not a big sci-fi guy. Watch three of the classic movies that have this concept in it and see what works and see what doesn't. Instead, they mm -hmm. just slap this shit together. It, it's crazy. All this money they're pissing away. So, he has a chat with uh, good old Ben Mendelsohn, and it could have been a great scene. If you think about it, right? Could have. These two have a huge history. They both scrolls that ended up in the situation have completely points, different points of view on what to do. But um, I have boiled it down to just a couple of quotes because nothing else happens in the scene. Basically, he's like, "Stop murdering innocent people. Simple as that. Just stop, stop doing the innocent people killing thing." And Gravik's like, "Do you know why they put me in charge instead of you?" And there's like a gap, and then he's like, "Gaia's in the car. You want to say hello?" And then uh, uh, Talos is like, you better be careful. And already it's like, so we were about to do something. They're like, don't kill innocent people. He doesn't address it. Instead talks about how they put you him in charge instead of you. They kicked you out. Well, the answer is that. I guess we're supposed to imagine what the answer to that is based on things. And then he's like, by the way, guy is in the car. And then he's like, how dare you say that? <laughs> it's like, no one gets in Gaia's car, but mate, keep my daughter's <laughs> name out your mouth. Literally, yeah, because obviously the Gravix is like doing a threat. He's like, she's right there. I could kill her, I guess. And he's like, you better not threaten that. I find that weird as a dynamic because it makes sense to us because we know what's going on with the double agent stuff. But for these two, it doesn't. Gravik isn't sure about that yet. And as far as he knows, she's betrayed her father. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. The line doesn't quite like what Tao should be doing is like, yeah, yeah she's chosen her path, you know, that sort of attitude, even if he's pretending, but whatever. And then uh, Gravik <laughs> says, "You should be grateful I haven't killed her." And so, um, he he goes to strangle Gravik, and then everyone turns into Gravik. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just like, what the fuck is going on? Well, I thought that that, even from the trailer, was meant to be like, you don't actually know I'm me, so even if you kill me, I could actually be one of the other people, and this is just kind of someone in person. That would be me. more fun. So, you're, you're giving But then it just turns credit. out he's the right one anyway. <laughs> so. they had to, and they had to rehearse this too. Ravik had to say, okay, okay, guys, so if he like, grabs me or threatens me in any way, I want you... <laughs> you guys are going to love this. They would have had to <laughs> <laughs> I need you to all stand up and then turn into me. This yeah, is going to be so great. Speech, man. That's ridiculous. I hope, I hope you guys get to see his face. <laughs> Wait, this doesn't even make any sense. Because he says like, later on why he chose this body. But if they need the DNA of the body to turn into them, does he just like keep some lying around to give to all of I these think, people? Can you copy a scroll that's done? You have to look at them, right? You just look at the person. Yeah, okay. if you want yeah, their, if you want their memories, you have to touch them. Yeah, but then they could just turn into the Avengers whenever they want, so it has to be the DNA. Well, again, Please. that was something that <laughs> like, was really... retarded when they brought it up. Like, oh no, for the Avengers here, they could turn into them. It's like, they could turn into them anyway, shut up. Oh, I, I thought they at least yeah, needed the picture. DNA. I thought they'd retconned it. It's, it's just, it's all shit. That's that's the safe bet, every time. Um, and the, the, in multiple scenes as well, it's been drawn attention to the fact that he always puts a ton of sugar in everything he drinks. And I expected that to be a plot point, just yeah. never mentioned. Nope, yeah, I actually hadn't Where's brought it up yeah, because man. it doesn't go anywhere, but I should have brought it up just to say it doesn't go anywhere. He keeps putting loads of sugar in his coffees and teas or whatever the fuck he's drinking, and... Yeah, they even comment on it. Yeah, like, how much he's doing. Yeah, I don't know he's what the... Is, 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 he's hyperactive, he has lots of sugar. I thought that was going to be something that, like, the scrolls needed or something. There's going to be some type of scientific reveal, but no, he's nope. just sugar. <laughs> 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 he's got a sweet tooth. Yeah, that's it. It's, uh... It's as we don't as have this go. on our planet. Oh my god, this is so good. Mm. Oh, I see why you're all I so fucking fat. I, I honestly <laughs> would have taken that. That they, they there's no sugar on Scrollville, wherever the fuck they come from. And like Old they just love sugar. <laughs> yeah. I would have taken that, but instead they did nothing with it. It's weird. So um Gravik says all these miscreants, meaning humans, know is murder. Right. Look at how they treat each other. We're gonna murder them all. And it's like, like uh, we already know that. He asked you why. Like, stop in He said stop innocent killing people, and then you just said we're going to kill them all. What is with the writing every time? It's like, hello? Yeah, at least we're not barbaric like humans. And mm. then, uh, Talos says, you don't understand humans. They're at their most formidable when threatened by a common foe. 
And I was like, you know, like probably all species. I was about to say, isn't that just applicable to literally everything? Yeah, like whenever, <laughs> what what a you know humans insightful how they're stronger united. <laughs> The, the, oh, yeah. the better thing to probably have said is you're gonna lose because humans are really good at wiping out enemy species. Like, really good. And they're pretty advanced as of recently. Have you seen that Wakanda Forever film or the Quantumania film? They can go to different universes. They can travel in time. I don't think you're gonna win. Honestly. They're gonna no, fuck you humans up. humans are pretty OP at this point in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. And then, no seems to realize you know, that. when they get the upper hand and they've captured all of you, what reason will they have not to literally fucking expel you into space? Like, what would be the reason not to? <laughs> and then, uh, uh, Gravik says, have you forgotten how we fight? Which I think, I assume he means that they can Dirty? shapeshift. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, infiltrate. But Manipulate. it's like, yeah. Activate. Humans Most have ways to subvert that. It's not going to be too difficult. As soon as we, we could probably get devised goggles that'll show us who's a scroll. Riri yeah, Williams. Tony can whip it up next weekend. That they live wow. glasses. <laughs> he comes back from the dead. You mean? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. No, it's not yeah. every Riri for all that crap now. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So obviously he's saying like they could remain like a secret, and then uh, Talos says, you think I'm going to let you continue this fight under anonymity? I'm going to tell everyone, and you'll lose the surprise. You'll be put down. I was just thinking, like, everyone already what is... knows. And, uh, well, there's that, but there's also, if, if Gravik thought it was a secret and that he's threatening to tell everyone, why wouldn't he just kill him here and now? Yeah. He doesn't. There's because if he wants to die, time. you just be giving him what he wants or something. Um, well, his response to Talos on that is, you'll have exterminated the Skrulls, which is, like, I mean, well, but you guys are trying to exterminate- Ugh, nobody's having a chat here, it's just crap. Um, just talking at each other. Yeah, and then he says, well, then you'll see the difference between us and you, and then he says, and your daughter? And then he stabs him. I think that they're just trying to make it so that whenever you mention Talos' daughter, he gets very mad and stabs people. Shockingly... Um, stupid. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But if they were trying that, it's never used again, is it? <laughs> no. Uh, they nah. don't even really bank uh, well, on their relationship. Well, they <laughs> use it. Yeah, image. they use it. They do it. They do use it one more time, right? Oh yeah, uh, but that's different. There's a different reason for that. That's because he's worked something out. Yeah, and when I say bank, I mean like actually like a good writer bank, not like a whatever the fuck they think they were doing in that. I think assume you're talking about the bench scene, but I'm not sure. No, um, no, with the missile guy. When he shoots the guy, the missile guy. Yeah, but that's because he mentions that she's a double agent. So he realizes, it's not just that he mentioned the daughter, he realizes something. It well, might that, be. And that's also you know? a double uh, thing for the whole Mercy comment, but it's really dumb as fuck in that moment for other reasons. We'll get there. We're almost there, actually. Yeah, Gravik's having a bad time, if you can tell from his face. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> that's a funny expression. <laughs> <It hurts laughs> so that knife hurts. That does. Oh. Ooh. It gets worse when he removes it, though. He does it in like the most painful way possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would he do that? Well, he did it so that they can better show what extremis is. Because if they did it just like that, it would be a little bit confusing. But he tears it out for no good reason at all, and then is repaired with the stuff from Iron Ooh. Man Three. Ugh. Ba -na 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 -na. Yeah, we'll go with that. Why not? Um, yeah, that's the Iron Man song. And so that means that we saw in the computer they had Groot, Frost Beast, and Cull Obsidian, and apparently they have Extremis too. That means he probably has all four of those in him. That's that's, that's a fun. lot of genes. Yeah, that's a lot of powers. Um, yeah, it's like what can you even say about this? It's just like that seems really stupid. As a writing thing. Good luck trying to undo this. <clears throat> How do you balance that? You don't. Oh, we gave up on, on that a <laughs> long funny. time ago. Talking about balancing the fact that they can get any power they want, essentially, right now. Extremis itself had balancing in Iron Man 3. It was highly volatile. Like, you could mm -hmm. die from having Extremis put in you if it was on, like, unstable levels. You have to take care of it. But this is just, like, you just have it now. Fuck off. Uh, at least they tried to account for it back then. It's, it's, it's crazy. Everything gets Something. worse and worse. It's like you push... Oh, this is pathetic. Oh, yeah, he is. The a... only reason he doesn't see her, like, change is because a van pulls up in front of him. <laughs> like, the entire story hinges on a van. Yeah, well, there's a lot of vans in this area, so it makes sense. 
It's funny but too, because like I said, I, I thought that maybe they were trying to imply that he, ha he is suspecting her, but then not, but then is, but then, you know what I mean? Yeah, and she will have trans she has to transform somewhere from crossing the road to being on the pavement when she's surrounded by human beings and she's just shapeshifted. Nobody noticed. It makes sense. Nobody, Nobody would react to someone literally changing into a different human being right in front of them. That's pretty normal. Yeah. I don't know if you guys Even don't have it. Even clothes and everything. <laughs> yep. Is there a single scene in the whole series of someone like getting caught in that way? No, because no. the entire world doesn't know skulls exist, apparently, even Everyone though there's a million of them it. doing it all the time. <laughs> so, uh, Fury talking to Talos in the little pub here, and he's like, you have oh, the... this. Yeah, this scene. He's like, you have the balls to ask me for help? And he says, I've got a lead on a rebel scroll high up in the government. And so, to summarize this scene quickly, he says, okay, say, help me, Talos, I'm useless without you, and then I'll help you. And so he says, help me, Talos, I'm useless without you. I, uh, he goes to leave, and then he's yeah. like, no, actually, I do need him that badly. I mean, the Fury thing to do I, would be like, I'm not, we're not playing games, this is about saving the world. Like, I don't care about your pride being wounded, let's go, we got work to do. Would you not do. save the world if I didn't say these words to you? Yeah. I think he'd compromise, no I think he'd compromise and rephrase it. He'd say, help me, Talos, because I'm your friend and I need your help. Something like that. Instead that of something. actually saying I would like that, that I'm yeah. More. I can't believe that. Like, it's just a compromise. Acknowledging your, your mistake, but like, come on, we got a history here. Stop fucking around. Like, kind of like a, a mix of what you said. But the fact that he walked back and said the exact line, that, I'm like, it's over. It's over. Like, Nick wouldn't do that. I'm sorry. Nick would keep some type of, in, of like, you know, dignity there and just... It's, yeah, but what if it's Terrible. true? Because well, that's we get an interesting to that. thought. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, what? Man. Man. <clears throat> so, uh, they call Livia Coleman to say that Neptune is a British sub, and uh, it's going to get taken over by Scrolls to launch a missile at a UN meeting. And for some reason, the writers had her say, well, um, I'm dealing with my own infiltration. There's someone clearly gave up the information that Ew. I was in the butcher's shop, and so I've got to sort that out. My hands are tied. She's literally been told that the UN delegation is going to be nuked, or whatever missile they're using, <laughs> and it will cause World War Three, and that Gravik has infiltrated British command. All she says back is, I'm busy. <laughs> really weird, because the whole reason she's involved in any of this is because she wants to prevent the end of the world. <laughs> like crazy, I know. Like I know you guys are like, what? What kind of motivation is that? It's like, yeah, I know, I know. They threw that on her, I guess. Yeah, I but she do. um, yeah, she's just too busy. She's got stuff to do, so never mind. I guess they could do it. You know, she says you guys can sort it out. I guess. Yeah, go ahead. So she gives the information to the guy they need to find who's in command of the whole thing, Robert Fairbanks. So off they go, and they have a little chat. Hmm. Chat. Okay. But I think for this one, we'll go the route of I'm just going to read the whole thing because, uh, sorry, this is going to hurt. Sorry, yeah, sorry chat, enough. get ready, all right? So right, he sees a dog, a man and a dog, and he's like, I don't get dogs. Name me one interspecies relationship where one side cleans the other's shit, basically. And uh, Fury's like, well, I cleaned up your shit for 30 years. And then he says, oh, that's rich. When I arrived, and this is Talos, by the way. When I arrived in 95, you were a bench-warming nobody in a dumpy field office in S.H.I.E.L.D. You didn't start ascending the ranks until 20 of us signed on as your invisible spy network. We fed you more dirt and intel than you could possibly have uncovered on your own in a lifetime. Every promotion you got was us. Every single terror attack you subverted was us. Every enemy you sabotaged, an ally you leveraged with dirt, no one else in the world had access to, we did that. You are smart. You're capable but your life was more charmed once I came into it, and it was my pleasure. Just don't rewrite history. Just don't rewrite history. They had the nerve to say that line. <laughs> so, That's yeah, the line. Also, oh, man. retroactively, no, nah, it wasn't Nick Fury who did all those things. It was because in this, in this show, we gave him access to all these, uh, you know, all this stuff. It wasn't actually Nick Fury. Fuck that guy. It's kind of incredible they mean? actually did have the balls to say don't rewrite history in that speech. That, that's, that was the part that got me. I'm like, okay, you guys are coming for the juggler here with him. You want to shred his whole history now. But then you want to mention rewriting history when that's all you motherfuckers do. Like, I, I couldn't... This this was the scene that just floored me in terms of you wrote this. You wrote this, um, not this... Yeah, yeah it, you, it kind of hits you as a surprise because they already... They kind of did this already in episode uh, two. 
with the beginning scene on the train where he was like, you know, you turned us into your freaking spies, we did all these spy work. You can kind of infer like, oh shit, they've just said that like a lot of the work Fury's done over the years, it's actually the Skrulls and not himself. He's the super spy, Nick Fury's supposed to be the best spy in the universe, that sort of thing. It's like, oh, I guess some of the scrolls did something. And then this this scene comes in. It's like, no, 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 no. Let me make it myself clear, because clearly <laughs> you're interpreting things that are inaccurate. We did no everything, everything. And you're like, oh, why are you even here? He's just worthless completely. Every like, it was so perfectly crafted, like every single word to make sure he's shredded, and then just the cherry on top at the end. Just shocking. Right, cons. Yay. Yeah. Pretty extreme yeah. one here, and yeah, that just, um... <laughs> Ruins I think it was by, uh, yeah. Was it by this point, I think, that we had decided that it, it had been systematic, yeah. essentially, the assassination yeah. of Nick Fury. By this point, yeah, every single thing that you could take from him and destroy out. about him is gone. Like, right oh, here, yeah. it's, it's done. It's over. All of his <laughs> past accomplishments were never actually him. All the mm -hmm. stuff that he's doing in the mm -hmm. present, well, he's being extremely stupid in all of those things, too. We are inventing new things for him that he mm -hmm. can be bad for. So, yeah, yeah it's like a, a, a three-pronged attack, temporally, of all of his, you know, failures throughout the timeline. Like Mahler was saying, the, the scene in the train, you can, there's room for interpretation there, and maybe they could have did something with it. But now this scene, they're like, no, let's just crystallize this shit. Every single thing. Of his past is just like he gets no credit for it. it's crazy and i'd say this and that's one... why go ahead that's what that's why this show annoyed me so much and that a lot of the other remakes and stuff it's never really bothered me about the original i've always been able to separate it it's either a remake or it's there's been some gap it's a new team coming in but the fact that they got samuel l jackson to destroy his own character yep. this destroyed fury yep. to me throughout everything because <laughs> The this is canon. There, there is no way you can separate this from the other movies or be like, oh, I'll just stop here because it's the yeah. same people doing it. You can't take any scene with him serious going forward and all of his scenes in the past are now damaged. Like that He's cat the thing. Like what? Th that cat thing in Captain Marvel seems so tame now compared to all Oh, yeah, no, that seriously. One, you know what I mean? It's, uh, this, yeah, is, this is probably the most... level humiliation. This would have to take the, the award for like most explicit retcon probably ever. Because it's a it character basically looking at the fucking camera saying, this character you believe did X, I did it actually. Yeah. And, I, and don't you dare before. pretend anything else. And you're like, wow. Okay. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, how do you qualify, like, top tier character assassination? Like, but, like, I, I, for me, Luke and Daenerys are still, like, my one and two. Like, those are, like, I, that's where I look as, like, S tier. You just fucking shredded them. But there's got to be room for people like this where he's still alive, but you completely ruined this character. Every aspect of it. Every everything I thought was Nick Fury, from his eye to his history to his accomplishments, isn't true. It's the thing. The thing that I find interesting in terms of you pointing out those examples is, in this case, it's like, dude, it feels like, like it was systematic. Like it was. Yeah. It was this. It was almost like it was their goal. It like, was to their goal. Let's destroy every facet of Nick Fury. Every facet. His history. His motivations. Yeah. His, his traits, personal life, his place in this world, effort. everything, so everything. Thorough. They didn't like, miss it um, so quickly. Yeah. It's really spiteful too, right? Like, you were a yeah. shitty mm -hmm. desk jockey, warmer, idiot, loser, shield agent until I came into your life. Like, Who wow. abandoned his wife. Throw that wow. in there too. He abandoned yeah. his wife and the scrolls. He Failed just, everybody. Couldn't get like anything they had a list, right. A list of things you could fuck up as a man, and they just fucking like. Let's. How do we incorporate every these, every one of these into well, the story? Well, what you go after if it's Nick Fury and you want to do the the hardest, like cruelest job ever is you make him a shit spy, and that's what they've done. They've yes. retconned all of his yes. spy antics as just crap that he got everyone else to do. If anything, he's just a manipulator now, and it's especially right. weird when they have that line where he highlights the weirdness of dating someone under his command, and then she's like, "It's okay though," and he's like, oh, "Okay," it's like that too. <laughs> it's like, what are we? What are we doing? Invent a wife and make him a bad husband. Like it takes five <laughs> seconds <laughs> to do these things. Well, yeah, you invent. If, a it was the other way. You invent a wife to uh, to which he was a bad husband. It's incredible. Well, yeah, it's, I think in the writers' room when they were thinking of all the ways to tear him down, one of the guys said, "Oh yeah, and we'll make him a bad husband too." And then I was like, Wait, "Yeah, like they had, a, they had a, Oh yeah, we gotta give him a wife. Yeah, that oh, wife. Write him a wife so he could be a shitty husband. Just, they they had it up on a whiteboard, right? And it's like Nick Fury, yeah. why he sucks, and <laughs> just putting all of these new dot points down. They put more thought and passion into that than anything in the show. Like, it was a 
clearly a goal. Like how many? Ep- this is episode three or something, right? I'm losing track at this point. It's but, hard not to feel like it was a goal yeah. uh, when it's it, this systematic. I think it's especially going through it slowly. Like that was my thoughts watching it by myself. But going through it now, breaking it down, how could like I feel like we can yeah. prove it? Like we, there's going to be more references. I guess the thing is, is, um, it's it's so awkward because it seems like what happens a lot of the time is they're like, yeah, we're going to knock them down, but we're going to build them back up, and then they forget yeah, about that down. second part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Like, like what do you? Not, not to skip ahead, but the fucking gear up scene. I love my gear up scenes. Like you, you like I don't, yeah. I don't need a lot of context to appreciate a gear up scene. But that was, I'm just, I feel nothing. I feel like grab your coat, grab your gun. You're still a bum. It was like, like a parody. You're still a bum. Yeah. Each <laughs> thing was in a separate bum. box. Yeah. I'll yeah. put on my boots to kick puppies oh, with. Man. I'll get he my gun to iPod. shoot my wife. Uh, <laughs> played the uh, music as well. They played the theme. Yeah. Yeah. The music you said they were playing. That, that's when. That's the one time I actually do remember it. I was looking at that clip again. I, I, yeah, they were uh, real proud of themselves. The way, I think. For anyone wondering, there's no. Uh, clap back. There's nothing from Fury. He just said, uh, uh, eventually Talos says, why are we stopped? And he says, because we're here, you know, to get Bob, yeah. to get the guy who's launching a nuclear attack, unless you want to hurl more abuse at me. Mm-hmm. Which no... is so fucking pathetic on Fury's part. Which confirms it. Yeah, confirms all of it. There's no reply whatsoever. He nope. doesn't give us any room for another interpretation. He shuts his mouth like a good little boy, and every single, co- from the mother, Maria's mother, to his wife, to Talos, to every situation where he can at least have some type of backbone, he's just a bitch crying on a bench. Dude, it's like, uh, it's kind of like in, uh, in, in Quantumania when, you know, Scott points out that he saved the world and everybody just starts <laughs> shitting on him and he just takes oh, it. It's like, you. What have you come done on! Lately, you fuck? You well, the world. I mean, it, he's oh well. He's <laughs> the thing is, is that he understood it. He saved the universe. He yeah. didn't just save the world. He saved the Not universe. Frustrating. They just um, shit on him for no reason, as if they've done something special, and he doesn't defend himself. That's the worst part. They never defend themselves. They never do. No, Not, they never Dr. defend Strange. themselves. Doctor Strange is like, oh, you always have to have it your way, or whatever the fuck that line was, and he just never defends himself or explains his thought process throughout the entire movie. They're always just these like. He tells oh, Wanda wow. that she's justifiably angry, which is oh, wrong. My God. And then she claps back with a completely non sequitur <laughs> response, and he just takes it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it, begs the, it begs the question right. with this, what did he mean by I've been cleaning up your mess for all the decades then? Because it's sounding like he's just lied, and that's something yeah, that never he... happened. <laughs> yeah. He should have had a rebuttal. But, oh, dude, dude, it's, it's clearly there to just set up Talos. That's the only purpose for the yeah. line. Give him a, a lead in. Because it would, it would, it would be unhinged if Talos just started ranting about how important he is in, to Fury's well, reputation, you know? It would be unhinged for Fury to just go, I've been cleaning up your messies for 20 years, and Talos is just, when? <laughs> like, what? What's the thing? He shuts the fuck up once he gives his rant. He's like, oh yeah, I was actually entirely wrong and an asshole, I guess. <laughs> him, Bye. It's like, him okay. shutting the fuck up? Him shutting the fuck up is ten times worse because of that opening line. That opening line implies that he has at least a side of the story they can add. Like, give us another like a version of the events. But he just it's it's crazy. Why open with that? It's just a, a complete lazy setup to lead to it. It's empty. Like the like the chicken cornbread stupid trail scene. It's like a really <laughs> a stupid a lazy long four hour setup for something that was just like vapid in the first place. You know, I don't um, know why they do this. Didn't Fury have a wife in Winter Soldier? Uh, whether or not there was any reference to a wife in any of the previous stuff, like this woman and where they are and stuff, it's all invented was for not, the show. You, there was and, never a point in the Winter Soldier where they were writing it like, yeah, and see, she's a scroll. Well, and, uh, the most important part being, of course, that he's a shit husband. That was never, yeah. like, in the deal. That was never a part of it. They just all decided, yeah, that's what's gonna be. That's Thing. That's, that's why Samuel L. Jackson charges so much because they know what the kind of shit they're going to put his character through. Yeah, and he's just and... at this point waiting to see well, how much they'll pay. He was an executive producer on this too, I think. So, oh well, the piece he of the pie. Well, right? Maybe when he said he was like relieved to die, he just meant this role. He's mm. like, I'm fed up with being Fury. I just want to be something else. But this is the thing. I think he likes Mace Windu and Nick Fury. I remember hearing a quote saying, like, you know, fuck all those other movies. He just wants to have fun playing those roles. I think he actually likes this character. Why wouldn't he? I think he like I, I think he basically just broadly likes doing roles regardless of whether they're in like more dramatic roles for I guess you could say more serious movies and doing these ones too. You think you think he would hang on to something of Fury's character though? Like you'd be like yeah. You think so? That not, he would have told him born. like um, you gotta wonder, right? If the actors are on set, like, no, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and what they get told. This is but why not I be will... actively destroyed, like someone you've played yeah. for like over a decade. Yeah, and it's not like he's um, 
It's not he's dementia ridden or anything. He's still very coherent. Mm. I will always appreciate Mark Hamill and even Tamora Morrison, like the few people that actually actually speak out and like like those, remember the Boba Fett quotes from from a while back saying how like he 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 shouldn't be talking this much. Oh, and, like, if only <laughs> if only that it's, you know he'd brought it up oh, when oh, filming oh, instead of. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Now you would think you know, they'd have afterwards when he knew it was shit, he was uh, freaking out. But that was just sad because that's another case of like you can tell he liked the character and he could have he was passionate to do something with it, but they just they don't care. He wasn't even in Mandel season three when he thought he was gonna be mm. sad. Never got the call. Yeah, and I remember being happy to see him in Kenobi as the storm, the broken down uh, clone trooper. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like just there's a lot of potential for what that character is and the role he's had in the story, and they just they don't see it that way, I guess. I don't know. So, uh, Talos pretends to be the guy they're trying to get to, who's obviously like owns all this stuff and is trying to get in, which I thought was interesting because the scrolls, being graphic, would be aware that there's an attempt to subvert this. Remember, it's partly a test as well on the part of uh, you know Fury and Talos. So that these guys should be aware, because these are scrolls as well, by the way, the security detail, they should be aware that someone might try and get in who's a scroll who's evil. You know? Like Yep. But nope. They should be aware of the notion of scrolls that would try to you know, because I mean the reality is, right, if a million scrolls are on Earth, there aren't a million scrolls in that compound. So there's gotta be some out there that might mm -hmm. get recruited to help uh tell us. Um I didn't realize these gods were scrolls. Yeah, the, yeah the, that, that, once well, they're dead, when they, they get shot, go green. they go to yeah. and they go oh. green. Yeah. Oh, this <laughs> um, scene here is yeah. so stupid. He's walking up as his cover to this random guard. The guard says, Sir, I just spoke with you. Like the implication being, You're supposed to be inside the house, not in front of me. How did this happen? And so Talos switches into his regular <laughs> mode <laughs> and yeah. then attacks him. Why did you just attack straight away if you're gonna? Why did you take the time to do this? What's even the funnier? Point? Trying to be is trying to be cheeky. No, the point is because nanotech helmets rags, but shapeshifters. Yeah, because he should still be in this role. Because as soon as he knocks out the guard, he, if anyone was to come here, because he says my cover's blown, it's like no, it's not. All you have to say is no. this guard, he like he's been knocked out. What's going on? Or you can say he attacked me. Yep. Anything. You still got cover, but he just says, "Nah, my cover's blown now." It's like, oh, okay. I guess so. <laughs> Fine. If Fury just kills three guards, they're all scrolls. The uh we see Talos note the sun is playing I don't know what game it is, but he's playing a game. And uh so they ignore him. And then on the like receiver, Talos is like, Oh, you gotta come up to this particular room. I've got him, he's in here. It's like, oh he's captured. But the big giveaway is he calls him Nick. Because nobody calls him Nick. That's right. Not no nobody, not Nick. know how. Yeah. We double checked. That's true. <laughs> we double checked. How do they um, that up? And so Nick brings in the guy's son, and then there's a sort of standoff, I guess. But I thought this was interesting. As much as I totally understand a father giving up the position for a son and everything, wouldn't he think, like, if I give up my leverage, they might just kill us both? Does that never come into well, mind? No, because remember, they, Talos is a weakling. Well, Fury's there, though. Yeah. But he knows they still need him for the missile. <laughs> yeah, but like after that or whatever, you after know. After that, it just to me, if I were him, I'd be like, "Yeah, you've got my son, but you're just gonna kill us both if I let Talos go anyway." And then yeah, Fury could be like, "I haven't got time," but you know, like, something like that. It just, somebody just gives him up straight away, and I was just like, "I don't know. I feel like you've you've really lost now because they've got full control." Anyway, um, you know, the the the, the this situation's gonna get real bad soon. This big old missile is gonna can, cause World War Three. Can I just say, ask why, why they don't phone the plane and tell it to turn around? I was about to say the exact same thing. Why did they just turn the plane around? What the hell is this? Uh, well, don't you understand the, that you can't phone a plane? They're too far <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> it doesn't have a cell signal. <laughs> Idiot. It's too high up. <laughs> yeah, planes like, are moving too fast. It, it, the whole time, I was like, why we're just worrying about this other part. Just, just call the fucking plane. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, you're just nitpicking. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Planes have Air phones. Like, oh, airplane man. mode. It's funny too because the writers like are struggling here in terms of plot holes. Because uh, <laughs> you have uh, Yuri just goes, "Why can't you just turn into that guy and call it off?" And then he's like, "Because I'd need a code word." 
I just, you just sort of say that, like, do you know this? What do you know about what is t like, whatever information you have? And then it's like, shouldn't you really, like, wouldn't Olivia Coleman be the one to call now? Like, you have She him. would be the one to call. And you're like, listen, they're about to, she should be invested in this anyway, but she's not. But now you'd be like, listen, we're in the room with him. And, I mean, you, you know, can, can you pull any strings? We're about to head to World War Three. I feel like this is worthwhile in terms of a call. <laughs> I don't know. Um... Yeah, and then, uh, so Fury says, like, we haven't got time for this, and shoots him in the leg. That's nice to see, as long as he didn't shoot him Finally. in something super vital in the leg. You know, be careful, aim for the foot, that sort of stuff. That's true, the biggest blood vessels in your body are in your, uh, your, your leg there, in your upper thigh, so be careful. I, I'm now thinking leg, about you know. in Family Guy, when they try to get out of the military, and then <laughs> they try to shoot each other in the foot. I... And then Brian missed. And so Stewie is just like, oh, 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 you got me. Oh, let me see. <laughs> yeah. No, no, oh, you got me. Let me see. <laughs> so uh, Yuri looks like he's going unhinged to Talos. He takes the gun off him and he's like, no, we, we want you to do this. We, we'll, we'll get the information out of him. And Fury, Fury is like, you, you, you're not, like, this is obviously a payoff for the whole you're a pussy thing. <laughs> you, you, you do <laughs> too much mercy. Um, I thought, and I think we were talking about this when we were watching it, like, the sun's gonna come into this, right? Like, like Talos is gonna crack and he's gonna use the sun, he's gonna put the gun to the sun's head, and he's like... Yeah, why would they show the, the sun in there with the Fortnite or whatever he's playing? And then, of course, the subversion could be that he really tries, he can't do it, and then Fury does it, and Talos has to realize, like, holy fuck, this is how we have to go to save the world, like, this is right, you know, some other thing like that, you might be right that. But no, instead, the guy, like, is taunting, uh, Talos... When we're literally on a countdown, by the way, it's, it's like seconds away from. You can see in the screen in the background. Can you see that? Like on the left, it's basically <laughs> yeah. over. It's already in range. Like, but they're just like, yeah. he's like doing like a, he, 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 you're a, you're a shitty leader. Did you know that? <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck are we doing? And um, well, throughout all of this, no one's we're... asking him questions or like hurting him or anything. Everyone's just sitting there. And Fury's kind of like, are you, you going to do anything? Tell us at any point. Yeah, like, Fury looks like he's pouting. Make no sense. Yeah. No. Like he's got he's, time. he's just like eh, and sitting in his little like, chair when it's the end of the fucking world, man. You'd go and get his son and bring him back in the room. Yeah. Um so the guy says, Traitors are why we've been in exile for thirty years. Is your daughter a traitor too? And so Talos executes him. Which is really which again, fucking I stupid. Guess I mean, incredibly stupid, because they don't have a guarantee yet for what they need, but you've just yeah. killed somebody who might be your last hope for that. And it's and it's like, you know, the reasoning, like, oh, I don't want him to give away my daughter, and it's like, even if well, you, sure, you can kill him afterwards. How can you do that right now? Yeah, exactly, he can't fucking tell to. anybody. But again, isn't that just fascinating like, about oh. Talos? It's like, when it comes to saving the world, you know, I can't cross that line, but when it comes to saying things that upset me... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, then, exactly. He's so principled all the time. But you say Gaia, and then he'll pop you in the chest. Like, and that's just, what I mean. Like, it's it seems so weird that the show would essentially like kind of it would it would get close to going to the ideas again. You know, something like Twenty Four, right? Where it's like, okay, well, what exactly are people willing to do potentially? You know, mm -hmm. uh, to stop threats, to save the world, to protect lives. What are these trade offs? You know, between essentially consequentialism or you know, uh, like just principled positions. But the show doesn't really want to deal with that at all. No. Well, well no. if anything, this proves he'd rather save his daughter than eight billion people. It's insane. He gets upset consistently more so yeah, when people would say him. things about his daughter than when people are actually like about to die. It's crazy. What what I liked about Talos was the idea of like one scroll understanding that they have to do this like in a civil manner. Like this isn't their home. They have to they, there's gotta be another way. They can't do it the, the path of war. But then he does shit like this where I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like this is it's like, just yeah, but like, he, he taunted me. It's like Okay. You can't have that fucking stance and then just snap and shoot this guy when you need the information well, to save lives. And then it gets right even now, crazier crazy. because I think th this has been written in real time. This is how it looks to me. And it's like the writers were like, okay, so what would be the solution now? What would it be? And then Talos just rings Gaia and says, do you know what the password yeah. is? <laughs> that is oh, yeah. Gaia. Which, which makes it pointless of killing that guy in the first place because he's essentially yeah. outed her himself. It's, um, there's, there's a lot to it that's absolutely baffling. She doesn't know the code. What he's asking her to do is find the body of the man that they captured that's down in the basement, read his mind, get all of his memories, and then access the password. 
when it's like, that's not even necessarily going to work. We don't know when this password is created, and it's more than likely yeah. the password is created newly for Skrull. You know, he's a Skrull. They probably would want a, a, a passcode that's, like, not familiar to everyone else or to his past life or whatever. <laughs> yeah, at least when you set off on a new mission, you'd have new passwords. Yeah, so it's like, so this could have just completely... And then she has to beat up two Skrull guards, by the way, which could have gone completely wrong. And then she has to, like, be in the whole area with all of those pod people without getting captured. There's no alerts. She doesn't need keys. She doesn't need access codes herself to get into these things. Health 100, the whole show. And, uh... Yeah, she just she does everything oh, perfectly, I mean, and then there's this this wonderful it's moment. Insane. You okay, want to talk about yeah. it, for me? I'll, uh, I'll just throw visuals. Well, so this the 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 guy that they're trying to get the information from is in the little memory extracting machine, and so as she's for some reason she's not just like absorbing them directly from his mind in the way that was shown before. We just like put your which hand would be on the faster and, and more efficient, it, yes. which would be way faster. She's like going through the machine. And as she's doing it, it's like flashing memories of him, the real guy, hanging out with his son. And then she like looks at him like, oh my god, you have a life. And it's just like, <laughs> what the, what the, like, we don't have lives on Skrullos. <laughs> like, what did she think this, was the case? I believe people? this is supposed to give us reason for why she's going to be hardcore a good guy. And it's like, that's what what? Is pretty bad. Yeah, pretty, she's, yeah, she's realizing oh that god, humans are people too. Oh my god, she people and they have like... lives, and it's like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? You never... like, come on. It, in Captain Marvel, they had the same thing, but it was random. So I just this whole scene, I was thinking, how the hell is she gonna find this one code flicking through someone's entire life? Because if that's how it works from that movie, right? yeah, that was dumb as but fuck too. Apparently... She wouldn't have stumbled yeah, on that randomly. That's not gonna happen. It's fuck insane, even knowing but... how mentally you do that, how that's a thing oh, you can just man. do. Flick it's the, just it embarrassing sense. and and i think it's meant to be like ah oh, see now she understands what she's doing is wrong which to which you just have to believe that she was an absolute idiot beforehand yeah, so the, the girl the girl's life she doctor. took by the way i guess had nothing that's going actually. for her well yeah like because <laughs> she would have taken that person's life and then stolen her memories did but she no, not but... get any memories of her hanging out with her family nothing or anything at or all like, no, working which at like volunteer them? work at a homeless shelter like how did it take her this long to realize that human beings are people? <laughs> it's <laughs> insane. It it's long? terrible, oh, awful, God. awful writing. And 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 the, the the point that's being made here is she's on the hook for all of the. She's on the hook still. She yeah, doesn't get to escape. It, it feels culpability. Going from this point onward, I think she's she's only got good deeds, and so I think they want us to believe like, yeah, but she's a different person now. She's learned. She's understood. This is. This is going for it's like fuck off. This is not good enough to her to realize that there's some guys out there who like their sons and have family wow. moments. And there are people who have lives as if that wasn't something that she could conclude. That's how would she not me. understand this? She's an adult, right? <laughs> yes. Like she's <laughs> been there for thirty years. How would she not yep. notice like the oh, concept so of bad. father and son? Like it's, it's and Captain Marvel said that they can't remember the memories of the scrolls that they take, and that was the basically the test that they use in that movie. Now it's the complete opposite. So which rules are we even following? I have no idea how these things work. It seems know, like actually extract long-term memories, which again, she would have had the long-term memories of her, whoever she's impersonating and whose identity she's gonna keep forever. Because that's because yeah. I guess there's no ethical considerations as to whether you should still maintain those identities that you took from people without their permission. But um, they said the exact opposite in Captain Marvel, and they want us this they expect this to make sense now. Like I don't even know how to follow it. I guess and, and, the only thing you could say is 30 years of technology, but again, their technology was already pretty advanced. They were a spacefaring civilization. Mm -hmm. So you figure that they wouldn't have figured this out in the last 30 years when they have less resources and are stuck and on Earth. Had they figured that out within that span of time, that in itself could have been an interesting story. What kind of innovations they made on their own during that time. But it feels like they should be mm -hmm. sitting on their hands. Well, I mean, well, we know what one of the innovations is. They've created a machine that can imbue you with their oh, traits. Geez. That are extracted from uh, other like beings, essentially, and it's gonna get worse from here, guys. Oh, God. <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, he gets the code. He goes in and says it. It all works out. Everything's fine. We came that close to blowing up a UN airship. I don't even know what it was, like, uh, because I don't think they were that specific about. It's just a bunch of world leaders were on a plane that was about to be blown up by Britain. That was a thing that almost happened, but it got called off at the last second. There's only three scrolls on that sub, or rather in the control of the sub or whatever. It's just like, how are there not everyone panicking at the fact that we almost launched a missile at that plane that would have yeah. 
calls World War Three. This is insane. The well, same the that, people, by the way, the British government know about Skrulls and that they're infiltrating yeah. members of the military to try and cause World War Three. Yeah, Hello? Like at this point, you guys should be scrambling to verify who's who very quickly. And then we have Olivia <laughs> Coleman is just like, hopefully you guys took care of that, I was busy. They have the worst system on that sub because they need two keys to launch it, but the entire point of two keys is you need two people. And yet they're right next to each other, and so to the point where he tries to grab both of them and turn them himself yeah. right he at the end. Yeah, and the other guy he stares actually does. Which, by the way, how are they not screwed? How are they not going to get, like, pinned down and, and like, held captive, you know? Or it's like you try to defy the order. Like, you're, you can't... You're stuck here. You're not, you're not getting out of here. Anyway, uh, they're mm -hmm. successful, mission aborted, and Gaia's heading out of the facility. And she, um, she bumps into Gravik. Not even kidding. <laughs> he, just, he didn't, uh -oh, he he didn't like, you know, track again. her down and, and it, she's on a motorbike and I guess there's only one road in and out, so she very cleverly used it instead of finding some other place to secretly get out now that she's, like, potentially exposed. Um, and I don't know, I think this scene is supposed to be tense. She gets shot and, and it's like, but oh no. Back. They're not going to kill her off in three episodes. Well, no, no, no. Single... She has to be dead because it can't be Extremis that'll save her because Extremis works straight away. If you shoot someone and well, yes. it has Extremis, it, goes, it makes like the searing sound and you can see all the lights and stuff. And all when the she gets red killed, out. yeah, she's yeah. clearly dead. He he looks at her and he's like, oh, well, she's dead. Though I would have, if I were him, shot her ten times in the face just <laughs> to make sure. Hey, I'm not great. Yeah. I'm surprised. Not only would he confirm the kill, but he would take the body. Why would he yeah, want to leave? Of course. Why would you just leave there? it out in the road? Then so some other guy is going to drive out the next day exactly. and be like, "What the hell? You've obstructed no, my car like, out of here." Half an hour later, <laughs> like literally, something's yeah. going to pass by. Like, what the fuck is it's that just, on the road? <laughs> it's so classic. It's like, can we have it so that she appears dead for a while? It's like, no, that's not how extremist works. And they're like, can we do it anyway? And they're like, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, but, I mean, we've already retconned the old movies, so whatever. Why not? They spoiled this plot twist themselves. They released a trailer for the next episode where she's in it going, oh, well, that was quick. Maybe oh. too quick. <laughs> and you're like, you, well, what I mean, are you doing? It's your own I mean, plot they, twist. They spoiled it with the trailer really showing her in scenes yeah. that follow this episode that haven't been shown yet. Yeah. Wow. This is and and then there's just the reality of like, I don't trust you guys. Well, the big one is that you would do this. She hasn't done enough to justify you got bringing her in yet. To play yeah. a character in a show and you kill her off after three episodes, no way. Though to be fair, I didn't realize what they were going to do with no, that character. I had no idea they were going to do that. <laughs> Nobody did. Nobody did. Um. So, uh, Fury's GF is ordered, or wife, whatever, is ordered to. She's she goes to a deposit box to get a gun and. Like the reality is, she's going to be told to kill Fury now. That's that's her command from Gravik. I, I I never get over this because the the whole show plays with this. They even point this out at one point. Why are you so bad at killing Fury when it's so easy? Everyone talks about how shit he is, and yet you never actually yeah. kill him when you finally get the chance. And like the implication is that Gravik doesn't want to kill him. And if you remember in episode two, I think he said never give a man what he wants in the relation to killing him. But then he orders his death with several assassins. It's like, and yeah. then he. He says after this that he still needs him. It's like, I have no idea what you're doing, Ravik. He and then if you remember, Rhodey says, either you kill Fury or we kill you. It's like, okay, so like, what's going on? Why didn't Rhodey just kill him? I'm just, I'm Why just did so anyone awesome. just kill him? He's a useless old man who Rhodey, wheezes on Iron benches. Like, oh, God, oh don't stupid. even get started on that. Jesus. Well, that's the end of episode three. All right. Halfway there. Whoa. Six hours later. I don't fucking Holy care. Shit. We're we're more than halfway, luckily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we've we've covered a lot of things. Like episode one was like a double dip almost. I feel like we covered so many things. Yeah. yeah. We had to establish a lot. Yeah. Establishing grounds, yeah. But um with that one, we'll have to say goodbye to Disparu, who's probably trying to go to sleep at a reasonable time as well. <laughs> Potentially. Well, always attempting, I need to eat and everything. I'd <laughs> Was working on a video and I said, "Yeah, you know, I might be a few hours late." And then a few hours later, I'm like, "There's no way I'm finishing this video tonight." Yeah. <laughs> so it was all but useless anyway. Wow. Well, uh, it, nice, it, it was nice to meet you. Was, I'm the only like, first time meeting you here, so yeah, you, you like did your it. videos, thank you, man. Awesome stuff. But before you run off, tell everybody what you're up to. Have you been covering Secret Wars, Secret and uh -huh. Marvel? Oh, yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Marvel secret <laughs> se- secret Marvel hidden secret at the table. Marvel secret Marvel. Uh, yeah, I did the reviews for this. It sh- were some of the worst, like to actually get through. It was weird because it taught me the shortest amount to record, and I still released them later because I kept just walking away from my computer. I couldn't focus. It was. At least the other reviews have been fun. This this wasn't fun. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think the reason is for that? Is it because you were quite invested in Nick Fury particularly? I like Griffin? Fury as a character. Yeah. yeah, and there's there's an element where something gets so bad it's actually entertaining. Yeah. That that yeah. was Willow. Willow was genuinely funny at times, but it was it was not taking itself seriously. This was like it's it's bad, but there's there's no kind of it it was competently filmed and put together. But the script writing was trash, and it's using characters that I like, and so it's just kind of action. hateful the entire way through. I feel the exact same way, where it's just like She Hulk was so ridiculous that you can, you know, you can actually poke fun of it. Same with um, like Boba Fett. But this reminds me of Kenobi, where I'm just kind of pissed off. You're just annoying me here with the choices that you're making, and it's such a waste of a concept and the acting and everything. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, and She Hulk and Willow were trying to be comedies, so yeah. there was an element of like. Them trying to be funny and not being funny was funny in itself, kind of thing, and you could I, make jokes about it. There was exactly. there was no entertainment or humor to Zero. be found in this. Yeah, this is supposed Except to be when drama. They're like, you deserve that smoke. <laughs> that <was good>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it, it. Like, yeah. Other than episode six, I didn't really laugh at anything. In, but um, just nothing enjoyable, man. Really, really, oh, really miss the show. The finale where he's just screaming at him was the the worst. I, I think Man. I resorted to just like screaming back at the screen in the review. <laughs> and he's suddenly point, dying. Of... I'm just like, prove he's a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> he's suddenly dying of lung cancer. Like, when was he fucking coughing up the entire. Sh- like, yeah, oh God. So I just want to cover that since you're leaving. Yeah. I have no idea why they suddenly had him coughing up his lungs out of nowhere when that wasn't even oh. really a part of the show. Uh, well, we, there's all. There's so many things to do with that. I can't wait to talk about it. <laughs> this, <laughs> this show has plenty of surprises left. Uh, oh yes it does at listeners but things beyond all comprehension <laughs> as for disparate thank you so much for joining us here. it was always a pleasure whenever you do so, and uh, i'm sorry you had to suffer through secret invasion again <laughs> but hey, <laughs> yeah. hey it's, a, it's a lot more entertaining going through it with people than yes. it is on your own and it's just you and that for hours um but yeah it's always fun guys thanks for having me on yes you sir. bet and, uh, catch you around, catch you around dude. bye or see you later Episode four, if everybody is ready. Yeah, I am ready. Please. They give us a <laughs> like a set of flashbacks. Like, by the way, we didn't show you this, but she stole the personality of Science Lady. She then went to the machine to operate it fully and got herself the uh, the powers that Gravik currently has, including Extremis. I'm actually not sure she got more because we never see her use anything more than Extremis. But if no, you see I on this. I, 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 if, if they use the same one, it should be the same ones he had, so she probably also, has group power, too. On this uh, screen, you can see Extremis, and then underneath it says Frost Beast, and underneath that, Cull Obsidian, so I assume she's got them all. She got the same ones, we just never see it. By the way, do you like how fucking childish this is? Extremis, power transfer, healing abilities, 100, heat strength, 100. Yeah, what, what does that mean? Like, shut up. You figure that they yeah. might nerf it a little bit, right? So it's like it's not 100% effective. It's not exactly the same. Yeah. But yeah, no. like the more we combine, the less powerful they are. Yeah, or exactly. They're only they're only it's ever like going to be video like game. a fraction of the original. I'm, what I'm talking yeah. about is like the friend. complications of a scientific sort of uh, addition to your genome being extremist it would not be boiled down to healing abilities and heat strength. Yeah, it's... like, what does that even mean? Healing abilities yeah. and heat strength 100%. What does that mean? As, like, a biological, like, fact, I um, suppose you could you say. Know, it's like, well, it's we don't know what you... else to put on there. And it's like, I know. That's what I'm pointing out. I know you don't, yeah. <laughs> you just hope you won't read it. <laughs> they don't, this, Absolutely. This is the I, I think they don't want people to read it, yeah. yeah. EFAP is, is like, read it like this. It's weird, because like... they, they wrote it out, you know? It's all there. <laughs> yeah, that is... The scroll version of her, presumably, but I don't know if she ever actually got in the makeup. I don't think so. But why would she instantly turn back into God, someone they, who yeah, wasn't her? They do it quick, too. Nanotech helmets of shapeshifters. They do not want her being a scroll. No. It, it really feels like they're showing her off, right? It's like, look, it's Amelia Clark. Look, look, look. And it's like, you have loads of famous people. 
But like, why did you get her for this role then? If you wanted to do that, why would you get her for a role that would be the least appropriate to have the same person playing the character? Don't yeah. know. None of it's thought out. So we uh, begin the episode with a good old flashback to uh, just post Avengers time. It's just after it. Yeah. And, uh, and if there's anything I can trust, it's a flashback. Yeah. Every time these start up, you're like, oh boy, what are we destroying oh this time? Yep. What yep. lies are you preparing to tell me? <laughs> Trying to gaslight me. Uh, she's, she just says, as I saw them all saving the world, I had a feeling someone had something to do with it. Uh, someone getting them together. And if he's the man I think he is, he has a powerful sense of righteousness. He understands the universe is dangerous and home is worth fighting for and that the weak are worth protecting. It's like clockwork every fucking time. All the horrible dialogue that just tells you explicitly what everyone's feeling, whether or not it makes any sense at all. And uh, The whole point of this writing thing is to hide that element. You're supposed to make us like not notice just what you think about whatever. Well, you're meant to make to us buy it. into this as like a real exchange between people. Yeah. Cre create the illusion, but they just can't do yep. that. They just tell you straight up what they th what their thoughts are. Just need to update you as fast as possible. No, no elegance to it. And she says she's reading some Raymond Carver, and some of his poems are three or four lines. And then Fury is like, oh, do, do you have a favorite? And she says, late fragment. And he says, well, how's it go? And then she says, actually, it's a conversation. Which is a really weird line. That's weird. Because he that's I, not I correcting him on anything. <laughs> he just said, yeah. how does it go? <laughs> How's it go? Oh no, no, no. Actually it's a conversation. Conversations don't go. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, it, I can believe how someone in the MCU might not think that conversations like go. What's funny to me is that that could be how it was written and they're just you know, shit at writing. Shocking revelation. Or, it could be what makes me feel like it is, which this this scene was maybe like three times as long and it got chopped to shit. Like, who knows? But either way, it doesn't feel genuine. It just feels like I'm sitting there like, get to the point. What's it gonna be? Yeah, tell yeah. me what the thing is. I said out loud, I'm like, man, this is gonna take forever, isn't it? <laughs> like, I, I would have rather it just be a poem, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, and this better be a... If you're gonna read me poetry, it better be a fucking banger. Yeah. Well, all that's said, she says to uh, the one thing she wants in life is to call herself beloved and to feel herself beloved. And it's like, okay. That was okay. all that build up for that, like all this hype. That's that's not half of half of how interesting as you think it is. Yeah, yeah. I, th I well, thought they had a banger, but no. it's kind of like, worth wait, noting. Wait, we're already like a fifth more. of the way through. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank God. It gets short. They get uh. real short. Which is good. Um, so, Rhodey's threatening her. He's like, hey, you're supposed to be working for Gravik, you fuck. You and, um, fuck? Uh, she says Fury was fired, by the way, and then Rhodey says how, which was confusing for a second, because I was like, you fired him, didn't you? But the point is, he's supposed to be sort of figuring out what she knows. And she said, President Ritson must have done it. And he says, no, I did it. Ritson doesn't do anything unless I tell him to. And he's I, the it, president. I don't yeah, believe you. I was just like, oh. Why? When did Man. this happen that the president only had one advisor and he did everything he said? When was that a thing? Since when was Rhodey Grima worm Wormtongue? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, <laughs> that's another thing they invented. Like, well, I don't know. And again, it's just like you, you, you get the pulled out. Scrolls do not exist, my lord. <laughs> you get yanked out every once in a while because, like, Rhodey's just telling us that's how it is, and that's the writer telling us how it is. It's like we have all that under control because I decided this character does this. And you're like, all right, fine. Same as everything else, I guess. And yeah, he says, kill Fury or we kill you. And uh, it turns out Fury is eavesdropping on the whole thing. I don't, like, because uh, we do find out this is not something she knew. I guess he bugged her. And so this is, this is that... should be pretty, like, shocking to discover, I'd imagine. That he now knows that his wife is going to try and kill him under orders from Gravik. You know, that sucks. He doesn't, he doesn't really care, though. He just slouches in his seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we've, it's been a while since we've had one of these, but she's another character to do it. So she says, I'm, uh, thinking, uh, she, she mentioned something about him being shit. I'm trying to find the, 
He's so shit. Don't worry about him. We don't even need to kill him. He's trash now. He's very yeah. She like, says you're very it's, bad. It's almost worse than that. She says the old fury, the one with power, the one with ability, the one who was indispensable to us. He's gone. The new one will be dead from exhaustion and defeat. Yeah. Suited of that was the one. Yeah. It's like what the fuck? Uh, would you add that with all the other lines? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, is this a fetish? <laughs> the thing about it is, um, someone would try to argue, is like, don't you get it? She's saying that because she's trying to convince them not to kill him. It's like, well, then why is it the same as what everyone says about Fury in this fucking show? <laughs> like, everybody. The villains, the heroes, all of them. Yeah. So. Oh, and there, there was a... guy at a bar. There was a really awful line that was clearly posing as a cool line from Rhodey. I don't know if you guys remember, but this is the shot you get for it. And he says... If you keep telling me what you're not gonna do, I'm gonna show you what I am gonna do. Shit line. That's yeah. That is it's the very clunkiest motherfucking uh, lie. Like, why don't you? We need to refine redraw. that a lot. Yeah. That needs so Try much help. Again. It actually it feels like if there was a road equivalent of that, it would just be going up, down, left, right. All like it would break yeah. dimensions. Yeah, you, you have this general concept of the exchange you want in your head, and then as a writer, you think, oh, how can I refine this and polish this and make it short and quippy? You know, I was like, uh, the, never mind, whatever. Next, next, whatever. How come he didn't say, um, either you show me what you can do, or I'll show you what I can do, or something like that? It's already cleaner. Like, it's quicker. If, if, if you don't act, I will. Boom. Oh Easy. god, we're getting small. Turns out the the quicker and smaller <laughs> the line, likely the better it is. Like that just exactly often yeah, how it goes. I feel like Don Cheadle could have improv that better than whatever it was on the spot, but he, he's stuck with his stupid line. It is very bad. It's all variations of like you choose or we will. It's as simple yeah, as that. Yeah, either you do it or we'll do it. So so simple. And yet, what did they end up with? If you keep telling me what you're not gonna do, I'm gonna show you what I am gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> How did they get? Like, <laughs> How like did you get it that thing. long? What the yeah, fuck? Like the, the, that's like the intoxicated version of that line. Yeah, it, 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 you well, show me what yeah. you're gonna do, and <laughs> I'm gonna show bar. you what I can be doing. If you, yeah, yeah, that that line. Oh God, like are we in a church? Leaving a bar, but not the like fuck? in this scene. How'd we get in here? <laughs> so, uh, before leaving for the next mission. Uh, Gravik says, remember, we want them to think that we're the Russians, so make it loud and big like Russians would. What? <laughs> Russians love it big and loud. <laughs> it's so funny. You know those Russians. You know the Russians, <laughs> man. Oh, That's how we'll convince remember, everyone. Remember, only Russian. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's, just, it's the opposite, <laughs> <wonder>. right? <laughs> There's gotta be uh, some Russian MCU fan that's just like, fuck, as a roll his eyes. Through yeah, his definitely. He's like, uh, they do know me, yes. Remember, no <laughs> English. I do love <laughs> big and loud, yes. No uh, scroll. Uh, no scroll. <laughs> <laughs> well, <is that laughs> no scroll. Remember, guys, if you get shot and die, don't turn into a scroll. Don't just... turn into a scroll. <laughs> exactly. Hold it in as you go to the other side. Yeah, it's like clenching your butt cheeks so you don't like turn back into a scroll or whatever. <laughs> like, sir, what if one of us gets injured or killed? We're just gonna be scrolls. It's like, die. no. Oh, damn, you're right. We'll shoot you up so bad, you'll just be piles of flesh. It'll be fine. Damn. No one will tell. No sense at all. So we get our father daughter scene. It's great. He says, I shouldn't have forced you into this. And then she says, I don't they need a. Go ahead. Scrolls, by the way, before we continue. Oh, yeah, they're both the scrolls. In person, if they both got to appear as scrolls, wouldn't that be like meaningful to them? Yeah, because not only are they not scrolls. Random humans. They're not even, well, they just, keep choosing these humans, though. Just these specific random humans whose identities you've co opted instead of like, oh, I haven't seen you like as a as like a scroll in I don't know like twenty years or something. Wouldn't that be meaningful? But they don't want to do the makeup, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course, him saying I shouldn't have forced you into this is really bizarre because she's made many choices at this point that are really fucked up. And it's out of her hands. But yeah. I guess you can give it room for that he's her dad. You know, it's, maybe that's something he would say, which is kind of annoying. But then she, and she's doing the thing, and it's so sad to see it, because at this point it's all you get. She's like, I don't need a sorry for what I did of my own free will. Boring! It's the Boring. Amelia Suck. Clark plank delivery. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to call Boring. her at this point. This is yeah. strong female writing. 
with strong female acting too. Yeah. Like she she wants to be yeah. stone faced, um, but it makes it so that she's like no emotion. And we've seen it with Sarah Connor with that. What the was it? Kira from Solo. I, I can't remember. Kira, I think yeah. I yeah. think her name was Kira. And then um, you know Daenerys. It's not like. That started becoming a problem uh, the more the show went on. It was just like, Daenerys does the same thing every fucking time. Yep. She glares at people and says, I don't think you should overstep your place. You're just like, you're like yeah, yeah, I got it. They keep forcing her to play this character. It's like this blueprint they tapped into, and they just, they. I would like to know what this woman could do other than Daenerys Targaryen over and over and over again. Because I think she could do other things, but they, ugh, it's an annoying typecast. See, like, look at her eyebrows. She's capable of more. She can <laughs> look do at more. the move. Fuck. They don't let her, because uh, they got one job they wanted to do. Too um, busy being strong. Like, fucking hell. But anyway, like, yes, <laughs> eyebrows. That's the shot right there. Then she starts saying stupid shit. She says, uh, have you got a plan to get the scroll to home? Because Gravik has a plan, and he's implementing it, and it works. It works. <laughs> Blowing up the planet works. Blowing up all of Earth works. It turns you, out you can just you know, blow up the planet. Killing, Who knew? killing billions of people, destroying all of the planet's infrastructure. That plan works for you, does it? It's so insane. It's like, do the writers know what she just said? That his plan Maybe. works? His plan works? Come Maybe on. she's what the sad hell? that it works and is effective? But like, it's... She's but saying that like you need to come up with a plan that, that works because his does. his does not work. Yeah, this what, doesn't work. So not like, only it, does it w not work in terms of what you want to achieve, it's deeply immoral. Yeah, a, 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 something that they've now declared that she would be very much against. You don't want to kill people who might have families, like humans. Yeah! Didn't she just have a change of heart when she realized fathers have sons? Well, but that's like, the point of this scene, is to that? point out that Talos, Talos, whatever, he's not he's not done a good enough job in response to Gravix. He doesn't offer a better solution, when his solution I, was try and live among the humans and don't fucking murder the children. Ex exactly. He's a delusion. The idea he's delusional, Friggy. Delusional. delusional. <laughs> apparently, the idea that a large number of scrolls find that uncompelling compared yeah. to nuking the whole planet. Like, they come on. What do you They're want just... people to think about the scrolls? What do you want people to think? Yeah, <laughs> like, because you showed exactly us that, that she snapped out of the evil scroll crew by seeing a normal person doing normal things. It's like, uh, do they all need that moment? Do they all need to see humans play with children? They all need that moment children? to recognize that human beings are like them and that they have lives and care about people. I guess they don't have TV. Their lives and lead them. Yeah, these guys no. are living in a box. I just don't understand. They're not exposed. Well, yeah, like what does it what does it look like when they watch a sitcom? You know, they're like, ah, oh, these it, foolish humans don't care about anything. <laughs> like, they didn't explore anything. They were too busy having grabbed <laughs> on the fucking screen. Where I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what those girls' thought process was. Why they believe in this guy? Like, there's a story there. They just skipped it. They skip everything. Um. He says, we have to deal with reality, we have to rely on the goodwill of our hosts, they're gonna see us for who we are. And uh, I think he says, like, good people or whatever, and she says, you're delusional, that's not who we are, and it's not who I've become. Boring. Yep, absolutely fucking shit, she's doing the I'm evil thing, but obviously she won't be, because she's just sad and confused, but also doing her I'm a mean old Mr. Fish and Chips person. I don't, I don't know. know, she seems really old, she like, this doesn't... She should be, what, like, in her 40s? Yeah, like, I, you're not, you shouldn't be, like, discovering your own, like, basic fun, foundational well, morality cause, and cause stuff the character that she's playing was a kid in the 90s, so she's, she's, like, gotta be in her, like, 40s at this point, right? At least, minimum. Thereabouts. I have no idea, but probably, yeah. Well, she's got so, a lot, like, of, lot to learn about humans. How hard is it to figure this out, you know? Like, it's... Like, how is it only at, like, 40 that you start to realize, oh, people lead lives and value them? <laughs> and then, how do you figure that out in your big epiphany and then say this line in the next scene? Like, make yeah, up like, your mind. I don't, I don't know what she wants. That's not who I've become. It's like, what are you, what are you talking, what? Are you, are you saying you're, like, an evil? What are you doing? What's happening? Why would you say it that to your dad? What? I guess it's because she hasn't completed her arc yet of realizing that maybe he has a point that you need to, like, actually prove to people that you're good. Maybe he has a point. Maybe you shouldn't kill children. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Ugh. So then we get this scene. The wife is coming back home and she realizes the ring has not been picked up, even though Fury is here. And remember when we were watching this? I was like, so Fury's a Skrull. This isn't actually Fury. 
Because he's, he's already gone over all of this, that he's supposed to pick up the ring. And then she tells him, and he's like, oh, <laughs> must have forgotten. It's like, he's a scroll. He's got to be a scroll. He's, he's not. Scroll. That's not the point of this scene. We don't even he's, think he's that's just, a possibility. Just kill him because I'd be embarrassed to be in the same room with him. At this point, yes. Um, but there's no thought of that. There never is. We randomly... Nope. Remember the, the, the two that just had that conversation? One of them could be an enemy scroll. They don't even know. Not... Well, yeah, exactly. Like, because again, this isn't your, that's not your daughter. That's some other woman. Like, yep. that's not, you know, you don't know that. The only way that a scroll would know is presumably scrolls can't impersonate other scrolls. I Which guess makes, that's like some wh limit on them. But why? I don't know Which why that would be the case. Want, if, you, yeah. if you can assimilate entirely foreign, like alien beings, you presumably you you'd be able to impersonate people that are like very similar to you anatomically. Well, yeah, but, how would you uh, how would you be able to evolve that characteristic if you couldn't use it yeah. on your own? So together? the reality yeah, is, so it might be a problem with the scrolls is that they can't even recognize themselves. But like these identities are not they're not they're not you. Like the show doesn't seem to understand that. It occasionally does, but it's like these aren't them. They're different people. They never oh, well. address that. Oh, they're not. Well, they can't even do tier one, which is just you yeah. might be a scroll now that I haven't seen you for a day. Mm -hmm. They can't even do that, so yeah. Um, if you're in here, have a serious little chat. He says that, um, of all my mistakes in my life, you're the greatest. I lost all my reason to be your husband, ignored every signal that screamed stop, and even now, as I know you plan to kill me with your pistol, I don't know that I would change a thing if I did it over again. And I, I don't so, you know. So, he's just consigning Which... himself to die here? Seemingly. Um, and so then, you finally find out the story of her face. Oh, she says, God. Um, this is, yeah. this yeah, is pretty bad. So, go ahead. she had a friend who had a heart defect, and she kept it a secret from her family, the friend. And then uh, this scroll here would visit that person every day, and at some point had to acknowledge that, um, that I can't believe him. I was about to say this straight up as if, like, you guys don't need a warning, everyone. This is about to get really weird. As, as is the same with all of this lady's dialogue in this fucking show. She says, at some point, I had to acknowledge that I needed a face that could slip your defenses. She says that to Fury. I needed a black face? I don't know Sorry. what she means by that exactly. No idea. But the implication I'm getting is that she needed to find someone that she believed could seduce... Uh, I knew you said Fringy. <laughs> <laughs> Fury. <laughs> seduce Fringy. So, ah. Fringy, you like it? <laughs> don't you yeah. think that's, like, really fucking weird to tell your husband of potential decades? Like, I was looking for the face you see now because I wanted to, like, trick you into marrying me. I needed that to happen. <laughs> You're just like, oh. Okay. That's a very, like, that's a really strange thing to admit to. And it's not even... It keeps going. Oh yeah, it this is more even... disturbing. It gets more disturbing than this. Well, so the first, like, what do you say back to that? It's like the, you could choose millions of things. Nick says, "Ah, playing the long game on me, huh?" As like, opposed wow, to, wow, oh you took God. that well. Wow. <laughs> yes, okay. She has. Yeah, she's like, oh, no, he wasn't uh, paying attention. Uh, oh, you took that well. Uh, moving on then. And to All that, right. he says, uh, "She says, don't do that, Nick." It's like, what you, he had a very chill reaction to that fucking information, but fine, yeah. Um, she said to the lady in the hospital, do you want to fall in love? And the lady in the hospital, of course, said, how? And then the scroll said, oh, let me tell you about Nick Fury. Now, the implication we're supposed to buy is that she explains, I'm going to take your appearance and I'm going to go date Nick Fury. Somehow, this translates into, do you want to fall in love? I need your face to seduce him. Actually, like, what in the fuck? It's just, and then, there's a complete disconnect there, but continue. If it's not bad enough, she says, you can only take my whole life with three conditions. Condition one, bury me at sea. Like, uh, you know, uh, 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 ashes, toss me at sea. Okay. Like, like, uh, sure, fine, I guess, yeah. Um... And then condition two was uh, uh, be a daughter to her parents. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. What the? That immediately just that's the one. Like, what? Yeah, that's the one that's really uh, fucked up. It's like, so don't let her parents know she died, and instead assume her identity and pretend everything's fine. 
But wasn't this person in the hospital, like, dying Yeah, but she kept it a secret, apparently. No one knew, which I don't buy at all, but okay. Don't buy at all? Well, because then, officially, she has to... Get rid of the Have body, replace her, and then recover from this dilapidating fatal injury, or whatever it was. Well, and whenever they try to draw blood, it turns purple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, whenever... the none of this makes any fucking sense. What actually happened is she probably killed that woman and took her appearance. That's, that makes way more sense. That's probably what happened. Yeah, she's lying. Then, but, but it's just like, that's creepy. Well, and last condition, this is the final part of it. Uh, this is a condition from the woman who's dying in the hospital. The third condition is, don't hurt Nick Fury. All of this is just like... That doesn't make really, any fucking really sense at all. Bizarre, nonsensical, just, and weird. Did she just tell this woman about Nick Fury? Why yes, she, she literally just mentioned yeah. him, and now she's like, never hurt him. It's like, why is that <laughs> your condition? Why would she... This guy why sounds nice, promised to never hurt him. And why would she extract any value like, ah, yes, I will be loved after I'm dead by somebody who isn't me, but stole well, my identity. The well, implication, didn't steal it, I guess, if you gave it to her, but, you know. The implication is that nobody shoots each other in the scene. One, because Fury loves her, and two, because she promised she wouldn't hurt Fury to this dying person who didn't even know who Fury was, that she stole the life of. Mm-hmm. What in the fuck? Bizarre. Why Absolutely should we take any of this as sweet or romantic? Weird. It's just horrible. All of it's horrible. It's not romantic. It's it's creepy. It really is creepy. She just explained that she planned to fall in love with Fury. Yep. So Fury should be feeling very betrayed. Not mm -hmm. like, ah, yes, we are kindred spirits. It's like, no, you deceived me. <laughs> you are a bastard. Yeah, that's just gross. And, yeah. and the thing is, is that in, in, a, in a better show, it could be recognized as like, oh my god, that's terrifying. But like, the show doesn't... It's the not show smart seems enough to, think to know that's Yeah, terrifying. the show doesn't know what's it happening. Think it's chill. They it don't seems even to think it. like, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty chill. They think no that wrong. was sweet. They think that was sweet and like, this is a meaningful conversation. But I was just like, what? <laughs> that You're living her life for her now? Like, you're not going to elaborate on that? Well, I mean, the, the idea of like, getting a shape-shifting alien to pretend to your parents that you didn't die. Yeah, how long? What's the deal here? Like, that's, like, that's, that's pretty twisted. What? That's, that's so strange. Like, how many I people don't... are manipulating her family, Fury, like, everyone she's ever known? It's just, you can't skip over those things for people who have a brain and just want us to go back to this stupid conversation. No. I couldn't no, pay attention no. to anything else they said after that. I was just like, yeah, this lady's, that's messed up. You like I said, it's all horrendous and horrible, and we only just met this lady, like, fucking half an hour ago. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, because something kidding. that happens is that, uh, before they, before they do the simultaneous shoot at each other, they do a callback to the poem that was introduced, what, ten minutes earlier in the episode? <laughs> what you a meaningful callback, like, wow. Like, oh, yeah, that's an oh, amazing so callback, meaningful. that is, for hey, something that was set minutes. up ten minutes ago in the episode. Oh, that's not that how callbacks be... work. <laughs> you get set it up for ten them, minutes though. beforehand. They think oh, yeah, because sure it's a it flashback, that's enough. There's enough that that counts. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that would... Well, they said it to each other in 2012. That's when they said it. <laughs> it's technically, technically like years ago. It was ages ago. Technically. Yeah, it's that's so long ago. We've been we've been building this up for that long. That's what that means. And yeah, as that's uh, the opposite of what you want to achieve with a flat with a setup. As like, Freeze just mentioned, yeah. they both very deliberately pull up their pistols and shoot and both deliberately just miss each other. See? Because they're kindred spirits. Because, you know, right. it's pretty like, you know, a moment of, wow, if either of you thought the other was actually going to do it, that would have been awkward. <laughs> like, because yeah. the other one, like, aims properly. One of them misses and one of them shoots. It's like, oh, one of, shit. What if one of them missed on <laughs> purpose and the other one was trying to hit, but, like, missed accidentally? <laughs> and was, yeah. Well, oh, wait, I mean, like, oh. Nick Fury's probably got pretty bad depth perception, right? Like, he only has one well, working eye. Look at this. Does this not look like the... I mean, Fury's, I think, it looks, looks like, like it'll Fury miss. Is Hers doesn't. Right at... No, <laughs> wait. <laughs> why... But why do this? Oh, look, they shoot exactly at the same time, too. The same millisecond. Like, it I can look like she's missing, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I can buy Fury's misses. I don't buy that hers missed. No. Yeah, she's pointing right <laughs> at him. It's point. yeah. They're pointing right at him. Yeah. yeah. He did. He died. Which, by the way, this Strange wouldn't have been hard end. to film. Just have her not fucking aim at him. That would have been a really <laughs> awkward end to Nick Fury, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. But he would have been why, happy. Why do scenes like this? You're not going to have any suspense with your audience. Like, we know, like, 
What's the point? Well, you're not going to kill Nick Fury in the middle of episode yeah. four. What's the point <laughs> of even <laughs> pretending that that might happen? Well, I mean, he's uh, in the, all the trailers for the Marvels, so it'd be kind of weird. Yeah. The ultimate one is uh, the Chewy um, and Solo. <laughs> they're gonna die. Like, Wait, why the fuck would you even do that when we know they're alive for like 40 years? Oh, I was thinking of, uh, I, I was thinking of uh, in The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> which which when, one? Uh, right, what? Well, Ray blew up Chewy. But he oh oh my god, yeah, that one. He wasn't that on the, the one uh, yeah, he wasn't on the consequences. Can one I... chance for there to be actually like answers and it's like yeah. it's the most interesting thing that ever happened to Ray and they just like nah in the very next scene he's alive. I couldn't believe they did. Well, it's just what it's so another, weird, isn't it? Another funny <laughs> film. <laughs> that's why at the, that's why at the very end Ray says to that old lady in the desert, "My name is Ray Chewbacca." Oh my god. Ray Baca. She doesn't know what the fuck she Ray is. Ray Baca. Man. Just uh <sighs> Does not talk about Ray. <laughs> so, like, he leaves and she says, Would you have loved me if I was using my not my, my gooba face, you know, my scroll face? And <laughs> he says, Guess I'll never know, or guess we'll never know. Just, no, it takes a long time. Wow. Yeah, it's that. a. I don't buy that he would fucking say that, but it's obviously a setup for him to say something else or do something else at a later part in the season. Because we can't do that payoff yet, okay? We've got to wait. But, like, as if he would say anything other than, like, of course I would love you, I'd love you no matter what. You know, that sort of sappy shit, this stupid show. You don't even... Yeah. You're just making shit up. Oh, yeah. And then they just casually do this, and it's kind of funny. Um, I think the implication here is it's a it's a lady scroll who's, uh, uh, roadie. That looks like a lady scroll to me. Mm. I 100% like thought that lady. was a girl. And but then, I, I guess it doesn't, doesn't really it? make a difference, right? No, it doesn't. Men well, can turn into women, women. It like, doesn't make a, a difference. Like, can catch into anybody. Writing wise, but man, that must be that must feel weird. I, I imagine, you know. Yeah. Why like, would they? So yeah, to make Rhodey. Well, doesn't matter. Like, set up a bigger twist. What was the point of that? Scrolls can change into anybody. So. No, I said that already. I'm saying it must be weird. Oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I don't know if it's like you got different uh, things to work with, you know, switching back and forth. Uh, I wonder if I wonder if that scroll lady has a preference. She'd have a lot of insight to be able to talk about, you know, how things work, how things go. But yes, that's the really overt confirmation. But I mean, you, you could already have picked it up. And they, would you uh, say that's, that's would you say right. that's the best shot that we got of a scroll in the in the season? Because but like I transformation think driving, or yeah, They're all. In terms of the I, I, in no, terms of the I don't know. That one's pretty Captain quick. Marvel, the thing is, is that Captain Marvel has like one that's actually like pretty detailed, and that's like no, the no, no, only no, time no, that they've no, ever. I'm excluding, well, I'm excluding Captain Marvel is just well, way I, better. That's what I'm saying is I don't think that there are any in this that I would consider good. They're all like mm -hmm. way too quick. They 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 the, it's the same with the nanotech where they do it so quick that it's like a, they're kind of cheating. Yeah. It almost feels like it's like you don't even get a chance to really so absorb the face and and you know like. Yeah, it's, it's, it they do it so quick that they don't have to actually, like, do... You can make it super floopy and not look good. And you could pause on, like, any of those frames, and it's probably going to look really terrible. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, they yeah. rely on it going by so fast that you can't pick up any details. I don't know. It's just the decisions they make. Like, um, do you remember that, the the random Mando episode in the middle of Boba, where he was, like, going through the... He was in the... He was in that random area after the dropping off the bounty, and he was in the elevator with that really cool-looking alien. You remember that? Yes, I, I do. do. I just remember specifically thinking, man, that alien actually looks really cool. They can do proper, like, you know, practical effects, but then you see this shit, and it's like, where did the money go? I like, still want to see um, to be here. the spin off show with the train alien, the big guy who doesn't talk much. That's what I'm waiting for. We'll get it one day, <laughs> I'm sure. I want the spin off today, of that. Though. That too. Oh, man. They could be roommates. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh,. Yeah, we got another cringe scene. Fury's broken into Rhodey's apartment. Scroldy. And uh, they get another wonderful line. By the way, you could collect these in the show. There's so many of them. Rhodey says, Fury, what the hell? You mind telling me what the hell you're doing here? Two what the hells right next to each yeah. other. What the hell? Man, there's so much, so much hell going on Didn't here. I had him say what the oh, heck my... on the second one. Oh. Do it. Go on. Yeah, what the heck? Up. I what like saying that with heck? Americans. What the heck are you doing? Uh, I just want to compliment. Even if what it's the, the scroll getting the credit, I want to compliment his place. I like the black and gold. So that was my only compliment for this scene. It's not even his place though, right? It's like an apartment he's got. A hotel. Oh, hotel. Oh, okay. It's a hotel. Okay. Yeah. So good job, hotel. <laughs> they get the credit. See, this show's not worthless. There was a nice <laughs> hotel room. 
<laughs> that was about it. Oh, one compliment. So uh, Fury says, we brothers have got to stick together. we got to settle our beef go like proper gentlemen. And uh, then he, he offers him a drink and he's like, should I be concerned about poison? He says, no, nano trackers. And they both laugh. And the meme is that he's actually put nano trackers in there. Not a joke. Which, again, Roddy, Scroll Roddy should be aware of because Scroll Roddy's Correct. been around in the era of nanotech. Yeah, this isn't something that... Nobody would be stupid enough to fall for this shit. Why would you drink a drink he's giving you I after even, everything? Even if I you didn't know about nanotech, you just don't drink yeah, that drink. You just don't. It's just it's stupid. Just a meme I got literally store. nothing to gain from this. Right. Nope. Exactly. Just pour it out and then get another what? one. You think I'm such an alcoholic that I just have to have this drink from <laughs> Maybe you? Maybe he takes the whole bottle. <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, and he doesn't take a breath mint after this scene. He goes straight to his superior officer. And there's a... Yeah, that's true. There's a line... Uh, Fury wants him to take the drink, and I don't know if it's supposed to be convincing, but he says, if you waste any of this drink, I promise you your ancestors will reach out from beyond and strangle your black ass. Which is like... I, I assume he didn't actually take that seriously. It's like, it's like, I better drink it, otherwise, you know, I've wasted some really good alcohol. my black alcohol. ass will get strangled. strangled. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's dumb. And But, like, uh, the, the next huge important scene doesn't happen unless Rhodey drinks that, which is dumb as fuck. Because you don't need to trace or track him via a drink. You could just keep an eye on him in general. You could do anything. But whatever, he drank a tracker. And then he says, hey, Fury, I've got footage of you killing Maria, and I'm going to release it to everybody unless you fuck off. Kind of strange. Also, you shouldn't be fucking off. You should be under arrest or something. Also, this is like a funny tech thing. He pulls out a USB, puts it into his laptop, and presses one button, and then it just plays the video. Like, yeah. what button did you press? <laughs> like, <laughs> in the VLC, the VLC button. Yeah, Just VLC play. play. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just play so... pause function. Yeah. But, like, you can see it. I think it's one of the F buttons. Or is it? No, it could be a skip. Ooh, ooh. It looks like it's caps lock. Oh, it's not the top row. <laughs> the top row would be the F keys and everything, right? It. He goes down it a layer. Literally, it it's might like be an a S. W. It's like S or D. <laughs> What did that they tell like a him to press, you know? Like, what button did they say that he should press? <laughs> they just like, press any button, it's fine. Oh yeah, sorry, tab, not, um, not caps lock. Caps lock's underneath oh, I guess. tab, right? Yeah. I don't think he pressed... It well, looks... yeah, tab's there. That looks like tab, yeah. I go by tab, because uh, the F keys would be so above that, right? Then. Or maybe... The point is, all he had to do was go click, 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 and it's... that would've looked more fancy. I'm thinking it's ARS. I think it's too far to the left to be ARS. I think it's yeah, too far to the so. right to be tab. Well, so I wow. think I'm wrong anyway about yeah, tab, because if he's got an F key layer, then it would be the numbers key, so he's hitting, like... He'd be like hitting, like, Q or one. W? Or one, maybe? Yeah, maybe. He's not hitting anything that would be fucking useful. There's no button on you. <laughs> like, this this maybe doesn't work secret, this way. Secret government keyboard. That's yeah, I wouldn't... It's it a Tony there. Stark laptop. It does everything you want just by pressing a button. It reads your mind. Why not Great. just actually have it link? You know, for, have a little <laughs> bit of realism. Have it actually linked to the TV, because that's a that's a real thing of technology that we can do. And then just be like, oh yeah, and then you just do the thing and you play it. And Someone then the just camera suggested there records it. You could literally have done a voice command. He just says, "Play clip one," and that's it. Boom, done. Yeah, solved. play the clip. It's like when they were demoing yeah. the Kinect. It's like Xbox, do <laughs> that. <laughs> like when they're playing Mass Effect 3 and this is the best way to play. Uh, it's like, we are a, like stasis <laughs> singularity. Oh, this is amazing. It's way better than just pressing two buttons. Um, so this won't get incredibly annoying very quickly. Fury says, uh, you and I both know that's Gravik. And then Rhodey says, that's going to be your defense in court. No, Your Honor, it was a six foot tall, bold, black, one eyed extraterrestrial. Well, wait, that's... Wait, black, oh, extraterrestrial. You... Well, yeah, because guess... the suggestion is, like, that's all an alien, what you're seeing on the screen. I guess, but I mean, like, you know, does, does Rhodey, as far as a human Rhodey, not Squirrel Rhodey, would he know who Gravik is at this point? You know um... what I mean? It's like, Gravik, and then he's like, oh, yeah, shape-shifting aliens. Like, I didn't say that, I just said it's Gravik, you don't know who that is. You know what I mean? Like, 
Mm. How would he have just jumped to that conclusion if he still believed that Fury didn't know that he was a Skrull? You know what I mean? I honestly find it hard to track who thinks what everyone knows yeah. at any time, sometimes. I heavily rely on that it's, vagueness of, yeah. you know, you could always sort of rely on, well, maybe they know, maybe they don't know. Who knows? <laughs> well, my job here is done as a writer. Because well, yeah. if the Nick thing was supposed to clue him into it, then he should technically know during the scene. But he's there's no inf there's no tell for that. It seems like he has no idea until the end. Well, and and this is a dumb appeal anyway, because yeah, he he says this like it's an impossibility that anyone could be impersonating Fury when we've seen it several times. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that was part of the intelligence Civil of Rhodey in the uh, in the like interview that he went in with those countries. I, I thought the point was yeah. like, yeah, this can be doctored, this can be faked. We know many, but now he's like, nah, a court would never believe that. <laughs> oh my god! So that line was such a good line, probably one of the better lines, and it's kind of like now ruined by this stupidity. It's like he wouldn't. Why would he say this? It, he he explicitly mentions a court, and it's like we we've had a court case involving a shapeshifter in this universe recently. Oh man, that's the civil war. The fact that it was something as simple as makeup and the Black Widow veil thing. There's three. There's three. There's just no yep. excuse for them to be prepared for scrolls. It's just any sense. They don't care. That's <clears> just the only explanation. And then uh, Rhodey says, "Don't you worry. I'll have every video I've made, every copy, including this one, remaining under wraps." But I can't have you running around spouting wild conspiracies or breaking in here. Um, and then he says, but I can't have the rest of this drink because it is fire. <laughs> That's such a... Oh my god. That Mola feels a you know? Just, yeah, it's like, fire. You gotta, like, you gotta fire water. Here so that I can see him. Where is he? No, yes. It's just text, fool. Yeah. <laughs> that drink is fire. <laughs> Like, mm. Fire! Wow. Um, so, you know, I didn't. Wh ahead, why? Why wouldn't? Um, why wouldn't Nick Fury at this point just show him Men Bendelson? Um. To to what end? To prove that scrolls exist. The pr the problem here is that Rhodey's basically evil, and Fury knows that. And I don't know what Rhodey knows exactly, I but the only goal here is to get the tracker on him. It's not anything else. Remember, he overheard Fury, uh, Rhodey telling his girlfriend to kill him, or wife. Does he know he's a scroll, though? I know he, we know he's evil, but does he know he's a scroll, Or is that just assumed? I feel like he has to at this point, right? The fact that we don't know for sure is just a failure of this show. I just Absolutely, like, I can't remember know... when and if and yeah. when he... Because we, we should be aware of their context and like their perspectives. If we don't know what because... the fuck they think or want, like what are we doing here? Because, because of that line of dialogue, know. I just uh, go ahead. Finish, finish. Actually, finish this point first. I'll jump in line. So, if we don't know, uh, so if you're Nick Fury, you might think that he, Rhodey, has a reason to kill you that is completely independent of the Skrull's existence, right? For the bombing, you know, him getting fired, all the international pressure. He might think, "Oh shit, they're trying to kill me," right? They're trying to, you know, like they're trying to kill me. And that could that could exist entirely outside of Skrull existence. If there were no Skrulls, then this is something that Rhodey and the United States government might want to do to him because, you know, of the of the terrorist attack in Russia. Um, I just think they'd be more aware. To rewind a All little bit. Was, uh... Go ahead. Just uh, I after you read out that line of him saying that the drink was fire, I decided. Who wrote this? And I just wanted to check. And the, the the guy who wrote at least partially or fully every episode of the season, he'd only written one movie beforehand ten years ago. I don't what get movie? it. As something called Broken City. I don't know anything about it. It's got Mark Wahlberg and Russell Crowe in it, and it made nineteen million dollars against a thirty-five million dollar production budget. Rip. I just Maybe don't get it. it. How do you, how do you write money. one screenplay? You write one screenplay, and then you get to be the like the writer on every episode of a television series of a two hundred you know I mean? million dollar television show. It, I don't get it. Him. Like, what's the, it's got to be a mix of a few things. Like, how do you just Maybe hand someone the keys to something like that? Maybe Broken City didn't fail because of the writing. Maybe it was yeah. bad marketing. I, I guess I just I find it crazy that like for so many for so many recent Marvel productions. Like, the writer who gets attached to it has written, like, one movie, one episode of a television show, and then Why they become, like, is? a writer on it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what to make of that. It, it like, it baffles me that that's yeah. the way it works. 
How do like, they must think know they somebody? want to, like it's like, it's like they want people that are less experienced so they can like have more leverage over them and more control over the project. But it's like, what do you hire them? I, I don't, I don't know. It's the the impression you get in terms of the arc that you would go on is like what a lot of people who are now you know prominent directors, like Steven Spielberg, directed a bunch of stuff for television. Like you'd have writers who were staff writers on a television show, assistant writers, then they'd start writing episodes and then they do screenplays. Like Aaron Sorkin did plays, then he did screenplays for film and television shows. Mm -hmm. Like, you figure that it goes through that arc. I just find it unfathomable that you'd write run screenplay and then get handed an entire season of television on a $200 million budget. I, I just don't get it. Not to say that it's impossible that somebody could write, you know, one screenplay, then go on to write a television show and it ends up being amazing. That's always possible. It just seems like you have such limited experience that it would be like, surprising if you'd be able to handle a project that is this big. I don't know what their standards are for hiring these people. Like when you have someone who's just written like, you know, one thing and you're giving them such a large project, it's just such a risk. It's, it's, it just feels like they don't have a respect for the difficulty of writing and how much, it, you know, talent it takes to, to make a consistent script. They think it's just like, oh, he's a writer. He wrote this. We can write that. Well, yeah, you, you, figure that, you figure that it's, you got to build up key. your, uh, you know, bigger scope. Bigger scope means that you need like more experience in terms of writing, essentially to handle stuff that's getting huge in terms of, how many characters you got to juggle, how the world building is going to feed into other shows. I just, I, I don't know. I just find it so bizarre. And especially with this much money on the line, and this is supposed to be a cinematic universe. Like the continuity is what really appealed to me at the beginning. It's, it's like, you know, at least the attempt at continuity, but they just don't give a fuck anymore. It's just, it's so, it's, it's, yeah, they've given up the pretense that there's continuity in this. They're doing whatever they want in every new show and every new movie. Well, uh, I was going to say to rewind a little bit. Uh, this part yeah. I forgot where because when he was first coming in, he says like, uh, "We got to squash our beef," because that's his answer to what are you doing here. Then after that, uh, Rody then says again, "Why are you here?" And Fury's like, "Oh, can't get anything past you." And it's such a like, what you actually like? You came here just to have a drink and say sorry. Let's be friends. Like it's such a weird. The whole that's a, every that's just a lie. It's just the so much dialogue <laughs> is so know? shit. It's insane. And then Fury says, I have it on good authority. There's a scroll mole near the president. All you got to do. Uh, <laughs> he said scroll mole. <laughs> he says, all you've got to do is Everything keep my mouth. Uh, all you got to do to keep my mouth shut is to give me my job back. I really want my job, please. Well, so I assume that's all fake because he is just trying to get the tracker on him. But is the implication that he does indeed know he's a scroll? No idea. Uh, Let's put it this way. I mean, he has to know. If he doesn't point, right? know he's a scroll, he absolutely should. He's got all of the evidence he needs and clues. If he does he does know. know he's a scroll, then he needs to contact the American government beyond Brody and say, "You've got a scroll right next to the president," and you can test this easily because that's that's detrimental as hell. You got a scroll right next to the president. All he has to do is assume the president's form, kill the president, get rid of the body in whatever government related way ever and then he's he's, he's got the oh, he's got the role. You know, if you believe that something bad is about to happen to the president, what's to say that if you intervene and it fails, he doesn't just shoot him in the head? It's kind of insane and he doesn't treat it that way at all. He's just kind of like I got the tracker on him. Yeah. Remember, they're Never. tracking them to what's going to happen next, and you guys remember what happens next in this episode, right? So yeah. We got, we got we got big events every episode, and we're about to come to this episode's yeah. big event. But this drink is fire. Love it. Yeah. I so, didn't hate his performance overall, but then he always ruins it with cringe lines like that at the end. Well, it's I mean, not his I, fault. I like, it? I'm fine with Don Cheadle. Yeah. They obviously yeah. told oh, him really to like play him. play the role a little different because you're you're a scroll, but like it's cringe. But he didn't play the role differently for the last like several appearances, though. That's how good the We're scrolls gonna... are. I actually picked up some quotes and stuff for the end of our discussion of this TV show. <laughs> yeah, we can talk that, about those. That director talks a lot. He needs Shouldn't to stop. Have. It's just not helping. It's just making everybody mad. <laughs> so they follow Rhodey. He meets with the president. And this is kind of weird moment where he's like, when it comes to Russians, you've got to project strength. Keep pushing as long as you feel flesh. But as soon as you feel like metal, you got to stop. Not entirely. You should, like, I guess it's like push for as long as you're able to push, but then don't push when you can't push. It's like useless information, basically. Um, but the president just says, like, have you been pre-gaming before our bilateral with the Russians. 
man came straight there with rum breath. Like, yeah. Why would you do that? I don't know. And I'm surprised the president was okay with it. <laughs> That's like some of the most unprofessional shit ever. This is like an incredibly important meeting, too. Like Brody, if you drinking. weren't always giving me the bestest advice ever, then I'd be upset at you. But you're yeah. just so darn good at telling me what to do. I am so dumb. So to catch everyone up in case you're not familiar with what's about to happen, you got the motorcade filled with all kinds of Americans, and then you got Gravik and his men in helicopters coming in to destroy the motorcade and pretend they're Russians, so that it looks like the Russians tried to assassinate the president, and then World War III happens. Now, the first question would be, like, surely, like, the presidential motor, like, that they would have some means of identifying incoming air, uh, like, air vehicles. That, it, like, helicopters can't just ambush the presidential, like, convoy. If you look at this, like, wrote, it's like how is this a surprise that the, the helicopters already... Surprise? They would have seen them for and ages. Where, and where was, where, where was the location of the ambush? It was, it, it was in... That's a good question. I can't remember. If, is because this... It, is it in the U the United States or is this in I don't think Russia, so. Or... I think it's uh I don't think it's in America. Where, where I actually this... can't remember Cause... where this takes place because they just they Cause... globe trotted this with no consequences. So because I don't know. Yeah, depending on where they are location wise, it should be even more difficult to uh, basically impossible for you to just. So first off, you have to get all this equipment, and it all has to be Russian equipment. So you have to find a way to get your hands on, like, multiple attack helicopters, like, m multiple Russian attack helicopters, Heinz or whatever. And I'm like, wow, you have the ability to do that? That's probably an extremely difficult slash expensive thing for you to do. Um, and then you have all the guys with the guns, and you have to get them to this location and have to ambush. Like, I just don't believe this. This is horseshit. Why not just assassinate them? Um, apparently, a couple people said this was the UK this is set in. Well, what? So then this There's possible. no way! <laughs> then this is absolutely you, possible. Unidentified you, helicopters flying towards the presidential convoy. Wait, yeah, these helicopters Attack came helicopter. from... How did they make it this far? The helicopters came from Russia. Russian They flew from Russia to the UK to attack the president? There's no way! They don't have the There's no way. The this is impossible. How well, yeah, how, how did they even get airspace? there? Yeah. How this just... can't even happen. This just can't even way. happen. Why it's another would you thing not they just skip over? Well, this is just another instance in many, many instances of films and television shows, like not realizing the capacity of like the U.S. military, just like the the insane amount of like technology and planning and, and resources. <laughs> so like, said the maybe they had a kill streak. <laughs> what they had like a enemy pave low, like yeah. they got a pave low kill streak or attack helicopter, <laughs> AC one thirty. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, honestly, that's the only thing that makes sense. They summoned the kill streak because well, there's no what, way they'd be able to make it that far in. One, I guess one thing they could have done is that's the they could have gotten a couple of scrolls to turn into helicopters, right? Yeah, that could be it. Um, just there to be explicit go. now, Gravix men, they want to kill the president. They need to. That's their like That's number their one plan. goal. They want to kill the president then and then, then World War Three. They missiled his car and it made it flip and he's just unconscious. It's like damn. Well, I guess the thing is is that we've seen the uh you know, in Winter Soldier, those those cars are like invincible basically, and you gotta imagine that the president has that kind of vehicle at this point in the MCU. He does oh, not yeah, with this technology out there? He doesn't. He doesn't have the indestructible because remember in Winter Soldier they had like a they had a, a batter a mechanical battering ram that like got drilled into the ground to smash through the window and it took like four attempts before. Well, yeah, you remember it, it like embedded into the window. It yeah, crushed it into yeah, like a the, thing before it got through. And again, in the timeline, this is twelve years ago at this point because this show was set in twenty twenty five or twenty twenty six. So we're talking twelve year old technology. And look at that car. Look at that totaled. Got chewed ruined. up. Ruined. The one Nick um, Fury used. Yeah. So, of course, you might be thinking, well, what's Rhodey going to do during all of this? Um, they mm. have one shot to show him in his car, and he just sits there doing nothing. The implication being, of course, he won't be involved in any of this because he wants to let it play out. But isn't that, like, immensely suspicious? Colonel Rhodes He's did wrong. nothing Rhodey, in the entire... Like, War like, Machine! It, Where's this nanotech I, suit? So, I was going to bring this up, but, like, does it not feel like this show forgot he was War Machine, even though they referenced has... War Machine three times I in this? Remember. 
Tony had a nanotech suit that he could just like wear around on his chest. Yeah, You're telling me Rhodey's Rhodey doesn't got that have that at this point. Dude, yeah. Rhodey would yeah, have inherited the Iron Man tech. Of course he would have. Nobody else would have inherited it. That would, would have been in Tony's will. Him. He's There's one of no the most way. neglected characters. In yeah, he's yes, he absolutely is. neglected. He is one of the most imagine we had, um, imagine Iron Man 4 was Rhodey, and it was the story of how he's going to take over Stark Industries, and he's going to relinquish his role as like a colonel to, Perfect. you know, lead the Stark Industries as best he can, because he's the only one that t as Tony trusts. Basically, There's like, story there. yeah, because he threw that all on him in his will, thinking he could handle it, but like the story is about how that's not a role he ever wanted, sort of thing. So you, much you can do, play with. Yeah, plenty to work with, but like, he doesn't have his war machine suit, nor does he intend to get it, and no one is asking, like, what is Rhodes doing? Like, hmm, I don't know. He should be the first person that everyone's looking to in a disaster. Like, like he should be He's the, the most important. If he action. has the war machine suit, they'll be fine. <laughs> and then, and yeah, then of course, chilling. there's also the fact that if the president's dead, and, and the vice president's nowhere to be found, I guess, but, but it's like, he's he's very high up in the line of succession uh, for for the United States. That's true, yeah. Which makes me wonder why, why if they're if their plan is to assassinate the president, if you can do if you just assassinate the president and the vice president, exactly. Rhodey's in charge now. You have a scroll as the president of the United States. Yeah. yeah. That's not something they ever talk about in the whole show, but that's a really, really good point, especially when you're killing one of the two. Yeah, might as yeah, you're going for the hard the one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually like if with your resources, I mean you have some sniper on a building or whatever, and then you you frame it to look like a Russian guy did it or or something like that. And uh, like this is the most ridiculously stupid way, especially because they uh, we a big already said scene for the trailers though, Rags. That's because we can't have a tent particular. scene where they're trying to no. stop an assassination attempt. Those are boring and lame. We have to have yeah, this. Yeah, they could have you're right. The they could have had this scene like that, but they needed a big blowout action scene here. For the yeah. trailers. They stopped the assassination when attempt. You have a helicopter blowing up. It was funny. Uh, someone said the Speaker of the House would have ended up as president in that scenario, but the reality is he could just he could just take the president as in a scroll time. He could just scroll him. I, mean, I don't know why they haven't yeah. done that. We keep talking about line of succession and everything, but like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, at, at the end of the day, he could just, like, just scroll him. I don't know why they wouldn't it. have. They've got complete access. What you do is scroll the president with the, the roadie one. And then you can just get someone else to fill Rhodey. Or you can switch them over then once they're back, because Rhodey would be more familiar. But I just, I find it all fascinating. You decided to get War Machine. Oh, great choice, but you don't want the president. Okay. That's strange. Yeah. Especially when you've had, what, 15 years and a million oh, scrolls. Also, like, helicopters aren't immune to small arms fire. Oh, yeah. We gotta, we gotta, I mean, it's bad enough when you, because I see it, it's one of my biggest. Firearm related pet peeves in media, and it's in fucking everything yep. that cars are bulletproof. Everything. If you're in a car and you just duck, you know, and look a little <laughs> concerned, you're fine, right? It's cars are not designed to be bulletproof. Specific cars are designed to be bulletproof, and they're quite good at being bulletproof, but normal average cars are by no means bulletproof. Cars will punch length, uh, rifle rounds will punch lengthwise through a mid sized car. Right, they'll go in the front and out the back. Bullets are no joke. And Brody, Brody looks so comfortable here. Can you see him? Yeah. Desired. And there's a guy in the car with him. If he just turns, he's like, Colonel Rose, what are we supposed to do? What does he do? Does he just go? I don't know. Like this yeah, is a big really. deal. Like you can Brody, get killed by accident. They thought they thought this was clever because they're like, see, he's not doing anything. It's like, no, it doesn't but work. Everybody around would be doing war machine. Come on, war machine. Use your thing. War machine, go. Call someone. Call Avengers. Call, call the yeah, exactly. Call the coroner. Call the <laughs> police. There. Well, did you see the, All... the Gravix man just got like they're just not using cover. Loads of the loads no, of people just, just getting shot. No, they're just walking out in the open, but they keep getting. Isn't it great how they're not the even looking down the. Don't you love again the meme? The named important characters aren't wearing masks or anything. They've got their faces out in the open. Yeah. But the non-speaking nameless goons, they they're wearing you know masks and balaclavas and everything. But yeah, uh, but what Frank said, yes, if, if you take a bunch of guys with assault rifles and there's a helicopter a flying helicopter. around and you all shoot a shit ton of bullets into the helicopter, the helicopter's going down. Yeah, it's Helicopters not are, uh, You can shoot it in places that will destroy it. Absolutely. You can shoot them in Cold Duty and they go down, so yeah. there you go. Yeah, yeah. you'll just you'll punch through the sides. And uh, this show. They make it seem like you always get a missile every time.
Um, I Fury... mean, they're very susceptible to small arms fire. Like that's heli attack helicopters are like they're like glass cannons on yeah. you know and battlefields. They can be insanely effective and damaging and quick, but like they they can get shot by missiles. They can get shot by small arms fire. It's a uh, you know just. It's <laughs> just going down. All the guys will be like, oh, I'll shoot the, the big helicopter up there. Yuri and Talos arrive, and Talos says, bloody hell, it's a kill zone. And then Fury says, the whole planet's gonna be a kill zone if we don't save the president. Great writing. Good job. <laughs> Great dialogue. Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> All right, but we have to survive now to, so that we can stop that. Well, does Gravik not care that there's almost certainly many, many security cameras in these, like, vehicles that are capturing this identity that he will retain going forward? No nope. identity's compromised. I mean, like, remember, Talos always... has turned up as Ben Mendelsohn again. Yeah. Why? Again. Why do that? Also, these missiles are just going back and forth and back and forth. Everyone's blowing up. This is a very catastrophic plan. Catastrophic? No, catastrophic. Oh, wow. Catastrophic? That rocket was aimed so perfectly that it blew up that anti-air cannon. It's just... You think it's, it's what it, they would have shot This, this scene at really first. felt like it's like, we've got our pyrotechnics already, we're gonna blow up just stuff, and then story will happen once we're done with that. Yeah, whatever. Because this is, uh... An excuse um, to blow things up, that's yeah. all this was. This whole scene... Yeah, they needed it for the trailer. Exactly. Explosions, helicopters crashing, Fury with a gun, it's like, yeah, look at that. Yeah, no, yeah, remember, and, and suddenly he's super accurate. Like nobody's getting hit with any bullets as they're shooting for each other for five minutes. But then Fury comes in, and suddenly he's like just dropping people. So and stupid. again, already several scrolls have been killed. So your plan is already like you failed. Yeah. You can't lose anyone. You can't thought, lose. Yeah, not a single one. Yeah, because you're taking on a president's like convoy. You're taking on like Secret Service. Or are they just, they're like, everyone just stay, why would the helicopter fly that fucking low and swoop I in? And that, everyone's like, yeah. just standing out in the open and, uh, like, what the fuck is this mess? Fury and, uh, Fury, Fury super spy, convoy. he ends up getting a shotgun. That's it. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a pistol grip shotgun. Because what whatever. Situation? What There's no such thing as cover. Just yeah. <laughs> tactics nothing it's absolutely painful and yeah the plan is to just go in and shoot whoever you can shoot and try and get the president um it's it's everything is just clunk as fuck nobody's using anything they have ready for them everyone's plans are retarded it's it's kind of hard to follow too in terms of the battle lines yeah. oh yeah it's really confusing it it seems it like it resets really multiple times point. we'll get to it but it's like the most egregious one it's so bad you're shooting people, everyone's shooting each other, yeah. shooting's happening. How come we're not seeing anybody turn into scrolls? Oh god, man? here it is. <laughs> Look, oh, gra oh, yeah. Gravik's <laughs> like, I'm gonna get you, and it's like, what's going on here? Aren't they gonna shoot him? And then, whoa! Oh, and it's funny, because the second you see this, it's like, oh, why didn't you just do all of this yourself? Seriously. This would've I mean, been yeah, easy. Open with that. Seriously, like you got your Groot fingers, just use them. Yeah. He yeah. is Groot, and he could have just done what Groot does in Guardians, spiked basically everybody all in a row. I don't even show it. One at a time. Yeah. Um, just fucking wow. That's something that he hasn't... Also, having extremists doesn't mean that you're immune to a million bullets being fired at you. No, but they don't care about that. Remember it said Hell 3 Gen 100 or something. Ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. He upgraded it. He put all his points in there. Ugh. So. Also, the, they don't the, notice this truck coming up the with best, our boys in it. The best way I can describe this is backup turns up for the president, and there's a line between graphics men just... This is where they become background NPCs. They just constantly are shooting. We're not going to address them for a little bit. We're doing something else now. Our guys are all here shooting, too. Everyone's just shooting. We realize, like, to get the president out, we're gonna have to break the the window in the car, but it's pretty strong, and so. And also, while this is all happening, imagine the amount of lead that's flying in either direction. Mm -hmm. Just the yeah. random bullets that are being that are, that are just peppering the whole area. This is like, if I was there, I'd just be like prone with my head covered and just being like, yep, I'm just gonna wait here." 
they never take precautions. Like even just seriously, half the people there should be prone, hiding behind you know better positions. Well, there's yeah, just, they just, they just on enough, um, or something. They're just on enough people to keep the fight going for as long as it goes as well. It's like you all have to be constantly missing every single shot. Yeah, we hear firing oh, constantly, but nobody's dying anymore. How come Ravik is the only person with an uh, with an M4, but everyone else on his team has AK-74s? Don't know. You have to ask Ravik. This is, this is fucking weird. I don't know. I don't know why he's, he's using the same question. gun. All of it. Oh, yeah. Why are they... This is the president here. Why are they letting some random dude like punch the thing? It, get, it gets even himself. better than that, right? Like, is Fury is currently a wanted man who's AWOL from like the US government. The British guys here, who are here to defend the present, have no idea who these two are. Yeah. And then they see this old man trying to beat the, the car open. <laughs> oh, that looks bad. And oh, it's just like, bad. how do they not, like, go, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, what a stupid idea. You're trying to shot. punch a door open? Can you please move yeah. aside? We'll use the butt of our guns, which would be better. So many different things they could have did. But no, they just let they this just happen. Which is really weird. And then uh, Gravik orders his man to flank. And for some reason, it's in such a way that it's just like, look at this shot. None of these guys know this is oh, happening. And none of them notice this. Nobody's watching their flanks. He just moves. Nobody yeah, and it's just like, guys, you're embarrassing. Come on. And he just, uh, he has a clean shot to basically fuck up everything. Which also, he Fury's over here now. I guess. They're just like lined up like this. <laughs> it's cartoonish. They tag Ben Mendelsohn, and uh, because Fury's such a good lad, he doesn't get him out of there. He instead just gets him to continue hitting the car. <laughs> what a what a great friend he is. What a Chad, I guess. Uh, and the one thing that I kind of liked here is that Talos, as he's trying to break open the window, which is obviously an aid of trying to prevent World War Three, he's losing his disguise because he's losing blood from having been shot. Like, like that. That's an interesting rule. Yeah, that's neat, I guess. Which, yeah. I mean, I mean, that would be, if this was something that was consistent, that would legitimately be, like, an interesting scr yeah. uh, scroll rule. Getting the more blood you lose, resistance. or the more pain you're in, or the more distracted you are, or traumatized you get physically, the harder it is, or it becomes impossible for you to fully maintain your guys. Yep. And, uh, uh, so, yeah, and, and it's just, it's like... I was going to point this gun at your fucking head. I guess it's something that Talos would do, and it just shows that he's a pretty good guy, even with all the yeah. shit writing this series has given him. <laughs> and so, you know, Go ahead. Uh, he, he just he gets further and further along, but he's also losing more and more of the disguise. Oh, is that a, that's a continuity error, isn't it? He's got the pistol, and I think that is. I think there's a continuity error in terms of the pistol that he's holding, appearing and unappearing. Fair enough. Ooh. Why um, wouldn't he use his elbow? So it takes a, I don't know, it takes a while, but people actually start to notice that this man is literally mutating in front of them, um, which is insane, bizarre, and then like, oh wait, he's an alien, and he's trying to get to the president, this finally triggers them, and then some guy is like, oh my god, there's an alien man trying to get to the president, and then Nick Fury goes, he's with me. Oh, the and criminal? Like, okay. Alright then. Well, so... It's not even just that, it's that, Fury, you could be a scroll too. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> does it make sense? I mean, and also, alien. Yeah, but like, like, there's so many things wrong with it. It's like, I don't care if he's with you. I don't even, I don't even know who you are or what you're what, what are you want. He's from this planet. Uh, oh, it's just, it's multiple things. You're Nick Fury, a wanted fugitive, or maybe you're also an alien. <laughs> it's, also, it's, I don't care. Well, the, the great part of it is that the guy who, like, highlights that gets told that by fury that he's like okay it's like yeah. okay then <laughs> sure, it's that's good enough. a really busy day it really is and so uh then fury grabs the president walks him away and the 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 british guys are like let's get him in here and then fury goes no 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 i've got my own ride <laughs> so, uh, um no let's get him in here <laughs> it's just it's <laughs> such a like i don't care who even are you man like what it wouldn't just let the president get taken by some random green dude, and like, yeah, all, everything, everything about this was wrong. Um, Protocol-wise, they wouldn't let this happen. And so then he actually gets the president in his car, and then locks it up, turns around, and he sees that the soldier that's picked up uh, Talos is, is giving him a weird look, and he realizes, oh no, it's Gravik. And remember, Gravik has been flip-flopping oh, on whether or not he wants Fury dead, but he could obviously kill him here, because he has 
the group powers. That would be pretty easy. Boom. Like, so what's what's gonna happen? And then uh, Fury takes a shot and he puts it right in his face. Like I said, he should have done that in the first episode, and he would have died if he had done it then. I think because he didn't have the oh, knee powers then. Down, look, I don't even notice or care about anything. Oh that's yeah, going the on scroll. The yeah, the, that's so weird how the yeah. helmet goes away and everything. That's just bizarre. Nano Nanotech, right? Let's see Imagine they had again. to like use the gear and everything, and it turns out the soldiers at the end are like <laughs> watching it again. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Uh, ba ba ba. Looking at so. Okay, it's weird that reinforced UK reinforcement. Yeah, so I guess this is in the UK because you know None the patch them... there. Yeah, um, look, they're all just standing there, and nobody knows. Nobody's noticed the anybody. gunfire right next to him. And then yeah. that and then... happens. He looks like he stabs him in the same place he was shot. Well, not the exact same place, but it's just. Oh no! Near it. A shoulder stab. That's not fatal. I don't think it's his shoulder. It looks yeah, like it might be his torso, but. It, it, it looks, looks like it's a shoulder, weird, man. It looks like a shoulder. It looks like his torso. <laughs> what? Let me see it well, I'd say it don't but... look like his torso. Yeah. yeah. That's not his shoulder. Maybe the jacket's messing it up. That's... Either way, he's fucked. Yeah, he's dead. Keep shooting. Well, it, it, the other guy's still. It's so funny to watch all these British soldiers Nobody's shooting paying around. Attention to this still. Like, <laughs> <laughs> look to the left, you fools. What are they paying you for? Yeah, it's crazy. You can't film shit like this. Don't do this. <laughs> I remember Fury is shooting in that direction as yeah. well. Yeah. Which, that by the direction, way, any of these guys, if they turned and saw Fury shooting at them. Exactly. Yeah. But they just don't exist right now. They don't exist. Huh? It's like, lads, there is a fucking. That's the leader of the bad guys. He's right there. <laughs> like... Right there. Yeah. And look, it, it, dude, he's like two steps away. Oh, Fury, you suck so much. Peripheral vision. It's just, they don't know about it over at Disney. I just I don't get it. Got him in the face. But then they're like, look, oh. instant extremis, baby. Heal in factor 100. You probably downloaded the DLC as well. Like, who knows? Gives you, who like, it lets you regenerate helmets. Maybe. Look at this face from Fury. Oh my Jesus! <laughs> you got yeah. the extremists. That's so lame. <laughs> it's so lame. Yeah. Um. And I'll I'll admit this one. I was like, they wouldn't wow. seriously kill Bad Bad Dolson, right? Like, no, I didn't think they were going to do it here like this. Hated this. Well, and well, according, to, according to according to Bis Disparu, they made a comment that like, it might not be his last appearance. I guess that could be a multiverse thing, though. My god, they don't care. So this means now all the scrolls are evil. Wow, except for e... Gaia, maybe. Well, uh, Gaia and the evil. wife. Yeah. The wife is... Uh... And the wife, yeah. But that's Talos dead, and it's kind of lame, because I kind of like Talos. I really... Yeah, I was going to say... Riding here. He's the one part of the show that actually gave me some type of meaning. The idea of him trying to, like, fix all these problems, find, you know, a peace for his people, fix his family issues, and, like, he's willing to, you know, die a martyr death to just, to, to, to um, improve their position of the scrolls. It's like, it just, such a great opportunity here, pissed away. And especially when we know what happens going forward, it drives me insane that his story well, just is like kind of wasted. He dies for nothing. It's so lame that like Fury just drives off and leaves his corpse there. It's like, wow. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I guess that's Talos done. Yep. Lame. That really sucks. It's lame. The fact that he's now being replaced with a way lamer character as well. Yeah. In the form of Gaia. Yeah. She's so lame. Like, he, he kind of had some personality and some charisma. I really like Talos in terms of, like, not what they've displayed to me, but in my head, the idea there that could have worked for him with, with yeah. Ben's acting, you know? There was, there was something there. Yeah. And, yeah, man dies for nothing. When well, yeah, and it's confused. Because if he had died desperately saving the president... Maybe you could draw the whole like it's a, that was a pretty noble act, and it could play into the, like the um, exoneration of the scrolls. Yeah. But like, what happened instead is he he took a bullet while saving the president for no real good reason, to be honest with you, because they they just didn't notice that that guy was flanking. And then he's like carried by someone who's Gravik, who then kills him, and you're like, oh, okay, like it, it's it's all disconnected. You try and piece it together, and it's like, Ugh. how do you even get there? Just teleport a graphic in. Yeah, well, he can, uh, he dug a tunnel. 
Oh, oh yeah, and then and then the dude powers. just drives through all of the the uh, British soldiers and everything to we just take them up on a motorcycle and drive away. But why Nobody establish is the instant kill powers with Groot and the instant self heal with Extremis and then have him run away? Why? Yeah, like why wouldn't he keep trying? The president is right there. It's right there. You could just kill Fury and then get the president. Well, you have actually. If... Yeah. And if he actually doesn't want to kill Fury because they flip flop on that all the time, then just kill the president. Fury's not going to get in your way. He's crap. He can't do anything. Yeah. But that's he, it. He get a pistol. We're getting the president out of here, and we're leaving. And, and then credits. <laughs> and that's episode four. Yeah, crap. it's kind of like wow. You just knocked off one of them characters, huh? Because at least with some of these shows, you can pretend they don't exist, kinda. But it's like, oh, that was the end of his story? Sucks. Damn. Why aren't you shooting the motorcycle so that he can't get away on it? Why aren't you shooting the driver? Because that would be scary. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's driving a BMW, that's reason enough. <sighs> oh, there he is. He's, he's, he died. Dead Mendelssohn. Oh yeah, my god. I did not like this at all. He anyway. has he has he has been Mendelssohn. Yes, there are two episodes left. Yeah. Well, oh, this at least it only gets out. better from here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're like, we could make more stories where Ben Mendelssohn is in it. <laughs> like, why'd you kill him, you moron? Why would they waste that? He's just ugh. Yeah, just don't um, replace him with don't kill him. President's taken into hospital, and Fury's gonna sit outside to make sure nobody gets to him. Which is funny because it's like this first person that comes along with higher authority than you tries to arrest you, or whatever. You're just gonna kill. Like, what's gonna happen? And the first, like, you're gonna do a scroll check, the thing you never usually exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah. Scroll check. Whatever. Yeah. So we head back to Gravix HQ, and it seems that Pagan, his number one guy, is like, "Motherfucker, you didn't kill Fury when you had the chance. Oh. You're a weird person." And uh, I guess it's good that we killed Talos. And then he says, "Our target was the president. Our war was delayed because had you stolen what you were supposed to, I would have dominated the whole fight." So much to unpack here. Like, uh oh, what? Wait, stole? It. Wait, what is that? What well, is I mean, this new plot element? The, the 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 I think we were told at some point I don't know if I mentioned it but like the the DNA pieces of Groot and whoever else were stolen by this guy. This guy was yeah. going to different places to get them, and um, he was supposed to have gotten a lot more. The main thing they want is the harvest. That's going to come up a little later. Just a little yeah. pin in that. Um, and so yeah, this conversation starts with like, woohoo, we killed Talos. He was like our enemy, and then he says we were supposed to kill the president, and I would have had you found the harvest, sort of stuff. And it's like, you could have killed him anyway, what do you mean? What does it mean? Like, he was right there, you could have just poked him, and that would have been it. Brute fingers. I don't right get there. it at all. And then, um, the guy says in response, I could tell Fury never trusted you, because I searched all the locations and there was nothing there. No Avengers DNA. Like, Fury it's never like, trusted... Uh, and it's like, but... what's going on? And then, and then Gravik kills him. Just in front of everybody, just impales him with the group powers. Yep, it's he like, asks wow, these questions, okay. and he just kills him. Really oh fucking strange. Remember, this oh, started dude. with, Hey, Gravik, isn't it great? We killed Talos, victory. And then it ends with Gravik killing this guy. <laughs> so fucking strange. And it's like, yeah, because we need to so discontent with these guys, basically. This is the point where they're like, well, no, we need to make Gravik super evil, as if he already yep. wasn't. Like as if you calling everybody already, faceless. You know? He calls them all faceless, like pawns or whatever it was. We're just like, okay, like what do you? You're just setting yourself up to get betrayed. It's so stupid. That's, that's the thing. Every like villain does that. They've got to put more evil. You know, now Double now, now the the evilness. Evilness. you've got to put more of the evil in. As if again, nuking the world wasn't already <laughs> yeah. like evil enough. He's a piece of shit already. We didn't need this. Thing. Oh yeah, he gets the, the the actually the call he makes right now is like, uh, Rody, keep the president alive and tell him this scrolls in Russia. And then Rhodey's like, what the fuck plan is this? And he's basically like, convince him there are scrolls where there actually are right here, and tell him to nuke this place in Russia so that it'll piss off Russia and it'll kill all of the important people that are stored here. That will surely generate World War III. Because that's all he's been trying to do this whole season. Basically, isn't the, the whole point, point that he is, wants... He's, he's willing to surrender all of the lives of these scrolls as well. He's just willing to kill everything at this yeah. point. 
because he's lost his mind. Most MCU villains do this eventually, but he already I lost his mind, so the losing of the You're mind part is kind of irrelevant. Well, yeah, his plan was already batshit insane and crazy, and now it's like, oh, well, you know, now, now it's even more crazier. <laughs> Um, so Rhodey visits the president, but Nick gets the jump on him, and he's like, you're a Skrull, you... Hey, you... don't call him that. I just did, and you can't stop you me. You Skrull? You're a Skrull. You're a Skrully, Skrully, Skrull, Skrull. You Skrully, Skrully, Skrull, you. And, uh, he says, in order to out me, Nick, you'd have to kill me, and the footage of you killing uh... Maria Hill is gonna release in 60 seconds. And it'd be so awkward if Fury's like, I just recorded that, what do you mean out you? What are you talking about? Huh, that's a bit suspicious, isn't it, Mr. Well, President? Well, it got confusing, because right. they say it in front of this guard. We were like, is the guard yeah. a scroll or not? The guard is not. He, he might, yeah, yeah he, sure. you'd have to assume that he's just a guy doing his job well, protecting Rhodey. I think a, we, we next, concluded yeah. that they were scrolls. I think we're wrong because of the finale yeah. episode. I think they're all normal, they're yeah. not scrolls. Yeah. Which means well, this I mean, scene doesn't make any fucking sense all, at all. They all get darted instead yeah. of killed. They don't get killed. And they... I don't go and then turn back into scrolls. Mm -hmm, yeah. so, remember I the, the severe it, lack it, of all of that happening in the last action scene. Because remember, yeah. at this point, there should be a lot of scroll alien bodies just like around scrolls and zero Russians. Well, yeah, if he shot uh, Rhodey in the hand. And then, like, yep. you know, did a Nick Fury, like, and hit this guy in the head that's to the left of him to prevent him from doing anything. Then he would de-human himself, and then he'd be out and he'd be over. That's all he has to do. Yeah. He could use it. I mean, and if he, he's going into this prepared, he could literally just take a knife, make a little cut, and then hold up the purple blood, and the guy's like, oh, shit. Or yeah, he could, like, there's... look at this god and say, listen, I know you, you probably think I'm crazy, or that I'm a scroll or whatever, but trust me, this guy is... And we can do a really quick and easy test on both of us, actually. I'll chop off a bit of my beard. Yeah. There you go. Look, it's real. Wow, crazy. <laughs> all right. Now it's time for Rhodey. You know what? We can all do it. All three of us. Why not? It'll be fun. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then Rhodey be like, no, you got me. Oh, that, could, that could have been a really intense scene where the guard was like, he didn't know what to think or do. He's trying to protect Rhodey, but Nick Fury is there. And so, yeah, he has to. Even something. You have that scene, that standoff, where he's like, "I'm going yeah. to do the test." He likes the, the old Nick Fury would have thought of that was, and like yeah. incorporated this. Not this bum. This guy. Yeah. Is just, uh, and, uh, I just need to get a glass of water. I'm thirsty. I remember. <laughs> a nice standoff with a guy. That that would have that would have fun. And so Rhodey's like, just leave. And then he does, and they've all got guns on him, and they could stop him, and I just don't understand what the fuck's happening anymore. Does Gravik not want to stop the man who keeps trying to subvert his whole plan? Why do oh, you he... stop him? He's he's constantly being an issue for you. But I don't want to kill Nick, okay? You don't. But I do him, want the assassin lady to kill him earlier. Though. Yeah, I if, want his wife to try him and dead, kill then him. They don't want him dead. It, it's they can't make up their mind. Like it's literally contradicted in the next scene when he says, "I needed him." Every um, time they try to um, kill him, they ask, "Hey, do you want to die?" And he says, "Yes." And they're like, "Ah, oh, well, we can't give him what he wants." All right, we'll uh, ask tomorrow. And by the way, he's now be sure. wanted worldwide for the murder of Maria Hill, as of now. Um, he's, <laughs> they've also got a clip of Taylor saving the president, and it says suspected alien involvement in ambush of U.S. president convoy. Suspected. suspected. Yeah, when it's clearly an alien. <laughs> 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 but sure, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, we have... Uh, Olivia Coleman goes to that guy that she was mentioning, had her hands tied up in terms of sorting stuff out, and she says, um, uh, where, where is the doctor that helped Gravik live? Where do they live? And he says, what? And she just shoots him in the hand straight away. And it was funny, right? Because I think Rags, you were like, how is this not alerting people? And they come in straight away, but it doesn't matter because he's already revealed he's a scroll now because he's been shot in the hand and it means the hand turns to scroll, I guess. And then she's like, see, he's a scroll. And they all go, whoa, okay, yeah. Oh, it's shit. Like, wow. Why wow. show me he this? He was subverting after... our entire institution. And you saved sense, us, lady. <laughs> yeah, she does the obvious thing that Nick could have done yeah. to Rhodey, but didn't. 
for some reason. What if Nick just shot him in the in the hand and then just used him as a body shield until the scroll hand showed? That's all we had to do. It, and then we're yeah. side by side. Does that not just feel like intentional to you? Like just just make him a dumbass. It, it's there's no excuse when you show this tactic by her and he just is completely worthless in the scene before in the same situation. So annoying because again, this is why I kind of like her. It's like, oh, you did a smart thing. And it's like, no, she just did a normal thing, and no one else gets to do mm -hmm. anything. It seems smart compared to everyone else in the show, but this is just like a you know basic tactic. That's what that's what you should do. Yeah, well, we just need to do some scroll tests. On some and she's even there. like, because she says, um, I have to inform you, the SIS has no policy on killing scrolls. So unless you want to enact, unless you want me to enact my preference, you should start talking. Which is like that's that's an okay line compared to the others. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty based in red pill. Makes you wonder if, if someone else wrote it. Seriously, <laughs> every scene with her is like, wh where was she? Was like, oh no, thank you. Like? I'll do my own lines. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Like, oh, okay. That might so, be it. So anyway, uh, the the intern guy that we've been kind of following the story of briefly, he says, "Why did you kill Pagan?" And Gravik says, "He failed us." And then there's a pause. He just goes, "Ah." You scared? But then he goes, "Yeah, maybe a little bit." Yeah, if we're all scared. You'll <laughs> randomly kill us. Like, are you? Yeah, like, are you? What's what's your problem? Like, do you not think that people might be scared after they just saw you impale one of their guys? But yeah, I'm fucking scared. You just killed <laughs> one of us for no reason at all. Yeah. And so they all attack him. This is an ambush, and he kills all oh. of them. Obviously, because he has superpowers. I don't even know why they tried Some this. Have a gun. They all, like, go at him with... It's with, funny, like, though. Like, fists they wanted to chairs. punch him. They didn't uh, even have a plan. Yeah, well, one of them tried to strangle him with a bag, which is an okay idea. You could do that while stabbing him, while shooting him. But yeah, no yeah. one has guns. Even though, let's just say we're planning this. I'd be like, guys, what if he groots all of us? Exactly, which, I mean, he could do. You need to, like, get a grenade on him, snipe him from quickly. it. Yeah, do we need to hit him in the head with like a 50 caliber sniper rifle? Because exactly. we can, we can get those. We yeah, we could do it. Could yeah, yeah, we can just do that. The second he walks in the door, just 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 shoot him in the back of the head with a fifty caliber sniper rifle. You're in Russia; yeah. you can get your hands on a lynx or two, and then just yeah, that's it. And then elect someone else in charge who's less crazy and unstable. Yep. And also be like, how did he turn into Groot? Uh, well, I guess yeah. At this point, they've got to know about that, right? They've got to know. They would about have seen the, the battlefield. There's got to be someone else exactly. who went home with him. So yeah, they should know. So. Safe happened you know it's like because they, they don't talk happened. about like how did how did you get powers do we get those powers too yeah, do, are all of us going to get powers or is it just for are you using those just to like rule over us are you going to be like an evil dictator are you going to be like mecha hitler oh and by the way he like grabs this guy who's barely conscious and slices his throat in front of everybody and it's yeah, just like I... okay gravic Pro tip, you killed one person for no reason, and it made like seven guys turn on you, and you've now killed all of them in front of the rest of your people. What do you think is about to happen? <laughs> What's the next wait, thing? Wait, wait, wait. Wait a second. Why is why is he wearing his outfit if he's a if scroll? I'm so confused. Scroll can just keep wearing their outfit, I guess, if they want to. Yeah. Okay, so he, on, he only changed well, the his thing is, is body. In Captain, Marvel, in Captain Marvel, they have like these super duper space sci-fi suits that they wear. That they can, that they usually default back to, but I guess Harry's just like, yeah, I really like this jacket, you know. So these are just <laughs> clothes, clothes, and no, he's... these are probably nanotech clothes too. Oh, okay, but he kept the nanotech clothes on, but only changed his skin, which probably takes more concentration in the moment. Yeah, I guess. To selectively <laughs> only change your skin and not your like your nanotech clothes, your biotech clothes. So oh. right, I haven't thought about it that much. Fury and Gaia have a little chat, and she does the exact same thing she's been doing, same delivery, Boring. and then same sort yeah. of shit where she's like, my father died on a foreign planet, on a foreign road, and nothing will come of it. And it's like, hmm, why did that happen again? Oh, right. Because Gravik, the guy you're helping, or have been for a while. You could have stopped him. You have the same powers. Yeah, you could have stopped him. But oh well, your dad died. And the way she delivers this is like, this is everyone's fault but me. <laughs> it's, when it's very open, annoying. It's her fault specifically. And she said she ran away because he she knew he would lose. It's like, thanks for helping him when you have invincibility almost. Yeah, you could have won if you were there. You have the same powers as, as Gravik. You could have stopped him. 
This is a dusty ass room. It is. Ignore that. Yeah. Can um, they not clean this place? I thought they live here. And by the way, Fury says like uh, he chose the struggle. He didn't lose. You can't let grief paralyze you. He told me how you survived your execution. It's like, well, yeah, she gave herself superpowers. That's a pretty easy decision, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, There's no drawbacks. It's so lame. Like, yeah, of course she did. Normal. Wouldn't you? I guess. Like, they make it seem like it's a crazy decision she made. Yeah, that's the just the that's just the right move to make, isn't it? And then she's like, I need to bury my father. And then he says, Take your father to my wife. She'll know what to do. And I was like, that body is with the British government. Yeah, like who would have retrieved it? Nobody would have. No way she no gets to have that body. That. That's not happening. <laughs> Scene. There must be some scenes that have been cut. Yeah, because I don't There's think they gotta be because they had. Yeah, how, how to? Yeah, ex yeah. I never thought about that. How do they have yeah. access to the body? Yeah. The government would be like, "Holy shit, scene. aliens!" So, the British government would want the alien body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Holy shit, aliens! Look at the aliens. Poke them while they're talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Already being, you know, dissected. Fucking hell. So yeah, good stuff. Now over to Olivia Coleman again, which is a bit more... She's got more competency to do, so it's good. These two... The two doctors walk in the room, and she's like, Oh, hello, Skrulls! Which I thought was fun. <laughs> and they're like, Who are you? And she says, Who would you like me to be? I'm good at being your bestie, but I'm devilishly good at not being that. So cake or death? Which I thought was fun as well. Because yeah. she's just more lively. I feel like she's alive when she I watch her. She has a personality, yeah. and she's kind of fun to listen to, and she's acting. It's a character, where we're stuck yeah. with all these drones. It's like a character. Yeah. In yeah. a movie. Crushing. Crazy, <laughs> crazy idea. Um, yeah, and then she says, uh, Oh dear, this is a clerical error, Nigel. We're going to have to talk to someone about being fired or shot, because this keeps happening. And she's talking about nearly dying. And then he's like, "I'm my name's not Nigel." And then she's like, "No, no, I'm talking to the man behind you with the silencer at the base of your <laughs> skull." And it's like, "Hey, that's kind of fun too." And you know, having a gun on yeah. her that she could die at any moment, but she's just steely nerves. That's also fun. Kind of makes me wonder if maybe she's in something else. She will have a chance to be a character like that's beyond the kind of. She's kind of a gimmick. As of this show, but that's still pretty good for the amount of screen time she has. I'll take a gimmick. She's I'll take doing a gimmick I like. well with it. Like if you're gonna make a gimmick, at least have someone who can. But like if she, like she seems like she enjoys it. If they made her like a full-on character in a film that's actually like not shit, it would be really funny if she ends up being like the best person in the MCU <laughs> because they like yeah. annihilate everything else. Think for a second. She literally might be one of the best characters in the MCU right now, currently. Just Probably. Based on, like, what do we got? By default, she's in the mix. Like everyone might is trash. Be. Name someone you're invested in. I don't give, like, I'd have to think about it for a second if there's someone I actually care about. It's basically Spider-Man. It's basically, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Parker. <laughs> pretty much I guess that Rocket, part. specifically Rocket. Rocket, yeah. Are they going to do anything with Rocket? Craglin. Craglin. Not the <laughs> Is Guardians 3 worth checking also, out? I, I, wasn't, oh. I wasn't a big fan of the second well, one. Most and, people would say yes, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I almost want to say. As someone yeah. who didn't like the second one, do you think I should bother with the third? Because I feel like, like after they reset what? Gamora, Endgame mm -hmm. ruined that for me. Well, 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 I, don't, I don't have any issues with that. I just didn't hit me the well, hmm. it's tough to say because we were in the minority of not liking Guardians Three at all. It had a lot of big, big issues, and it does a lot of damage to quite a few characters. Hey, Chad, how are you feeling about? Value in how are you feeling about Guardians 3 about these days? Up. Let us know. Because as much as you Tell do... Tell us how right we were. You, you like watching us break things down, but sometimes, you know, you might be like, hey, you know what? I loved it anyway. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen it. Boo. Didn't watch it. Good. Haven't watched. Holy shit. I guess that should not be surprising, actually, should it? Oh, John Walker. John Walker. He's John Walker's kinda, another he's, one of yeah, the best yeah. characters in the MCU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Now, yeah. 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 He's gotta be in there. Crash, yeah, I, they need to make it, an Avenger out of them. I haven't seen it. I want I want John Boring. Walker and Rocket to meet. Didn't watch, it was okay. Missed it, hated it, terrible, great. We've literally got every opinion, so <laughs> <laughs> who who do you think was wasted more? Rhodey or the Winter Soldier? The Winter Soldier Rhodey. probably because of well, the connection think... to Cap and the, the connection to Iron Man for Rhodey. I think uh, I would say that Rhodey is is probably the most squandered character in the MCU. There's when you been, when you realize he's, he's been in it since the first film, it's insane. 
opinion. Oh, see, this is why I think this conversation is interesting. I would love to see what everyone's opinion is on it is because you can get so many different perspectives of what you define as as waste. And there's so it's many so different people from. character rocks and stuff. Mm. Like he has had things going on for him, whereas Roddy's yeah, he's basically more. You basically get breadcrumbs. You get like barely anything, right? Like that little conversation yeah. that he had with Nebula, which at this point Wait. we have to presume. Wait on that one. What? We get that later. Because everyone's already talking about it in chat. We haven't gotten to it yet. Rhodey's fine, <laughs> okay? There's a scroll that took over him probably like yesterday. I don't know. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. It's probably it's yesterday. It's in the Winter Soldier at earliest. Yeah, yeah um, this is a very recent plan, yeah. Must have been. I'm sure it is. Definitely. There wouldn't be any reason to assume anything otherwise for now. And uh, yeah, I, in terms of overall waste, you could probably pick anything from the MCU, honestly. There's arguments to be made about all kinds of shit. Like, you know, like Scarlet Someone Witch, for John example? John Walker would have saved the president. Yeah. I, I remember hearing you say that you ranked her pretty high in terms of your character assassination. I really like really Scarlet Witch, Panera? and they destroyed the fuck out yeah. of her. Black Widow I really liked, yep. and they destroyed the fuck out of her. Black destroyed Widow's, her. like, number four or five for me. That one is, like, I'm... One day, I will make a video on that. I just... That one... Black Widow is famous for being one of the only people to survive Endgame. Like, as a character. Pretty much. Yep. She's not unscathed, yeah. but she does a lot better than most. Well, yes, between dead. I'll give both you guys credit of that majorly. Um, Fringy really highlighted to me in his Endgame video how much she like was the only good piece of that movie in terms of character work, and I really and do like you know, pretty decent. <laughs> and then Black Widow just fucked everything. I I didn't realize how much I got like my favorite superhero is probably Batman for the grounded aspect, and I just I just I really like the concept behind it. And there's aspects of him that I really see in her: the fact that she doesn't have powers, and it comes much more about her will and her tactics. And they just shit on all over that. Like, just like well, again, what they did to Fury in this was basically Black Widow. Like, yeah, because they went for his spy achievements in this and they destroyed yeah. them all. And then they went for his competency and they destroyed it all. What they do to Black Widow is like they took the fact that she loves family and told us that mm -hmm. she ignored and practically got rid of entirely yeah. her core family that she was with. It's like, just that doesn't make any sense. Thing. And it's like, yeah, well, oh. that's what she did now. And you're like, okay. And then she has to apologize for it. Just like Fury has to apologize for all his mistakes. It's like, this, this didn't happen. Stop telling me this is what happened. It didn't happen. You're not I'm clever. Not. And then they're like, don't you rewrite history. It's like, you fucker. <laughs> they, should, they should do that every time they retcon something. Tell the other character, you better treat this as true. I don't know, man. Everyone needs to be like this terrible person who abandoned everybody. Like, how many times are they going to do this? It's just... What if we just ruin everyone? It seems to be the strategy. Instead of, Seriously. what if we just allow them to keep being a hero that we all like? It's like, no, what, what if we just tear them down and shit all over them? Isn't that clever? And subversive? Ooh. Crazy. The Black Widow jail scene, and then re-re blowing up all those cops. It's like the same thing over and over again. And I feel like Ooh, they yeah. use those scenes the same oh, way. Oh, there's so many of those. Yeah. What if we make a zombie movie, but the humans are the real monsters? Ooh, uh, no one's ever <laughs> thought of that before. Wait wow. a second. That's oh, a man. genius idea. So anyway, we're halfway through this episode already, by the way. Yay! Oh, good! So they really do seem to just keep getting quicker, which is cool. And I don't even mean that from a sense of us covering them. I mean, like, actual time codes. But anyway, the... um. The, the, they take the scientists, scrolls people out of their house. They're going to take their information and burn it all. As this is happening, can you it see this like this shot nice here? Out. We got got security men on the and left, Nigel. then Olivia, then the two scroll people, and then guy throwing, I assume, Molotov into house where it's burning. Okay, cool. Then they show us this guy uses scroll power to break out of handcuffs because I guess they didn't know that scrolls can do that. Clark, don't know. He hits this security guard, gets his gun while he's struggling on the floor. So, oh, you've know... hit me on the shoulder with. You're, ah, wow. He did hit him in the shoulder. Wow. Um, he's holding why didn't neck. he just punch her, too? So, yeah. F f wow. His plan. Yeah. Well, so, first of all, where's the, uh, the security guard? He was right over the. Like, yeah, yeah. he was doing the Molotov thing. He should be around. But he's disappeared. He's gone into the ether. Secondly, that means this. this Olivia Coleman's the only one left to subvert before you can get out of here. Now, the reason he's doing this hostage situation is he says, let us both go, and uh, I won't kill her, meaning the girl he's got in hostage. And you, of course, ask yourself, why is he not just shooting Olivia Coleman? Shooter. Yeah. Shooter. There's no reason not to. And of course, she's just like, wow, you're annoying. When this is actually a situation where she's got no safety net, she could have died easily here. 
Yeah, and she look at her face. She seems like she's invincible right now when she has nothing. Because she knows so the weird. plot is keeping her safe this time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly it. Yep. <laughs> this is kind of annoying, but yeah, she uh, just... Look, like, did she have the gun in, a, in the last shot? <laughs> Good question. Ooh, no, yeah. Wait back. a minute. Did she have the gun Wait in her a hand? minute. I'm curious, yeah. yeah. Hold the gun in her hand. I think I you can see... Oh, gun, yes, there yeah. it is. Yeah, right, it's okay, in her hand. Okay, yeah. okay. 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 all right. Yeah, all right, all right. Throw him a bone. A bone. It's good to check. Thrown. It's good to check, you know, yes. with these things. Um, Honestly, after the Nick thing, we should check everything. Like, we <laughs> Yeah, we have to check. I can't <laughs> trust my mind anymore. <laughs> they lie to me. <sighs> they hate to me. But yeah, he says, you know, let us go or I'll kill her. And she says, I don't doubt you for a second. The males of my own species are very similar. If they're not busy gaslighting you, they're threatening you with murder. First off, wow, I wonder if her, if her bodyguards are still conscious and around her. They're like, hey, <laughs> yeah. well, sorry. I, we, by the way, we just saved your life in there. Yeah. Just to be clear. Um, it feels like but, such a just like an obligatory cringe line. It's just like, did you just have to, do? Yeah, we have to shit on men. We got to throw one of those in. in. Like, it's, I'm surprised that wasn't in the trailer. They usually put those in the trailer as well. Yeah. And it doesn't I feel seem like, like the character gets hijacked for a moment. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I yeah. feel like she, the character just it's getting like hijacked for a moment by the way. Uh, you know, the, the other person who was writing all of her lines, is they. it's like, they didn't show up for work that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can yeah. do that. We can write her lines. Throw in some cringe. I'm like, you know, there's nothing to take from it. It's just something she says randomly, like, okie dokie. And then I think people say, like, it's funny. And I'll be like, Okay. No, okay, whatever you say. This is the one scene that didn't work. This was when her... Uh, it's just so uh, bizarre, too. Arm, it comes out of nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. Not that I aren't as good for her character. Yeah, like, yeah. her delivery is all the same as usual, but it's like, what's she gonna do with lines like that? Yeah, it's true. The, her delivery can't save everything, and I feel like the best of her is already gone. This is oh, kind God. of a funny freeze react? frame. Why did he react? <laughs> he, just, react. Right, he, he didn't just even react. blink. Yeah, and it took her a little while, but yeah, that's that's him done. What a loser. Ooh. <laughs> what an idiot. Why is his... Wait, so it's his... his okay, so Comes his out name. purple. I don't get it. That guy in episode one, the blood came out red. Shut oh, up. Yeah, but, that, but can you be sure? <laughs> yeah, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Names, blood, nothing. Purple is like do. half red. Kind of, yeah, see? That makes sense. So, um, Daenerys goes to Fury GF house, which doesn't I really make much sense, because she spared, she spared Fury, right? Meaning she knows that uh, Gravik knows she's a traitor, which means that she should be expecting someone to come and kill her. Yep. Um, so you, sh you shouldn't even be here, basically, is what yeah, I'm trying to say. This identity is this art? compromised. I don't know. The, her identity is compromised. The important. Yeah, she should be dressed up as fucking anybody else, and so should Gaia, by the way. Um, That's what. Oh, yes, both of them. I was actually just talking about her, but yeah, I'm both of them. Should, uh, flashbacks. So they sure both be. got guns oh on each God, other. You're right. And uh, I forget her name every single time. Fury GF with says, "Are you here to kill me?" And it's like. You probably shouldn't have taken that fucking risk. If she is, you're now 50-50 instead of being able to execute her on her way in. She came in with a gun to your house. She broke in. And you know the people are trying to come and kill you. Are Glocks the only pistols they have in this show? Yes. And why wouldn't okay. you just have it so that Fury rang her ahead of this, saying that guy is on the way? Don't shoot her. Yeah. <laughs> and she'll identify by <laughs> shouting out banana on, or something. Or well, exactly, cheese. because if you say, like, don't shoot Gaia. It's like, well, who is that? This is a scroll. She could be anybody. Exactly. Who is that? This actually could be Gravik trying to trick her. You never know. Nobody could yeah. possibly know. You're super fucked when it, you think it's a scroll, but it could be an enemy scroll. Well, how are you going to prove anything then? Yeah, they could have killed the wife lady and just have another scroll there. Hey, waiting around just as a trap. Um. At, oh. at least they didn't switch guns like Yelena and Black Widow in that stupid kitchen. Oh, scene. yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to take your gun. So, uh, Rhodey explains that there is a, you know, powered down nuclear plant where all the scrolls are hiding in Russia, and that if we nuke it now, we prevent them from destroying the whole world. So we've got to nuke well, Russia to save the world. Well, the first thing that he needs to be saying is, Rhodey, where the fuck is your Iron Man suit? Yeah. And then you'll say, I lost New it. New rule. It's in the mail. New rule. You always wear it. 
<laughs> you need to always well, and, stab and it in the fish. Squirrel Rody should be invested in wearing it because you know it's you know it's it's really know, good. Yeah, it's like an into, it's a nearly it's basically an Iron Man suit with with an emphasis on destruction. So um, he says we have to nuke Russia in order to defeat some scrolls, and if if we don't act now, the scrolls will invade and destroy everything. I would prefer war to extinction. That's what Rody says, and he says England is also behind us. And I thought that was is really that a weird. Lie? Well, because I was like, so the Prime Minister is a scroll, so it could mean yeah, that she's... That. But we find out it's not the Prime Minister he's talking about. He's talking about Olivia Coleman. She's uh, approved of this. Um, I, We will get to her reasoning. I don't want to spoil it, because I don't think you guys are going to remember. It's so fucking bad. I can't, I can't actually quite remember. I actually what that either. Is. It's like a form of leverage for Rhodey to say that England want us to blow it up too, I guess, and like that... But it's an absolutely insane idea, and she already kn We'll get there, it's fine. So then Gravik and uh, Fury just have a little chat on the phone. You know, why yeah, not? like, Gravik just gives Nick Fury a phone call. Yep. He just has his phone number. How? How? Uh, Puff. you know. You know, he just does. Have a nice little chat. Does Nick say, oh, I was waiting for you to call? Like, he was expecting And it's, it's a nice cringe conversation as well. Like, every conversation with Gravik. Yeah, there's nothing to gain from this. I, I've summed it up as um, Gravik says, if I don't get what I want, which is the harvest, then the president is going to bomb new Skrullos with the beginning of the war. And uh, also, don't just bring me the harvest, bring some iodide pills, because the reactor room could be a touch aggressive. Do I have, like, an outfit on for that? <laughs> it's, it, it didn't need to be that way, but they've made it that way, and we'll talk about it. I Again, later. yeah, I guess. Like, why bother? You know, why bother having it be a thing? Hey, you know, whatever. Oh well, guys, look. Oh. What? Oh, what? Look who it is! Oh my! Oh my God! It's, it's guy oh, from Black Widow. Guy. It's a Quinjet acquirer. Yeah, guy. man. It's so yeah. awesome to see him back. Yeah, he's on the. You could tell by the hat. He's on the B team. Here he is. Uh, I know it's been a while, and everyone's waiting for his new sort of contribution to the MCU, and uh, excited to say, here it is. And it was really funny, because there was a tweet saying, like, so awesome to see him back, and then there was a viral tweet, the quote tweet, that said, who the fuck is that? <laughs> 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 they said, this guy is the glub shit -o of Marvel. <laughs> glub shit -o. Oh, <laughs> glub -o. Such a forgettable character. I so, love uh, glub shit -o. He would just know. spawn whenever they needed in that movie. It was glub shit -o's like, great. Oh, and then, of course, he takes a moment to say that Fury is shit, by the way, because he, he hadn't done it. He's a new character, see? It's fine. Yep. Good to get another one in. He's like, you should be mothballed. Get out of there. <sighs> Do you even know Fury? Like, who are you? I don't just... fucking... Yes, maybe. Point. <laughs> I guess so. It was a great caveat. Why do you, why you hate and stop? Oh, everyone just is uh, terrible. So then they have a funeral for Talos, because I guess... They at least remember to do that. Um, How'd they get the body? Shut up. And then That's a good question. They say, uh, you know, she's like, I don't know the prayer. And then Nick Fury's wife starts going ring. like, <laughs> Starts conjuring a demon. <laughs> it's just like, that's, those are the words of Skrellos or something. It's just like, this sounds you funny. Sure? Like, Draguna Makoites. Uh, Hakuna Matata. Uh, yeah, it's very emotional. Is that supposed I guess. to be a wedding ring? I don't know what it is on the on the thing because that is a very thin wedding ring. Well, Question maybe they like thin wedding rings. Chilling here. Maybe she's still chilling here when she knows that they're coming for her. Like, maybe. The yeah. yeah. Like, Why the leave. fuck would you be here? Maybe it's a special scroll ring that changes size based on you changing into things. You know, so it, that'd be great. There you it's go. It's a nanotech ring. I mean, yeah. yeah. I guess you don't you don't ever have to actually have a ring because you can just have one. Like you could. You could choose to look like yourself, but with a ring. So that only the ring is that was what changes, right? Yeah. And do you even is like on Scrollos or it's in scroll culture, do they even have like tailors or like clothes? Because you can just like make them appear, right? So you can just like would you even need to make those? I don't fucking Well, I guess I don't know. I guess the whatever the nanotech like little thing is. I guess yeah. maybe there's Tailors who work on the nanotech little thing. If you needed like a pan, if you're in a kitchen, could you like 
make a pan. I mean, it's the problem with not <laughs> as long as you kept right, as, as like long as you kept your in. hand on it, right? You, Only if you like... take the role of a chef, you get the hat and the pan. Because <laughs> you can do the hat and the pan, yeah. And as long as you hold on to the pan, it stays a pan, right? I assume. See, these thoughts casually come into your head, just like curious about it. But I feel like they never had these discussions, like no. even out of just for fun. It's just nothing. They didn't play with the the concepts or ideas at all. Just waste in every category. They have themselves if a chat. you if you are a scroll and you transform into someone with all your clothes and you keep that illusion on, or you keep that form for a long time, but you eat a lot of pasta and carbs and cake and ice cream and you get to be a big fat fuck, right? Does that mean would your could your clothes would you be tighter inside of your clothes or would your clothes like expand so, along with you? It's it seems like because uh, it, it scrolls can like take the appearance of people who are considerably different sizes to them. Yeah. To which I guess you have to assume that there is no such thing They're as less a boat dense. scroll. Well, I mean, it's it's the problem that you're going to get in with any shape shifting thing, right? Like because you know, like Amelia Clark, scroll lady impersonates much larger people than herself. So you just have to presume that they can, like, I don't know, their metabolism means that they can never be fat. Or that if they're fat, it doesn't matter because they could just change their cells to not be fat. Yeah, yeah they could all <laughs> look really, really good all the time. Being a scroll, it's like Adam. It gives you no excuse to not look beautiful. I probably don't gain weight. So anyway, they're having a chat, and uh, Gaia says, I told him he was a failure. What kind of daughter does that make me? Pretty awful. Yeah, explicitly <laughs> awful, yeah. You and killed then, a lot of people. And then also. Lady says, uh, last thing I said to Fury before the snap was if you spend all your time looking for aliens, you might lose the one you married. And I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> like, don't these... care. You were invented no, in this show and you're pretending that these characters have massive history when they don't. Yep. Uh, so then she says, why does Gravik want you dead? Like, disobeying orders? And, like, well, uh, why wait for him to kill you? And kill scroll, yourself. Scroll Lady says, I love this house. I had to find a place for privacy, security, and lots of light. And then they start talking about how Nick Fury likes this house. And it's just like, did we seriously just say the reason that she didn't leave is because she likes the house? Nice, guys. Good it's job. Gonna be hard. It's going to be difficult to like the house if you're dead. And this place has shit security. She broke in by pushing the door. We saw well, that. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's just look at these open that's windows. Cool. Like, there's less walls in this house than the average house. Look at all those oh, windows. Oh, yeah, lots of there. light. That's what she yeah. likes about it. There's lots of <laughs> yeah. light. Oh, oh yes, lots of security. Well, she says security and privacy, too, Regs. Security and okay. privacy and lots of light. He's like, well, which one is it? Well, yeah. you would think that Nick Fury's house would have a bunch of, like, automated turrets or something that would just pop out yeah. of the walls. Safe yeah, if it was room, maybe. Like his wheels. Yeah, yeah like safe the car. Room. Exactly. Yeah, you would think he'd yep. have all these things, all these things. Exactly. Plan, plan Bs. He should be the king of Plan Bs. But he remember, this is the world of of like super advanced AI, right? Like Friday and and uh, and um, oh, I can't Jarvis. believe I've forgotten his name, Jarvis, Jarvis. You know, and they've been around for like nearly twenty years in this timeline at this point. And they just ignore it. Everything they establish, yeah. just ignore it. So there's a right. chair, right. and Scroll Lady's like, oh, Fury would sit there reading a book, and I'd get lost watching him like that for hours. Just a really That's normal thing. It's, it's perfectly normal to say, okay? The not Every normal thing. Right out of the bitch is creepy as hell. He's trying to be romantic. He's really bad at it all the time. You have yeah, to understand. It but it gets weirder That's anyway, because... That's what Scrolls do when they love each other, is they stare at each other for hours silently. <laughs> Gaia says in response to that, did he ever get lost watching you in your own skin? It feels like a weird thing to say when we've never seen you as an alien. It's just fucking rude. It what the hell? Rude, like, yeah. mind your business. Tom. We just had someone that we both heavily appreciate have their funeral. I'm sharing something about how I love my husband, and then you just said, yeah, but was he racist? <laughs> it's like, what oh, the or, fuck? Like, or it's like, does he like looking at you naked? I don't. It's another uh, case of them 
getting hijacked by the writers, man. Like, she wouldn't say this. That's just stupid. No, of course not. And and the lady's like, that's none of your business. And I was like, wow, yeah, <laughs> true. It isn't. It has nothing to do with you. Yeah, like, who are you? Who are you? You know? Yeah. <laughs> that might have been her best scene. Like, <laughs> just putting her in her place. Kind of a fucked up thing to say. Someone. Mm. But what's weird is we drift back into that earlier question of why she's still at the house, right? She says, after that happens, you're young. You don't know what it takes to build a life with someone to sustain it. When it comes to facing my executioners, I want to meet them head on instead of in some dark alley. Like, wh what does that have to do with anything? Fuck? <laughs> like, just, what just happened? Like <laughs> the conversation, like, got split in two and moved around until it. Like, what? So now her reason is, I want to face them myself. I don't want to be killed in a dark alley. It's like, they can't get you as soon as you switch to any random human being. Exactly. They can't this find some, you anymore. This is some Aunt Beru logic. Like, let's that fight them fuck. off. It's crazy. Why, why can't you just be not stupid? <laughs> um, but yeah, when she's having this little rant, uh, what they don't realize is that Gravix men have arrived, and they're both standing still and talking, and the first shot is and fired then, yeah. and it misses. They're not, no, they're not standing still. They're sitting. Are they sitting? Yeah. At the table. I yeah. think they do sit down for a second, yeah, and then they yeah, fire. Yeah, they're sitting down at the table. Oh, yeah, the tea, the tea. Yeah, they do sit. How did you they're miss? They're not sitting. Oh, Are well, they that, 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 oh no, it's they, because they shoot there. Oh, I yeah, thought they, they oh, okay, I thought they were sitting. Why, you, why did you shoot that? How did you miss that dramatically? Oh, so shit. Just like fuck your tea. <laughs> and you even <laughs> shot like the bottom of it oh somehow. God. It's so and then, funny. It's at this point, by the way, that, that Gaia immediately says, You hide, I have group powers and extremist powers and yeah. Call Obsidian powers, so you go away and I'll handle it. And then the yeah, director said, But wait, what if I have them both use shotguns and pistols back to back, like Iron Man and, cool. and War Machine kind of, but like but scrolls with guns and the Two awesome Strokes women fucking up this whole house of mercenaries trying to get them. By the way, all these guys they kill, you don't hear any <laughs> noises, and no, you, don't you don't see any scrolls. It's and all... their blood is red again. Yeah, I'm yep. pretty sure blood the blood's red Yeah, this is red splatters and... So what, what's the deal? Not a single... Joe, all the bullets the in this entire <laughs> fight, not one bullet this is a funny our screenshot. two heroes. Bye! <laughs> 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 not a single bullet hits our heroines. Uh, Where did shotguns, the power of shotguns, is like ineffectively portrayed in movies? Like, is well, this, well, yeah, like, whenever you I'm shoot someone with a bullshit, shotgun, right? it makes them fly back very, very <laughs> That's far. What I'm saying. Like, and I'm yet, curious. somehow, you don't move at all. Yeah. Do, do you have <laughs> yeah, an example in mind of like a, a really good uh, shotgun scene in terms of the portrayal? Uh, there's probably a bunch, but none come to mind. Uh, I know in the last uh, John Wick 4, the, the priest pulls out a shotgun and shoots John Wick and he flies back like 20 feet, but the priest doesn't move at all. <laughs> and this is like, why are you using a shotgun w when you should probably be using a submachine gun or an assault rifle? Wait a second, how are you both like extensively trained in firearms? Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. They're suddenly I, just like this guy here who was just shooting rounds at him. I guess none of those bullets hit him. What was he shooting at? They were just standing still. It is I guess got shot. Yeah, look at that blood. Look at that. Yeah, and it's funny, as Freeney said, the stakes here for these two are completely different. One, if she yeah. gets tagged in the face, she's just dead. The other, she's fine. She, she's not going to get killed by anything here. Yep. So but they treat it as though these two have to work to together them. and they both have the same thing to lose. It's just like, God, this sucks. They look at it like this epic action scene, but this yeah. is just such damage to her character. She should have left, why did they, and now that she's paid, why didn't she help with her powers? They why did they put the stuff. backpacks on? What were the backpacks for? They had guns in them. That's where they got oh. the guns from. Well, oh, okay. On. It's oh, weird like, because so they, like, when, when the scene starts... Yeah, yeah. When the scene starts, she grabs the backpacks and hands them over. But then, like, I guess uh, Gaia just knows that, the, that this is how it works. Because like, you see this happen, this happen, and then she just pulls one out of the back. And it's like, wait, did you know that was there? And that's how that works? Are you how familiar with these? That? I don't know. I don't think there's any reason to think she would know that. Oh, there's no reason they're both Why would you, would you not just give him the gun with, with a gear, sling on it? Exactly. Why wouldn't you just be normal? They never be just normal. Just here's the gun. Just hold the gun. I, it's a, it's well, I don't know what you're about here. to say. Well, it's like, this is so boring, isn't it? Well, like, uh, well, I was, I was gonna say, like, look, it's always a cliche, like, oh, you're so fucking, look at that shotgun shot, yeah, go, you get him. And it's just like... It's just so boring. Uh, I'm bored. <laughs> bored of this. You're just invincible, and none of the bullets will hit. 
How much well, more interesting would it be if she actually had to show some struggle and like you know, I remember she's she did, an expert with the gun immediately. These new powers that she has have been taken. You know, <laughs> they were they weren't earned, they were taken. There's a lot of that going on with a lot of the new characters' powers where they just they just fucking fall out of the sky onto these people. There's no yeah. and it's, struggle. It's gonna it's gonna get a bit more dramatic, uh next oh, episode. Oh god, yeah. So Oh boy. That whole scene happens and it sucks. Fury gets Un out of, uh, like, customs and shit, because he's actually using the fucking Widow's Veil for the first time in the whole goddamn season. I couldn't believe yeah. my eyes. Where's Amazing. The whole show? That's you don't approve of the white face, personally, but all right, you know, it's fair <laughs> enough. And yeah, this is what uh, Disparu was referencing. It's a really weird line. Um, Olivia Coleman says, let me get this straight. A billion dollars of research and development and all the Widow's Veil can cloak is your face. The implication, of course, being... A billion being, dollars? That's, uh, that's a steal! The yeah. implication, of course, being that surely it should be able to cover you fully. And Fury says, you're thinking of the new one. This one only does the face. So there is a so new got... Widow's Veil that allows oh, you to God. do scroll things. I think you mentioned that earlier, like 10,000 yeah. hours ago. I can't remember now. <laughs> it, it, it was an hour three, I think, when we mentioned this. It's insane. <laughs> oh, man. Because these veils, it's just like... This is that with the 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 Bucky with the makeup. Just the fact that something as simple as makeup should have you on red alert. But the fact that these things have been in, in, in throughout the entire series. But like, doesn't it? Crazy. it does a piece foolish. of tech defeat the entire idea of the series? Like, isn't yeah. it scary that scroll, scrolls could be anybody? It's like you already have the tech. You just said you already have that. <sighs> they don't even play with the scroll idea. Why would they notice that? You know, they just they don't know what they're playing with. Uh, so, he starts asking us some questions. Why did you back up Rhodey on the new Skrullos thing? Because, again, we need to get her motivation on that. That's a really weird thing that she did. She says, Yes, Fury, of course I did. Because in the absence of the, the my, she says, my scaled superior, meaning the guy she killed, she's now in charge of the SIS. And last I checked, she says this, last I checked, the US and Britain were allies. So if, okay, so no, because Britain thought that the United States set off a massive bomb in Russia with virtually zero evidence suggesting it was the Americans. And so then, I guess they're not that close after all. And then Britain turned up at an American motorcade for the president and watched a bunch of quote-unquote Russians attack it, but then it's, they would have seen a bunch of scroll bodies and been like, what in the fuck is going on? And apparently the Americans then said to the British, there's a bunch of scrolls in this place in Russia, let's nuke it. And Britain were like, sure, bro. Well, we are allies. Yeah, and that's her reasoning. We are allies. So let's great. start a war. Let's start, let's start a nuclear war with Russia. Let's start a war with Russia. We are allies, war. after let's all. We are allies. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Dumbass. You would think she'd be smarter than that. You would think. And she says, why? Oh, yeah. By the way, she doesn't know that Rhodey's a scroll. Uh, Fury hasn't told her that yet. Why the fuck doesn't she know yet? Like, how's why that? Why like... she suspect? She should be like, she should be calling every world government and saying, hey, uh, we just found out that the person in charge of the SIS was actually an alien shapeshifter. So you should probably uh, go find all of the people that you take orders from, and you need to have like a you need to sort this out, all right? Because well, this is like we need to like pause the Earth for a second so we can find out if anyone else is an alien ship shapeshifter from another planet. But I guess she doesn't phone the United States or anybody and tell it's her so about this baffling. discovery. Remember when we said like why isn't Fury telling people the Rhodey is a scroll? And it's like yeah, he tells her in this scene. And then she's like, whoa, what? Like, why haven't you told people earlier than now? <laughs> What's wrong with you? And then she First says, why would Gravik want to blow up his own people? And Fury says, leverage. He wants me to give him the harvest. Otherwise, he's going to start World War Three by blowing up that base or whatever. All about the harvest. And uh, Sonya just goes along with this. She's like, all right, that's Olivia Coleman's character's name. Mm -hmm. So then she's like, what is the harvest? And then Fury says something. It's so funny because I think there's people in chat right now are just not going to be ready for this. There's so much crap yep. to come. 
Fury says, Nearly every Avenger spilled blood in the Battle of Earth, even Carol Danvers. In the aftermath, some were sent to collect the DNA. Nobody knew but me and the Collectors, led by Gravik. That's where he got the idea for the Super Scroll machine. Can you get Carol Danvers DNA? It's like, I, how do you get a DNA? Like, how? There is so much you... to unpack. First of all, I didn't yeah. know that she could actually. She bleed. flies through ships and comes yeah. out unscathed. She when seems she to be indestructible. She I can take the power from the power her, Maybe. <laughs> I feel maybe like that would be the one her. thing you could think of, but they would have made it explicit in that scene. And I like you rocked her, but she seemed pretty unscathed to me. Like, can maybe. she bleed? But uh, is she even human? I mean, but then there's just the, it's like, okay, so now this raises questions. If, let's say, certain characters had been abducted by the Skrulls as far back as um, the events of Civil War before Endgame, so I guess Gravik was, a, was on Fury's side up until about 2023, sure. is what we're left to conclude. Okay, I'm sure that doesn't present potential massive continuity, like, <laughs> just breaches in continuity. But even then, the idea of like, oh yes, you collect all of the Avengers' DNA and put it in like a little vial, and what? Oh, well, I guess he can put it in his Super Scroll machine and just get all the powers? It is funny. Holy it's just, shit. Yeah, you just drop idea that yeah. they put You grab a bit machine. of blood, you pop it into a machine, the machine says, blah, 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 Drax. You're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just it's just it's like plasmids. You just stick it in and squeeze it and boom, now you've got Drax now you've got Drax arm, which isn't really a superpower so much as it is just his arm, which is really weird. Can you do that with hands? And of course, you know, what does it mean to be able to synthesize cuz some of those people's powers don't have anything to do with their like anatomy. And some of no, their powers yeah. are derived Some of their powers are derived from like for instance, Captain Marvel's power is derived from the Tesseract. I don't know, what would it be about her DNA? Like, wouldn't it be that, the, the like, you know what I mean? Is it even the kind of power that could be replicated? Is that even possible? Well, and they don't it, even it, discuss if there's diminishing returns or anything. Like, how exactly. much There's no like, fucking drawbacks to any of it. You only get the awesome yeah, powers and for free, okay. basically. And remember, they get Ghost. Ghost wasn't mm -hmm. around in Endgame. <laughs> She wasn't, she, was, she wasn't there. Abomination um, wasn't there. But how does that, like, ghost's blood lets you phase through phase. walls? Yeah. What they in the, the same fuck is with, happening? They did the same thing with Taskmaster having Black Panther claws when, like, that happened, like, the day before or something like that. Oh, right, because of Civil War, yeah, I remember. Yep, yep. Made no sense. <laughs> Just met the guy. Why do you... <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this is insane nonsense, and the idea that Fury thought, wow, we just had a big fight, better send my secret scroll men to go and collect the blood on the battlefield. What the fuck, man? Secret and, scroll men. <laughs> and then she says, so you're responsible for all this? And he says, yeah, why do you think I came back? So there's an answer for you. We get loads of them across the whole show as to why he left, why he came back, and why he's sad. Third this one. Is, there's another one for why he came back, because he feels he's responsible for the whole thing. Which he, I guess he is, because of how stupid everything is. I mean, he is. is, because of the way the show is written, he is responsible for this. Yeah. And now, uh, she says, why haven't you called any special friends down? Bear in mind, they gave us the ADR, and that argument, if they believed it's true, still stands. There's no reason it wouldn't stand, but she's asking him now as if it doesn't, well, I say that. He could tell her that reason, but he doesn't. He says, We can't keep depending on them to save us. They haven't lived my life. They can't defend the world like I can. The only power I have was planted between my ears by a single mother and wrapped around my finger from a woman far greater than I could ever hope to be. Uh, this is personal. And if that ain't enough, then what hope do we have? If that ain't enough, maybe I'm just dust. Maybe you are. Absolute fucking, fucking bullshit. What the hell? This never Punk. came up before. What what re you just you just what? Is it pride? You're just like, I gotta solve this problem myself. Also, I suck compared to the two women in my life that I care about. Never been personal for him. It's never been this is this is just a completely new character. Like this is just horseshit. It's so many of these scenes were like, what are you doing? And you'd think you'd be used to it by now, but they find new and creative ways to just fuck him over. But this is why I think it's that was the recon from, or not recon, actual ADR from uh, episode three is that the 
first way around it would have been like don't involve him because it'll make things worse and then when you get to this episode and things are way worse he has to change the reason again right to this is personal but the reason got changed in adr too they'll copy the heroes and then they'll be terrorists which would still stand if he believed in that reason right now yeah. but instead now he's given a whole speech about how he can't rely on them to save him every time and also this is personal what an insane <laughs> what fucking what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> like, this is what I mean. They don't remember. They, 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 they go, they're all over the fucking place. It's hard to keep track. And this is his show. This is that if, if Samuel Jackson cares about this character, the bare minimum should be able to like establish a motive. Like, and there's no way I can't see him being happy with this. Just it's just nonsense. This is embarrassing. I, I thought he was the type of actor that wouldn't let this type of abuse go on, but here we are. It's over Absolutely and over and nuts, over again. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, she says, So you're just going to give him the harvest? And he says, Exactly. And then he suits up, and he has a Fury montage, and it's dumb as fuck. You gotta give it to him. Yeah, you can't empty. give it to him. You have to destroy it. It's funny because, like, after all that we've done to ruin him, they're like, look, he's back. He's got his eye patch, yeah. and he's got his he's gun. He's back. He's at his lowest. <laughs> yeah, this is the worst we've ever been. <laughs> but I look at those shots. They think it's cool. Look at him. Look at him go. I felt nothing. It's like he's just empty nonsense. I'd like to directly compare this to Aragorn's gear up scene in Helm's Deep. After he almost died that day, he's got the blood on his finger still, and he's still gearing up to lead this fucking battle. That is a badass ba gear up scene. That's how you do that shit. And you actually feel something because you know how much pressure is on the line here, and he's still going to lead, even though this guy should be fucking like in a bed bed rest right now. This is just nonsense. Like, how are you gonna feel anything with this? Like, you you've built him up to be a piece of shit, and now we're supposed to have a badass fury moment. It's just. Anyone who fell for this, anyone who enjoyed this moment, you're an idiot. You weren't paying attention yeah. to the entire season. Like, well, as far as I know, we could be going to shoot up a school. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know what this... Oh, yeah. It's uh, so exciting it's to have Fury back. This is exciting. Look at him. This is Fury, the, the gunslinger. Super spy. So, uh, yeah. That leads us to the final episode. Which will the be the quickest to go through. Episode. The shortest one. Yeah. No, I wonder if it's going to be the quickest to go through, given... I think it will. I think it will, honestly. We've set so much groundwork for the big thing. We'll yeah, complain about the big thing, true. but it won't take that long, I don't think. Yeah. Um, so, it opens with a conversation between Fury and his wife, and he just says, I've gone far enough now to where it makes sense to keep going. And she says, you coming back? And he says, I'll let you go now. And she Do says, they ever you call her Miss to. Fury? No, I don't Shit. think so. I don't, I she don't has a that. name. It's like Scylla or something. It was Priscilla, maybe? I can't remember, but... Oh, I'm sorry. You can't expect me to remember a name. That's, that's all I was going to say. Priscilla? <laughs> yeah, not like that character. Isn't that Peppermint Patty's name in Charlie Brown? Isn't her real name Priscilla? Yeah, man. If you don't, you don't, if you don't know, yeah, it's that's fine. that's the right one. <laughs> so... Carry on. Someone said there was, like, shit tons of reshoots. I'm trying to see if I can... Find imagery. This this is probably enough imagery to actually notice it. Um, but even the the forest that it's they're in like changes. Yeah, between. Yeah. It's a different... Oh my. <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That is pretty funny. Uh, Fury arrives, but I think to to do this the more efficient way, we're just going to reveal immediately. This is not Fury at the at the headquarters. They want us to I believe it is. Fire. This is actually Gaia with the Harvest, so he would have given her <gasps> the Harvest DNA, which is all the Avengers DNA, by the way. And he told her, you go get Gravik, I guess. I feel like well, that conversation... Was no, there was no reason to do this, because they were both evenly matched at this point. Yep. It, so it, it, it's to, like, actually... Or, you know, to make, yeah. It's absolutely so fucking can, nuts, yeah. I guess, yeah, we we'll, talk, we'll yeah. talk about it when, when it's handed over, because at least right now it hasn't been. So. <laughs> so finally we have Nick Fury do something that's kind of competent, and it's, it's not, not him. even him. <laughs> and also, and also the, the actual choices being made here are not competent. Um, so, Fury, uh, Rhodey's trying to encourage the president to nuke Russia, and then this person, does. I forget who this is, the girl on the right, she says... she might be like Secretary of Defense. Possibly, yeah. She says, we don't know who was behind the attack. The Russians denied it. And then uh, Rhodey goes, oh, they denied it. I guess it's all right then. I've got 30 dead Russians on the motorcade to prove that, that, that it was Russian. 
It's like, you, you don't need that what? Scrolls. You got scrolls. You They're not Russians. Scrolls. There's no Surely Russians the president... and, like, that there are scrolls. Are, there are, they're all scrolls, every single one. And the president would have been notified. Sir, we were attacked by space aliens. Yeah, mm -hmm. the British would have captured would... all of them and experimented horribly on them. Yes, as they do. Hell yeah. They're in labs right now being like Take the green front. pill. So then she says, we can't rule out a false flag. And so that's correct. And then Rhodey says, did you take a stupid pill? The president almost died. Unless you have evidence for the idea of a false flag, then get on with your job, which is advising a military response to the attack. There are Russians moving tanks onto worldwide borders. This is proof it was them. Obviously, the Russians are preparing for war because they believe America might strike them. That's why that's happening. It's pretty straightforward. The fact that they wrote it so that Rhodey said, did you take a stupid pill, is uh, yeah, you, shocking. It's like, yeah, what, what I don't is, know if he should be using that kind of medical terminology <laughs> here. It's a little... It's, it's highbrow. <laughs> it's it's kind of... It's a little off-putting to me. Fucking nonsense, stupid. And, and all she ever did was say, we don't actually know. And then he's like, yeah. you stupid or something? What she should be saying is, no, those weren't Russians. They're those all were scrolls. space aliens. She should also yeah. be saying, I aliens. guess they could have obtained nationality, also, which just raises more questions, but still. She should also be highlighting how fucking suspiciously he's behaving. And she yeah, should be like, like, you know... What's going on, dude? Like, yeah, do Rudy, we, uh... I don't remember you being a psychopath. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you're acting like an weird. actual evil person. That's strange. And you know what's so fucking funny? Is that everybody was certain that America was the ones that attacked Russia at the beginning of this series. Turned out that was a false flag, Rhodey. Mm. Remember that? Don't you think, you know, like, like, if anyone said this to anyone in this room, he, he would have to be like, Nah, because, no, shut up. It's been oh, it's so hard to believe, but like Rhodey's basically reduced now to just evil scroll man who wants to bomb Russia so he can bomb the whole world. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, we at least something um, exciting will happen. Yeah, something a bit different. So, um, yeah, Fury heads into the HQ, and he's well. I said whenever I say whenever I say Fury in this part, I mean Gaia. Gaia is the one that's doing this old stuff. But they spot a bunch of bodies from all the people Gravik killed. I guess all the scrolls. And then there's some uh, some coughing and wait, that, is it implied that all the scrolls in the whole no, compound no, no. he killed? No, 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 just just, those just guys, the ones he the killed in that fight scene. Okay, they're just right. in some place here somewhere locked up. So this is uh, he pulls out a Geiger counter, and uh, I wonder how he managed that. How did he manage to lock them all up in the whole compound? You know. I don't even know what oh, he did with the like, scrolls in this area. Didn't he say like he told them like to hide in some bunker or something there? Maybe, like, yeah. They're, they're here somewhere, I believe. Or they're in high. I, I they're not here, like to be seen. That's the that's the point. But there's a bit of unwrapping or unraveling to do here. He's he's pulled out the guy account to let the audience know that it's very irradiated here. And by the way, he hasn't gone down to where Gravik is yet. He's just at the top area where we saw scrolls running around and being happy and stuff outside the building. See, he's right here. He's already almost falling over and coughing. Now, on your first run through, you're just supposed to believe like, oh my god, Fury's gonna die of radiation poisoning. Oh my god, this is this might be the end of Fury. This is horrible. On a rewatch, Wait a second. you understand Gaia is pretending that this is affecting her to maintain the facade for anybody who may be watching. Meaning she's still trying to approximate the kind of damage this would do. Alright? It's worth keeping in mind. It's gonna come up later. For now, yeah. this place is radiated. Okie dokily. Alright. Heads in. Yeah, I'm very excited now. Who knows what's gonna this happen. This is pretty exciting. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Olivia Coleman calls Rhodey to say Fury is on the way. And of course, we're supposed to be thinking she's lying. But no, she's actually telling the truth. Fury is actually on the way to the president, not to uh, Gravik. And she says, you have to move the president. And Rhodey seems actually scared. He's like, oh god, like, oh god, we need to do something. Oh, Jesus, he's on the way. It's like, War Machine, man. This is fucking War Machine. What's Nick Fury gonna do to War Machine? But he doesn't have his suit. He doesn't have anything. For some reason, even though I would have my tech. suit. Yeah. Yeah. It would be pretty useful. And so, um, the security guards start wait, getting wait, trained. Wait, hold up. Um, what if it has, uh, has it ever been in the past where Tony Stark's suits were like linked to someone using biometrics, like 
DNA or fingerprints or something yeah. like that? Would right, that work uh, with him? Why would he talk about how he's scroll? used the suit as a scroll if he wasn't able to use the suit at all? He does in episode two. He talks about the suit. So okay, so I, I guess I was just I was just thinking if also there's another if, reason why we know he can definitely use the suit as a scroll, but we'll get to that. Well, a I don't. Later. I don't. I don't doubt that he can use the suit, but I'm wondering, like, should he be able to use the suit? Would a scroll be able to take on the uh, the appearance of Rhodey and still have the suit work for him? Yeah, why not? I don't. I don't know if it, if that was like DNA test or something in the thing that would make it only work for him. I mean, the most you'd expect probably is retinal or fingerprint, and I assume those things get copied over in the shapeshift. I guess if it, yeah, if it can go, yeah, if, if it's to that, you know, level of detail that even the, you know, the retinal scan will work, yeah. But yeah, the guards start getting tranked. That's gradually happening in between scenes getting cut from uh, Gaia and Gravik meeting here, but we're just going to do all these scenes in one go, pretty much. So. Fury's dropping his pills, but obviously it's fake Fury, so it doesn't actually matter. These are his iodide pills, I guess, and he's like, haha, you're gonna start dying quickly now because you don't have your pills, loser. Yeah, It's like, dummy. okay. I don't know why they included the radiation element at all. Like, I don't see what it adds to this story in any way. Hmm. Um, well, at least it can't hurt, right? <laughs> right? Might just melt you, but no, yeah, yeah. This, uh, th th this, th this scene... Contains a big old graphic speech, and it's pretty cringe. Yeah. Oh, I'll man. just uh, like all the speeches. Yeah. run through it's it like here. Everything. This yeah. is supposed to be the moment where the writers are like, let me explain why graphic is this way. Once I finish, you'll understand, and you'll think, wow, this makes a lot of sense. They failed, but I'll give you the, the, what he says. He says, this face is the first human I killed, and I killed him because you told me to, and you don't even remember... The first mission you sent me on, I wanted to impress you, the man who promised me a home. But this man, had a, like, meaning the one he killed, this guy had a wife and children. But you know, sure, yeah, he was a bit misguided, but I killed him because of you. And everyone I killed took a piece out of my heart. And the only one brave enough to admit it is me. That's halfway through his speech. It's already pretty awful, I would say. Pretty bad. It's a little bit confusing as well. It's like, so oh, Fury. So we care about women and children now, and families of people yeah, like, you kill. Is that something we care suddenly? about? All right. How can your speech right. be filled with like it was sad to kill so many humans? I'm just going to kill all of them, I guess. It's just it's so bizarre. And yeah, like the it, it everyone I killed took a piece of my heart. It's like shut up. Shut up you don't have a heart. Absolutely this is not. Reva. This is Reva. Yeah, it's Reva all over again. It's just Reva. Like, it's just, it's their only formula. It's insane. So, continuing, Talos was weak. He turned a war people into a band of beggars. Beggars. I'm getting a little tired at this point. I just realized we're actually coming up to nine hours. We have this long boy this time. <laughs> oh, right wow. Uh, mm -hmm. No um, complaining. Yeah. <laughs> he says, Thanks you pimped us, Fury. And when we you were done with us, you threw us out. First, I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to take a flamethrower to humanity. The species you spent your life defending will die the moment I realize you weren't a man of your word. Yeah. He's, he's, Which I guess, at now at this point, there was no pretense that it's like, oh, well, you know, it's about getting a home for the scrolls, which was already a terrible reason yeah. to do this. But now it just seems to be he wants to kill all of humanity to spite Nick Fury. Yes. Who is this character? He's a clown. He's awful. He's just a clown man. Like, what? What the hell is going on? And it's funny because he says, the moment I realized you were a man of your word, and then there's like a gap, and then he says, you should have kept your promise. It's like, you just said the same thing twice. Shut up. Yeah. You do this all the time, too. wasting Gambling. precious oxygen. But, um... Yeah, that whole crazy nonsense speech was just him basically saying, I'm allowed to kill everybody because I don't like you. Like, what the fuck? It's a non sequitur. It's the biggest non sequitur in history. It's like, I don't understand what how they I got there. What were they with this character? What Even they by thinking? Marvel standards, this is pretty bad. Yep. It makes me wonder how many people out there think that this is, oh, what an interesting villain about betrayal be. and... People turned oh, yeah, on this. There's gotta pretty, be. Pretty instantly. People like, turned, the Marvel yeah, subreddit hated this. 
It, I mean, it, it is fascinating. This one is the one, and I, I don't yeah, even I think, think it's this it one. I think I think it's just critical mass, right? How how much can you? How many times can you have this happen where you get really hyped up, the thing comes out, and it's actually not very good? But because like, how many about times it. can that? Yeah. Of course, just how many times can that happen until you look back and go, holy shit, there has been, like, nothing good for two years. Yeah, like, yeah. it's that <laughs> sudden realization that you can't look back on any of these projects that have come out and, like, and it, you know, it might like, be latch onto like, anything. Every, well, and, and, every corner of the MCU has now been, every corner, in terms of from magic to cosmic to, like, quantum. ground level to quantum to, uh, yeah, like, and then and then different tones. From like comedy to action adventure to like thriller to like a any any potential different thing that you could cling to the hope of maybe it'll be different because it is purportedly different and then it fails. How many times can that happen until you know enough is enough? Basically, I think that's all that's happened. It's not that this is the worst one because it kind of can't be compared to you know something like Multiverse of Madness, but it might just be that it was like the last straw, you know. Maybe yeah. with stuff like multi, maybe multiverse of madness was it had a sort of complexity and multi-layered nature of its story that made it kind of difficult for a lot of people to just walk in, think it's bad and leave. You know, there's this assumption that oh, it does all sort of make sense, it all does work together. It can't no, possibly it be like broken at every level. Everybody seems to agree that the writing sucks, but that the direction was good. That's the kind which, of um, that's still the annoying part, though. Like when you read the subreddit, it's like decisions on what happened. They're like, uh, it's because they're less in interconnected. There's too many projects. That's the problem. They put out too many at once. You know, like there's like hardly anyone going like they're just really badly written. Yeah, that's the main problem. And they're also kind of spitefully written, unfortunately. <laughs> where yeah. we're at now. If that's not revealed after this show, then people just aren't paying attention. Like, this is spite a TV series. This I mean, spite was the villain. The, vi the villain wants to kill everybody yeah. because he's mad. <sighs> he's just mad. Yeah. That... Would you say this is more spiteful than She-Hulk? Where, where are you guys Oof. feeling now? Oh, uh, She-Hulk is more spiteful. I gotta give it to She-Hulk, I think, yeah. I'd say She-Hulk still wins. She -Hulk the fact that the show is oddly... Well, it's just the show is... The, a lot of the show's contents is dictated by people the writers didn't like. Uh, it's like a kind of fascinating instance of the show being significantly the consequence of the insecurity of the writers. Yeah, so you're right. Every, yeah. every aspect of that show is spiteful in terms of the writing, where this is just limited to Fury mainly. So, yeah, I guess that's true. So, uh, Fury's response to all of that is, You're right. I knew within a few years there was no planet I could find you, so I had to build out a place for you on Earth. And it's like, shut I don't up, believe you. Yeah, we already know it's not true. It's not even a belief. We know it's not true. We don't have to yeah, see a planet it. even. You've we've shown seen. us these places. And of course, it's, it's fascinating to think about how all of these things are being said by Gaia and not Nick Fury. Yes, yeah. keep that in mind. All the more confusing. But I think the show considers these to be accurate. I think yes. that's what the show believes. That these are accurate statements, even though they're not being levied by Nick. Gravik says, why didn't you get us a place on Earth? And then Gaia as Fury says, because it's easier to save the lives of 8 billion people than it is to change the hearts and minds of them. I think the implication so is, what she's saying is that it was easier for Fury to just pick humans over Skrulls instead of trying to convince humans to live with Skrulls. It was easier for Nick Fury to choose humans over Skrulls than to convince humans to live with Skrulls. I don't see how that has anything to do with finding a planet, though, unless it's meant to they be... They could have gone to with... New Asgard. Just uh, drop yeah, them of off. Course. Or give, yeah, just... And, and then, of course, the, if, if there's a concern with the Kree, which is never brought up in this, the only time that we hear about the Kree is at the very end of this show. So they're, they're like a non-factor in this. If there's a concern about we take them to another planet, the Kree will find them and attack them, how is that not the same concern here? Like, Captain Marvel isn't here. They could come back. And they oh, would be and... difficult to stop. Yeah, Captain Marvel doesn't get any fucking heat for all this when she took personal responsibility to yeah. take care of them. And, and she, she's I'm the hearing. one who goes out into space. She's the one who can go around, fly around in space, yep. is impervious to harm. Meanwhile, Nick Fury is a human being. He is a... a an old, exhausted, a, depressed, an useless old human being. part and of a person. they pointed out. Like, Captain Marvel gets absolutely no flack when she is more responsible than he is. Yeah, I don't think there's a single scene where they acknowledge that. 
Nope, they don't. It's It has nothing to do with her. It's all about Nick Fury, which is bizarre when the whole arc that Captain Marvel had was that she was fighting them under false pretenses, essentially, felt responsible for it, and promised to find them a home. Fury didn't really... Uh, like, Fury is helping you. He doesn't really, like, owe you, you know. He probably does now after essentially using you, you know, to do all of his espionage stuff. Like, it made as, that it, up. like almost indentured servitude. But again, that's something that the show just made up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Based on what we had, like, it should have definitely... W going into this show, it should have been much more on her shoulders to get them. She's got much more... Like like yeah. you said, like she actually has the agency to go and get things done. She can serve. And she has more of a responsibility. Mm -hmm. She has a better network for it. Was... She actually has, like, interstellar yep. friends. Yeah, whereas yeah. Fury... And, and she can just move a lot more freely than Fury can. Speed of it's, light it's, or it's, she, it should have been her responsibility, but for some reason it became... For some reason, Nick Fury's history has been significantly altered to be oriented around the Skrulls when it never used to be the case. Nope. That just never used to be the case. The Skrulls didn't exist until Captain Marvel. They were never considered until Captain Marvel. Well, remember Marvel. that? We shot on that film for retconning. This, this yep. fucking child's this is, play compared to this. It is we remarkable how little, how little Captain... Like... Just having it be that the Avengers were named after Carol, so like that is very, crazy. that's very low on the scale yeah. of retcons yeah. at this point. Yeah. As someone How in the chat just highlighted, is he going to bring this up with Carol in, in the Marvel? No, or like, then I, nope. I, doubt, hey, Carol, I doubt that anything nope. is going to acknowledge it. All of Earth was almost nuked by the Skrulls. And she'd just be like, huh. That's <laughs> your problem, not mine. You Fury. failed them, yeah, Fury. Some, you failed them. There. Yeah, she'll double down on shitting on him too. Like that's probably how the Marvels is gonna start. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you got all that absolute insanity, and then he says, "Do you know what I felt right before?" And she, use the term "flaked off." Feels weird, but sure. He says, "What's that?" And remember, this is Gaia as Fury. She says, "Well, he says whatever." Relief. I felt relief that I didn't have to fight anymore. That I finally had a way out. But you're right, I wasn't brave. You know why I came back to Earth? It was you. You're the youngest Skrull on my team. I felt responsible for you. I should have taught you that you should never give up the fight, but because I failed you and your people, I decided to give you the harvest. All the Avengers DNA. Doesn't that just sound like a bunch of crap? Like, none of it connects? It's just, yeah, it's all just yeah, a bunch of, like, random words. You didn't I have a theme. You did not have a theme in this show about the idea of fighting for what you believe is right, even if that effort may prove to be futile in the end. That was not a theme of this show. Yeah, no. Where the fuck did that come from? That's just I have no clue. Out of absolutely nowhere. Yeah. And and saying like I felt relief that I didn't have to fight anymore. I was free. I had a way out. I was like that's 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 not true. I don't know what that's character you're true. describing? That ain't Fury. <laughs> But hey, at least it could just be that Gaia was lying. That's the that's well, this, the that's thing. Out. Like, is Gaia just fucking around? <laughs> like, is she oh, just? Well, well, it could just be that this is what she believes, and she's wrong. But I don't think I think the show considers these to be true. Yeah, I think, I think the, the show, show believes this these right. to be true. This is the one line that shouldn't be open to interpretation. Well, like, we should yeah, know what this, the hell's going on here. This is the yeah, hero of the, the villain fucking... having their final confrontation. The fucking hero is not even in the room. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's just, in the room. It's yet crazy. some imposter is like telling. Uh, yeah, it's I have no idea what. OC yeah, is in the room. The OC is in the room and, and it's about yeah. to get well, crazy. The craziest part, I guess, is like, in a good show, this would have been a really cool way to know exactly what she believes about Fury. And then they yeah. could talk about it at some point. But no, like, we are set to basically assume my bet would be that this is what the writer believes that Fury felt and that uh, Gaia was aware of it. Because remember, when yeah. you take the personality, you still get, was it like their recent memories or something? I guess so. So she might be tapping into that, but who knows and who cares? Because why would she be tell? What is the strategic advantage of telling him this anyway? She's hoping that he'll be nice and leave if she gives him the uh, the harvest. That's what she said. Because well, I say she. You know what I mean? She says, "Go to some other planet, leave Earth alone, leave it now, call off your strike, save your people, and uh, you know, take the harvest and get out of here." So that means then the. Like, what if he took it off her, like, uploaded it, moved her off the machine, of course, exactly. used yep. it, and then actually said, like, all right, I'm leaving, thank you, bye, and then did? Is like, w would that have been considered, like, mission success? There's no way, because she wants to kill him. Exactly. So the plan isn't that, the plan is to just kill him, which means I hope he activates the machine with me in it. 
Yeah. And that all of this speech I... has nothing to do with anything. This speech is all bullshit. No, it's just pointless. It's a waste of time. Complete misdirection. But I mean, yeah, that's that's what's about to happen. Well, it's just a delay, if anything. It's like it does nothing. It's like we're gonna get yep. to the same ending anyway. Um, all right. I shouldn't have skipped ahead. We'll just go to the machine is activated. But before we get to that, this is something we already knew and kind of talked about. But I'm just gonna read out the list quickly. He scans through the DNA, and we see in grand total. Ghost, Captain America, Corvus Glaive, Thanos, Outrider, Frost Beast, Valkyrie, Gamora, Winter Soldier, Drax, Korg, Chitari, Proxima Midnight, Captain... Wait, did I say... Yeah, Captain Marvel, oh, Ebony geez. Moore, Cull Obsidian, Mantis, Abomination, Hulk, Chitari, Thor, Groot, Winter Soldier. What the fuck are they get? <laughs> what? So, I mean, it's yeah, so, so, just already, based on that list, it's like, okay, Jesus. fucking hell... Oh, what for those, the hell have you done? For you those know? who want to know what, what is Outrider, Outrider is those dog alien creatures in... Uh, the alien dogs. In Infinity yeah. War and Endgame, yeah. Yeah. All of those get turned into quote-unquote powers, which, by the way, still doesn't make any fucking sense. When you put... We, we kind of went over as the best example, I think, or at least the clearest one for now. You put Drax as a being into, like, DNA, and then you extract from him a power, and you get, what, his arm... What like, is happening? What is that? Hi. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, is is this now the point where we just talk about how you've destroyed, you, you've... What do you even start? Well, somebody just said, wouldn't the radiation have destroyed the DNA in that ball? I don't uh, know. That's an interesting point, right? Because the ionizing radiation would have, like, it would have the effect on the... I mean, what does it even mean to have a vial that has a bunch of different DNA mixed together? Wouldn't that significantly yeah. contaminate each of the individual pieces of I DNA? I don't have like, any I mean, fucking... This is... I think most people would be like, it's sci-fi, guys. It's it's sci-fi. That's I, how okay, it was, sci-fi. Sure, okay, right. if they want to yeah. say that, fine. But when he picks it out out of the cemetery thing, I thought it was really weird that he just puts the harvest, that's the most important thing in the world, in his fucking pocket, just like casually, instead of actually <laughs> having it in something safe. He yeah. just pockets the damn thing if it's supposed to be that important. For like, some reason, Gravik is CGI scroll Gravik, but yeah. for some reason, Amelia Clark is still Amelia Clark. Still Fury. Uh, I don't know why. And still Fury. When wouldn't 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 he have also seen her doing the big floop in there? Because you hear a lot of the <laughs> sounds. So wouldn't he be like, wait, what the fuck was that? What <laughs> should oh, yeah. be doing? The bloop, bloop. It's Why all insane, you but you know, just to, so everyone understands, because we've been saying this is Gaia the whole time, that means these two now have all of the powers all of basically powers. all of the MCU. Which means that right now these two people in this room are by a considerable margin the most powerful people in this universe. Yeah, by like the only thing that can beat them margin. is gonna be the Kevin bot from She Hulk. That's about it. <laughs> basically the only thing that could yeah because when we're talking about so already captain marvel powers puts you really high up on that list yeah but I then know. you combine that with like th like the because thanos was in the dna too yep. thanos is just seemingly innate strength uh you know drax is seemingly innate strength you just stack all of those on top and then like ghost phase powers you have like abomination powers you have uh ebony more telekinesis powers yeah. Um. Who? What? Who else do they have? Oh, uh, of course you got Extremis. You've got group powers. They've got Korg powers. The Frost do. They've got <laughs> Korg they, they've powers. Got, yeah, like it's. <laughs> I well, I just. That was the list as I wrote it out. I don't know if I might have missed some or whatever, but. Yeah. So like she is she is, because of course Gravik's dead. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> kills him somehow. Somehow I don't even know how it's possible we'll, for her to kill him. We'll show point. it. It's, I don't know what the um, fuck happened. But I, you got to show yeah. them the flu bomb. Oh, you we'll get there. It. Yeah, for now, that whole fight deserves. We're just trying so to now, establish so that this is the that's case. That's what you got to understand, right? Is that Gaia? Gaia? Who? Who is she? I'd be. I'd be interested if anybody could like provide any summary of that character that isn't like. What could you even say about her? Has stolen the powers of all of the Avengers. She didn't earn them. She just took them. Yeah, she just went she's into the machine them. and pressed the button, she's, and now she's, she's got the most them. powerful and being she, in the universe. Who doesn't seem to have much sympathy for humanity at all is now unbeatable, seemingly. It's handed to her. Just gets the powers, the OC essentially, like gets all um, of the powers. <laughs> a quick update on the other scene is that all of the agents are taken out except for Rhodey. 
and Rhodey has a gun on him from Olivia Coleman, and then Fury is talking to the president about how he needs to believe him and call off the strike. They keep cutting back to it, like, four fucking times, and that is the scene every time. It's Mr. President, call it off, and then yeah. Rhodey goes, don't call it off, and he goes, do call it off, don't call it off, do call it off, don't call it off, until... The whole time, it's just like, why don't you shoot uh, Rhodey? Just shoot him. Well, and all that happens, I think, at the end is Rhodey, like, headbutts Olivia tries Coleman or whatever, gun. tries yeah. to get a gun, and Fury shoots him in the head, revealing he's a scroll. That's like it. So I have to waste the five minutes. Yeah, What's we can. We don't have to talk about that scene because nothing happens. Yeah. This scene, the however, the point that needs to be made is that they should have shot Rhodey. There was no tension, but this scene, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So this is Gravik realizing. Wait a minute. How are you doing that? And then, guys, we're gonna show you all of this. Okay, just nice and slowly. Yeah. Look what Fury does. And this is Wait. how they decided creatively to manifest the powers of all the people that they've been. Taken. Look at that. Whoa. That, ladies and gentlemen, I believe, is a Hulk arm. Yeah, that's a Hulk arm. You've got Hulk powers, so already you're one of the most powerful people in the MCU. You just got Hulk powers. By the way, the, the theme what? kicks in hard here. Yeah, the theme. Uh, like, yeah. Secret Invasion! Yeah! I think it's a slightly different theme. It's like, oh my god, this is. <laughs> it was like, funny. Yeah, it wasn't actually the Wonder Woman theme, you're right, yeah. Someone just yeah. said, like, come on, guys, really? This is like, this is so funny. I'm showing you this, and it's real. Man. This is real. Yeah. <laughs> He's a charger from Left 4 Dead. I can't remember, $200 million production budget here. This was their vision. Million. This was their vision. And then, yeah. yeah, by the way, yeah, the, it's Fury the Smoke, and then he starts turning into Gaia. I don't know how he and... got here so quickly, though. I don't how know. did she get here so She flew quickly? with her Captain like... Marvel powers. Flew. Oh, yeah, I guess so. But um, then, of course... Gravik yeah, says, to... You! Like, in an evil, I am villain her voice. Captain Marvel powers. And then she says, because this can't resist just being shit, she says, You killed my mother and my father. You are oh, flailing. You are weak. Yeah, this is the dialogue. It's so it's, awful. It's trash. Who is this character? How much screen time has she had in this show? Like 10, 20 the minutes? The maybe? show itself feels like it's Good been about a two and a half hour like, movie. Please, it's been yeah. it. barely anything. <laughs> yeah. But yes. Now you gotta, you gotta show the flume bomb. We're nearly there. Well, yeah, I gotta. Well, wait, wait. Based on the. um. Oh, let me press live here. Um, Why is it? Is it off sync or something? There you go. Look at yeah, that. Did they... Look at man, look at that looks background. Like shit, look, you are not there. Look at that. that. Bad. Oh, it's so bad. You're so smoky. I feel so bad for her. Oh look, extremis <laughs> arm is powering up. Everyone yeah. run. It's getting spooky. Why do you still look like a human when he looks like an alien? Why yeah, why do you treat this version of yourself like it is Gaia? Like that's you. This isn't Someone. you. This is a false this is someone else. It's some, some random lady, lady whose appearance some used random for lady. Yeah. terrorist reasons mostly. But and, like, and we'll has... keep using until the end of time. Oh so, yeah, then he gets see, the core guard, doesn't he? Well no, it's a group yeah. arm and an oh, abomination arm. arm. Yeah. You see yeah. and he has abomination ears now. <laughs> oh, look at that's amazing. Well, what that. year is that's Abomination? Amazing. No, that's Why? amazing. That's Abomination. Like, this is just disgusting. Oh! Abomination. Yeah, truly an abomination. There it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is that? Okay, I, I, I see your Abomination arm. I raise you a Drax arm. Yes. Look out, coach. It's a charger. What were they thinking? What, on, what were they me, thinking? Let me get this on AB repeat. We got to... <laughs> this is the ult this is like the ultimate like like um like member berry don't you, yeah, you recognize the thing ensemble look it this is galador in the mcu <laughs> this was one of the oh, worst yeah, well, decisions i'm gonna have a drax arm look at that one of the Why would you choose to have made. a Drax arm right now? But like, you remember, like Drax is like those are like aren't they tattoos he made by scarring himself? I guess no. They're not, they, they're not, shut up. They're not a part of his DNA. DNA <laughs> like that's his not... DNA. That's how tattoos work. The fuck. Why wouldn't you have the Hulk <laughs> arms on all the time? Why would you Why ever would have you a Drax have arm? What would be the point compared to the Hulk What's arm? The God, he's exactly. not, they're they're just never arm. gonna use. Just like, Captain you know? Marvel powers in general. Why yeah. are you using? Why aren't you using the binary powers like Do straight you... away? Do you catch as well, like, the reason it looks so terrible is they had to make a Drax arm the size of Amelia Clark's arm. Because yeah. <laughs> she's so tiny. It's just, I what the what fuck are we looking do. at? Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Look at that. Uh, on our body. 
Oh my god. And she's now, trying <laughs> She's trying to do the I'm, I'm super the badass context. look. Like look yeah. at look no at this. Context, you think she's like infected or something. Like, but again, it's just right? like who is this character? She's this character that was on board with Gravik's plan of nuking all of humanity until she found out that human beings have like family members and people in their lives that they care about. And then she didn't really help to try and prevent anything, and she's only here to get revenge, and she enabled that by getting given the DNA of all of the Avengers so that she could steal their powers for herself. Mm -hmm. And you're meant to be like, oh, yay, woohoo, Gaia. How exciting. Oh, my favorite, Gaia. My favorite is... character, Gaia. Gaia, she Secret murdered Asian. thousands of people. Like, this is bullshit. Yeah. Do you see the way that it, like... <laughs> It the it gets cool, like the the scene between the Draxom and her like leather jacket. Yeah. It looks so it's fucked up. It's, it's yeah, so it's bad around there. Ugh, you know the guy who worked on that knew. The guy, knew. the, the knew. several people who worked on this knew exactly what this looked like. They were like, "Well, fuck it." Can you I mean, hide it with the smoke? This looks like distinctly more rough than like any other scene in the film, which makes me the film, the show, which makes me wonder if this was a reshoot. It does feel like. Look at know, how bad this thing. looks. Yeah. Oh, Something look with the tracks on. Look at her go. What's her right arm? What is oh, look, 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 look what power that is. Oh, she used ghost power. She used ghost powers because she was on the battlefield at the Battle of Earth, right? No, and it makes she you wasn't. think, like, you remember, ghost has barely any control over it at times. It, like, ruins yep. her brain, but you've got what full of the static of it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, has to do with her being like tied to the quantum realm. It's like, are you now? Like, is that <laughs> is that a permanent affliction that you have? I, no, I like this. It's like, oh shit! When they had the same powers, it's I like, like <laughs> he just seems like he's struggling over there. <laughs> Look at him. It's like, oh, my abomination arm isn't good enough. Now time for core garb. It's like, why? It's an upgrade. Oh god, and because you know that I am all the Jedi and I am all the Sith. This is like Marvel did it. I am all yeah, of the I heroes. Am all the Avengers. Yeah. 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 Now she's they doing. Didn't say it, but they did it. This is especially funny, right? It's like welcome Frost Beast. <laughs> like this is what Frost is Beast just... mode. Okay, and then what's the other arm? Is like what's the? Is it Drax? It's cool, uh, but no, small cool because she's not as big as uh. As Gravik. Yeah, like oh my god, look at that. Korg arm bigger. as well. Yeah. Korg is like a joke character, and now they're specific. Clean. They really want his rock off. He's a strong guy. He is a yeah, he's strong and everything, like, but like, come on, this is like a whole new level. Why would you have a Korg yeah. arm? This oh, is yeah, just remember Korg. Yeah. Remember yeah. Korg? Yeah, exactly. Well, showing remember you Korg. all of the powers to remind you when she should just be using Captain uh, uh, Captain Marvel's powers right from the beginning. Of course. Do you think there are people no, who reviewed this them. positively who would just like, God, this is hard. Like, <laughs> this is so good because... Ooh, uh, I yeah. because we're reminded of how far we've come and the amazing cast of characters that we've seen along the way in our journey. Find some the way MCU. to dance around it. Oh, oh she stabbed oh, him. Oh, look. oh look at the spin. Ow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Again, again, why is he so shit? He's the only one who showed like combat ability throughout the series. They have I mean, equal like, strength. strength. They have equal. Oh, strength. Oh, here comes my favorite one. Yeah, so. The Groot arm's not working out, <laughs> even though he never used the Groot arm, like, at all. No. But here comes the Ebony Moor arm, and look! There's rings! It's got the rings on it! <laughs> How? It's he got can, the rings. He, the rings are a part he of his morphed, DNA. He morphed wow. rings onto... Yeah, look. So fucking dumb. And, I, and, and also, I guess, when you get these abilities, you instantly master them. You yeah. instantly know how to use them. You, you have telekinesis now. And really it's, powerful yeah. telekinesis as well. Yeah. He's this messing is around really... with good arms when he has that. Oof. Oh, upside the head. And yeah, he just extremises <laughs> back to full health, because that's what that yeah. does, and you, I guess. You know, look, there's no drawback again. So, you are thinking at this point, we're in a Jack Sparrow Barbosa situation. Like, there's, nobody can kill each other right now. This, But then the show just decides that's not true, actually. Nah. It's just change their mind. Oh, I said it, it. It. I think this probably gets the accolade of worst fight in the MCU. I think this is probably what threw people off. Right? Is this just feels like bullshit? It's not even Fury. I, I think, like, Fury's not even involved. <laughs> like, well, it's you know what is so happening many reasons, here. Basically, yeah. about like this this rando character that could only have any significance because of meta reasons. Essentially, because the actress who's playing her is famous. 
is now got all the powers. She just has all of them. Every single one. She just, she just got them. She is she now the, the machine and pressed the button. Character. She I knew she'd have flat armor. I knew they'd favor her because she's a really popular actress. I, did, I never, never expected this. this. Never no, imagined. yeah, I would never have guessed this. How what what armor she got there? Danny's the strongest person and, and in the course, MCU. And of course, is this not a complete betrayal of the promise of the show? This is the serious, grounded, you know, d television show. And then it ends with this. Most insane yeah, this bullshit, is the yeah. Andor of the MCU. Look at this. Big CGI fight where they throw every what, um, member berry that they can at you. Is that a uh, Cull Obsidian? Or is it, like, what arm is that? I, I actually don't know. That might, uh, probably, yeah, it probably is that. Probably is. Look, why, why did you make this the visual? That is her running around in, like, just a regular human. <laughs> oh, look, he's got his Thanos arm on. Then he's got his CGI. Yeah, he does get the Thanos arm. <laughs> look at that. Why oh can't he just God. summon a Thanos arm that has the Infinity Stones on the gun? Yeah, yeah, the ring. Infinity yeah, Stones should be part of the DNA, yeah. why not? Look, yeah. Why is it that I only summon the arm? when they went I straight would... Dragon Ball Z and I just, like, my jaw dropped. Yeah, or is yeah we're doing Captain Thanos Marvel cock. powers now. It's like, why did you, you open with me. this, you losers? This is yeah. worse than Neo and Smith in, in Revolutions. Oh, like, God, yeah. I, I, I'll oh. throw that in there. It's worse. God. It's so bad, and everyone should have advised against this. What were they thinking? Why were you ever oh, doing the idea of bringing all the powers oh. into a machine that can just plug them into scrolls? What insane nonsense! Why would it be, how is it a thing that you could just get Captain Your Marvel's bubs. DNA and get her like binary powers? How is that even possible? Don't know. Yeah, it's just oh god, everything about it. Look at how fake everything <laughs> looks. <laughs> you imagine, dude? Yet, imagine um, what it was like to film this. Like they were both. Presumably on some strings and being hung up like around, moved around, and the camera moves around. Like we'll other. fill the rest in later. I guess so, but they're like, probably so everything. confused, like when they're filming these things. Like you just can you see? Can you see his hand it. there? What What does it look like? He's it's doing like grabbing underneath it's, her yeah. ear. It's supposed he's to look like he's strangling her, but it doesn't look like neck. that, does it? That's it. Right. It looks like he's grabbing it's the skin on her neck. Yeah. Yeah, he's pinching her, setting up the squeezer cheeks like that. Well, it's just it was emotional. shot in a way that wasn't going to work here. Where you've got her fighting like a CG dude. Is this yeah, it? Like, is look this at that. It? This is the the one that would throw a lot of people it? off too. Yeah, well, probably what. Well, yeah, it's coming. He's he's doing a strangle. She's going to need to do something to get out of this. You know. Oh, you got, here it comes. What do you got? Second wind. <laughs> yeah, the second wind. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> oh my well, god. I, what were they thinking? Marshmallows. It's uh, yeah. so those who don't. Antennas that allow her to do that. That's where the powers come Mantis, from. The antennas. Mantis. And she, she instantly. No, no, no. So, so if she powers on, how to use them? Well, yeah. So if she I can answer that, that Rags. That. It's what we see. Therefore, they just do it as a cue to us. Yeah. There's no thought behind how this works biologically. Right. As what I'm saying, this implies that the reason Mantis can do those things is because of the antennas. It does seemingly. Maybe imply it that, is. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, he's going to sleepy buys now. Oh, look, uh, he's, he's the full one down. Why does he wake up? He's a bit of sleep? yeah. Gravik's having some EB right sleeps. Gravik is so shit. I just he is. I don't even like this character, but he even even he didn't deserve this. Like you just come on, dude. <laughs> like fight back. It's yeah, do terrible. something. They think, they, something. Oh, they think that, they think that Gaia is so cool. Where's his look, second at look, look at look Gaia. at Gaia. Like, oh, this oh, is. Fuck, oh my god, he's so cool. Oh, we'll see you. Amelia, what are they doing? Oh my god. So Where are my well, and remember, she, she said this is the most fun she's had in the universe. She's drunk. That's a lie. Because they oh, gave what? her all of the powers. Yeah, of course. Take this paycheck and take this power, bitch. Drink your wine. Like, that's pretty much what happened here. This is atrocious. So much light and garbage on the screen. Well, it's, it's good because it helps cover up the the bad visual effects. Guys, check out your hero. Look at it go. Man, great. there's like barely an element of this that's real. <laughs> that's a real. That's a real that hero. That car is not real. No, that, that's. That it's, not I think real. It, it's just her face. That's the only thing that's real in that shot. It's like a slay queen. It's like I don't know. This goes beyond that. It, <laughs> someone in the chat just said they they made a character even more boring than Captain Marvel. Like. She is, it, characterization, yeah. we don't have anything. By the, part of the point of how this is a strange event is we don't know what she values or whose side she's on by the end of this series. She just killed Gravik. That's all. No idea what's going on. Yeah, that's it. And it's... 
What? Look at that. We got Ooh. Abomination <laughs> arm, and I think I'm not sure what the left I one think, is. I think the, I think it's maybe it's again? like a Colobsidian arm again. God, look at that! What are you Jeez. doing? Oh, it looks so bad. Look at those skinny legs. Using oh ghost powers again. Yeah, she's just so much better than Gravik for some reason. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. They could have at least put it, like, made an effort into making it like a, a stalemate of some kind. And just maybe she, we could have got some character out of her and the way she defeats him. But instead, she's just like, God. You love the, you, you look at the, the, like, the build of this guy. And, like, they have to make it so that she's dominated him in a fist fight. Yep. It looks so awkward. Yep. He's so tiny. He, he, looks, he, the looks, he looks like super chongus. He's like a he's a chongus looking alien fella. This guy is jacked and just still getting wrecked. Oh look, this is so try hard. Yep. Come on, fight oh, back! Oh, wow. Do something! Look at that. Do look at anything. that. Look so, at that. It's so so lame. <laughs> She's going so hard, like <laughs> roar. It's so lame. Yeah. Uh, what does he say? Oh, you're just like you, you. You're just like Talos. He says you're just like your like, father, just like them. She's not like she's not like she's Talos. Not like she's Talos. not like just regular well, people remember, at all. Talos's mistake <laughs> was being too merciful. So here she goes with her response to that. It's good. <laughs> it looks so bad. Oh, Why would this Amelia. do anything? Why would this work? Why wouldn't you just heal him? Well, what's funny oh, is it no. doesn't even look like it would have no. hit his heart. It looks like it hits his spine. Mainly, uh, and but like, his, why wouldn't this heal? Ribs. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if he's got, I mean, if he's got know. Captain Marvel powers, this shouldn't even work. This, this shouldn't work with him, Captain right? Marvel powers. You're right. Yeah. Um, not, not to mention all the other powers, Thanos powers, everything. Yeah, Thanos like, could tank on. beams from uh, uh, Captain Marvel. We've well, seen just, Thanos. And then, of course, several characters on top of that. We've seen Thanos get hit by the Hulk several times. He tanked that shit. Yet this fight starts with a big punch from a Hulk arm. Where it's like they didn't even factor that yeah. in. Like, just no. Look at this yeah, shit, man. There he is. <laughs> you oh, are pathetic. Oh. I win. Look at the pose. Oh, jeez. This is more smug than like any frame that she ever had as Daenerys. Like, this is like everything. Who is she? In one. Who is she? Who the fuck I don't are know who you? she is. <laughs> I'm saying, like, she's. This is this your is new queen. Of anime. Worship her. Worship her. Yeah, she's queen. great. This is good stuff. So yeah, did not expect. I remember when uh, the episode came out. Obviously, we hadn't watched uh, four, five, six at that point. But I saw a screenshot of the Drax arm, and I was like, "What in the fuck is happening? This How is did that happen?" Not real. I figured the it was idea a dream. From episode three, you get to that. <laughs> I figured it was a dream sequence or something. Yeah, you wouldn't think that. I didn't think it would be fucking real. What it's worth, it stayed decently grounded until it just went insane out the rails. Well, yeah, and they thought this was it, awesome, it, the people who made this, in terms they, of, like, they got, you know, the, you the, the, the writer-director teams. Mandatory. So I hope the CG people What was the knew. point of Fury in this whole show, with her getting <laughs> this payoff here? Well, know. it's just, again, think about the state of affairs. She is now the most powerful person in the MCU, and she participated in a scheme that got people killed, a lot of people Thousands. killed. And Thousands. And the plan that. was planned to kill all of humanity. Like, she... And and now she has all the powers and is unstoppable, basically. And she's just out there, at, like on Earth, potential having the potential to destroy <laughs> absolutely everything it's from powers that she stole. <laughs> yeah, uh, that roadie this face. Is the last character, <laughs> 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 this much. Keep that for a thumbnail. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, he. Who was the last character who actually earned their powers? Like, ah. <laughs> The fact that you Jane have to think Foster. Uh, oh, jeez. I'm thinking, actually, who was uh Because Cassie <laughs> just got the suit given to her. Uh, oh, well, no, she learned about the quantum realm while everybody was gone, so she, you know. Who, who else was there? Who's new? Uh, Shang-Chi kind of earned him, right? Like, he had to fight and get them from his dad. So, like, he kind of earned the, the rings. And, and, yeah, 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 he, sure. he probably Shang -Chi? earned him. Throw so, the bone. Yeah, Shang Chi can get that. Uh, I mean, Shuri had to remake the Black Panther flower thing. She <laughs> made that. Honestly, Shuri put uh, in more work than most. I would actually put oh, Shuri. Oh, so you know the what? Yeah, shit, I guess but... she. I guess she earned them too. Yeah, she, Shuri. <laughs> she, she earned them. 
Yeah, she had to recreate I, it. You know what sucks about her? I think she was literally the best part of the first Black Panther, and like her character has just been hijacked because of the situation. <laughs> I, I I thought like her being the little sister with um T'Challa would work. The whole scientist thing was fucking retarded. They never explained that. But her chemistry with everybody is just the only thing that I think worked for me. And they've just turned her into this now. <laughs> I mean, again, as as has been pointed out, like this character is the this is not power creep. This is like power leap. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah, this, is, she's this, is, just... this is what you would point to as essentially you gave your OC all the powers. This is the type of thing you do in a game that literally destroys your <laughs> own investment in the game. Like you're too powerful now. Like it's no. Well, it's a thing that, you, like, know, you wouldn't like, want to be this strong in an RPG. Like you put <laughs> like, the cheat code on. Yeah. Up. Now nothing's yeah, challenging like, or yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah and like now you've got to do the one punch man Saitama. Except except Saitama earned his powers. He he exercised for three years. You know, like but it, but it is now the one punch man problem of like she is so powerful that I guess you're gonna have to try and deal with stories pertaining to her apathy about life and existence because they she's so powerful she can defeat everybody in one punch. No, I mean they're not gonna. I don't think they even realize what they've done. I don't think they fully understand that they've created the effect like, the most it would have on a person to gain all of those abilities and be a god. Like but never mind. Because they're like, not capable. And I don't even know when we'll see Gaia again. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, what knows. are they going to do with this? Oh, uh, I don't... I, I mean, this, not show be failure, so this show has failed in the most yeah. spectacular way. And it, that we're probably not getting another Ant-Man, which makes you wonder what they're going to do oh, with no. all of this. I don't know. I don't know. Also, bad move, Olivia Coleman. Getting <laughs> outsmarted like that. Yeah. Fury got the gun off the president, and then before on, boom, purple blood. Yep, purple so, blood instantly, instantly purple. So this means this is the death of the roadie that we thought was roadie mm -hmm. for the last. Wait, we don't see, wait, we're about to find out. We're yeah, we got we got out. nothing on that yet. It's fine. Strike called <laughs> off, and it's funny. He does it with Olivia Coleman's phone. He just he's like, "Give me a phone." And I'm just like, "Is it just a number you can call?" I guess. Five. It's whatever. like, "Hi, I'm the president. Don't <laughs> mind that I'm calling from." <laughs> Hi, I'm the president. We're calling off World War Three. We're putting a no on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so Gaia starts to free all of the prisoners. You know. That's a nice thing to do. Yeah, now we see, we're going to make her righteous. Yep. We yeah, see so Guy good. from Shop who did the paintings and stuff. He's here. Look at him. Oh, that's good. We got him. We see uh, this lady. I don't remember who this is, but this lady's free now. That's nice. A lady, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't remember her either. Was she, she in was, the council? Uh, she was... Gotta be. Well, she, she, got, she got special screen time for release. I feel like she should be someone important. Is that her? The lady who just got freed? I can't remember. And look who it is, everybody. <gasps> He's releasing Rhodey. Oh my goodness. Wait, and what? Look, what? In a hospital gown. We've we've seen Rhodey in a hospital gown before. It was right after the uh, battle at the airport in Civil War. Mm. I think we should just um, cut to the chase on that one. Uh, the director himself has confirmed he is indeed that era of time. That's what's supposed to be so evoked by this outfit. That, oh, Endgame the, Rhodey was a scroll? Halfway and through Infinity Endgame. War. Well, well, yeah, so, sorry, so to be absolutely clear, he fall, Vision shoots the, the suit, he crashes, the spine breaks, he goes into the MRI machine, and then Tony and Vision go to the toilet, and the scroll comes in, and goes, and takes his place, and they kidnap Rhodey and take him to this warehouse. And he has been, he has been captive for possibly ten years. Ten years of his history is gone, including his best friend dying to save the universe. Which means it's now time to talk about in. everything chronologically that oh. they have now completely fucked. Oh my god. It's only okay, I got a couple of notes. But the first one is just this the smaller one, just Rhodey on his way to healing them legs of his or getting used to them with Tony. All of that didn't happen. Alright, that's just one. That's a oh, smaller man. one. Put it on the you know, I really like that. Wow. Too, um, Rhodey choosing to side with the Avengers against Thunderbolt Ross. That's not a thing that actually happened. That was just a scroll. That was a like scroll. a payoff for his arc. And they yeah, that's not, that wasn't Rhodey, that's someone else. And never mind on that. Awesome. Um, you remember when Rhodey said to Captain Marvel, like, you haven't, like, where were you when all this happened, what the fuck? And then Captain Marvel says back to him, there's a lot of planets out there that need me, okay? You weren't the only one. And he actually kind of backs down. That makes less sense now. Because as a scroll, oh, yeah, as a she scroll. would have promised oh. to take care of them. 
And so he should be like, you made a promise. And, or, you know, he, there's, there's resentment there that should exist that isn't shown in that scene. Uh, it's funny, some people say that scene makes more sense now, makes less sense now. No, no, he would, he would less. roast her. He'd, it'd be totally personal for him. Then you get the scene with Rhodey and Nebula basically having a heart-to-heart -heart about the fact that both of them have got mechanical elements to their bodies because of, you know, different things that they've lived through. Uh, I quite like that moment in Endgame. And there's the argument, it's improved now because he's talking about him being a scroll. It's like, no, he wasn't. He was talking no, about losing no, his legs, at least functionality how, how, of them. Where did so he get it's that It's actually from? being destroyed, is what that has happened. That scene's been destroyed. Yes, mm. that's gone too. And then there comes the big one. Uh, he, Rhodey was not there when Tony died, of course. So he that was Rhodey that was there, that was sad that was a when fucking his scroll. died, that was this... That yeah, was that some was alien scroll. twat pretending to be Rhodey. Wow, this pretending fucking Rhodey sad about alive. the sacrifice. Yep. This guy and doesn't know about, Tony's dead. Think about this... Well, think about 10 years of his life is gone. gone. He's lost 10 years here with somebody who's stolen his identity. Okay, you guys convinced me. Rhodey is the most fucked over wasted. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, this yeah. I don't, I don't a, think it's, it. I don't think it's this even is, beatable. This it. How can you beat I, this? I, I did until this. Like this was. I it, thought it was like, up for discussion, but no, he's at the top. He's been like, robbed of a decade of his life, he, including some he of already. He was already limited. The poor fucking guy had barely any payoffs, and they just stole most of them. They stole most of them to have a reveal. The specific scenes you mentioned, I can't believe. Like. As soon as you mentioned them, I could picture them in my head because I know what they achieved and why they were there. And just to think, Tony Stank! We don't get the Tony Stank joke. Uh, he wasn't happened. there for that. That was a fucking alien, <laughs> yeah. Some bullshit. And so obviously you have Rhodey is not at Iron Man's funeral. That's just some alien. It's it, <laughs> like rewatching that scene. It's like, why is it just some of... alien here? Well, Fuck off. Remember, What's it's, weird it's is that that alien... alien... ...to kill everyone there. That alien might have known Tony Stark long enough to develop his own parallel, Which is its own weird, story parasitic friendship that we didn't get to Tony even know Stark. about. Is no, it, no. It's so long, it's, right? It, that person is comfortable with nuking the planet that saved yep. the universe! Remember, yeah, keep in mind, Rhodey Skrull is the most villainous character in this series outside of Gravik. Yeah! He's, you a, he's, like a, he's like a soulless twat who wants to kill everything. It's insane. Who saved the universe! Yep. These humans oh on this planet God. saved the universe! And you're just like, ah, oh, fuck him. Oh Nick Fury made a promise. Nick Fury, who was instrumental Remember, in saving half of the universe, including half the scrolls, half of them would have been but like, like deleted. Talking about individual human moments. Up? Remember when they all return in Endgame and they all realize that uh, Black Widow's killed herself to to save the universe? That they all have that like moment appreciating it and understanding it. It's like, was he, he was just like, no, oh, these humans are so exactly. stupid and lame. Yeah, I look forward to killing them all. He was hiding his smirk. Exactly. Oh, wow. alien, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was laughing. He literally turned away. He's probably cracking up. It's so terrible. I can't, this, I never even thought about this. After oh yeah. Was, they, didn't, they didn't think about this. That's there's the there's one, one yeah. thing that's improved. Someone just mentioned in chat. So all those shit jokes he made against Thor were just the alien roadie. It wasn't regular roadie. Oh, alien. thank God. That's the right. still lining. So yeah, we, we saved it. But uh, yeah, so then the big thing to realize after all this, which we could have put in together already, but it's worth saying explicitly, Colonel Rhodes, Rhodey, he doesn't know Tony's dead. Yeah. No, nope. yep. that's something that he's probably going to find out about off screen. I probably would be, I, 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 like, text him. this shitty company surprises me every time, but I legit would be surprised if they don't show him understanding that reality in Armor Wars or whatever the fuck thing is next. Well, the reality yeah. that 10 years of his life was stolen, including his best well, so friend the, dying to save the universe. Apparently the directors talked about, yeah, you know, who, who knows what he'll be seen dealing with in Armor Wars, that's where you'll next see Rhodey. It's just yeah. like, hey, th fuck you. imagine being past oh, this, you'd be like, uh, <laughs> if they don't address that. Oh, they well, will, just, but like it could be what fleeting. What is the writer gonna do? What can, what are they to do now that they don't been know? This? He's been out of the game for that long. For a That's decade, insane. he's been out of the game. Is anyone gonna tell him about all of the shit that's happened? I doubt it. This no, isn't even like the not. roadie we knew. This is half of him at this point. Uh, and it's if more that. than half of him because Iron Man One is two thousand eight, Civil War is twenty sixteen. And this is like 2025 or 2026. For most of his history in this universe, he's been a scroll. For insane. most of what we've seen. Because again, the, the, the MCU tends to forget that there was a five-year gap between Infinity War and Endgame. 
they often forget that, that that was five years, which is a long time. Think about everything that happened between 2012 and 2017 in, my, in the MCU. Dude, they're going to play it for laughs. They're going to say a giant purple man came in and killed everybody. And and then un they unkilled everybody with time travel and quantum mechanics. And there's also a multiverse and a wizard that can travel through it. And he's going to be like, huh, so that just yeah. happened. They'll make a joke out of it. Instead oh, of probably. actually using this, like they, I can honestly see them making a joke out of it and just moving on. When this is like, as far as I'm concerned, this is Rhodey's character going forward. Like this is probably one of the most potent things they could do if they actually give this to someone with a brain and do something with this. Like imagine what he would feel with all that lost time. Like he's waking up to figure out he doesn't even fucking know Tony's dead. Like this is blowing my mind right now. It's such a fuck up, but it's there's a little bit of an opportunity here, and I know they won't take it. They'll just fuck it up with a joke or something. Um, question. Yeah. Can you, if you're a scroll, can you hide from vision? <laughs> can you hide from vision? That's an interesting uh, point. I figure they're going to make technology. The Mind you Stone? Can't hide like, from shouldn't vision be like, oh, you're well, not really. Wanda? Wanda could read your mind and be like, what the hell? <laughs> what the fuck's <laughs> going on in there? <laughs> but I guess. Imagine if, imagine if she just did that. I, I guess so, but Almost, she'd have yeah. to do it, like, intentionally, but wouldn't Vision just, like, Dude, see that you're not who like, you are? Like, Vision always gave him weird looks, and other people assumed Vision was just racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no. And he was just racist against Skrulls, not black people, so it was... <laughs> Vision knew all along. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh and I guess, I think it, because yeah. we've been holding on for this for, for a while, all these people have been held here at this um, abandoned nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. The abandoned nuclear power plant that it, like causes people like that is radioactive <laughs> it's highly there's radioactive. a particular shot yeah this is the one where i was like fury was side. like yeah. here ish and he was the geiger counter was like through the fucking roof like so all these people are now irradiated nice yeah yep. all these people are dead welcome back to living roadie <laughs> um it's uh... gonna be a really <laughs> shitty next couple of weeks for you um yeah. it's gonna be really don't worry bad. you'll die but I, slowly and horribly. Slowly and horribly. Also, you're ten years older. Yeah, and yep. also your best, best friend's dead. dead. You've yeah, been in stasis. Can, like, can any of these people like, aliens. like it's, walk? It's, Depending on how long they've been there. It's so funny it's that it's Civil been, War that he was paused okay. on. Because that's like the last time the most serious we ever were. You could say Infinity War was more serious, but it's also a lot crazier, you know, because it's Face and yeah. all this kind of stuff, but Civil War was very, very like serious. And he and, and all the shit that's happened since then. Imagine getting fucking debriefed about that. He would have lost like all yeah, of his yeah. clearance and ranks too, probably. They can't trust him the anymore. Face, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. The face that you're frozen on right now just represents him like getting that debrief. <laughs> yeah, like, just call, like, are you fuck? Like, when, how do you process that? The face is great too because <laughs> this was all so arbitrary. They threw it on him because fuck it, why not? He, he's low impact, but also kind of interesting. He's been around for a while. It's like I am you can't, yeah, yeah you can't make there. like fucking banner a scroll the whole time. It's like there's too much to, to explain with that. It's not gonna work. And it's like, what else we got? It's like honestly, we don't really have many people left to make a scroll. It's like fuck it, throw it on Rhodey. It's like yeah, just throw it on Rhodey. Just abuse. He's the, he's the MCU's abuse boy. It's crazy. Is this the role or Secret Wars? Which one was it? They gave him like two hours to sign a contract or some shit. I don't know. You didn't hear about that? No. Something about him like being at like a birthday party or something casual and him getting a call and like you have like two hours to decide on like this big project or something like that. And it was, yeah, you, you can Wait, you'll find he, it somewhere. Gary, did you get to read Gary the project. contract or? I, I don't remember that. Yeah, I, uh, the specific details I think was that he had two hours to basically make a decision. And that's ridiculous because you, you want to be able to go over everything. But yeah, you need your agents to pressure. see that shit and tell you what you're supposed to do. That's how it should be, but oh, well. from what I remember, it was like two hours to make the decision, and or we move on to someone else. That's what I remember reading. Don't um, quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So this is where the show gets vaguely interesting for about five seconds. Um, the president makes an address to the world, and he says basically that the scrolls are fucked with everything, um, and we now are going to be running in a bill that deems all off-world creatures combatants, basically. We know who you are, and we know how to find you, and we will kill every last one of you. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. 
Wow, how'd you become instantly the most amazing character in the MCU <laughs> it's, just like that? Oh my God. It's funny because uh, I think everybody's normal interpretation is like, oh, what a villainous character. Hopefully he'll be, you know, stopped and he'll be a villain in something or maybe he'll be gone by the time we next time we see it. But the fact is, it's like, this is the consequence of what Gravik and his team did. This is the yeah. normal consequence. Yes. And you invaded to Earth and tried to of scrolls. subvert all oh, political this, systems. What, what happens when you're yeah, just... Yeah, they fucked up their opportunity. You're a regular person, you find out shapeshifting aliens have subverted your government in an attempt to exterminate all of you. All of humanity. It's like, holy <laughs> shit! Like, that's <laughs> just like, mind that. well, and Some people like, highlight imagine... it, it's like, well, what about New Asgard? It's like, don't, they don't know that ex Nobody knows anything about anything they, outside they of their own thing. New Asgard, exactly. Yeah. They keep forgetting about it, but like, the, basically what we see unfold is like, what would happen if people found out? It's like, insane paranoia like, people getting shot in the streets, like, people no clue yeah. who scroll and who's what? not, including innocent people who people now think they're going to get caught up in it. it would be zero to tolerance for scrolls after this, yeah. When, it's yeah. Like, it's, when it's, normal it's people like, hear about this, there's only going to be one course of action. Well, it, the, the problem is it's just the universe, Earth is now a very different place forever. And forever. then they're going to forget about it. They're going to forget about what they've introduced in this story, which is that now... All of humanity knows that there are shape-shifting aliens that try to subvert their governments and, and wipe them out and annihilate them. So uh, and it I, seems like most of them would chill with it. Like, it's, it's just going to be intense paranoia across the globe for well, yeah, all time. Forever, yeah. Because there's no going back from this. Because the exactly. aliens could always still be here. We'll never yeah, know if they're all gone. gone. We'll never know. You know. How could you possibly know that? It's, it's over. You know, he says all off-world creatures will be destroyed, like, on site. Does he, do you think he's talking about the like, Celestial, no, too? Not Korg, come on. <laughs> not Korg or Veb. Not those guys. Well, no, Veb is an Earthling. Oh, yeah, he is. Well, he's a quantum Earthling, I guess, yeah. Who would be? What other yeah. aliens? Would there, I guess, like, uh, well, I mean, I guess, what about, uh, like, any of the guardians, right? Like Groot. Like, like I I'm, imagine that doesn't apply to Groot, right? The guardians. The guardians would probably get a pass because they'd be like Hopefully. heroes of the. I, well, well, I, I guess it's the point is like, well, I mean, just, just sort of you. you the thing your is, he says alien he says all you know? off-world creatures, but he, he's, you know, this will get finalized into scrolls specifically, probably. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, there will be legislation for this. Yeah, that, that's going to be written out. Um, and it's probably going to get, um, the, the, there's not going to be that much. It, it'll just be a matter of, we need to finalize what the punishment will be when we find them. Will probably be the biggest point of contention. Um, because, yeah, we were very close to a nuclear war and the destruction of humanity. And the insane paranoia and cultural well, he, shift that'll happen after this. It's like, why do you think this is happening? He just found out that, like, his best advisor was a scroll for, like, years and years. That's yeah. He yeah. was trying to coax him into annihilating no himself. This is what, this is what I don't think people matter. understand, which is, I think, an accident on the show's part. It's like, this is a really interesting reaction to the fact that he almost caused World War Three thanks to scrolls. Like, this is, yeah, this this is him, really obviously, he's furious and he wants them stamped mm. out and they nearly destroyed humanity. Yeah, and people um, could be like, "Oh, show... villainous action!" Because even Fury says, "Wow, you made a hateful speech today." That's what he tells him. <laughs> it's like, "Yeah, you bet it's a fucking hate-filled speech." Yeah, <laughs> you I kidding fucking me? hate scrolls. Yeah. How good is I hate he every should? single one of them. He should. He should hate every one of them after that for sure. Because yeah. like, just absolutely be manipulated nuts. like that. He's probably you humiliated. Guys, like personally, he's probably so fucking furious that that came that close. Remember how well, many years ago when you invaded? Him. Period, and then well, the, just... the, the war stuff started. They nearly personally killed him, uh, yeah. along with yeah, all of his did. security. All well, of yeah, his he would know now. Made him the, look um, like a fool for years. The the motorcade incident was an attempt to kill him on the part of the scrolls. That was ex like explicitly what all of that was. And then they wanted to wipe out all of humanity. He's. What other reasons do you need to be furious? In what way is this not like a an, a, an existential threat of a war with humanity and another species? Arguably, this is the biggest, most important, and impactful cultural shift in all of Earth history. Arguably, with maybe the blip. Well, to be yeah, honest, I would say uh, arguably this is there. worse than the blip. It's worth, it's worth keeping in mind. Fury should probably end up in some kind of trouble for this all this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Not telling. He's got pluses, but the fact is that he helped ferry in the scrolls underneath, like you know. Safeguards and, and then all of this happened. Yeah, and he he hit it, it. yeah, he hid it from the world, and look at the outcomes that happened. It's crazy. And then, and this is all with the president not knowing that there is one scroll out there who is unstoppable. 
who has mm -hmm. all the powers and cannot be stopped. And that the reason why that happened is because Fury just gave away the DNA of a bunch of people. Yep. Other scrolls enabled it. Rip. And it was their and design so, and to Fury, get it for themselves. Fury specifically enabled it, yeah. Um, the, yeah he has gotta, every right to be angry. Yeah, we're close to the end. We can just do a quick s summaries here. Uh, good old um, Olivia Tina Coleman. McGavin gets blasted. Uh, oh, I, I, I'll, I'll cover that in a second. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Yeah. This is the end of One Gaia's plotline. Olivia Coleman and Gaia team up, and it's a little cringe too because she's like, we meet at last, and then she's like, if you have an army in that car, unless you have an army, I suggest you leave. She says, I think we should have a partnership. And then Gaia's like, my father entered a deal like that. And Coleman says, let's, let's be sure not to repeat the mistakes of Fury and Talos. Let's leave yeah, love yeah. and friendship out of this. Use me and I'll use you and we'll both make sure our species is safe. It says, girls can do it too. Part it's, 10. It, it is a like, bit like Fury and Talos fucked it up. It's like, only because the writers decided they did. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, there's no reason why it should have been this catastrophic. But these girls are gonna nail it now because they won't make the same mistakes. It's like, okay. Sure, man. Whatever you want. Uh, fine. And then... Uh, yeah, as part of the speech made by... Um, yeah, because there's a whole bunch of things here. So first of all, they find this place. I'm still not 100% sure what this place is. I, have, I don't know what that is, other than, I guess, a bunch of other people who've had their identities stolen? I think so, yeah. The That's... million scrolls. This is all the people whose lives they've stolen. Look at how stolen. many people! What are you supposed to think?! Where does their poop go? <laughs> well, it's just, That's what we what? said. Apparently, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who, you know, have essentially just been robbed of their lives indefinitely. Yep. Like, what so the that hell? So a scroll can go and out there and Dude, imagine, imagine what the president's yeah. going to say once he finds out about this. <laughs> like, this is oh, in absolutely insane. Oh, by the way, yeah. Captain Marvel, opinions on all of this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think that we should be so hateful. Okay. Uh, opinion noted. Thank you. Scrolls are dying. <laughs> well, it's this it's it's war. It's it's uh they will be absolutely hated throughout the whole world, especially when all the governments are told, by the way, there's probably a scroll in your government right now. And it's just like there's gonna um, have to be like yeah. Speaking I'm, of thank God the tests are easy to conduct because boy, I mean it might be just the end if it wasn't. Um uh, yeah, this is the, some of the most devastating world building we've ever seen. So, uh, as was mentioned, Shoot McGavin, Shoot McGavin gets getting shot. shotted McGavin. He's dead now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who told who what or whatever, but yeah, he's a scroll. They killed him. He's dead. That's, that's something that is like, well, like seeing these images, it's like, I guess that would happen. Yeah. And then yeah. remember how the prime minister of Britain got released, right? She's talking at 10 Downing Street and a guy just walks up to her and assassinates her. Somehow some guy just got a gun into 10 Downing Street to shoot I mean, the prime minister. That dumbassery aside, I just felt like this was fucking raw. I was like, this would well, happen. This is just the real consequences that people who had their lives co-opted by the Skrulls would end up getting killed because of it. The British Prime Minister just got assassinated because the scrolls had her position. This is your fault, Gaia and Gravik and all of the scrolls who participated in this. This is your yep. fault. You have instigated a mass paranoia across an entire civilization of people. And then Good this, job. the lady we mentioned from before, episode two, where she was let go by Gravik, she we see her killing a bunch of people and. She is a scroll, so she's like on the run now, I guess, or something. I don't know. The point here is supposed to be that all of Earth now fucking hates scrolls to the point where they'll hunt down, hunt them down, and kill them. And it's like, yeah, I guess yeah. so. They, yeah. You know, there's going to be humans that are chill with them, but there's also going to be so many humans that are like, this is, this is literally threatening our place in the universe. After everything we've done for the universe. After everything that humanity has done for the universe is crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Humanity yeah. has saved the universe and the multiverse on several occasions, and that the, and and look at them. This is what they get: almost getting nuked by, by alien that they, invaders that they saved. Well, I, as you say they took in right. It's like that Fury decided to take in it without telling anybody. But nevertheless, you know, humans saved them when the Kree would have wiped them out. Um, and then it's like, well, you promised them a home, and they didn't get one, so they're going to nuke you. The show really wants you to forget that their goal was to nuke Earth. Yeah, really well, don't want to on that note, 
Yuri says about the hateful speech, that's some real one-term president stuff. And it's because interesting he's not to be think about. President. Yeah, fuck that. Right. What, what would actually happen, right? It's like, this is a man who, first of all, survived an assassination attempt from alien forces. Like, Ching. that's a president that survived an alien assassination attempt. That's pretty, uh... You know, assassination attempts famously get presidents, like, if they survive them. That makes you look good. Yeah. Um, uh, but an alien, alien one? Like, yeah. woof. And then, of course, he's the one that was serving at the time when we managed to stop the potential of World War Three. He can argue he's the one that called off the strikes at the moment of impact when all of the intel he had pointed toward, you know, firing nukes, etc. He's the one that's now leading the world on trying to prevent the scrolls from taking over and taking them down. You think this is the time where people are going to be like, yeah, this guy's the worst, we need to get rid no. of him. You just no. wrote this guy a check Hope for a three-term presidency, and he yeah. will cash that shit, you bet. Because um, it's, it's hard to even see how he would lose favor when it's an alien threat. A lot of humans aren't even going to see support. the negatives in terms of what... All they'll do is find out news about how there are scroll aliens that are getting killed all over Earth because... And, you know, it'll be like, remember actor and singer this person? That was a scroll, And that person has now been found in a basement somewhere. It's been 10 years, they reunited with their families. You know what I mean? Every one of these stories, you're not going to go like, oh, the poor scroll. Like, no, no, it'll be like, this scroll stole someone's life and is subverting our civilization. They're, at the very least, not allowed to even be on this planet whatsoever. Like, imagine you woke up in that facility, you'd lost 10 years, but you'd aged 10 years, you just didn't get to have those 10 years, and you find out, you know, there's a rags running around who's the scroll. Uh, I don't even know, the live or dead doesn't really matter, but the point is, like, how would you feel about the Skrulls, Rags? It's like, oh! I would, I would want to fucking kill them! Yeah, yeah. they ruined everything! You're <laughs> and then... stealing lives from people, you're effectively, like, adjacent to killing them, plus the desire to actually go around and kill them, and the ones you've already killed! And then imagine, right, you're so passionately pissed off about this, you go and discover the root of all of it, you find out that they came here in the 90s and that Fury promised them a place on Earth or a place of their own planet. And you ask what the hell happened, and you find out Fury decided for his own benefit to use them to advance his career in S.H.I.E.L.D. Instead of just putting them on the planets that were available and to them. And then, with the skills he gave them, they subverted him, ignored him, and took over the world over the course of 15 years with a million people. And very nearly came close to nuking all of humanity. All of humanity. Men, women, and children alike. And they did yep. and then kill you've several. Always got the, you've got the 6,000 that were killed in Russia. Yeah, exactly. All the as, other as well people as who any were number of thousands of people who've been killed in all so of the, the things that they had already done to yeah. try and ferment uh, like anarchy in the world. It was absolutely the, nuts that they wrote this show. <laughs> I don't if know what they were thinking. If there is a... If the objective of this show in terms of the writing was to get us to sympathize with scrolls or to use scrolls as some kind of an allegory for people of oh. different races or ethnicities or nationalities, then they have fucked up beyond belief. Complete failure. This show has given me an incredible justification to be horrifically xenophobic to scrolls. Mm. Fuck them. Get off well, my planet. The last line from the president in this scene is, there's only one way this ends. Get the scrolls off my planet. Which oh, is supposed yeah, to obviously be like a... a a xenophobic position, but it's like, but that's the only solution now. You can't expect peace. Well, the thing is, is, like, is what that. he said. What he said is more of an accurate statement as to a reflection of the nature of the world. Like the only resolution that you could have in this world at this point is that the scrolls can't stay here. Yeah, it's of not about killing them necessarily. Here. He's just delivered no, the most reasonable response after declaring yeah, all out war. Go. Just Jeez. get them they gotta off. Go. They are physiologically like, incapable of living on this planet with our species. It just like, can't work. Like I said, it's like Korg and Meek and stuff. Like, they'd be pretty and, chill, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, he's yeah, running around cool. sharing his goo with like, people. Just, just you know, consensually, yeah, of course. Regular, like, the, the world of Futurama is a world that could exist at some point. You know, of like, humans, aliens, robots, and everything living in a society. Scrolls sure. in particular already pose difficulties because yeah. of their unique ability to subvert, like, the, the planet and... And then you throw on top this attempt to destroy the world on an insane, like, basis. Like, an absolutely insane, ridiculous, like, illogical, fucking stupid, evil basis. You throw that on top, it just makes things like... <laughs> it's This is an unsalvageable situation. It's over. <laughs> like, it's, it's done. 
six episodes they pulled all this insanity off in. Yeah, and they were not densely packed six episodes. No, they were. Either. They were. Uh, there was a lot of. Uh, see what I mean? After everything we've you know gone through with Phase Four and, and Five to an extent, it's don't just start up, but like and and still, I am very much surprised by their writing. Like, yeah, me too. Me too. This is fascinating. How do they do this? How I don't. Do they manage this. Like. I was not expecting any of this. Like, I didn't think it'd be able to affect me at all, but I, I was pissed off by the end. Just reminding and, me what I liked about the character and then just shredding every aspect of it. And how much of this is going to make it into a future MCU project? It's like maybe 1%. Uh, about 4%. Maybe. maybe a line. Maybe a, a line, line or two. A reference. A yeah. couple and references and that'll be because it. Because the guys who made this aren't going to speak to the guys who make the next thing, and the guys who make the next thing may not have seen this. That's just the reality of it. This show has been so unsuccessful that they're probably going to try and avoid it as much as possible. Well, and that's the thing. And People are talking many... about how it's boring, lame, or annoying, or the CG bubble. It's just like, it's a fucking gross show, like, overall. <laughs> and I don't know how many people are going to address that. Like, it's ideas, yeah. the it way it wrote sucks. characters, the spite. Fucking yeah, best. people still sucks. think about the AI intro. They're they're missing the point. There's so much more. Like the, the, yeah, the, the AI intro sucks, but the show yeah. also sucks. You know what I mean? So Hell of a lot, yeah. So like, I don't know. I get for the people who come after this to make shows and things. How many times does the person in front of you have to fuck up the world before I'm like, you know what? I don't even blame you for ignoring the shows at this point. Like the person in front of you just ruins shit. Yeah. What do you? Well, yeah, and, and, I mean, how do you, how do you move forward with it? You know, like yeah. what do you, when it kind of cascades it, right? Because this universe? a creator that comes in to make anything, when they see this is all the work behind them, they're like, oh, why would I even bother? Really? Then okay, yeah, I'll throw my brick in onto the wall, like toss it in randomly, and it's like that wall looks pretty strong. Sure, whatever. Bye. Who's next? And it's like this guy. You see the bricks all over the place. He's like, bro, buy a brick art. It's like used to have some level of building it. We cite this every so often, but like when you watch Avengers 2012, you can tell whoever wrote and directed that more than likely got to know the first set of films in phase one because he references the yeah. fuck out of all of them. All the character journeys are referencing all the character journeys from the actual films they're coming from. So it's like, hmm, you must have paid attention. You must have known what was coming before. But these days they admit that they don't watch this stuff. They're like, nah. I saw two episodes of it, or that fucking shit from Quantumania, where the writer and director of the movie can't remember if, uh, first of all, what the name of WandaVision is. They call it the Scarlet Witch Show. Oh, man. And it's like, did you even watch it? And then <laughs> they're like, oh, there's, there's Wu, yeah, who uh, I think was in WandaVision. This is like, well, he doesn't say WandaVision, he says the Scarlet Witch Show. It's just like, how could you... How, how could... It's not even hard, man. Yeah, man. Just to let, you to don't spend even do a night, yourself, one night. You don't have assistance. You don't have people like you know. That, it's Make yourself some base. food. Grab some popcorn. Yeah. Drink. Just watch the fucking show. Or otherwise, you're trying to tell us how fucking painful it is that you can't bring yourself to do it. I don't know. I, I was just yeah, gonna I'm mention one thing before moving on because I think we the, the president scene. The only thing that I like about that is that it confirms Talos died for nothing. <laughs> that's completely meaningless and it sucks because i feel like that was the biggest opportunity with so, the show in terms of substance you're right that's yes. true his death yeah meaningless right, it was meaningless for nothing. the it obvious payoff it, for him the obvious payoff uh, for him is to, for him to die and make a difference to the scroll human relations yes. but it, he didn't and i thought that was what they were gonna do like even 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 fury mentioned it in this phone call to like you know the president has this new resolve with the situation but just putting that in his head to at least make him like have to you know maybe consider it he doesn't even mention Talos here. This guy just fucking walks back to his ship. I, I was just like, ah. Uh, no, it's insanely. The piece of the yeah. puzzle, man. Give insanely Talos disrespectful. Remember, Maria respect. should probably get a mention of some kind at the end, too. Oh my god. Yeah, she's she long got nothing. She's forgotten. She got nothing. Yeah. She's well, and what do we do down. instead? I don't think they mention her again. We have Fury under fucking next to a blue screen of the horrors talk to his invented wife as of this series about how. Yeah, I do love you, even as a scroll. Now let's kiss and go to Saber to sort out the relationship That's between it. Kree and Skrulls. That's the end of the show, yeah. They don't do any- there's no sealing of any other threads in the whole like, okay. thing. How is this even remotely a resolution? Yeah, how does this- This isn't a resolution. 
everything's worse. <laughs> and <laughs> fuck everything up and dipped. Like that's pretty much it. He just made everything worse. Just they brought him worse. back from space to completely ruin him, and then fucking shoved his ass back in the ship. It's insane. I'm like this so fucking show. rude to, to to make your show after everything you just showed me about these two being like, yeah, I like you, Green. That's fine. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what's so important right now. Uh, that's what we built up to. Oh. Um, and it's over. Yeah. Every time you think that, like, like how do they do it? Every time you think that it's like the bottom. Right, they can't possibly get worse. It's like, no, actually, there's still some, there's still some. Like, you know, uh, Captain America Four and some... the Marvels, they're gonna be awful, aren't they? Can you imagine? Yeah, of course, because they're if already they're like be... all written and everything. You know, mm. already done basically. It's know. gotta be uh... especially spiteful. But this was a, yeah, there was not a moment I enjoyed. It was just <sighs> the other ones. None of them really pissed me off to this degree. I'll, I'll say that. This is one of the things that bother me the most, just because, it, yeah, between this and Black Widow, those are my two where I just can't believe this is your vision for this character. You just didn't give a fuck about their journey. It's so weird how much there is to connect to, like, other current MCU projects, because this in isolation, you'd be like, you don't get right in this bad that often. It's like, well, it depends. Are you watching the MCU? <laughs> expected and when we look at uh i mean you know in in seeing these credits again it makes me like man i'm really thankful that the credits were ai generated so that it got people just that much easier for people to despise this show yeah like the veil little, the veil the got lifted gap, you know yeah it had to like earn its way back into favor and it was never gonna fucking do that yeah because you know if like andor had ai credits people would probably get over that because of andor's writing Mm. There's nothing redeeming in this. I, no. I was gonna say, is, do you think there is there any is there anything salvageable in this show going forward? And is there anything you could compliment on it? I think we complimented like five things. Most of them were like lines from Olivia, Olivia? Coleman. Yeah, I was about yeah. To say. her character was not Excluding always her. terrible. Um, uh, they kind of ruin her by the end, unfortunately. She does get a lot um, of cringe and it's a bit yeah. stupid. But, yeah. Her yeah. not uh, doing anything to stop uh, fake Rhodey. Uh, some of her lines are super cringe. Yeah, say so the uh, the Britain and U.S. Are allies. So of course I'm not going to prevent World War Three. It's like what? Just they just yeah, screwed it up. I, I think I would like to think that Talos died with good intentions, like he was trying to sacrifice himself for the better of his people. And like I would like to think that that's like even though he didn't get any credit for it, I'll try to compliment that just for my own head cannon. But who knows what they actually think about that death? Like you know, like wasted characters. All of them are waste. Oh, um, I'm going to read now some stuff from... It's just two article sort of sources. This one is... It. Secret Invasion director confirms how long Rhodey's been a scroll. The dramatic conclusion to Secret Invasion has finally been released, with fans relieved to finally see Rhodey. He's rescued. The six-episode series saw the Avengers' body taken over by a scroll. Isn't even really how... But that's fine. With fans figuring out how the twist pretty early on. Yeah, because the only thing that they were going to do. However, one big question remains. Just how long has he been held hostage? Speaking exclusively to Radio Times, director Ali Sal is it Salim or Salim? Salim? Salim, I assume. Has confirmed that the dark theory that Rhodey has been a scroll ever since Captain America Civil War is true. Yep, he's been a scroll the whole time, yes. Uh, it means Rhodey's been absent for about nine years in the MCU, including the events of Avengers Endgame, which saw his best friend Tony Stark sacrifice himself. God. So to be clear, Rhodey doesn't know Tony's dead? Presumably, Salim answered. I think it's going to take a librarian to go through and pick apart every Rhodey moment up till uh, Secret Invasion. But there's a lot to be unpacked now, and I think a lot of it will be unpacked in Armor Wars, where is where Dawn is going next. It'll be unpacked in someone else's show. <laughs> like, I ain't doing it. Now. Fuck that. I'm out. Yeah. Thanks. This yeah, and they talk so about how he he tried to play Rhodey different because he was a Skrull. Except he didn't play him differently before because he wasn't one. Yeah. This oh, is... Yeah. You're telling me that was Skrull Rhodey when he was like having that hospital scene with Tony? Like, that's just... You can't attempt these type of retcons and expect everyone to not pay attention, you know? 
I just like that he said, like, it would take a librarian to go through and check all the scenes against him being a scroll now. And it's like, you, what you mean to say is, I have no idea what this has done yeah. to his history. Go look, Clearly. I guess. Figure it out. Get back to me. That's pretty much what that was. So now, this is interesting. There is a post on the Marvel Studios subreddit called, No, but seriously, what is going on in the MCU? And this is the post. <laughs> I just read the following interview with the director of Secret Invasion, and it made me so uncomfortable and angry. I think it shines a light. By the way, this is a very popular post. I think it shines a light on so many of the missteps of the recent slate of content. There really doesn't seem to be much passion or even a desire to leverage and respect the source material and fans by the directors. And instead, directing for the MCU has become a way to cash in and or boost one's clout. Some key 100%. excerpts from the interview just left a rotten taste in my mouth along with my thoughts. So this is what they thought. So interviewer question. What have you made of the reaction to the series overall? Because reviews have been mixed. Which is a nice way to put it. The director said, Oh, I don't read reviews. With all due respect, for me, I view all the storytelling work I do as dialogue with an audience. When the show is finished and put up on the screen, that's my half of the dialogue, and the audience then starts their half of the response to it. I think that's Fuck valuable, that but I don't know. I don't know how to answer the question. So he goes on, but I was just going to say, we can go piece by piece, I suppose. Yeah, this is like, I'm just going to say all my stuff, and then I'm going to fuck off, and y'all can yeah, talk about it much. amongst yourselves. No accountability for my artwork. Yeah, that's not like a, that's not a dialogue. It's not a discussion. That's just you hmm. talking into the... It's essentially like you making a YouTube video, and then just leaving forever. And not I, listening, reading comments, or anything. Goes on to say... I don't feel bad about mixed reviews. If you had unanimously good reviews, every movie would gross 10 billion trillion dollars, right? Projects resonate with different people at different times for different reasons, and Marvel has a very devoted, even rabid, fan base who have expectations, and when their expectations aren't fulfilled, they move in another direction. They give it a thumbs down. I don't know, is it our job to fulfill their expectations or to tell the story that we're telling? So it's a tricky thing. I would love it if everybody loved it, but I also don't have that expectation. So I feel great about the response to it. Cope. <laughs> cope. Oh, definitely. Cope, 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 cope. He's Charged buried in cope. Oh, That's mega. That's all he can Big do. Big mad. Pure copium. He's injecting it into his eyeball. <laughs> it's just, there's no other explanation for that. That was a bunch of bullshit. I mean, he didn't even really say anything. Like, That's what I mean. Like, that I, was, I tuned out after like, yeah, like, this is just cold. Valid. You're just saying words. You're not actually connecting the dots here. What the fuck? Like, he doesn't know what he's trying to say there. He's just that is what, waiting, for the waiting for the next question. He panicked. Like, that is some horse shit. Ask him to repeat that and be like, what do you really mean by Yeah, what did you even <laughs> just say? What do you think you just said? What he said. <laughs> Ask him literally to repeat look up what he left. said. I remember <laughs> how he started it. This guy has no idea what. Oh my god! Oh, sorry, our recording, uh, our recording uh, equipment wasn't quite working. Could you repeat that one more time? Uh, Johnny in the booth is saying that we need to do another take yeah, of that. Someone have the balls to call these people out sometimes. And condense like, it into explain. you know like thirty seconds or less on that one. I'd be like, no, take all the time you need. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, treat, just, you, you know, just hand him the shovel, open your brain up, and dig. just spill it all out. What's going on in there? Um, but yeah, interviewer, it's a different story than Marvel's ever told. Let's dive into some actual plot points of the finale. One of the highlights was the massive showdown between Gaia and Gravik, whose oh, powers yeah, have been enhanced right. by the Avengers' DNA. What will you remember about working with Amelia and Kingsley on that fight scene? He said, it's interesting. They're both stellar actors who bring a lot of electricity, and in most instances, uh, in very quiet ways. I'm, mo I'm deeply moved by some of the subtle choices that Amelia Clark makes. I think she could do no wrong. That makes sense that he'd think that, mm. <laughs> considering her role in the whole no, show. Um, when you get to a heavily choreographed fight scene, or a bombing sequence, or an ambush sequence, it's just kind of fun, right? It's the actors being like, okay, I don't have to bring it today. I just have to be a 12-year-old swinging from a rope. So there's a lot Fuck of fun. Fucking hell! <laughs> what? He actually said that. So there's a lot of fun in those moments, and there's a lot of danger, but it's not as emotionally significant or emotionally resonant as quiet moments, like in episode five, where she she and Nick Fury discuss Talos's death. The fight Was that meant to be an emotionally resonant moment. Yes. Meanwhile, fight scenes aren't. The fight scenes aren't. It's just a broad, just like sweeping generalization of fight scenes and their purpose in a story. 
Well, yeah, Why are these there's one more bit. I don't know. I feel like it's just more telling of the, your attitude on storytelling. Anyway, yeah. Continue. He says, uh, to follow up on that, the fight sequences become mathematical, mechanical, precise. Did we get it? Yes. Move on. It comes together later in the edit. And then you congratulate your mathematics and your mechanics. You don't congratulate the emotional resonance. Oh my god. What? <laughs> I just don't you know don't what the fuck is that. The emotional, resonance? The emotional resonance. And by the way, the OP of this post has their own response to that, and it reads This makes me see red. Your action sequence should have heart and thought put into it, even if it is a Marvel movie. The big giant CGI fight between Cap and Tony in Civil War? Yeah, it was choreographed to death, but did your heart sh not shatter when Tony flinched because he thinks Steven is about to murder him? Uh, or Steve, yeah, and is instead plunges the shield into his chest plate. That's some emotional resonance. I congratulate to this effing day, my guy. Yeah, it's a really weird thing to say. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like and, uh, hey, no hey, one. Hey, how could that be your perspective? Well, the perspective is what you can't achieve emotional resonance in a fight scene. Really, like, just false, sir. False. Well, it's, 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 I think it's, again, it's just so indicative of his attitude. Right the fight scene is the fight scene. It's the big action scene that you have, and it makes it's people like, happened. oh, yeah, explosions, no woohoo, yeah, cool. No and then character. we have our story beats, not marrying them together. It kind of makes sense, wow. doesn't it, though? Uh, it does it, make it sense that he would sense. say that, yeah. Because those well, fight scenes this, are just bullshit. I hope this guy enjoys all of his interviews. Well, because I feel like. There's um, just like all all this show's gonna do is people are gonna talk about how bad it is for a while until it's forgotten, and it'll just that that'll be it. It won't have a legacy. People won't even remember it for it to have a legacy. Every once in a while, it might be referenced as that shitty show. So there's a top comment uh, that says, aside from two independent films from the '90s and mid 2000s, his body of work is literally music videos, commercials, and directing and writing an episode or two of. A of various shows throughout the 2010s. His bullshit about not caring about mixed reviews stems from his career of making things no one gives a shit about. So this isn't oh a surprise. Oh my god. If you've, given an, shit. if you've given an almost unlimited budget and creative liberty and your show still gets 13% favorable ratings, that says a lot about you and your ability to make a movie rather than the audience. Oh, Jeez, that's crazy, shit. isn't it? Everyone's it, it basically, mad about it. This, it, this is yeah, the one. This, this is the point. This is the simp I mean, subreddit. The Marvel. That's essentially correct, that, though. If you have two hundred million dollars to make a show, you have virtually an unlimited budget. Let's be real. Yeah. Well, um, it, it, you're essentially in a position where the idea of six, financial or technical limitations for your production limiting what you can do is it. it they how, virtually how don't exist. Push, exactly. Like maybe they exist, million but at for this point, six episodes. Only for six episodes that aren't not even long full, aren't even full length episodes. They're not even yeah. an hour long each. If if you can't tell your story. <laughs> With that much money, I, I don't, you know, it's like, I don't even know what that would mean to not be able to tell your story at that point with that much money. Uh, so this is a funny thing. Uh, a quote that made by jaw drop from the article that's not in what you included is the director saying that the theme of the show is Fury learning to see aliens as equals and not others. This is why the I final scene is Fury kissing his wife in alien form because he's overcome his inner turmoil of seeing his wife as an <laughs> unequal other being. And then their comment on that is... So to be clear, Samuel Jackson was re was placed on a character arc where he had to learn that racism is bad. And even though what? no one would ever believe this just based on the show because it's a mess, the director chose to confirm it. <laughs> I can't the director no. believe that the show is Fury realizing that racism is bad. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know that Fury was a horrible what? racist. <laughs> I didn't know anger. that. I learned something what? new about I... Nick Fury. I doesn't even know. What the that's hell? That's insane. <laughs> I that that's actually insane. I had no idea that has the Fury show was about even, him becoming not a racist. Has he ever mentioned race at all throughout yeah, the entire MCU? His, I'm not even sure. Well, I mean, I the, think I remember his uncle's story. I, like, it's, been a, it's been a big deal with him this show. If he you were gonna race look, a lot of all the show, characters, the Fury would be like the least that. xenophobic. He's he's fully prepared to engage with it. He just wants to make sure they're not gonna try and kill us. That's all. Yeah. He's never given I mean, a shit. I don't I don't buy it help. for a second that he looks at like alien creatures and he's like, look at them lesser yeah, beings. Yeah. 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 Wasn't from Earth. yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. It's absolute bullshit. Oh my god. I, Did um, he watch? Did he watch any of the other films? Ringy, no. <laughs> he it's probably just... unironically didn't. He, uh, oh. I, it's, it's, it's funny, at this point, we can only keep asking it so many times until people who make these things actually confirm it. 
and yeah. say for themselves, I didn't watch the thing that was a direct prequel to the film that I'm making. I didn't watch that, or I've only watched a few of them. Well, it's if I had... Because, like, those original posters, right, on the on that Reddit thing that you're posting, they have the... They know all of this history. They've watched it all. And it's not their job. And there's just, they're just a person out there who's a there's fan. some dude who's got, who's got yeah. a, their actual, like, full-time job, like, that they're doing. Zero investment, no, zero financial investment in it, but they care about the content, and they can and they see know the continuity. all the bullshit. And they yeah. just don't get... That's oh, crazy. If you are a Disney exec and you approve... Two hundred million dollars for a six-episode TV show, and it's now it, you're tasked with finding a director for this show. That should be one of the most important decisions that you make in your life. <laughs> they grab just this the is guy. a huge exactly. decision to it's, make. It's a shit ton of money, and these people are in charge of the creative aspects of this production. The right, the showrunner, you know, lead writer, director, you know, it, like. It, it it is wild, isn't it? Again, when it's like, oh, one of the guys who wrote this show, who who had a hand in writing every episode, has written one screenplay. <laughs> it would be oh, mandatory I, uh, for me to have every person that I was thinking about doing this job to have watched every single Marvel movie. Yeah, at the I, very yeah, that, least. Would that would be and mandatory. And I would probably it's say, write friends. me a fucking I, essay about them. Oh. I, yeah. think, I think I would also have a requirement of like, you gotta read some comics, you gotta read some of the source material, saying, like, you the need amount to familiarize of, yourself with this. You're asking way too much. For these, the, the amount of passion out there for this, for the superhero genre, they can find people that'll do this for yeah, free. No like, short supply will do of that. This. Like, you know, there's, no, there's people that will go and put their time to try to fix the MCU for free right now because they love Marvel. They would, it, yet they but, don't even, it's, it's insane. They don't even it, like address these people. It is strange though. It's like that post said. It seems like a lot of uh, a lot of people who come onto these consider it a stepping stone, which which is yeah. pretty crazy to think about. That like a Marvel television show or movie is like a two hundred million stone dollar career. show is a stepping, is a stepping stone, stone for me. Yeah. Like what the fuck do you want? I, I well, that's the thing. All it. of this, I think, was constructed under the idea that all of it makes a billion every time. Each one of these projects makes a billion. And so now you can that just fucking bleed that money, money out. But yeah, now they're not making the money back. It's like again, oh. it's like again, Event Horizon. You've already got you've already got several productions that are wrapped. They're done. You need to release them. And I mean, let's be real. Like, what is the interest going to be in like Echo or the Marvels or you know Ironheart or Agatha? What what's the interest going to be if you couldn't get people to show up for Samuel L. Jackson leading a massive ensemble cast? I think you I think you fucked, you know? Like I yeah, think they might actually done. be screwed. And how Which long will it take for? until Agatha. <laughs> I didn't Agatha. think that Agatha. two years ago. Two years ago I didn't think it was possible for like Marvel to fail. I actually I really didn't think it was possible. And or, now, or I, I just think it's possible for them to succeed. I think yeah, at this point they can pull themselves out of this. To succeed, right? Like the only one that succeeded was Guardians 3, which was way more considered like a James Gunn thing than a Marvel thing. And he's gone. He's and gone off to your competitor. And Guardians 3 was basically cashing in on really the last check they sort of had left for yeah, the most part. Yeah. Um, All they got is Spider-Man and Spider-Man is partially Sony. Wow, it's yeah. the majority of Sony actually. Sony gets the majority of the money off of those films. And uh, he seems, especially now, really divorced from, like, the rest of everything in well, a I mean, very meaningful way he is. But... Pull him out. And it's so funny, because a couple of years ago, people were like, no, Sony, take him away from the MCU. And this one is like, you know what? Maybe get, maybe take him out. Like, maybe get maybe him out Maybe take everybody you know? out. No more superhero movies. Enough. You've done it. Mm. We'll get Joker yeah, 2, and then uh, we'll stop. I think I think it's going to take a little bit of time for the industry to catch up, I think. Because, yeah. like, I mean, you can see it with... Uh, the plans for DC, right? Warner Brothers really, really wants when really they should probably be looking at like video games. That's what they should be looking at at this point. Is like let's buy up a bunch of video game adaptation rights and get working on that those. Might productions. be the solution, yeah. The last I of think, us. I think Mario. that's the next era we're in. We're in that era now, I think, because there've been too many successful. There's too many like big successful video game adaptations in the last few yeah. years. Uh, if I mean, they dude, could like, pull dude, off, you got an adaptation recently. It's like, wow, right? okay. Yeah, Twisted... I think Anthony Mackie's in it. Um, oh, I don't know if it's good or not, but, like, if Twisted Metal is getting adapted into, yeah, you know, live action... Like, you can do plenty if you're going to work with that. Like, um, I think... What was I going to say? 
Uh, if they can pull off like a Metroid movie or a Legend of Zelda movie, yeah. like, and they actually do it properly, that's a billion dollars right there. People will go. Well, of just course, it's, it's 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 still scary for us, isn't it? Because it's like, oh, please Man. don't fuck it up. Yeah, like, don't. yeah. You're like going for things that I have a real affinity for. Like, yes, I know those. That's why I went for those two because yeah. I know those are the value. Like you could screw up Donkey Kong, I'll be fine. But Metroid and Link, come on. Mm -hmm. It's just but, it's uh, weird that when I watch the Mario movie, I'm like, oh, you don't hate Mario. Mario. Movie is more, more coherent than these films. Mario yeah. movie is not a good movie, but it's it's more coherent than these productions. It's right? You know, it's. I assume it was okay. malicious. Yeah, it's, it's okay, it's, and I enjoyed it. So, or just be that it hits basic story beats and it does so like reasonably effectively, yeah. yeah, competently. Whereas here, we can't even get the basics right. Uh, uh, yeah, this, read another no one, point by the way. Yeah, go well, for it. Top comment says uh, shades of Quantumania writer Jeff Loveness blowing off fan reception to the depiction of Modok, like basically saying this yeah. feels the same as that. It's like because yep. it is. Yeah, pretty much, it is the same thing. Did he try to defend Modoc? I oh, well, his his. I, if I remember correctly, it was along the lines of he got really bummed out seeing that people didn't like the film, so he went to a theater to watch it, and people were laughing at Modoc. So he was like, "No, I'm at no, I've done a good job. My script no, is funny." <laughs> that was essentially that was. That sounds about right. I could be getting it wrong, but that's that sounds vaguely like what happened. I genuinely laughed out loud, like hysterically. Like I couldn't go when oh, I saw Modoc. Yeah. I didn't think it was gonna be that funny. He, I thought it was he just crazy. Funny in so effects, but it's because his face. <laughs> yeah, it's just what do you what was his creative decision? Why would you do that? And I've i I'd never seen any other Ant Man, so I didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, but yeah, it's fascinating reading some of these threads because people are just like losing it in terms of like, oh god, the MCU's bad actually, isn't it? Like, yeah, and if, yeah. if, if it's yeah. critical yeah. mass, like critical that. mass, I think is what happened because this isn't. There's no point in ranking these shows and movies anymore. You know where we're at. It's like a two at average is like well, yeah, what you, you get for these. It point. doesn't break time and space, but it it completely destroys the world building in, a, in its own special well, way. The reality is like you know it's it's a bit memey. It's like. Have you guys covered like we get into like fucking eight or nine or something where it, it, of this level? And it's like we went through it all. That's what the last ten hours were. We went through all of it. Okay, we're not making this up. This is what they showed us. I didn't yeah. do this. Mm -hmm. They did this. Yeah, I don't want it this to be bad. I want all these shows and characters to be great. Yeah, like obviously, I, like I want to. Be good. I want to live in the world where I'm like, oh sweet, they're making a they're making a show starring Samuel L. Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn and all these guys. And Olivia Clark, or sorry, Emily Clark, Emily Clark, Amelia, I Amelia keep, Clark, Amelia. Amelia. I keep saying Olivia, then I'm like, no, it's Amelia, and they're like, no, that it's Emily. Amelia. For whatever reason, I, <laughs> I've heard you say Olivia before. Yes, I, the, keep, the... I don't even know who Olivia <laughs> Clark is. I have no idea who that is. The dragon bitch. Uh, <laughs> but, that's why I say color Daenerys. I'd much rather live in the world where I hear the premise of this show, and I'm like, oh wow, this sounds like such a cool idea. Scrolls trying to subvert. Like Earth stuff, and yep. like like maybe it's a more espionage related, you know, thrillery, tense kind of show, and like look forward to it instead of thinking, oh God, please no, so, oh God no. Top, on paper, this show sounds awesome, but there's a oh. five thousand point post on this subreddit right now. That just all it says is, where did the two twelve million go? Yeah, <laughs> where did it <laughs> go? Be <laughs> like, that. Where did that money go? Where did it go? Episode one. What's up? Oh yeah, where where did it go? Like, they, is it Oppenheimer's a hundred million? Their theory um, is Sam Jackson took a hundred million, and then the rest went to four months of reshoots and Drax's CGI arm. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be it. Um, I well, mean, at least the arm looked terrible. At least, yeah. Uh, maybe I'm just seeing uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, discussion episode. It just says, wait, when the real captives left the compound, shouldn't they be affected by the radiation? And then this just got yeah. laughed by us off. What a huge fucking oversight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was no That's reason to have the area be radiated. There was no reason you didn't have it's to. Complicate things. There was no reason. It only hurt you. So, MCU's yeah. Andor. What the hell was that about? Yeah. If you, if you that. said that, you're retarded. reevaluate your life. This is interesting. By the way. Just, I don't know what to do with that. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> There's a post on you that says, I'm 100% convinced that if anything from Phase 1 or 2 came out today, it would have been hated now. Like, hmm. No. I don't think Phase 1. Phase 2? Maybe Iron 4, Man 2. But was phase I don't one. It's hard to hate the Dark World. It's a bleh film. 
it's yeah i my memories of it are so i i don't i don't remember enough to be angry this is not like yeah. it did enough to make me angry i thought about it for five seconds no <laughs> phase one and two they'd be fine if they right. released today they'd be fine uh, they wouldn't do as well probably because of everything that's happening but they wouldn't be hated there's no way no i don't think they'd be i don't think they'd be hated they'd just be like eh, that was a movie so yeah um it's kind of sad looking at the subreddit because everyone's just fucking angry mm -hmm. like uh, and betrayed by the show but simultaneously they're trying to sort of maintain the the momentum of marvel why just let let it, go, <laughs> why? let it go why let it go it's this life okay. for these people yeah, there's what? a post that says, I kind of hate Fury and Carol after watching Secret Invasion. It's like, you should. That's what they've done to those characters. I mean, you shouldn't have felt much of anything for Carol after Captain Marvel, but now she's like an asshole. So is Fury. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a way to set her up for her own movie. Like, thanks. Oh thanks, guys. <laughs> like, this As is, if this she is... needed more help being yeah. an unlikable cunt. Seriously. Congratulations. You did it. Thank you oh, so much. Better late than never. Well, hey, uh, Loki At season least two. It happened. Loki season two is on the way. Woo. Why are they making that? Uh, is that the only one getting a sequel? Successful. Loki's the one that did well, yeah. And people uh, still think it's good, I think. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, there are people who think it's good. They're gonna season yeah, two is gonna be about as good, and they're gonna hate it. I think so. I think uh, I don't. I don't know if people are gonna let themselves get hyped anymore. Yeah. No, the hype is gone. I think that like the the entire idea of Marvel hype is gone. I think it's just we're just beggars <sighs> being hopeful at this point. We are. Uh, I, I, we still, are I, oh, sorry. This I was gonna say there's still huge cope though. There's like a post that's like the big problem with Phase Four is there wasn't a culminating film at the end of it. Like no. Yeah, that's the problem. That would have fixed all those problems. <laughs> what the, how does do it make all the films good suddenly? Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. And it's funny what because is making you. A good movie you know what logic they're using. They're like, well, Phase 1 did it, Phase 2 did it, and then Phase 3 did it, and we all love those ones, so that must have been the problem. Nailed it. Is that why you like those phases? Because they had it at the end, or is there other things you can point to? It's like they don't even like reassess their own logic before they press send. It's just like, what are you doing? I don't know. It's, in, Infinity War being great doesn't make like Thor, no, Dark World better. It's just... It's, <laughs> I, 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 I feel like movies like Civil War, Infinity War, Iron Man, they elevate the entire franchise in people's eyes, but like, it doesn't they're only, actually um, make those movies individual, individually better. Like, it's not genuinely, their only recourse is to actually make great films, but they can't even make okay films. Yeah. They're Every... fucking crashing and burning, which is kind of cool to see because it's been so long of them making shit. Hmm. Yeah. Like I said, it, it is legitimately better late than never. Uh, because maybe, you know, if like if, if they made films over and over and over and they were all like threes and fours, you know, it might never happen. But you make enough ones and twos <laughs> and you line them up consistently. Yeah. I mean, like if, if we use myself as an example, my 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 quote unquote movie awakening, I suppose, was TLJ. It Same got me, me to think about um, it got me to think about films in a completely different way. It just kind of like flick this switch in my brain, it did something to me, and I, and I just kind of changed with the way I engaged in that medium. And so every time one of these terrible, terrible projects come out, you know, how many more of those switches out there get flicked? Or how many, you know, how many people just sort of wake up from it? Yeah. And I enough of these things pile up, it happens, you know, it's, it might be slow and steady, but eventually enough people do go, well, wait a second, hold on. And yeah, what yeah. is this yeah. picture of joy? The the reason I'm showing this is just look at this. Look at look at how f it's nine fucking TV shows in how long? When did WandaVision come out? Uh, three years. WandaVision fucking... came out at the beginning of 2021. <laughs> insane. It and is insane. One of and these is we watched the top three, and then Moon Knight, and then She Hulk and Secret Evasion. A great selection. And yeah. of those. The and least that's bad was ones that we didn't see actually, <laughs> like Hawkeye. Yeah. What was the best of the ones we did see? Wandavision. Uh, uh, well, Wandavision com collapses at the end. Yeah. So, it was Wandavision. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure we've had this conversation before. Like, Wandavision's finale is a one, whereas like no single episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier is a one, but it's more consistently 
uh, bad. It made me angrier. It might have been is, Moon Knight. WandaVision is the only one here that has good episodes. Uh, sure, but it also has a worse episode than any of the episodes. Moon Knight had a Moon Knight had two episodes that were uh. I don't think to... we called it the first one good. We said it was like uh, acceptable or like the it passes. One... So here's well... the thing: if we rewatch One Division, are you sure that we feel the same way? Yes. About those first few episodes, you yeah, reckon? We, we were okay. pretty heavy with the scrutiny. the The first two episodes of One Division are pretty much bulletproof because of the fact that they explicitly take place in the in magic world. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot. That, they're pretty self-contained in that. Well, I mean, it sort of. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it is because One Division. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the sort of the framing that of the show. Yeah, that is the one. What it the is. thing you should be mentioning probably is Zemo and Walker from Falcon and Soldier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no so, good episodes. They're good characters, which is amazing that they got away with that. Yeah, well, makes me wonder the what worst. happened. But John Walker got away like ironically because they thought he was like a. a they thought, yeah, man. Zemo. Yeah, I think they knew over. people would enjoy him for the very reasons we did enjoy him. Like that probably worked out okay for them. But they were definitely not expecting people to think that Walker was kind of a. He went on like a hero's journey. The other two were fucking idiots. I think the one that probably brushed closest to being a good show was ah damn like i really want to like moon knight more than it deserves i had a feeling you're gonna say moon knight it's because yeah everyone wants to like moon knight it's so cool but they fucked it i want i like the the first episode was like the first time in forever we looked at an mcu related thing and we're like oh like this could actually be like a show with a character and this could be interesting and then you had that bizarre fifth i think it was the fifth episode episode where it was surprisingly had some surprisingly good stuff in it and you Character had stuff, Oscar yeah. Isaac, who was like acting like a fucking champ throughout the whole thing, and it's all done in service to like nonsense and shit characters and a bad plot, and ultimately a world-ending kaiju fight yeah, where the, the fate last of all the souls on the planet else. were at stake, uh, being yeah. eaten by a giant alligator lady. Sit on my and people face. still and hate us for not doing a ten-hour breakdown of that show. <laughs> it's all they have left now is performances. I think that's literally what they're clinging to. They still got it's good performers, of... but that's yeah. They can't carry this. Um, so Loki and She-Hulk are the worst. Yes. I think so, yes. And Secret Invasion is somewhere in the middle, basically. It's and in something the to remember, somehow. if you remember, it's, just, it's fucking casted on by the specs. Do you remember Falcon the Winter Soldier really pissed us off? Remember that? Yes, it did. Yeah, Made it's the one I hate the most. I hate it the most of all of it. Even these. though it's got probably the thing I like the most out of all of it being Zemo and Walker. But it's so weird. Is, there's, there's such a different collection of because Secret Invasion is just foul. Yeah. Yep. I have a so looking at that Falcon and the Winter Soldier poster. Is it weird that it's called Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but the Winter Soldier's on the left and Falcon's on the right? But he is facing backwards. Falcon is the bigger one. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. And as for the whole right and left thing, that's just a problem with lots of posters in general. Hmm. Secret invade She Hulk. Man, She Hulk was shit. Yeah, it was. She Hulk was really bad. <laughs> that wedding episode broke me. Like, oh man. Like, um, like Moon Knight didn't make me angry. If anything, it, it made, made me, me sad. Upset. Yeah, we were like disappointed, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It was dis. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I would call Secret disappointed. Secret invasion made me angry. Secret invasion made me angry. Yeah, made me angry. Uh, I really don't like that. Um, The first episode of She Hulk. Made me furious, but everything other than that, I was just oh, like, yeah, the my eyes are laughing. The oh, first god, that first real. episode, yeah, holy shit, it came out of the oh, gate, it just came Oof. out swinging. Well, yeah, and then right, because that, that was it's so interesting to look at it culturally with each one because She Hulk it like pissed everybody off, and then nobody was really talking about it other than like some highlights, like oh, look at this, she's talking about internet trolls, look at this, secret invasion, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody liked it. The only thing that people are talking about is how the, bad it is. The Drax arm. <laughs> yeah, the Drax around. arm, the AI art intro. Yeah. It's it's just, otherwise, otherwise, it's absolute apathy. And you're like, They've yeah. got to be worried. $112 million dollars down the drain. Yeah. Drinker didn't down even try drain. it. He, he, he just, he said he... He believed he would not enjoy him. it whatsoever. And then, obviously... It's his job, and I don't blame him. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's gotten that bad. I, there's loads of people who are just Why not going to watch it. But then there's loads of people who aren't going to watch the Marvels. And then Captain America Four. Uh, that's yeah. going to be like a like a yeah, I guess. I I don't know. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big test again. That's going to be another one where they probably expect it to make close to a billion dollars and it won't. 
just on the name value alone, even though this is a complete yeah, basically. Um, it's and and really, it's the next test is the next Avengers film. If it makes less money than the first Avengers film, then it's over. Which it Which will. It probably will at this point. Yeah, it it would surprise me if it made like one point five billion. Look at how hard it is. I would be surprised if it makes right anywhere. Now. Who's even in the Avengers right now? No. Well, nobody knows. Nobody even knows. <laughs> the Avengers even are Isn't it point. funny? The, the writers in every one of these retarded projects usually has a throwaway line about why aren't we calling the Avengers? But it's like, they yeah. don't even know. The writers don't, don't know who the Avengers are. Who do I call? Are. They're just passing the baton. They just saw, saw that, Nobody that knows what the solution is. With uh, Captain and Falcon Winter Man, they, they were told, yeah, Captain America, Steve Rogers, we don't, we're not telling you what his state of being is, so you don't get to comment on it either. And goddamn, do is it, he you alive? Want to look all these shows and think about how many of them were scrolls the whole time? Well, we don't even, what happened with the? Did the scrolls just not know about the shield Hydra stuff? That would be something I'd be pissed at them for. Because the Hydra would they yeah. wouldn't know about the scrolls. Yeah, where were you guys? Didn't help yeah, out with that. Why would they know about Hydra? Of you. Well, because and they... Hydra would tell the world because Hydra is a bunch of proto or they're they're like Nazi pluses. So the thing they would about tell the world. What made the scrolls so effective and what managed to crank his? fucking career up was the fact that nobody knew this and there was people walking around as basically information like collectors who could change and shape and form out. at will that's incredibly powerful to the point where it's almost making me wonder if there should have been more effects for fury at this point like there should have been more things that have he should have had more power probably especially with this is more captain marvel's fault i guess but like all the the things we had access to thanks to the scrolls should have probably projected us way further in time over yeah. the uh you know, from the 90s what, onwards. What happened to the ship that they had in Captain Marvel? They, well, like, they went out. had a ship. They they went it's out so funny. Anything. Captain Marvel ends really hopefully of them, you know, we're going to search the world, the, the universe, for a planet. And then this one just says, you couldn't find anything. It came back. <laughs> it just got, they okay. couldn't find one. They came back to Earth. Now Earth hates all of us and we'll be lucky to survive. Now we want to desperately get off the planet so that the humans don't kill us, and rightfully so. It's, like, it's so weird. Every planet we go to, we end up being hunted down by the people who live on it. Why? All we did was try hmm, to take the, over. What's the common like, denominator? I understand. Why does nobody like us? Can't imagine why. Where the fuck is Carol? Like, seriously, where has she been this <laughs> entire time? What is she She's doing? Right? It's so nice. Secret Invasion is such a, like, dour and you know, trying to be serious show, and then you pop over to the Marvels, and Carol's not going to appreciate anything that's just happened, and it's all to do with her. I don't care. Yeah. It'll be a funny, she goofy film, the Marvels, with, like, one serious yeah, moment. Totally different. I will say this, though. She-Hulk's going to have her hands full now. Yeah, Gaia will fuck her up, man. Like, who's going to stop her? Who can stop her? That's the thing. Yeah. Like, at least Nobody one thing that her. the boys did well, at least in the first season from what I remember, is like the idea of creating Homelander as this terrifying presence who could destroy mankind. Uh, yeah. And now it's like, oh yeah, that's that's her. She could destroy mankind. What's to stop her from flying around that's and such... using Captain Marvel beams on all the world's militaries and government it was, institutions? It was bad enough when we had Captain Marvel because she was so overpowered. They just casually drop Gaia on us like this. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> come on, man. Casually like, is even... a good way to do it. Yeah, it's so bad. Yeah, because they'd probably be like, what do you mean casually? It's a, a huge button. thing. And it's like, oh, fuck off. It was not. You just decided this machine exists that could do this, and then that was that. such a waste all of it <laughs> we, we at that point again we, we always are at the end of breaking down a new marvel thing we're just despondent <laughs> like yeah, you know? can we, can we wrap up i want to play pikmin 4 <laughs> all right that was secret oh, invasion no. uh i hope it was everything you were looking to to watch us do you knew it was going to be bad Madness. so hopefully you had fun from watching us talk about it but seriously the day they make something good will be there We'll be we like, will be as good. shocked as you are and as happy as can be. It's only been but 10 hours. we're not going to hold our breath for it. Hours. Oh! Yeah.
Yeah, that's this a one half. good. That's a pretty good ratio. This one went on hours. longer than I expected it to. You know, this yeah, was my yeah. exact prediction because I knew this show was gonna. There's just so many little details that we're gonna have to go. Yeah, over. I was thinking I might be surprised. able to do something else today, but I uh, think I was wrong. I'm gonna say I think there was a little time trickery because we hit like three hours before the first episode was done. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so I don't know how that happened. Something's yeah. up. They're something using happened. the retcon powers to <laughs> alter the flow of time. <laughs> That is true. Looking, it's funny looking back at that. Like, how how did we do that? How did that happen? I don't know. Oh yeah. well. Yeah, I'm sure. I can't fine. believe it. it. In 30 minutes, it's midnight. It's almost tomorrow. But be it'd be 6 a.m. So yeah, on that note, you know. <laughs> uh, wait, yeah. Before we go, Jedi Brooks, thank you so Hello much there. for joining us. Good sir. No problem. The whole 10 I've been hours, here from you, the beginning. What do you, you mean, crazy you? man? I said whoever doesn't know in the chat. I've been here from the beginning, before this podcast even had a name. So it's an honor to be here, and it's, it's nice to have <laughs> oh you. Oh, know, my goodness. You guys. Well, uh, I appreciate the oh. letting us know this sort of stuff. And, you know, before we wrap up here, why don't you give everybody a big old mm, thing about what you do? <laughs> I'm getting tired. I'll keep it quick, since I know everyone's tired. Um, uh, basically, my bread and butter right now would be the scene comparisons. Um, mm -hmm. I want to stick to things that I'm passionate about rather than just bending the knee to the algorithm. So my next video should be out in a few days. It's a comparison between Thanos' introduction and Darkseid's introduction because it's a fucking joke. Okay. I'm also thinking of podcast ideas. So I have Jedi Brooks Live uh, and Jedi Brooks Gaming now. So the two other channels I started. Uh, big horror fan, so you see a lot of Dead by Daylight and Phasmophobia on that other channel, but... Pretty much just trying to get all three moving and then see where we can go. I, I hit 20k today, actually, so congratulations on that. And the Iron Man video, um, probably the most successful one I've ever had. And shout out to Drinker for actually like taking the time to check out my videos and like you know give me the shout out on Twitter because a busy dude like that. I I talked to just very few people who actually like reached out to me. It was really hard to get contact, but it was respect to him for that. Like actually giving me that opportunity it was great. Oh yeah. Um... And seeing you guys too, this is amazing. Like to be able to come through and bless. Shout out to the chat, everybody. This entire thing is crazy. I can't believe we went this long, but <laughs> I kind of expected this, like I said. Yeah, and uh, like I said, link to his channels in the description. I think mm -hmm. I think the EFAP fans will have plenty to be able to check out if they want to. Yeah, there's got, plenty of there's plenty of stuff got to check Boba out. Boba Fett, <laughs> The Boys season two, Mulan, Game of Thrones, thank good old you, Star Wars, you. lots of things popping up here. That I think they'll be interested in. Yeah. And yeah, the uh, the video that kicked off you, I think, was it this that was the is the reason that uh, Drinker found you was the why Ironheart so, sucks comparison. Oh, it, actually, it was Midsummer. Midsummer. When I made that video, I'm just watching Chris Stuckman talk about how he got stuck in the rain and shit during his <laughs> review. Fucking moron. And I was just like, why isn't anyone talking about the goddamn story? Like, what happened in it? And Drinker was one of the only ones who actually did. So way back then, I gave him his credit for that. And then a few months ago, I saw someone super chat and asked him what he thought like was his most overrated movie. And he sat there for a second and really thought about it. And then he said Midsummer, And I'm like, fucking hell. Okay, I'm sending this guy my video. And he liked the video. And that's how we first got in contact. And um, oh, that's awesome. the Jurassic World video, I had 42 re-render attempts to get that past you. 40 uh -huh. fucking two. I spent just ages Jeez. on that. So after that, I was just like... I can't have this video just die and get like 300 views. I worked so hard on this. This is one of my favorite franchises ever. And I, I reached out to him and that's where he got me the shout out on Twitter and invited me to open bar. And things started blowing up around um, the Rings of Power time. Oddly enough, probably the worst video I ever made because I fucked up the audio, but it <laughs> blew up and insane. And it got me from 300 to like 7,000. And that was like November. And it's been Sweet. off from there. Oh, hey. Crazy. Keep at it, good sir. And um, I'll yeah. probably check out the Midsummer video because it was funny. I only watched it recently, like a couple weeks ago or so, maybe a month. Oh, Time is a bit difficult now. And uh, when Drinker found out, he was like, "Oh no, what did, <laughs> what did, what did you think?" And I was like, eh. "He was like, oh, you loved it, didn't you?" And I was like, eh. <laughs> "And I was like, no, I thought it was shit." He was like, "Oh, Thank okay." You, right. That would, uh, yeah, that would have been an awkward cover. Like I've, I hate that movie. Like there's very few movies I could say I hate. Like Mulan 2020, Midsummer, and TLJ. Those are the ones that I'm just like, I despise those three. Midsummer is double standards, the film. It's just, yeah. Stay away from it, chat, if you haven't seen it. Well, again, thank you for hanging out. It was a, it was no a fun ride. As mm -hmm. for us lot, uh, Rags, Fringy, anything you guys want to say or talk about? Oh. Hmm. 
I suppose not. Not at the moment. Um, I'm plowing away. I'm making a lot of progress on the main channel video lately. Um, it's looking like it's going to be a very long video. Um, but I, otherwise, I'm just uh, I'm just carrying on, just kind of working, uh, trying to resolve all my issues here and the technically, and hopefully it it'll be done when it's done. You know, it, whenever that is. But yeah, progress is coming along well. Hmm. Got myself in a good habit for you know getting work done. Wait, I'm just working. That's <laughs> that's all it is. Mm. Editing. All right. Well, the editing minds. Um. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, schedule is expected to be the 19th. You'll get an unbridled video on Ant-Man, which uh, myself and Fring have been slaving over for some time, and I'm looking forward to getting out. But I will say, because there is a potential, unfortunately, there may be a delay that is out of my and Fringy and Rags' control, uh, unfortunately. It may get pushed further, not because it's not done, but because of something to get in order first. And that thing will make more sense once the video comes out. But obviously, that would be unfortunate if that was to happen. I'm hoping to do everything I can to not have that happen. But I'd rather it be said as a potential now. Because I'm going to get a horde of people being like, You said the 19th! Blah, 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 blah. Which is fair, because I know it's been a while. But you'll get the video. It's going to happen. No way we put <laughs> fucking get this close to completion without pushing it over the edge. You know what I'm saying? And then... The week following, the 26th, will be EFAP 250. 24-hour bonanza. Oh, hey. Of which you're, of course, invited to, Mr. Brooks. Yeah, yeah I'm back for sure. I've, I've made it through your first 24 hours. I, like, blacked out as soon as you guys got off. But, <laughs> yeah, I'll be down anytime you down. Anytime you guys want me back, just let me know. Let me Absolutely. Yeah, um, but yeah, other than that, I, uh, as was mentioned, uh, some hour, I don't remember... The uh, the descent thing that's that's gonna be out possibly in a week's time. I need time to edit that too. So. Jealous, jealous. Wow. My favorite horror movie. It's crazy. Wow, that's good. It'll be fun to check out. I'm sure. <laughs> but other than when you that, think that's coming yeah. out? That I mean, I don't exactly know how much time I need to edit it because the visuals. It could okay. be any. It'll be between three and a week, three days and a week. That'll be okay. the low and high probably. Fuck it. I should never say that. I'd be like, no, it'll take 10 years, and then I'll put it out as a surprise and be like, yeah, there you go. It's Everyone's coming. Happy. Just leave it at that. It is coming. So, um, yeah, on that note, I suppose we're going to head off. So thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, on a Wednesday, we'll release a catch-up, especially this was uh, this the longest EFAT we've done in a while. Ten and a half hours. Yeah. Crazy. So, um, yeah, they'll, uh, they'll come out, and yeah, thanks for keeping us company, for watching, and... Um, We'll see you next time, folks. You sleep well yeah. now. Toodle pip. Cheer yeah, everybody. Yeah, bye. 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 Yeah. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs>